Some drinks and then we repeat. Then we repeat. Yeah. Chasing my purpose, need a release. Need a release. Yeah. My life's a beach, I'm lost in the breeze. Lost in the mm. breeze. Do this with ease, don't play with my dreams. dreams. Yeah. It's so together, it's not what it seems. Mm. Part of a tiger, life of a king. king. Yeah. Chasing my bag, my feet in the cream. cream. Running these laps, not losing my steam. steam. I'm feeling good, it's like what I need. Mm. Don't intervene with my energy. Yeah. I'm in her scope like Jimmy Iveen. Yeah. No Superman, but I'm feeling supreme. Mm. It's not a movie, but I'm making a scene. Yeah, I can tell you how to live your life, but, but, but you just gotta get up. We paying a price. Mm. Piece of the pie, I need me a slice. slice. Yeah. Rolling the dice, the scariest spice. spice. Mm. Sticky like rice, the tricky reprise. Price. Yeah. Love will suffice, I suffer in silence. Shh. All alone, I'm lost on the island. Lost. Let's spread peace and less of the violence. No. Sebastian Block, I'm God's playing violence. Yeah. The flowers violet, give me my rose. rose. This for my city, all for my bros. Rose. Did it alone, so far in my zone. Rose. So raise your glass, let's all have a toast. toast. I can show you how to get like me, live your life to you, D-I-E. Yeah, look, I can tell you how to live your life, but, but, but, hey, but hey, you, you just got to get up now. Get up.
Get in your lane, stay in your lane, wait. This ain't a game. Been through the flame, I'll get out the way. Whole lot of change. Still been the same, put that on the name. I had to go through it just to get to it. Look what I became. Elevate, level up, way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys wanna talk, hit them out of law, but don't got receipts. I do it with ease, to you it's a burden, to me it's a breeze. You feel that? That win is degree, that kickback. You coming at me, boy, sit back. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, and up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. You'll be the witness. At the time, turn a repeat to a 3P, yeah. Got the franchise on me, you more like G Lee, yeah. 21st century, you all the way BC, yeah. Old boys been washed up, I'm washed up, then TT, hey. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood and up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. Check. 
motivated on focus. Came a long way from the lowest. Yeah, gotta get it though, mindset. Gotta put it in motion. <laughs> This is the moment. Gotta one of my opponent. Back then they ain't noticed me, now they know it's me. I'm the chosen. It's my time, yeah. I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all or nothing, man. The trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man. They can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall. They doubt it. I wouldn't be who I am without it. Sleepless nights, I count it. It all paid off, it's really astounding. I had to keep the faith to elevate. Hope for better days, they were coming. Now we can celebrate, knowing every day is a bunny. Yeah, it's my time, yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all or nothing, man, the trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall on. that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this.
Red Bull gives you wings.
Welcome to VCT EMEA. Bienvenidos a la VCT EMEA. Bienvenue au VCT EMEA. VCT EMEA, hoş geldiniz. Today is Elimination Day and it is time to meet the teams batting it out with everything on the line. This is a rematch and our first team came out on top once just a few days ago, but can they do it again? This roster is an exciting mix of two young shots alongside an experienced veterans with new IGL to lead the charge. Please welcome to the stage Team Vitality. And the new kids on the block, eager to show that they can hang with the greats of BCT EMEA. And if you think this is a five-man roster, you are wrong. The crowd is right there with them, loud and proud. Give it up for the gentlemates. Well, it seems to be a crowd favorite in the stadium, differing from at home. You can vote now in chat, Vitality or Gentlemates, who you think will take it. Right now, the crowd is with Vitality, but Tom, I think anyone looking closer at this knows it could be a much closer matchup. Gentlemates, they just don't lose the rematches. No, Existence has got his magic scroll. You saw him come on the stage with that. Who knows what that said? Might make Salah disappear after this one, who knows? <laughs> it's one of those things where he is known for those sort of strategical mastermind plays and I've already got my own conspiracy you lose the first match you go to the same spot as if you won the first match and lose to Fnatic so maybe there was a little bit of a play there from existence gets to watch his opponents gets to play a comp with a Phoenix on Lotus maybe they don't do that again maybe we don't see Lotus again that's the real thing with this either way we're gonna be getting into see that perfectly timed it's almost like that was planned it was, Tom. We've been here rehearsing that all day. Buying an icebox out to start. And gentlemates get to decide where we begin. Breeze is going to be our first map picked out with the follow-up by Vitality being Lotus. Now, that's a bit of an interesting pick if you watched the last series. Yeah, it played. was actually picked by gentlemates last time around. Now, Vitality have played very close versus Fnatic on Lotus and also beat them. Demolished. Yeah, basically demolished them last time. We've also got Sunset in there as well, which is obviously the other map that Vitality beat them on. So I think that obviously this is both teams looking at it in different directions. You get gentlemates coming in with Breeze. Okay, we get a pick of our own that we get to go in and go, okay, this is something new, this is something you haven't seen. But we are also happy to give you a rematch on some of the other maps because they've not taken them out. I do think for Vitality, there's a strength in playing a map you've already played. Firstly, you don't show it to other teams. Maybe you're looking at other teams later on, like a Na'Vi, a Liquid, someone else that you have to beat. You're thinking, okay, let's not show them any more of our map pool. There's also the risk that you've now given existence two opportunities to watch you play it and pick you apart. And that's the thing. We expect him to be one of the best coaches when it comes to picking teams apart, breaking them down. And okay, sure, Salah has that one map that they played versus each other, but this becomes a very different ball game the second time around, as Apex learned last year. Well, that's it. They're not the first team to learn it, and I have a feeling they won't be the last team either. Going way back in the past, we've seen those matchups, no and now shot. we get another gentleman have decided to stick with a Phoenix, which we'd seen Phoenix previously on, on a different map. But Breeze, it's a different take, to say the least. I'm trying to think. I feel like the only people who ever did that was like, I feel like Paybreaks did it once when they were hard trolling a tournament. Yeah. Other than that, I, I, I actually can't think of a reason why. Like, I guess you've got your own little blaze wall to, to throw things up and potentially get into the site. You can farm up the orbs on the attack side, which will be very easy for the most part because they are very attack sided. But 
This is bold. Yeah. This is very bold. And this time they don't have the breach either. That was something that they ran on Sunset. They used breach alongside Taka so they could set him up for plays. They don't really have that anymore. And one of the main things you'll write home about when it comes to a Phoenix is the fact that he can get into those sites. He can run aggressively, use his flashes, use his wall to section off angles, and yeah. participate in those opening duels. Last time, then in time played this up against this squad as well. Obviously, it was on a different map, one that might even be easier to use him on. Yes, definitely. He got two opening duels, nine opening deaths and finished 8 and 17. It's not like they're going, oh, well, it was so good last time. We have to do it again. I don't know what the idea is, and I'm excited to find out. I'm not sure if I'm excited to find out. I'll be honest oh, with you. Oh, really? Because, because I predicted I, Vitality, so either way, I'm fine. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, I do believe in the, the comeback of Gentlemates. Yeah. I'm just not so sure on this map, because I, I think it's a really bold call to try and run Phoenix here. Like, again, the flashes through the screens, I think, are going to be impactful. Yeah. But you could do stuff like that with a K. I think the ult has its impact, but also where you will likely start the ult from yep. is very far away from where you're going to end up. Like, if, if players are playing back site, you may not even reach them by the time you actually take the control. So I, I'm, I have to say I'm intrigued to see how this is actually going to work out for them. The good thing is they do have that Yoru that will be able to take the majority of the space, and in combination with a lot of flashes, it could be quite cool. Well, questions around Gentlemates' composition coming into this map, Vitality. They might be scratching their heads now. No doubt they feel confident with what they've seen. Let's see if the reality of the situation is going to be a little bit more grim for Vitality than we expect already. Runner was walking it up. He had a buddy safe, but they're backing down. They don't want to control over Tube. Instead, it will be a slower approach from that defensive side. You can see, gentlemen, you're expecting this when you've got a Phoenix playing it slow, grabbing the orbs, and building up that running back. Nice kill by Logan, too. Yeah, he's someone I'm very excited to see on this map because his lurks are somewhat legendary. If, if you watched Valorant over the last few years, he has been around for quite a while. Sender already going to have to deal with some of the utility of that Yoro. And that's also something that has to be thought about by the side of Vitality throughout this map. They do not have a Yoro of their own. They can't cause the same sort of havoc that Takas is going to be able to work on already. Pressure on Tedestrian Pot Flash actually denied by the screen. But they know exactly where this player is, and Takas will find that opener. Yeah, quickly able to deal with him. Now, at this stage, for the way back in, it's going to be tough. Vitality don't have a lot of utility that they're facing off against, but haven't got a lot to work with either. That Viper Wall will be brought back up to 100 Toxins, and they'll see if they can manage to sneak left. their way back in. Still, though, there's no need to think about a retake until the spike is planted. It takes a while. Gentlemates being planted. very, very cautious, knowing there's a good chance they get a fight pretty soon and can close this round out on the back of it. The reason that Vitality been waiting is that flank. We saw Kicks make it up behind. He's caught Whalers. No Viper Wall. That was on A, so it's not that big of a deal. Some utility yeah. perhaps lost, but Sander, oh, he might be about to be lost on the way through. Good peak, 26 HP over the wall. He'll go, but his teammates a little further away, split up and separated by Gentlemates, who take kills one at a time and seem to have tied a nice bow on this round. They had all the time to work with. And Vitality just couldn't get the kills. <laughs> it's definitely the loudest fan base we've got in here at the moment. The mates have been doing work, and I think that's actually going to play a big factor in this one. The fact is, you have a lot of inexperienced players on the other side. You have a few very experienced ones as well, but if the crowd can get in the minds of their opponents, we might just watch them crumble. Even still, though, very early days. One and zero. For the start, at Sorry. least the pistol round, I, I still don't feel like it's going to teach us too much about how this composition is actually going to run. But already, I do fear the combination of Natank and Takas' ult in tandem. Both players able to just run around invincible. It's always going to be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, I think especially someone like Safe going to be sat there thinking his utility belt. There's a couple rounds where it's going to be aggressively challenged. And I think we've already seen how... Just a couple. <laughs> Attack as it can be every single round. And this guy is an absolute menace. Already spotted a player up close left. That's the Viper, but the Toxins are running down and running out. No snake bite to work with. Sender has no chance to really stop them here. But again, it's about taking this control, grabbing an orb, and then figuring out where the gaps are. Right now, they haven't seen one, and the gate crash is being destroyed. So there's no free TP. Takas has to take the space with his feet. Again, though, the weaknesses in play for the side of Vitality are the highlights. You don't expect them to get a lot. I like this smoke usage, though. Destrian's called down a little bit of a safe haven for Sender to try and use this shorty close range, but they are waiting it out. They're not giving him the opportunity. Some spams even coming his way. 
has revealed attack. This is close. No, it hasn't. Oh, they're not fully aware. That's three as can be. Three already. And a big old farm round for Takas. They don't want to lose anybody else, though. Yeah, and the main thing is they want to go pick up that guard, which they will be able to do. I don't think there's going to be any problems there. That's the thing. I, I feel like I don't mind the idea, but when you see an Astra Smoke pop in a random corner, you're going, there is a person yeah, something's there. Something's going up over there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't I, know what I, it is. I'm going to be very careful walking into that smoke. I'm off. Angle's not checked already. Obviously not too much of a bond of vitality. They were just looking to try and do as much damage as possible. Now, though, as we've sort of seen, again, I'm always going to quote Na'Vi on this. You go for the three rifles, you have two pistols, mm -hmm. and if you keep three players alive, you get five rifles. So they're actually coming in with a stronger buy than their opponents. Utility looking good. And with all the kills the tank has got, he already has his dimensional drift. And the tank is one away from running back. Very scary. Those orbs are going to be taken. They will be seized. And you can see that one is definitely up for grabs towards B. Very defensive setup from the Vitality side. Not just having your Viper here with a deep orb, but also Who's having next? those traps to play with. That ult's used very early. Takas wants to take the space. He spotted one. He's looking for more. Decoy. The decoy. It's been used many times before the player comes out of the ult. Oh, I'm falling for this time. Sanders done well, but the blitz from both sides is That's too much. so sick. They flash one side and then the tank runs around the other and flashes the other side. No matter where Cinder looks, he is 100% blind. A really cool start to what is this combination of having two duelists that can flash. Now we look at Vitality and say, okay, you're a man down. How do you get back into this? And again, Run It Back is now online. I think he's waiting for the retake to really start so we can go for a TP into their spawn. Surely not. I mean, that would be a ludicrous play, but it, it is. It's exactly what he's done. Takas is crazy. Right behind them. They slipped the gate, crashed through their feet. And blindsiding Vitality completely. Nobody could hear him. That gate crash was way too far away, deep in towards the defender's spawn. And despite the damage being done by Destry, and it is for nothing, the time and the player's advantage was too strong. Gentlemates, three to zero, already slicing up this defensive setup from Vitality with ease. They've got some cool ideas. <laughs> they've got some cool ideas. In round three, they've yeah, got cool ideas, was, Tom. I love that. So Sender gets blinded by the first one. He's like, okay, I'm going to go into this corner. Yep. I'm going to be safe. Stay the safe. second flash comes around the corner. He's like, I'm completely blind again. Nowhere to look. And that's the thing. I, I feel like Gentlemates are a team that are able to run compositions that are off kilter, but the synergy between their players is good enough that it will work. And so far, for Takas and the tank, it has been working. I will say, defensive side, I'm going to be intrigued. But for now, I'm, I'm mainly looking at Vitality. Oh, I, I mean, you have to be. In this round, maybe less so. Yeah. Right, for pistols, but they're the ones that have to fight their way back in. And a... It's not about 3-0 on the board. Funny it takes come back from that. It's how dominant that opening was. And how much more do you think Gentlemates have in the tank? That was round three. And already showing ults online, showing ideas with them, putting the pressure on Vitality. Now these pistols, maybe an advantage for Destrian, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't to be. He was quickly caught off. The tank is aware of every uh -oh. angle, except the one up top. Sander picks up one. Man advantage now to Vitality. And this was a round where I really was not expecting to have too much to say about that defensive side. But Gentlemates have been isolated, been picked off. Logan's only 63 HP. Now he's trapped. The door's closed behind him. And that might not have worked out the way he wanted. Bay has left to do it all. No utility and a rifle to work with. Has at least got the spike. But those other players are grouping up. Sender and Kicks want to take this duel together. With 30 seconds on the clock, Bayaz can't really go anywhere else. He left. has to force the fight, but two players waiting when he swings into the angle. A third kill for Kicks, and a thrifty round brings Vitality back on the board. Yeah, it, it seemed a little bit more disjointed in this one for Gentlemates. Like they get caught in some of these battles, and that's the thing. You give a couple of early fights, some individual picks to someone like Kicks, and more importantly, you give him a rifle, and well, the round very quickly falls left. apart. A first on the board, financially not going to do too much damage to the side of Gentlemates, but more importantly, it is going to allow for that operator to come online. Runner's going to be purchasing that up. You can expect him to be challenging for a fair amount of map control. And at least in the early stages of this round, I'm seeing quite a bit of presence put in towards A. I think the majority of that is just because the tank wants an orb. Yeah, and we've seen this a couple of times. A cautious flash just in case to counter flash so there's no punish, no peek. And hopefully Runner would be deterred from going out into this angle, but he's not. A very nice kill from Runner. 
And that early default from Gentlemates already being poked at by Vitality. Round five, and they found the opening advantage. Some ults to fall back on on the defense as well. Yeah, this is the thing. You might have your own plans, your own ideas. Yeah. But Vitality aren't just going to sit there and let you execute them. Pressure put on Tedestrian. Spotted the players in towards the halls, and, well, the challenge is coming through. Safe even coming into support, but in the meantime, a couple of players heading in towards that B site. This is more of a bait. Takas with that ability to rotate back. He may not even need to. Just takes two fights individually and wins both of them. As said, though, the spike's still somewhat heading in the other direction, but they can wrap back if they need to. 30 seconds left. Runner still the one in a decent place, and I feel like the reliance here is going to be on Sender. Now, with Runner picking up one, it lightens the load, but yeah, Sender still has... A couple of big players walking his way. Logan can be dangerous, but a Phoenix still flash in hand for Natank and a lurk out for Whalers. If Sender falls, so this go, go through so many problems. Straight through he goes. Flash already. Sender's chance Ten now to stop it. Left. To completely win the round. Eight seconds. He just needs to drop that spike. In comes the updraft. In comes the spray. And they've saved the day. Vitality with a second. There were moments. That's the thing. Takas, he's been so explosive in this game so far, but it's just that late utility hold. And I think that's something that gentlemates are going to have to try and deal with early in this game, is you can't allow your opponent to have a snake bite with 15 seconds left on the clock. Like, it's just, he hasn't been pressured at all, so there's been no reason for Sender to actually use any of that utility. And you might be looking at him one and three, but realistically, he's one of the main reasons they won that round. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, nice. it's just a well-placed piece of utility that, that yeah. can ultimately lead to that success. You don't have to be fine on five kills. You don't got to be kicks three kills on a thrifty. Sometimes you just got to be patient. Do your job. Play your role. Vitality, one away. They fought again. It's somewhat of a half buy, but why? Three marshals <laughs> and a couple of guardians. Definitely an interesting bunch. It was a firing squad. They're like, you know what? Runner's going to peak this again. What if we're all waiting for him? They were right. But what if? Well, there's, there's not much to it. He's able to get out of there. Reset. He gives up some control. Well. My yeah, back up broke. to 100, right? Reset and all, all together. Gentlemates have gone elsewhere. This is the ideal scenario, I think, for Vitality. Just with the utility that's in play Take towards play. this B site, that drone is heard. That poison Orb goes up. Snake bite right after. Natonic's almost dead. This is perfect utility. And at this point, you're realizing there's two players, two very difficult players to break through their util on the B site. There's an op on A. Well, it's their choice where they go. There's no easy answer. Problem. Screen plays down. We'll section off quite a lot of control. Seconds left. Remove some information, but ultimately are, are doubling back to put the pressure onto Sender again. Rotation was beginning. You, you could see the safe started to move, but now they're going to go straight in towards. They've removed oh, at least one of the players and, of course, his utility. Safe's desperately low. This wall is not particularly going to keep him safe. Ten Just trying to hide left. back in a spot where he isn't going to go down, and they're waiting for the pings. It's an afterplant scenario. Weaponry definitely not the best, but gentlemates have a chance. Joke's over. They do, and they're aware of the flank as well. Watching for Destrian coming behind. This 17 HP won't find the advantage of a gun that's unaware while the tank is ulting forward just to hold that extra control and find the info. He's even spotted the player with the operator in hand. Knows exactly where Runner is. There's still time. They could play this. It's Destrian behind, I'm worried about. And he's actually caught Whalers. Cosmic Divide's isolating some of these players, but Natan just isn't giving up. He finds kill after kill, and it's enough to send Vitality running. Destrian didn't have anywhere to go. Nor does Runner. He's sticking around. He's looking for damage. And he'll make it out with some. Not bad. Yeah, well, not bad, but not great. I don't think they're going to be too happy with that They lost a lot for a half-assed attempt. <laughs> yeah. And also, well, realistically, on the other side of things, you just lost around to three marshals. I don't think you see that very often at all. But this is the difference. Gentlemates in that round, uh, literally the criticism I had, you allowed an opponent to have his snake bite until the very last few seconds. This time, although they take some damage, they get rid of it very early on. They start pressuring in, throwing the flashes, and then just moments later, go bursting into the site, and there isn't anything to delay anymore. Sender also being isolated in the tank, 
and Takas are just on fire. 18 kills between them and only six rounds is ridiculous. Well, I think Natank has actually matched. I, I can't see the opening Who's duel next? statistics. I'm using my memory here. It could just be the one, but he's certainly done just as well on kills as he did last time he played Phoenix. So it's only up from here. And frankly, it, it's a pretty steep climb and they're making it look oh. easy. Natank though, there's an you opening death. I may just have jinxed him. I, I'm so sorry, my uh -oh. friend. Uh oh. All right, Vitality of a chance, and the information is there now. Yeah, Plant will be coming in. Welcome to my world. Viper's pit used as well for the back of the site. They're patiently waiting. Runner has the chance to potentially remove Logan from action. Logan wary that there could be players coming in from behind. It's all going to come down to this fight in middle, and the shot not quite connected. This flank coming in as well is something that isn't really being watched for. Logan oh, has been fired by Spayers. Managed to find one, but this wraparound could be everything. It may not matter though. They're picking him apart, and, but it's almost too little too late. Say finally makes his way around the corner, and by that point, his whole team's gone. If Sander turned around there, he would have seen Takas at a point. They, they walked right past each other, but it's a Viper's pit, right? Welcome to her world. Bienvenue dans ma monde. And really nicely handled by Gentlemates to put five on the board. I mean, that attack side is looking so clean. And you have to look towards Takas and Natank. Just such irritating players to play against. Sure, in this round, Natank gets dropped early. Can you imagine if he was alive late into the round? You're flashing out of that old... It's just impossible to play against these guys. With both, yeah, double flash. One far, one close. It's, you know, he can't turn from one without seeing the other. And that's the thing, like, going into this map, I'm sure that there was definitely something that was thought about by Vitality. Like, could they play a Phoenix? They definitely probably play a Yoru. Like, I think that's such a common pick at this point. But it is just such a disruptive composition that even if you like manage to shut down the tank early it's not easy to move from there because straight away they're into the side the space has been taken and they're in that after plant and for vitality it only really seems to be round wins if they stop them getting there from the post plant it's been nigh on flawless from the side of gentle mains well you can see salah his words per minute have shot way up the stress may be kicking in. They need to find a solution, a pretty solid one, pretty soon. And I don't know how you handle this. Gentlemates have already shown their willingness to play slow, group up on angles, and watch for your pushes. Runner almost lost his life and his operator to that a couple rounds ago. And then when you sit back and wait, Gentlemates have been able to breach through that site. I think the only successful stop you really have is that Viper Cypher on B. Yeah. But if Gentlemates come out full swinging, challenging that again, I call into question whether you'll see the same result. Oh, they split across the map. I think it's also worth just quickly mentioning expectations. Team Vitality, they've invested. They brought in players like Safe. The expectations probably are masters. But gentlemen, they're the newly promoted team. This is an elimination match. One of them goes home. Whoa. And whoa. Takas with a little fake, but the fake actually ends up being his downfall. Yeah, he was ball banged through the decoy. That's a little unfortunate for him. The double kill. In a sense, pedestrian. He'll be happy. And Vitality are looking elsewhere. Shock darts through already. That's an attempt to break the close traps, but Vitality are a step ahead. They've put them further back, but look at this. Natank so wrapping forward. around the right side. There's no trap to cover it. It's wide open for him, and he seizes that space. Safe now trapped inside a cage. They know it. They've seen him in the corner. Even worse, as the wall bangs come through to finish him off. Sure, they blindsided Logan in the chaos, but even that wall of fire is keeping them out. At two versus three, an overpeak needed. For the side of Vitality, they want to see Gentlemate step into that crosshair of Runner. And then the wall goes up. And so there's just no way to find a free kill. Although the toxins must have been low. And the shoulder peaking hell. There Second is, earlier could have worked. still a Hunter's Fury, but I don't even know if Gentlemates want to use it at this stage. There. Just happy to sit back and just be irritating. Throwing out pieces of utility that will reveal their opponents. Ooh. Nice shot from Runner, though. Rifle found. Destry needs to get something, and he will. And it should be traded out, but not quite quick enough. Runner needs this kill. He's not going to get it. Bears with a clutch out once again. This man as the last man alive is devastating. And gentle mates continue to extend their lead. Yeah, I think Bayaz made the right call the second he realizes that the other player was close. Okay, I have two 1v1s. This is the best chance to win the round. And, well, he's done exactly that. That's so unlucky. Oh, man. The angle couldn't have been more perfect. I didn't see that the first time round either. The flash as the wall drops, it's just nasty. The, the funny thing is this round, I don't even feel like comes down to the sort of execution we've seen so far. A lot of it is just the balls on the tank. Like, he just, he flashed out. 
made it pretty clear that he could have gone through and then just walked. Just walked out of the site. None the wiser on the other side. Safe was literally reloading. Didn't have any idea that he could have been that far forward. And that sheer disrespect, I, I don't think most teams have that level of confidence. But that's the thing with these two duelists. They genuinely don't fear going down. I, I don't feel like they're criticized or punished by their team for taking these risks. That's what they want them to do, to be irritating. Over here. Already. Takas once again with the entry. Trade come back. Bear in mind it's a low buy, but this is a chance for him to farm up that dimensional drift once again. Bike planted. So much still to be done in this round, but with an afterplant and a 2v3, you kind of have to lean it Gentlemates way. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like I've seen this one before, Tom. You know, same post-plant setups from Gentlemates and just so confident in their not only individual ability, but team play, able to, first of all, they're spotting the angles for info. Once they find out where these players are, Grouped up, taking the fights together. They ask, ooh, he spotted him, but it's cost him his life. A little wide on the angle. Yeah. Takas has repositioned. Still has a gate crash to work with as well, so he can throw that out, give his position away, grab a kill, a fourth and a fifth. No, not this time. A chance for kicks. The time is low. The snake fight's on. He's losing health and he's rushed down. There was no way that was going to work out. Unless someone's headphones were unplugged. Sure, Whalers goes down to it, but look, gentlemates are seven to two in the lead. This attack side could not have gotten off to a better start. They had one little hiccup, and since then it's been plain sailing. Yeah, and this has been the main problem is this man. Uh, he is 15 and six. He is having an absolute field day, and it does just seem like, at least for now, the setups of Vitality are just not prepared to hold against someone that bold. It has been a fantastic performance. There's Beaz's mom in the crowd as well. Woo! What a way to kick this off. Certainly feeling proud seeing that scoreline. It's, it's the mum buff. That's what it is. Absolutely. Second time around. Volva back in the day, and he would have a way better game. That's it's the way it works. But yeah, that scoreline soaring for Gentlemates. Their lead is, well, secure for the half. The question is, how much more can they lead by when we move on to the next? Vitality, they still need to find those building blocks here on the defense. Their next half is going to be tough, but short. Who's next? Here we go again. Dimensional drift to lead the charge. Spike carrier is the tanks. Dead. Oh, is online, but he's also dead, so that's not going to cause them a problem. And they're going to use the Hunter's Fury just pinging in onto where the... Oh, I actually said the dodge is it. I thought he would be screwed. Safe wrapping back around. I don't know if the expectation will be there, but his sixth sense maybe helps him to back away from this angle. Now with... Seekers online, they could get that information. Cosmic Divide utilizes such a ratty little angle from Whalers, though. Needs to get more than one, and he does. A couple combined with the kill coming out of Logan. They've taken the advantage back. They most certainly have, despite the info swinging his way. Kick still has so much to do. Flash pop, swing good, but Logan on another two kills in this round. Huge impact on them as well. Catching the rotations through from A. And again, something he's known for understanding how that game breeds, reading the rotations, putting another round up for Gentlemates. And it was just a straight spam through the smoke that got Sander the first, but, well, once they, once they could see their opponents, it didn't go so well. I, I have never seen a team take more ridiculous and risky angles and then all pale. Like, Whalers is on the edge of a cage, just sat in the complete open if they push from spawn, and he gets two kills from that position. <laughs> I love how we just saw all the players, nice, yeah, and it goes to existence. Okay, we got another round, A2. Yeah, he's like, yep. a few more and we I, win, I, that's I, good. I saw this coming a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly as I expected. Well, this one hasn't gone according to plan. Takas loses an opening duel, this time to safe, shutting down that mid control for the side of Gentlemates as they quickly flee, give up all control, and now spread for a much slower round. But with Natanx still having his ult and a Viper's Pit to secure a site, this could get very scary Fire very man. quickly. Oh, the Bladestorm hasn't quite worked out, and the secondary weapon no isn't shot. the best. He's sticking around. <laughs> Not for long. I love the, I love the goal to just flash straight back up there. Now we're going to see the run it back. Interesting position. He's got to wait for the door to open to actually get through and try and find anything. For now, though, Logan has been able to find Sender. He went alone with the spike onto B. Just leave that for a second. Yep. Just. I mean, and now he might be alone for a second longer. <laughs> it's going to be Whalers on that wraparound. Does have a snake bite available. Also have a Viper's Pit if he can get to the spike, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. Logan already 
being cheeky. And the problem is now, they'll very quickly know where he is. He's going to try and get aggressive. Try and fight forward. He's going to get picked up. Destrian knows, but he still wins the fight. There's a trap in the pit. He can not step into that. I think he's hurt it at this point. Whalers must know. No. Great secure by Logan with another. And although he'll fall now, the fight through the pit is the real difficulty. And it ain't going to go back for Whalers. Lose. They can't lose. There's no way to cleave around out of this gentleman's squad's hands. Once they're on that site, it's over. Nine rounds so far. Vitality needs something. Mitch, Logan Jeez. walked into B on his own. <laughs> the, the rest of the team were fighting A. He goes, I've got this fight, guys. Don't worry, I've got this. I'm just going to go for a little jaunt. Catches his opponent and then just goes and plants and then just wins the round. He's 30 HP when he fights safe. Safe was a menace even versus Fnatic. And right now, they are being slaughtered. Nine and two. Rounds that for Vitality, well, at least some of them they shouldn't be losing. The gentlemen just seem to be winning every clutch. Every big kill goes their way. They are so far ahead at this stage. Well, the upside here is that the pit is down early for Vitality, so the map's a little easier to defend, especially with a trap in the choke point. You're realistically talking about a mid-split of some sort, regardless of where you want to go. Option to bypass Sander, move into back B is always there, but... Yeah, I, the A site, definitely not the one you want to move towards with Runner still lurking around, but with how easy it's looked for Gentlemate so far, they have their pick. The idea to send Takas out isn't bad, but such a passive round for Vitality, just using their traps and their util on B to lock it. Safe's not going to peek that, is he? No, he's not going to peek that. Oh, he is. Almost gets the kill. I, I, Feel like that was a, a so little bit of fear striking. I don't know. I, I think normally he gets that one. Destrian timing is sublime. It's almost perfect. He has to try and work out which one is the decoy. He's so quick. He gets the kill of the Whalers attackers, as you said. Too quick on the reaction. They know left. there's a man within this. Senders on the other side. This is a very risky peek from the tank. Unable to clear him out. Has found the information. There should be a trade, and Bears is there to find it. Now the afterplant is secure. Look at where I know Takas exactly is. Planted. And the distraction's gonna be there with Logan popping the hat, making the noise. You know there's a player on site. Now you know there's one in the spawn too, but well, it doesn't get any easier to deal with. Guess who's behind you, by the way? Because once again, <laughs> lurking through middle is Logan. He keeps getting away with this, and it's not okay. Certainly not if you're a Vitality fan. Two rounds at the half. This is going to have to be one of the best attack sides we've seen. And for Gentlemates, they can pull out a lot of stuff you're not expecting. They've got Takas, they've got Natank. These agents are a little crazy, considering the Yoru and the Phoenix and all the things they've been doing with it. How are Vitality going to replicate putting Gentlemates on the back foot in the same way? I just can't see that. I, I also don't think, just even like being a scoreboard warrior for a second. Go for it. Safe and sender, three and four kills apiece. A lot. lot of the rounds that we have seen from this attack side have been running directly into their setup. A setup that has stuff to make you vulnerable, stuff to reveal you, stuff to catch you out. And not every time it's been like the Euro TP and bar. Sometimes they have just walked through it. And that has been enough to win them rounds. Vitality seems okay. flustered. Spike down A. And Takas, well, he is getting ready to potentially fight versus the entire squad. Look, he's going back for another peek. He has a game they, they have been pinged. He knows they are there. But that is how confident this man is right now. He could have TP'd to B, reset, you know, taking a breath. But no, That's he wants to stay out. aggressive. <laughs> I got one opening kill. Give me a second one. But for gentlemates, they're happy now. Five versus four, bunkered down on this A site. And there are two on site. One towards the doors and one even in the spawn. I mean, such a heavy stack from this side, even as we see Bayaz slowly rotate away to cover that too. Vitality of so many players to deal with on the way through. Natanko oh. already shredding them! Insult to injury as gentlemates win another pistol round, not just cleanly, but an Andalusia flawless to put it 11 to two. That has to be one of the last nails to enter Vitality's coffin. You never want to play them twice. You never, ever want to play this team twice. The first time around, it's like their warm-up. This is looking like a completely different beast. I'm sure Vitality came into the day just like business as usual. We've got two of the three same maps in this series. They've got to pray that they wake up in the next one because 
I'll be honest, unless miracles happen in this one, it's already He's done. Uh, ever since 2020, Logan and Takas, they're just, they're scary guys when you play them that second time. Takas does not let it go. He doesn't like losing. Well, bear in mind, around that time, where was the tank playing? He's on the other team. He's learned. <laughs> He's learned, isn't he? The back for a little bit of revenge. Nice shot from Runner, though. An awakening of sorts. He could potentially do a little bit of damage here. The Outlaw strikes back, though, with Sender falling still. Making this one very costly. A competitive round, which I'll be honest, it's not something I've said much throughout this map thus far. And after plant position, a Vitality have a chance. They found rifles as well, Mitch. They have a chance, but Takas also has an outlaw. And I, I am actually very afraid of this man with that weapon, not just because it's strong, but because of what he's up against. All those players are one hit to it. It's an off, essentially. He's running around with a ghost in hand. Not currently finding anyone or any opportunities. Whalers, though, does pick up Runner. Here we go. Attempt to flash up close. He's swinging on it, but it was a little late. If it had to went out at first, who knows? Nice a good round. reaction by Destrian and safe. They're back on the board, but this has been it. They, in the last half, they found two in a row, a little boost, and then they were right back out of here. Number one Venezuelan Gentlemates fan. That's quite a trip. I respect it. I respect it. That is a long way to go. At least they're not letting them down. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they, that is true. Come all this way true. for like a 13-7 or something. It wouldn't be great, but they're putting on a show. Well, a lifeline, at least for Vitality. Something to play with. Runner still feeling it. Even if it's just a confidence booster for the next map. Because I'm not sure there's going to be any breaks on the Gentlemates train. For now, though, they don't have much to play with. Logan with a Sheriff. That's what... Feels Mitch's nightmares. Yeah, I've seen this one before. He's not a 1v4 yet. So. That's the thing. Yeah, he needs the rest of his teammates to die, but take one player with him, and then then it's on. It's the wrong map for it. It's the wrong map for it. It's never the wrong map. <laughs> <laughs> the nightmares are still there. <laughs> but these guys, I mean, it is like, you're talking about Alliance back in the day, but Wild have learned that lesson. MDR learned it. Apex certainly learned it. Ascend. Ascend, yeah, you can add a lot, we can, can, a lot we of big can keep names. going. <laughs> you don't play these guys twice, and this is why. And then keep in your mind, the next map up is Lotus, the map that Gentlemates picked last time, yeah. lost badly. Do you think they're coming in with the same ideas? Because I sure as hell don't. It's going to be tough. Oh, nice flash as well by Natak. The damage is massive. Of course, it's all pistols backing them up, but it could be a 1v4 for Logan. The Whalers goes down. <laughs> Unfortunately, Wales was still alive, so it wasn't quite possible. Destrian is going to be able to get another kill. Now, it, it's a long road back, but if, if Vitality were going to do it anywhere, it would be on this attack side. I think that's where you do see some vulnerabilities within the Gentleman's composition. I don't think the fans of uh, Gentlemates believe there's anything to worry about just yet. Well, <laughs> at 11 to 4, Tom, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. Definitely feels like the hands are firmly still on the reins. Just a good tug, and they'll be right back in the right direction for Gentlemate. Uh, you know, Natank, he's been okay so far, and he's okay. got his ultimate. I would be a little okay. bit on, fearful if I was on the other side and heard that ult. Come on, let's go. He's on his way, and he knows that Saves trying to avoid him. There's no escape from the tongue today. Blocking vision, recovering. Yeah, that's not the play you want going down as well. You almost have to pick up the pace if you're on the Vitality side because your flank watch is down, but they're running into Cypher Utility on the other side of things. Logan well positioned. They haven't really been able to bypass it. It's perfectly placed, and it is revealing the player on site. Here. He knows exactly where he is and will deny the plant. Nobody has checked that back corner. Taka still just causing issues. The flash is perfect as well. Styling on them. Kicks still trying his best to hold strong. Doesn't really have any support. Destrian's outside the site and will land a shot. But Takas is there to immediately trade. 12 and 8, one away from one of the most dominant maps we've seen so far this tournament. And it is impressive. It, even the trigger discipline on Takas, who I wouldn't blame him if he swung through that wall to fight every single one of them the way he's been playing so far. But he waits. Did he it lets them. He did, didn't he? And it worked. <laughs> but they, they, he waits here. So they think, okay, it, we've caused a rotation. They've left. They've gone to the other side. Otherwise, he would have killed me when I was in that trap for like 10 seconds. Why wouldn't he have? Well, this is why. So he can catch you unaware and allow his teammates to rotate in, blitz on the back of it. I, ju I love the way this team plays. 12 to 4 and 8 chances for Gentlemates to close out this map.
onto their map pick from the previous series next time. It ain't looking good. It's been a good map for Vitality, but I'll be honest, Keep this speaking. is not the way I expected this to go. Expectations on them have been high, and maybe at crunch time for some pressure is like a drug for others. It hinders, and right now it's looking like a hindrance for Vitality. Whaler's still on the site, but he's about to be revealed. The flash again is so damn good! They just can't stop Takas! And they know exactly where Whaler's is. Finally, he's been dealt with. He's left all onto the tank. One versus one. He's going on a rotation. Sender is watching for him, waiting to see if there's anything to be had. He's going a long way around. I don't know if he's got the expectation that he's going to wrap around maybe the wrong read from the tank this time. But even still, if he goes all the way around the map, this is going to be a nasty surprise. Now, he hasn't heard or seen anything. In that time, Sender has spent so left. much just to try and get this spike down and still has absolutely no idea where his opponent is going to be coming from. Now the tank goes running all the way through the spawn. The longest possible rotation. The only question is, does the question finally hit Sender's mind? Does he think, okay, this has been too long without a sighting. Could this man be behind me? He seems to be worried about... Oh, that flash has given it away. Actually, the element of surprise completely gone. Sender knows, but does he think it's a fake? No, he's just wrapping around. It's half-touched already. Nataka round, and he's got it! There is no foot <laughs> they can place wrong. No mistake Defender for gentlemen in this matchup. 13 to 4. The French takeover. We are expecting to go the distance. But I'm not sure I agree anymore. Vitality barely got started. They need a serious talk. They've been rocked in this game. Takas and the tank have led the way throughout this one. An unstoppable force in this first map and Vitality need to recover. We'll be back after the break to see if they can. place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Dolor de Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Test. I know I'm doing better than the rest. Got a smile on my face, showing teeth for the crest. 
it's no sweat, I'm a vibe in my own right. Go time in the sun, yes, I'm gon' shine. So fine, got the Betty on my phone line. Feeling good, feeling great, chasing these good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes. Soul on that beat, I'm ready to feast. Margaritas with some divas, I'm pouring the drinks. I'm living life to the fullest, the blessings in me. Don't really care what you say, whatever you think. Nah, unequivocal miracles with the lyrical. With the homies trying to pop like the cereal. Lucky charms, got a model on my arm. Go watch on my wrist, garlic parm. No alarm, fireworks, I can feel it in the sky. I got love in my eyes, but this money on my mind. I see passion and pride, I despise all the lies. I've been around the world, so I'm down for the ride. Mm. Good drinks, good people, and good times. Fast cars, pretty women on Facebook. Time, more money, more fun in my life. I'm just chasing my shots with good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply. Oh, that is the gentlemates we know and love. They start out strong here uh, by taking a map against Team Vitality. As you guys can see, Natank with the Aim Lab warm up. I mean, it's a good thing that he did warm up because uh, Kakuka yes. uh, Lothar, what a map that was uh, for him. You can see why that, that now that they lean so much into that Phoenix. Yeah, exactly. And we, you know, we had, of course, a lot of questions once, once we saw the Yoru and the Phoenix coming in. Of course, we saw them uh, the other day, but especially the way that they were using the Euro Ultimates to create distractions, to create pressure, to gain all that space. And the way they were comboing, actually, uh, with the Phoenix that doesn't have that much mobility, it was 100% success rate in all of the rounds uh, that they, they were using it. And not only that, this is the gentlemen that is playing in the zone. They won every single one of the clutches that they had here. In general, their performance was insane, but what I like is that they catch it. They're, like, trying to show their identity. They're having the Yoru and the Phoenix together. Mm -hmm. Plays it perfectly when it comes Touches. to the ultimate like cycle, uh, cycle as well, because we have either a Yoru ultimate, which drones and gives the information and allows the pinches to be happening, like in the, sh in the clip that you showed. But also, when there's no Yoru ultimate, then there's the Phoenix ultimate, mm -hmm. which is very similar and allows to create pressure as well. The way that they were finding space around the map, and not only with the ultimates, also playing around the, the Viper walls, and, and the way that they were communicating with each other every scene, seem to be in place for them. Mm -hmm. And also remember that there are some insane performances happening. Takas, 26 kills on the Yoru, 250 damage per round. That is absolutely insane. Well, here's the thing. We've seen the Phoenix before. I think that was the reason that people kind of felt like, oh, not super commands. Why are they doing this? Uh, on Lotus, Lotus, Lothar is map two. Do you think it will be a good idea for them to reprise that Phoenix and go for it again? In my mind, I, whenever I think about Natang, he's a Phoenix man, you know? But then you Makes look sense. at his stats, he played it only eight times in officials. But it feels like it fits him. He has better performance, typically has an average of 120 ADR, but on Phoenix, he's 145. So there's a difference in performance for him as well. So I think for Lotus, picking the agents that are comfortable for the players playing them is an important factor. 
I mean, I wouldn't be surprised also if we see maybe that small adjustment and bringing in also the Euro into Lotus, especially because now Existence will have all the uh, uh, both the, the bots from Vitality. And we know all of those papers are not a meme. He actually takes anti striding very, very seriously. Do we, well, what do you think is on those uh, pages, Lothar? If it was you, what, do you be, what, what would you be writing down? Shopping list. There's a lot of on that tapes that you can learn from. First and foremost, you need to understand what was, for, for gentlemen, of course, what was successful for them. And successful for Lotus when it comes to attacking was just pushing five men A. That was the only rounds when they had any success. That was a three rounds when they played against Vitality and nothing else was actually working. Why wasn't it working? Because Vitality was taking aggressive space. We have seen Vitality taking space on pistol round on C mount. We have seen them uh, do the same then on, on, um, on A on the rounds when they had a lower buy and those are the rounds where gentlemen's kind of lost ground and i feel like having either a consistent plan on five and pushing or resorting to a better default is the plan for uh gentlemen's right now well this is a rematch of a map that they played already as well we're gonna see the agents select very very soon to see if there are any uh, changes but on the other side kakuka yes. vitality they looked great on lotus against Fnatic. Mm -hmm. they probably should have won that map yeah, exactly. I think that Save had a brilliant performance, even though, you know, his utility was off sometimes. Uh, definitely needs a bit more reps on the Omen just to feel comfortable because we know that he is a great player. But of course, we also need to mention this is elimination. Of course, you won that one time, but after playing against Fnatic, after having that loss, the fact that Vitality has decided to pick this map has to mean that they have fixed everything around it. Uh, well, I no, was... you're over. They are sticking with the Phoenix. Yeah, I, I was uh, wondering if we're going to see Safe actually on a Sentinel because we have seen some missed one ways as well for him yeah. in the previous match, which was actually important. But back to Gentlemates, they're keeping what they had before. It's, I think it's going to work. This is a very aggressive lineup that I think if they were taking the lessons from um, existence, it should work well. And also, we need to think that changing compositions in such a short tournament, either it was prepared before, like having two options, or you have to iron out everything that went wrong and actually work with where you already have. Well, I hope, uh, gentlemen, though, those papers that existence has uh, might come in clutch for Vitality, Mitch and Tom. They have to win here if they want to keep their Madrid dreams alive. Well, this is where things get interesting. Vitality and Gentlemates, as you said, Sue, Vitality need a win to keep the dream alive. They need to do it on this map and the next. Maps where they've already played against Gentlemates. We talk about how strong they can be in a rematch. Well, the last map was fresh ideas, was coming in with blank slates, and they looked miles ahead. Now, this is where they've lost already. Gentlemates yep. will be looking back at that series going, we need to fix all of those issues. Let's see what iteration two of Lotus looks like for this French squad. As we see the other French squad on the defense, get a little bit aggressive, Tom. Runner wants to get aggro in mid. They've got a smoke down, a lot of control being seized early on, and on C as well. It's attack side star. This is where you do feel like this comp had its real lease of life. Like, Gentlemates did make a decent well, attempt when it comes to their attacking side don't really have the expectations on the other, but similarly to the last map, if you start blitzing your opponent, it may not matter too much. Already though, some aggressive utility placed. This will give the information over to Destrian. And obviously the one thing I will say is, I don't think Existence has probably slept since their last defeat. I also want to say, mm. Gentlemates Classic might be my favorite. It is, it is dope. I don't know if we could switch back to showing it. It might be a bad time to do it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a dope classic. It's actually very nice. Sleek, good no, color scheme. I'm not kidding. I'm not doing this for They paid you for this, though. No, I genuinely really like it. <laughs> it's a cool classic. 30 seconds left. Oh, liquid one on at home. Well, a quick play by Natank, and no surprise to anybody, that's an opening duel for Natank. He's, he's really not happy about his last performance on Phoenix, and he's already off to a flying start. But unsurprisingly, despite a lot of presence on C, kills being found there, there was an immediate refrag on A and a push through to plant. Gentlemates, five versus three, miles ahead, time on their side, utility to work with, still a nade on Takas, but he's doing it with his pistol. And they came close to another Andalusia flawless. Instead, it's gonna be kicks to fall. After just one kill. You just enjoy saying it now, don't you? I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm hitting my rhythm. Once we get it's, to it's, Madrid, I'm going to be you, told. You just no. like that little bit of extra so Spanish wrong. flair you get to throw in there, yeah, isn't it? That's know. what it is. Okay. We need a French city to sponsor. Well, here we go. 
One to zero. Pally flawless. Gentle mates have got off to a good start. And this is the thing that's terrifying is it, it stops being about the strategies. It stops being about even just individuals. It's more about mentality at this stage because I feel like gentle mates, when they get into elimination matches, they get into crunch time, the mentality skyrockets. They have the leadership, they have the players, they have the synergy. I'm, uh, Vitality's a brand new team. They still have a stand-in. Do they have the ability to reset after getting wrecked by a Yoru and a Phoenix? And then seeing that Phoenix again yeah. here. And now Takas, right? He might not be on the Yoru. The gate crashes, the rotations. He can't be as wild as before. Uh, he'll be a different kind of wild. He can be as wild. <laughs> he definitely can. He's, okay. I guarantee he's going to blast pack shorty someone in this game. <laughs> oh, fair. Oh, Sander talking to the shorty. He's up close and he's got a double. One with each barrel. That's good damage. And again, the, you fall back to Vitaly not having a lot to work with. But maybe if they group up, they can chip away at these weapons and make yeah. it a manageable scenario. That's the thing. It's one kill. And you have to bear in mind, they actually invested into the rifles on every single player. There is Grouping. nobody that has spare cash. Aggressive positioning might not be expected. Good flash! In fact, Runner's got both! That's a huge couple of kills. Now it's left all onto Logan. I don't even know how he goes about winning this. I think it just has to be a save. A huge response from Vitality already managing to get themselves back onto the board, and that might just be the confidence boost that they need. Yeah, that's a massive flash coming out of kicks. Uh, that made it so awkward for those players to fight. Sent the first swinging around the corner. Whalers can't win the duel, and then it's easily taken down. I mean, the fact that Runner gets both is unfortunate in a number of senses. First of all, the second guy doesn't get an extra chance to do anything, kill someone. But add to that, he's now three away from a showstopper, building up those orbs. It was a right click as well to take that guy. That's so unfortunate for the gentlemate side, but Send this is the... <laughs> that was after the <laughs> double shorty. This is the lifeline that Vitality very much needed coming into this. Resetting, they've negated the pistol round, but they Not haven't sent gentlemates to an eco. There is still money there, and they're putting it all on the line. Oh. Already blast back in a round. This is a quick move towards the door. I don't know if this will be expected, especially with the Molotov there. now. They should have a decent idea. Spike yet to be planted. It's actually because of where the defenders have managed to get to. They are sat in a flank spot behind yeah. where you'd ideally like to plant. So I wonder if this is going to be a moment where gentlemates either sit tight, hope that somebody makes a mistake, they're not low on time, or if potentially they're going to try and re-aggress somewhere else. I think they've seen that something was oh. off, and now they know it is. Runner and safe, quick on the kills. That judge of Whalers has been spotted shoulder peeking. They know he's there. They shouldn't be running into him. Well, that said, he's run into them. The reload's on, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think the whole idea there, you saw them go into that connector and play up close. Takas and Whalers. Takas was anti-flash. Whalers had the judge, so he could swing, maybe get a kill, and Takas could at least trade and keep the numbers to them. You really just expect Vitality to try to retake some control somewhere, uh, but they were very, very patient on that defensive side. Yeah, and then something to mention as well is this is going to give the biggest boost possible to Vitality's economy. They get to come out with, what, four guns in the last round. Yep. They keep pretty much everybody in this round as well, other than the one player going down to the judge. Whoops. Interesting. And yeah, it means that now they're coming up against what is sort of an eco. You've got Logan buying up with a, a rifle, but you, they could realistically have most players close to max cash. Smoke cross on A, just to delay. Looks like there's a lot of presence on C, and safe is falling back. The wise move. How many players were set to come swinging around, especially against pistols? It's not really worth hiding in those little corners, because once you take that first player down, even if you take a second, that trade is worthwhile, and they'll get a rifle for sure. I like the idea to fall back. It's only Logan. So I've heard myself say that and realized it's not, a, not an easy thing to say. Only Logan. But he's the only one with a rifle. So chances very low with some pistols in play for the rest of the squad. Sheriff's in hand as they look for control of A. Much slower round. This is all based around Vitality, hopefully over rotating or making mistakes, getting aggressive. As they rotate back, they'd catch them. But uh, well, as we can see, again, very patient for Vitality. And this tree hold from Sender is, is something that I'm sure will give Gentlemates nightmares. He was so good at putting snake buys down at the opportune moment moment even, and just making things awkward. Destrian patient watching 30 seconds for the aggression, left. and now they're running out of time. 
They have They're to make a decision. Doors. They could go back towards the B site, but this is already going to have some control there. Rotation available. Kix has just gone down with a wall bang, but Spike more so, Destrian's One there patiently waiting. And although there'll be a couple of kills, it's still a relatively clean round for Vitality. Much, much better from the Vitality squad. Three to one. They don't lose any real, uh, or lose a lot of players, I should say. The gentlemates. You don't have that lurk from Logan catching them off. I mean, so many boxes being ticked that we'd seen before. Spray from Destrians. I don't. I don't want to call it lucky. I mean, he knows when they're coming out. He knows the angle they're on. He's playing his odds, and it certainly worked out. Three to one. This is where gentlemates fight back, though. And although we mentioned the showstopper of Runner being farmed up early, Takas has done well to find his. So those light shields all around. They've got plenty of ability to duel still. Careful now. Sure ready. Runner looking to try and take away the space. If we've learned from the last map anything, it's that if you allow gentlemates to execute, they're always going to be deadly. I think Logan has spotted the aggressive position. It does kind of mean that he's trapped. He can't really rotate around with the rest of the team. I assume that maybe there's going to be a stun out from Bayaz just to try and force. Runner off that angle, or maybe they're going to try and fight this one together. He's just going to peek! <laughs> what? That's next level confidence from the IGL. That's so disrespectful. I can't believe he's done that. Well, gentlemates have found themselves in a very pretty <laughs> position because of that. A five versus four. But, Tom, take a look at the map. Look at how many players are over here on that A side. So many for Vitality. So many targets, though. That's what Takas thinks. Straight on the kicks. The first is found. Tree is theirs. And the others are on the back of sight. Uh -oh. Sender, in fact, is trapped. He's going to have to try to time his jump, and he doesn't get it right. Bayaz and Takas both finding one. And that leaves Destrian with a few tags as well. He's down to 19 HP and not feeling his chances of stopping this flawless round from Gentlemates. Instead, he's going to be hiding away to save the rifle. And with so much time, even if he runs to C, they could definitely go and catch him. Instead, it's long. I think Logan just saw the op was still on the floor and then crossed the angle. So actually very decent timing for Destrian. Star is still online. So him wrapping round behind him is unlikely. Is there a flash? There isn't a flash on the tank. So if he was going to actually fight for this, it would just be a dry peak. Destrian now trying to take a little bit of space. Timing Whoa. doesn't look great and the tank instantaneous. And Andalusia flawless for gentlemates to get back on the board. But I will say some of the fights that they're taking Utterly disrespectful. I, I genuinely cannot believe that Bayaz knew there was an operator there and then went, I'll take him. They, On a breach. They just won a map 13 to 4. I mean, the first couple rounds here, <laughs> you can't be too surprised that there is a lot of confidence on display. It's more the fact that it's working out for them. The punishes aren't always there on the other side. And from Vitality, you, you can't allow them to get away with something like that. Flawless. Andalusia flashing. Blinded. We'll see what they can do on this defense with rifles up yet again. Credit's right. still in the back pocket. Showstopper to work with. And a lot of ults decently far away. Three coming in. They might get one more, but gentlemates have a lot more to work with Come with the tank. There it is. Already used up to clear the space to push through the utility. And it's destroyed most destroyed. of their beeholds. Vitality have to commit a player to that behold or leave it wide open and let gentlemates walk through. Oh, this is pacing. There is pressure there. Already paranoia going through. That's going to leave the rotation not really available to help out. And because of that, they've had to back off. Bear in mind, showstopper available for the retake. So that's why we're watching the Vitality side group up. They're going aggressive. Sender completely unaware that they might push this. An easy kill on a man not paying attention. The boombox blind, but nobody else. And now that showstopper through actually catches Bayers on the back lines. Gives the advantage back over to Vitality. Paranoia leaving a player on the other side blind, but only for a second. Taka still here, and a quick One shot in range. combination with Whalers, who just takes out everybody else. Gentlemates level up the scoreline once again, and it is a fierce fight on the C site. Tying up that scoreline. <laughs> oh, Tom, you're not standing for that. Leave the ball this below. Is a, this isn't sensei. Now, tying up the scoreline in this fashion, you know, I, I kind of understand. Sander doesn't want his barrel to be seen, right? So he's tucked in against the wall, but 
usually you're going to have that extra player covering you, and I think they, they were slightly spaced out uh, a little bit too much. But obviously, that's just due to gentlemen. It's the way they're pu pushing and pulling this map. Fast B, ult used. They seize the space and then straight through the door to C. Just leaving Vitality on the back foot a little bit. They're not having those rotates in. It's not a slower approach. Much more punchy from this squad. Now, Logan was spotted by the flash. Paranoid up and nice. wall bang. There's not much he could do about that one. Quick punish from Vitality. But what's Gentlemate's response? Because they've seen oh, they're three a little scared. <laughs> they're a little scared of Sender after the shorty play. They haven't gone pushing through. That, that's the thing. There was an opening, but he's genuinely got in the back of their heads. You're not going to make the same mistake twice, are you? I like the deep nade here. That's going to give them control to pop the plant, but the spike is a little far behind. Oh, they has 12 HP. Him. Don't want to get spammed on the way through, so the tank's taking the fight, but back they go. Back through the door, a flash used to cover their back as the A site will be seized. Destrian's close by, but not close enough. He can slow them down a second, reposition up top, but a battle will be on his hands, and he doesn't want to give that advantage away. Instead, waiting for kicks, waiting for safe. And just a little further behind, runner covering their back. This will be a three-man, oh no, a four-man play through heaven. Everybody challenging Whalers, he lost it before. This was a tough angle against the pistols. And again, runner will open the space, blast packing through while Destrian trades. Bay has to be rooted out, and with low HP, he didn't stand a chance. Takas though, 72, but he only needs one bullet to the head to take them down. And the first is found successfully. The second, oh, it comes close, but safe baits him well with a quick tap on the AD keys. Four rounds now for Vitality. The lead will be held for a little bit longer. Yeah, I, I really like that round from Vitality. I think that, again, it's the same scenario I mentioned before where if you allow this gentleman side to actually get their executions off, they're really deadly, but instead they're being disruptive. An aggressive C push to remove out the lurker, it forces this gentleman side to react, but even just because of the doubts held by Sender being in the tree nice. position, they weren't able to take that space so quickly and the split back was expected. A good round from Vitality, a great response. And now, well, with the finances of Gentlemate somewhat on the brink, they're not in too bad a position. They're gonna take their time to make sure that they don't let this one slip away. Because as we saw already mentioned with this composition, the expectations are there on the attack, on the defense. They're going to have to be very aggressive, have to be very proactive. And that's something that Vitality will be prepared for. coming into this game is always going to be a big conversation as well. You know, Vitality can be prepared for what Gentlemates bring here and, and maybe even on Sunset as well. It's going to develop as time goes on. I think that defensive side where Gentlemates have the better chance of putting them on the back foot, catching them off guard, and the tank's defensive aggression is going to be a lot to deal with. We've seen how Takas can take over control of A-Main alongside Whalers, keep that control out of their hands. What we haven't seen so far, we did see previously, I think, from, if I'm not mistaken, Sanders was an Odin, Tom. And I'm actually seeing on the server. Kix is running around with one. I don't know if he's going to keep it, but I hope he does. Of course you do. Sky Odin. <laughs> it's new. I like it. Wait, it could just be a change up of maybe trying to fake who's on what side of the map. Because as I said, they've already seen each other playing. So just try a bit of a ruse. I mean, the idea, like, I love I love the idea of, bring, of bringing this into play, right? The fact that you have this Odin to work with means that while your yeah. teammates are taking this challenge that you've consistently had a problem with around this angle, your Odin can keep on spraying through these walls, trying to take down Natank, for example, where he is right now, but he's already a little closer than they expect. The paranoia goes in, but Natank's able to fight close. The sprays are a little shallow because that player had already pushed up. He's too quick in taking the space, too disrespectful for this yeah. strategy to work without more information. And I don't know how much more they could possibly want. The pace of Gentlemates causing them issues once again. That's safe, gone. And look at the rotation. Four players are now on that right side of the map. Like you could literally almost split it directly down the middle. And they are all over on that other side. Like it just leaves the seaside completely clear if they were to go in that direction. Now they did have the little bit of early information from the turret, but that's already been destroyed. Now we see the full sprint back. In the meantime though, that rolling thunder is available. Lockdown being placed. Are they gonna push this? I, I wonder if they're gonna try and attempt to. They can plant at the back lines, which is what they're gonna do. The nade over the top might... No, actually, I think that bounced back. It didn't even reach. In a rolling thunder backup as well, as we've just seen primed and ready from Bayaz is massive. Playing into this side is going to be tough. I think that he might get all of them. 
and he's going to right now if he clicks it and he has one, two, three, four. They're all hit by it. They're all stunned. And two are gunned. That seems to be Gentlemates with the round in the bag. Five versus two. And a quick trade on the tank. The stun even came through, so there was nowhere to go. We are looking at textbook Valorant from this attacking side. And I think you really, the players are playing it perfectly. You have to give so much credit to existence as well. I think we're seeing that experience from such a long time competing within FPS. And, and it, the value being brought is immeasurable, I think. Yeah, I, I think the second he turned to coaching, he was one of the hottest properties in all of Valorant. I, I don't think anybody who knew anything about FPS had heard of existence somewhat in the past. The thing I'm really impressed with, though, and I think someone we're maybe not hyping up enough is Bayaz. And I, I feel like the combinations he has alongside Takas and the tank are disgusting, especially on his breach. Even in the games they lost, you can see the thought process. And you go back to his server plays, look at the amount of times that there was a pot flash, but the player was also getting like scanned by his server utility. He's playing a great game while also calling. Four to four. Still, though, I, I feel like we're talking a lot about gentlemen, but Vitality are in no stretch slacking on this map thus far. The early breakback has helped them out significantly. And they've definitely shown that they have some Here. reactions to what gentlemates are cooking up. Joke's over! You're dead! Got a good read here again, Mitch. Three players within this A site, and even gonna use a Viper Spear oh. very early on. Dangerous when you've still got that Phoenix running around. I mean, he, he will straight up run and gun to try and take you down, but if he's moving towards the spawn instead, so the pit will be safe. The problem is the pit does not deny the plant. It doesn't let you get back up close. All it does is stop their aggression and give you control oh, that you often have. Oh, no. Anyway, Two through the pit, one was sender. That damage is massive because now that control is gone. The tank, he used his ultimate. He's almost got it back halfway there. And Vitality's hopes seem to be living on a prayer. It's not answered. They're left alone in this two versus five. Not a kill to their name. And it might just be, no, it's not flawless. It comes so close. Five HP, all that kick survives by. I'm not sure he's going to survive. <laughs> Running for his life. No one's challenging. And just about a little too shy. A little too shallow. Five to four. The lead now for Gentlemates. And they are looking so good. What do you what do you do? I'm, I'm sorry. The to first wonder. he's at least he shot. The second? I mean center yeah. had fired one bullet through. I'm genuinely starting to wonder if just before the matches, like existence just gets really close and he goes, attack if you lose this game, you're out. And then he just goes nuclear. Because the difference between this, like, he was good in their last series, but his Phoenix was rough, Phoenix I think, on this bad. map. Yeah. He's already done more. He's already just blitzing opposition. He's got the same amount of kills as he did last time, right now. Yeah. I'm nine rounds in. Nine rounds. Going and the round impact ten. absolutely massive. There we go. Already bested himself. Another flash, another kill. Double entries on the way through. Triple. He used his old last he round. And he has stop. it again. Ridiculous. Running it back. I feel like they, I'm having deja vu. I've seen this round before. <laughs> the tank just shredding them. Takas on another. And another chance for an Andalusia. Flawless. Improbably good. This roster just keeps doing it. Raising the bar. Far exceeding expectations. And now an Andalusia flawless gives them a two round lead. Their attack side on Lotus looking a little bit better. They've already beaten their score from last time. It's five rounds on the attack. And, and the worrying thing as well is if you remove the fact that round two, they lost to an eco. Round yes. three, they forced. Round four, they ecoed. So other than that, it's 5-1. Yeah. In terms of buy rounds, in terms of rounds that matter, in terms of rounds where you've got those ultimates, yeah. Gentlemates are winning the vast majority. I like the idea. Sender's always one to pull very, this out. Very little amount of damage. And that's the thing. I, I feel like Sender is the one that yeah, has, has actually had the sort of lineups. He does well to combine his snake bites. I will say, he's playing a much more passive position. Bear in mind, last time out in this exact matchup, he was playing around Tree. And you can see that they are forcing him back. Now, in this case, a lockdown. There's not really good ground that he can hold on to with that all men play. And he's just going to try and do damage as they enter into the site. You should run. Good idea. You saw the utility gentlemates put in towards Tree, so he would have been in a, a lot of hot water. 
if they had committed that attacker lockdown in play, pushed through, attempted oh damage done, but not followed through on. Logan goes uh -oh. down. And yeah, okay, runner's gonna get detained. It's fine. Buys them a couple of seconds. That's exactly it. A couple of seconds bought that ultimately just resets you to getting that spike plant. Takas has his showstopper though. Seekers might give them away, but there's also Sander, yeah. nice. the ult coming out from the tank as well. They have so much available to them straight away. There's the first. They're holding on to what they've got from Takas. He's just spamming away, but can fall back into his position once again. Takas looking to potentially cause havoc here within that smoke. And now somebody is on it, but the tank again goes through. Still, the trades from Vitality are good, but they are denying them from getting onto this spike. Still struggling. Now Whalers will go across as a distraction. The showstopper is just used to buy time. He's just gonna shoot it at the very last second. If anybody even tries to get onto that spike, it's just not possible. The time is gone. Gentlemates will fall, but the spike does the work for them. A win's a win in their book. They've certainly got the credits to throw away, Tom. The Gentlemates squad, eight to nine K is what we're looking at for most of these players coming out of that round. And there's only one left to play for. This is far from a win. And Vitality's booking. Destrian even got hunted down when the tank kills him. He's already 25 HP. And that was from when the tank was full blinded and just swinging left to right, left to yeah. right. And he still manages to tag him up massively. Again, playing the numbers game in that sense. Potential eight to four at the half. Gentlemates, well, they haven't got the ultimates to work with, but neither do the opponents. Only really the showstopper for runner. I don't feel like we've seen any serious impact from a showstopper in a couple games. It's been kind of slower for the Rays players. We'll see if Runner can break that curse. Oh, the last round at least was a, a lot of time ball. By that showstopper at the end. Stun will push Destrian back. Again, Bears' his utility causing them issues. I love how it's the last round. They're still looking to try and get <laughs> that run it back online. He's he's got four ults away, four points away at the beginning of the round. They're like, I still believe, I still believe they can get it. Three players already. You can see the early gambles coming in from Vitality. An aggressive position from Saint. Been a bit quieter thus far. He's going to TP outside, spot out in the tank, still lurking, but didn't see the rest of the team. He is what up is here this? with an Odin. What is this? I you know, there's lots of Odin positions I'm going to write home about. That is that is not one of them. <laughs> Wisely making it out of there. Safe was just using himself as a recon, spotting them out. Now repositioning. The Hit third player on um, Team Vitality to try playing in this position. He's got a good chance. That's the perfect position, but Bayaz is safe. He's around the They're corner. They're going back. That's the Said thing. The paranoia. There's 20 seconds left, and they're about to try to oh, run their way through the utility. It's they done. haven't baited it out. If they are going to go, they have to go now, or they have to try fight. and run back towards the B site. That's exactly where Runner is with oh. the showstopper. He's going to get himself one, but the trade is there. I think they actually we still have time to get this, but it might be Timmy to Timmy! Timmy stopped the round! I've never seen anything like it before! A double kill from the turret to close out a fifth round for Vitality! Timmy the turret, MVP! He's won out the final round for Vitality, giving them a lifeline! <laughs> That's ridiculous! The they kills thing. Both. Timmy the turret has the same amount of kills as Logan on the oh, other side. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Well, you know what, Logan, uh, I, I think he'll find, usually on the attack side, he's lurking up, but this time, Vitality were always waiting. They always had that player elsewhere. Just imagine, maybe Destrian. his defense will be different. Destrian's like, all plans. <laughs> One <Yeah>. enemy remaining. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way, if, if he shoots the turret, it's <laughs> like, done oh anyways. Off time, a little smirk on Sal. That's a big smirk on Sal's yeah. face. Good round from them, though. Holding we'll on to the utility, one. aggressive position from the shadows, having high impact. And this is what we expect to see. Look at the aggression from Gentlemates. This is a five man push. Three all the way going up. The others pincering him from behind. This is just filled. They have so many ideas, kicks. He's killing it on, though. He's done fantastically well in Sender. Do they expect him to be on this side? It seems like they have the right idea. Already spotting him out. Logan's going to take the fight. And Kicks is still just clinging to life. 22 HP. Frenzy in hand. Also the spike. And it's him versus Logan. Well, Logan must think he's gone. That's what's in Kicks' mind, at least. He's gone to plant that spike. Kicks could catch him off guard. But Logan's too patient. Hasn't he planted yet? 
and soon that question will be answered. For now, they're both cautious of the other side. Once that plant comes in, though, Kix has the Trailblazer to work with. A good bit of information can at least be garnered. Logan might pull back that turret. I don't know if he'll even bother. Is the Tiger going to see him? That's the real question. It spotted him. Could be the information to work with now. The Nano has to be dodged. Kix is extremely low. Logan can take him down with just the one. That right click now looking incredibly deadly. But he has to find him first. Kix could have gone absolutely anywhere. The first clue is the plant spot. It's down below, so he thinks maybe that other player is too. Trying desperately to find him. The clock running out. The swing comes in, and Kix finally finds it. Patience ultimately wins out the round for Vitality as they get six to seven on the board. Yeah, I, the, the youngster might have just saved him there. He gets four kills, three of them at least. He was on 22 HP. So a, a bullet would have done it. This set play again from Gentlemates was just wonderful. It was two pushing up through B, three pushing up from C. And it's only because Kix basically killed, well, four fifths of their team nice. that the other round goes the other way. And he's so clean. Even in that last fight, you know, he nearly runs out of ammo for the third kill, but the final one, Headshot into body, it had to be any other way, and there's a response, and that response would be deadly when you're 22 HP. So nicely done. A lifeline for Vitality. They're not down and out just yet. One round behind, and it's only classics for Gentlemates. Takas has a ghost, and Logan. But he's got his good old weapon back out. No surprise there. He loves the Sheriff. Send up. Causing issues. Bomb grenade out. This is where Vitality can control the pace a little bit more. It's where this composition Logan's really needs to have a lot more depth. Logan's haunting me. Yeah. Doesn't matter who it's we're watching, watching, we're always you. seeing Logan. This is actually how I feel watching Logan play. He's always behind you. Always lurking. This time, that's not the case. But Vitality will still leave safe to watch that, just in case. Understandable. Eventually, it comes time to make the play. And Tom stack perfect. Yeah, they've gone to the wrong site. Oh, this is terrifying. This is one of the only ways this round could go wrong. Flashes on either side. They're going to try and sprint off the back of it. The count is good. And bear in mind, the weaponry is so weak for the side of Gentlemates. Fighting tooth and nail spike yet to go down, but safe will confirm this round is not going to go out of control. A lot of damage done across multiple players, but it is an Andalusia flawless to take home this second round for Vitality. They are weathering the storm that is this gentle mate side and starting to get to a point where they could even take the lead. What? Right. What? Well, I didn't see that one. No, I, I was watching, but I didn't see it. That's ridiculous. A headshot through the wall as well. Perhaps he suspected the player would jump peak like that. <laughs> Safe's insane. Well, seven to seven, tied up, and now a bye for Gentlemates. Full rifles coming through, light shields across the board. God, I wish we saw more outlaw play. And a close fight. Seekers already popped kicks, though, able to swing, using them as extra armor, and taking down Logan and Whalers. Used Runner as a human meat shield, too. They've spotted players up close, flash used, but here's the counter flash. The Tonk's being good for them, but he's out now. No more to work with, where's the back? They turned their back on him. They knew he was there, Tom. I, I guess they thought he ran away. They couldn't have been more mistaken. In fact, they're no. fighting for spawn, and the tank is How? back at it again. Three kills, the spike secured, and the round perhaps on the back of it. They even know where Sender is. He hit a nut shot in the previous round. Time to do it again. Oh, run it back used. Maybe just to get some health back more than anything, but it also clears out some positioning. Sender was excellent in the last round. Has a rifle to play with. Upgrading away from the Guardian. He's going to get that Jewel versus Natang. It is a one versus one, but Natang just has no fear. He was born without it, it seems. And Gentlemates, take the round. He's one HP, by the way. He's one HP. One. One. Oh. That's what it looked like. Yeah, pretty damn close. I think for Natank, uh, 
I've never seen him play like this before. I've seen him be good. I've seen him be solid. One HP. But he's back with a vengeance. <laughs> and indeed, on the dot of one. Four kills, 17 and 10. Like I said, last time on this map, it was 17 deaths yeah. with the Phoenix. Oh, this is the same team. Exactly. <laughs> a few days ago. Important to premise that. It's not the like exact this was same series. Ago. The exact same team. A couple somehow, of days makes a hell of a difference. You know what they say, what a difference a day makes. Swarm grenade. Swarm you give out. existence two or three uh, and okay. something else well, entirely. Has, I guess that was just to try and destroy a potential alarm bot. Just using utility to destroy utility. And there is nobody on the C site. They are playing a full retake setup right now. In fact, they haven't budged. Here. Maybe having some sort of read that they're expecting their opponents to go back in the other direction, but... No, it is just going to be a full 5v5, make that 4 retake. Logan just died to a lurk? Well, that's karma right there. <laughs> Vitality, 5 versus 4. Hit. Nade in play Watch for out. runner. Two snake bites for sender. Even a nano on Destrian. They've got a lot to work with here is what I'm trying to say. Takasto has gone up and over. He's diving through oh, and they have no idea! A massive play from Takas and he's not done yet! Three kills, and Nade has bounced back in a sender, kicked it back, and now they're trying to defuse while Destrian runs in. It's half. The time is no so close. Oh, no. The smoke. It saved them. I, I, I can't, I can't believe the rounds we're watching. This has been the most absurd display in Valorant I've seen in such a long time. The other day I was watching weird paper XCOMs. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> and then I start seeing Takas just full W key into a site, come out with three kills when they're at a disadvantage. And then the tank in a snake fight just full defuses. He didn't even, it didn't even react. He was just like, oh, he's not going to get me. I'm just going to sit within it. And you can't blame Vitality for not expecting him to do this. Oh. It, it's just absurd. It is a fraction of a second in the difference. The angle makes it all. What do you even say if you're selling? Guys, you got the sight. Uh, okay, try not to die to one guy full sprint Just at you. And, and by the way, you kind of still almost won, but don't let a guy full defuse in a snake fight. Like, it's just, it's such a difficult thing to reset mentality on a team when your opponents are just doing mad shit. That's all I could really call it. It's just insane. Somehow, existence still has a lot to say. I mean, well done is about all. <laughs> How the hell did you win that would be the follow-up. <laughs> Takas, what are you doing? Just running in with a guardian. But, uh, you know, if it works, it works. And it certainly works the, for gentlemates here today. The crazy thing is we're looking at the two, du two duelists at the top. One of them was previously on Vitality. The other was previously on Carmine Corp. And both of those teams have got to be sat there going, oh, for God's sake, what have we done? We've, we've created an absolute monstrosity <laughs> of these two playing together. And we could have had them on our team. Like, that, that's, that's the truth. Don't get me wrong, both have got great duelists, but I've not seen anyone doing what these guys are doing. And so consistently at that. Here. We saw the vote. Before we started things out, Tom, their Twitch chat was definitely convincingly. That's because most of the Genomage Vitality. fans are in this room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were voting to get the phone out. I don't know. But if you're Vitality fans right now, no doubt, there's a bit of sweat on the brow. Gentlemates, some weaknesses. Bayaz comes in with an SMG. Sanders got that big boy gun. We saw the spam at the start of the round. Didn't find anything. And the space is being conceded in the end. Gentlemates may have pushed up to rubble. You see the mark up on top. The snake bite followed through to force them out of position. Make it easier to take him down. They know they've got the control. And now it's just about systematically pushing up, taking that space. You've got an orb to cover while they try to challenge. And that challenge will be on to Bayaz. He has to be very careful not to go down here. That utility is too valuable, especially when he's taking a fight with the Spectre. Left. And you've got teammates like Logan to take that duel instead. Good damage done. Safe down to 11. 
And Vitality might be second guessing whether they want to blitz Watch into out. this right now. The heal will go up first. Ready. 20 seconds to decide. A site might seem nice, but B is where it's going for. And there's so much utility here. Takas on his way. He's a little late. Oh. The rocket fires off, but the player's already dead. The flash good. Safe. 10 HP. He's dead, One but there's some support. Remaining. A firing squad there. And somehow Safe gets out of it with a third kill. Still firing away. Of course, he had the heal earlier, right? So he's back up to 100. Back up to fighting health. Well, Whalers desperately tries to defuse it. A wild spam through will light him up and take him up. He could be sticking that top. Realistically, he could be. Very brave from Vitality to let him away with it. But as we can see, it has worked out. Safe was 11 HP before they entered that site. Got out of it with four kills. Yeah, a big round from Safe. Now taking his place at the top of the board. And I, I, I think, again, it, it comes down to the last few seconds of the round, but it's just some, some big jewels coming out from him, being able to win the fights on the site. I think some slight hesitation as well from Takas as to where they actually planted. He checked the right side, and if he fires it straight in, maybe denies them here. But the fact is, Vitality have got themselves around, and more importantly, the finances of Gentlemates are in the bin. Mm -hmm. Like they, they didn't survive with basically anyone in the prior round. And so because of that, they're going to have some pistols, a Guardian onto Logan, and not a lot else. This time out, they're farming up the old... It's not going onto the tank because he's already got his. Again, yeah, you can see Vitality being a little slow in getting through that A main control. So Gentlemates say, okay, cool. We'll just take the orb out in the open. We know you're gonna, not going to cross that wall for a little bit. Worked out for them. Nine to eight. I think the big thing to highlight here is you, you look at the, the sort of ultimates that are currently either close or about to be available. There's so many that are just a couple of orbs away. So for Vitality, they are getting into a point where they might just have themselves a free round. Even though you see that duel going the way of Logan, Destrian actually gets his ult online for that. So for, as long as they don't have a massive error, they're going to be in a very, very good spot going into round number nine. What? How are they winning some of these fights? Clean shots and kicks us down to 21. The only player who can't bring himself back up to full health. At least help safe out. There you go. Either way, Planted. it's just Logan. And with a rifle in hand, he probably is better off saving this than trying the one versus three. I guess in the worst case scenario, an extra rifle could help out, bolster the economy, get them that little bit of extra wiggle room. But looking likely, looking impossible, that we see anything other than an equalized scoreline. Vitality are not giving up just yet. And remember, last time that we saw these two teams play, th this was the weakness for Gentlemates. The attack side wasn't. They got five rounds, they didn't win the pistol, and it was a fight back after uh, losing the pistol round that got them the first two. But when they went to their own defensive side, yeah. Gentlemates got two rounds. So it, it's not optimal if no. that carries on. I just learned this screen's a touch screen, Tom. Oh, cool. Accidentally. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, I, I think from this point, you know, this is really where I expect most of the innovation that Gentlemates will have put in to have come from. The attack side, you always have new ideas, but this is where the weaknesses were, and I expect to see those bolstered down. Right now, it's the same kind of result as we saw last time. Two defensive rounds, four more, and they'll pull it across the line. Yeah, I think the worry is the fact that all five ultimates are now online for Vitality. Ultimate. So they, they, they've been managing to grind back some of these rounds without having to use those ults. So having a lockdown Viper's Pit gets you in, locks down the site. You can have yourself a showstopper to take space. You can have Seekers to give you the information. And sure, there's a couple available on the other side, but this basically gives Vitality at least one just all-out cheese round. And as you said, they're now on that favored side of the map, the side which we have seen them grind back even versus the likes of Fnatic. So, the expectation is from this stage onwards, they are in the driver's seat. And it's up to Gentlemates once again to try and disrupt them. Now, bear in mind, you go back to Breeze, the dominant side of that map was also the attack. They have proven they have those execution on that side. It's just whether they have more to show because with this sort of comp, with this double duelist, you kind of have to be going aggressive. Similarly to like we saw in the pistol round where they have the cool combinations. Whereas for Vitality, they have players like Sender who are very, very happy to just wait out the round until the last second and then have that high firepower, high ultimate execution. Mm -hmm. right, we, we've seen the patience of Sender on display. I mean, uh, again, that shorty round, he stood there staring at a wall for a good minute and a half. But the reward is found eventually. And yeah. that's all you need. The light at the end of the tunnel. 
and they never lose sight of that on the side of Vitality. Nine to nine, tied up. Sunset, the next map, a big fight to get there, especially with the tank firing up like that. So, the tank Salt has been deleted. He's now kind of caught in the corner. He's worried, he's paranoid. He's got a trailblazer coming his way. He's flashed, he's flashed himself. There's not a lot going for him, is what I'm trying to say. While well, Gentlemates lose, the tank, they've at least done a lot of damage. Kicks can heal most of it up, except the 90 that he's lost, the shields that he no longer has. He's definitely going to be vulnerable in any sort of duel. But the good thing, he still has both flashes. So he doesn't need to be involved yeah. in the initial fight. Instead, he'll be letting his teammates do the running in. Yeah, good reaction as well. That was an explosive start to the round. But again, Vitality have managed to weather the storm. They are building back into Wallop. this one. Oh, Wallop, please. Yodin, a little bit too long. That's going to be spotted out. Gives the kill straight over. Runner falling. Maybe wanting to try and be a little bit sneaky with their way through instead. It's a little bit more awkward. Takat, he's still fighting! He's going tooth and nail with his opponent, a little bit wary of where the Omen had TP'd to, but they haven't managed to deal with him. Hunting him down at this point, kicks his low and almost manages a kill, but now it's left all onto safe. He's got rid of Takas, but there's that rolling thunder. He's going to be able to dodge it. That might be a nasty surprise. Logan is going to spot him before anything gets too dangerous, and the double peek from Gentlemates is good. Up against it, pressured. They thrive once again. I think it might seem odd to see him swing into both players at the end, especially when you probably realize he's heard both steps, has a decent idea. There was a breach on the other side. He was thinking, if I sit in tree and wait, I'm getting stunned, I'm getting flashed, yeah. something's coming my way. Have to try to take the opportunity. It's also the element of surprise. If they think he's stunned, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not expecting him to be able to swing and spray you. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're running in, maybe being a little bit careless, hunting him down, and instead... <laughs> well, it's another win for Gentlemates. I don't think Safe was too happy about how that round went, but... What gave it away? <laughs> Just his choice of words. <laughs> it's, it's the meme. Oh, they know where he is. The tank a little bit lucky to get away with that. Oh, what dead. are you doing, Wayless? What? It's just TP's up on the floor. No, he's been given one to free. What the fuck? What is happening? He's still here. He's still here. The flash is going through. I can't believe what I'm watching. Vitality have just fallen apart. And Wayless has made one of the riskiest plays of all time. Riskiest is a choice word, Tom. That was a silly play that somehow they just they couldn't anticipate. They couldn't react to. There was a flash in play, sure. Uh, but the fact that he gets three, the fact that safe is going shrouded, stepping across, and lunacy. But that's how quick these rounds can fall out of your hands. <laughs> I'm not even going to go near that one. That's... Uh, He's just out. He's out of the round. Two v three. Can we just erase this round from the map? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see this ever again. Oh, that was unfortunate. Hell a lie, Lothar. Break this one down. <laughs> yeah. Lothar, get on tell for that one. I think there I is. I want the whole round. Some interesting util to start the round, certainly, but uh, it quickly spiraled Go into there. chaos. I like the spot from Bayaz. If they cross, though, there is a turret watching. So for gentlemen, they've got these players boxed in. I'm the back isn't watched, but with 15 seconds left, it's a gamble that they'll still come A, and they've made the right gamble indeed. Bayaz already bought time, already ran that left. clock down, but the plant will come all the way through. It's the reposition afterwards, and Logan's ready for it. Another round for Gentlemates is found. And now the lead stretching that little bit further I'm for sure Vitality. They've got to be devastated. I don't think I'm ready to watch this again. Let's get the replays. Oh, here we go. Look, see, so he is nearsighted. The first makes sense. This one, I challenge you to make sense of. Then there's a flash through that actually catches Sander as he's still trying to go across the deal with him. And the tank says, I felt bad about killing Sander, man. They've got, they haven't got the smoke to cross up. I'm going to take myself out. Let's give him a chance. I respect that. Two rounds. Two rounds is what gentlemates need to eliminate Vitality from the tournament. That's, that is the spot where I'm right now. If you've just joined us, you've missed a lot. Your, pro, your sanity is probably a, a little bit more intact than mine. But at the same time, that is what's at stake. Vitality will be out. Gentlemates will be looking to go into the play-in and still have a chance to battle their way back into the playoffs. It's a long road. Yeah, we were looking at that backstage. It, it's definitely not as easy as you might think. You lose one match to go lower bracket. Oh, that's all right. We still get, still says qualified above it. Yeah. Qualified to a different well, part it, of the it's tournament. It's basically, it, for teams like Fnatic might be able to get to Masters with two wins. Yeah. And some of the teams here might need like, what, five or six? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's, it's a much longer road, but it's also the road that Gentlemates are used to.
they, they, they went through the ascension. You think like five or six matches is much for gentle mates? Talk about what, like 20, 30 games that you have to basically be flawless all the way through. They did that last year. And now with Vitality, let's be real. They came in as fairly heavy favorites. You're talking about a team that has picked up world-class players. You're talking about Runner, someone everybody's been talking about in the tier two scene, Kicks there as well. They've kept Destrian safe. They know that Trex is coming later on. Sender has always been up there statistically, taken over that IGL role. A load of coaching staff, management, Vitality invest in Valorant. Gentlemates have built a team in the tier two, kept it exactly the same. Cover going out. They are two Thank rounds God. away from kicking them out. Thank God they didn't change things. I think that would have been the worst thing for this squad and looking at what they're able to do on the server. I really thought he was going down to the classic there. Luckily, safe pop the reload. Uh, uh, it really is just so impressive that they're able to deliver this at tier two, move up to tier one, but that's it. You, you stay together, you learn together, you win okay. together. Well, Takas, he's gone down alone. And so is Destrian caught off in the back. There's going to be a flash around that door and a big battle in the tongue, looking to do the damage. Fire down. Spike it's certainly down. chipping away at the health, leaving Sender on 50. And that Viper's Pit now not as scary as it was a couple Shadows seconds ago when he was full health. They might be able to root him out of there, not just with a spray, but even with Logan. And I think that's what Vitality are waiting for, knowing there's a lockdown in play. If they plant, they could be in a lot of hot water. Actually, the Viper's Pit will be used. Now, I think Logan's already starting to think, well, my X keys look pretty good. Spike planted. Lockdown utilized. Bayaz is actually just trying to catch them as they exit, locking them into position. They're actually going to re-aggress instead, but they're going to have to try and move into this corner. It should be expected. Paranoia done. already Last sent in. They're ended. stuck in a corner. Very well executed. Spacing perfect. And gentlemates make that look very easy in the end. Yeah, the stun just came back online for Bayaz as well. It was even thrown in. So, you know, they were... You are screwed trying yeah. to get back through that you're choke point. Either you're blinded and stunned, yeah. or you're stunned and detained, or blinded and detained. Yep. You're, you're, pick in, pick. you're in your Venn diagram somewhere. Or, if you're really unlucky, all three! <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, the result is the same. Yeah. Uh, the round yeah. falls out of your hands <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> the gentlemates find themselves 12 to 9. Three chances now. To close this out. He's giving he's giving the Zeta guys a run for their money yeah. with that sort of nice. You're gonna make a song, get John Locke out to do the remix. And a really impressive display from Gentlemates, a team that rose through Ascension that showed us that they're one of the only teams to earn their spot in the VCT. And my god. They might just be earning it oh a little bit further onto the play. God. It's great flash, no punish. Runner's the one to find the kill instead. Natank shut down. They're going a little bit above and beyond no! because Hogan and Whalers, the two of these players, pushed B, held the back, boxed in Vitality, and they've just shut the lid tight. They're back in the spawn. That's the amount of space they've been able to take in this round. And Logan, he went alone to take this fight and manages to quickly transfer onto two heads. There have been so many heroes for the gentle mate side and Vitality. They need one of their own now. A three versus four, as you said, showstopper available. Is he actually going to stick that? He is. So it is the sound of the door not going to be there, but instead it's the showstopper that might just give a nasty surprise. He knows where safe is and takes him out. Runner has found one in the meantime, though, keeping this one close. Getting past Takas is the real problem. Oh, and they both got hit by that paranoia. The nade that clears the angle instead, not going to be useful. Last back through, it's okay. They know Takas is there. They've spotted him. They're even trying to push him out of position, but if they swing the other side, okay. Together, oh! they'll go in. And together, they might win. Already kicks with two, but Bayaz sneaking around. He spotted, he's seen, and both were locked in for that kill. Kicks with all three. Vitality survive another round. But gentlemates, if they keep throwing out these curveball plays, no pun intended, the C push, the double B push, Logan and Whalers, uh, two, you even had a paranoia there that could have been used. And then Logan swings on the back a couple seconds more, and, and this round doesn't get close. Yeah, it, it still takes kicks saving them there. Yeah. It still takes a hero to arise for the side of Vitality. They are still clinging to life. Ultimates. Oh. A lockdown on one side, Cover the run it back, which is probably the one you're more scared of at this point, on the other. 
Just look how tentative and patient Vitality are having to be. There's been a set play in the majority of rounds from Gentlemates, and the mates are not afraid to try and push into their spawn. I'm sure Safe is even a little bit worried. It was about to get aftershocked. Smoke down on either side. Still. Not really much of a move. Are they going to use the edge? Oh dear, he's, he's already gone through. A little bit wary of the TP. And again, they still haven't. It's, a, it's a basically a minute gone. And they're still just sat in their spawn. I don't mind Whalers being here. He can get out. Wanted that information. He's got it. Two, three, four steps. Show potentially stopper. heard on the way around. But like you said, Tom, that orb. You should Showstoppers run. online and ready. Lockdown is in play and pushing them back. Gentlemates, don't want to stick around, but Whalers has got ult. Okay, for a second I thought he was going to try to cancel it and, and still take that fight, but 30 seconds left. that's not the play. And it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, I think with the run it back available, they have a free opportunity to go in. The information is gone at a distraction for Natank as they go running through, but he's not going to win the fight. Runner has caught another one. The advantage firmly sits with Vitality. Someone needs to step up. Logan's caught one. The shot's not connecting either for Runner. That's a second dropped. This is starting to fall apart a little bit now for Vitality. Kicks somewhat isolated, but his teammates will run through. The cavalry arrives to give them a little bit more of a chance, but it is falling apart. Takas has just died no. to the tanks. Not again. Utility, and that attack just sits on the defusal, but he's denied within the last second. I'm taking a sigh of relief, a breath Ooh. to relax after that one. That came way too close, Tom. I thought he had another half second. 12 to 11. Vitality are still alive. They are holding, clinging on. And right here, I thought this is it, right? They, they shut down well, yeah, the I, Phoenix just, Ult. They get a kill. Takas dies. Kill. Yeah. <laughs> Blaze team kill. Yeah. To make it worse. And once you take Takas out, surely that's it. But just about. Vitality pulled it across the line. A lifeline, a second chance, an OT just around the corner. Well, that's the thing, it could be a, a second OT for them <laughs> on this map. They played one versus Fnatic. Didn't go their way, but they got there. They've proven they're a fierce competitor when it comes to the map of Lotus. And just look at the weaponry. The ult, not ideal. Whalers left onto a pistol. Again, we're gonna see in the tank just go walkabouts. But again, Vitality are super patient. Tank's got a shot off, too, and he's still sticking around. I don't even know that he has a way out of here till that smoke pops. And he's just about to... Oh, never mind, not avoided them. He is very much caught in the open. A queen, a clean refrag from Kicks. He's going, he's going for it. No, surely not. There's two players still on B. The door must be open. They'll, they'll switch back, change directions, and fight off towards Logan. And that man nice. is taken down easily this time. Finally, the signs of life. All of them are online for Vitality. Safe went down, so no smokes, but they are just dueling on every single angle. And overtime seems impossible to avoid. Takas does well to find the first, but three more. This isn't DRX he's against. It's going all the way. Overtime secured by Vitality. That's what this map feels like it deserves. A streak back from Vitality when their life is on the line. Their players starting to step up, kicks especially. Top of the board, 18 assists as well. He really has been on fire. Gentlemates have fought them tooth and nail. Now go back onto the attack. This is where they had the majority of their success, especially in the buy rounds. Of course, no ultimates online, but everything three away. I'll make the assumption that they're going to be looking to farm up the ults on one man in particular. Whalers. That's what you want. We, hey, saw, well, we saw Mystic with some pretty high impact. Mystic on split. On the shadows, yeah. so. It's pretty nice. No, but somehow you do look towards Natank and a much more aggressive face from Gentlemates early like on. They seize control because they don't want that orb going elsewhere. But once it's tapped, that's when the real problem starts to come through. Sender is safe behind the tree now, unspammable, untouchable. But now he can turn his back and start to spray through that wall, through that door. Once Whalers falls. 
problem is now he's got no teammate to cover his back. He's isolated and he could be pushed at any moment. Not a fight that many people will want to take. And with Logan somehow behind them, this is now very winnable. He's dodging bullets like it's the Matrix. Sender? He's around. Somewhere. He swapped weapon. He's, he's dropped the Odin. Why has he done that? He's managed to back out of there. That's the main thing. They're going looking for him. Wary. But only his Odin remains. They're set up like a firing squad. Or any utility. They don't actually have smokes to clear this cross. So if they hold on to this, it could be huge and wonderful stuff for Vitality. They mow them all down. 13 to 12, a good adaptation from Vitality to make that fight more awkward. And Gentlemates, bloodthirsty for Sender, end up losing the round because of it. Yeah, it's such wise play from him. Like I said, once your teammate on site goes down, it's so hard to hold on to that angle. If they have control over switch, they'll blitz you together. Even if they swing that corner, if it's a double swing, if they put some utility in, a paranoia, a flash, anything, you, you're dead. And your teammates are gonna have to fight back. Instead, wraps around, plays together, Make sure he can't be isolated. That's all they needed to do because when gentlemates have been able to isolate duels, they win the round every single time. Well, gentlemates, they've now got to do it on the defense. <laughs> if they've got any ideas left that they can throw in, well, I'm sure existence is telling them what they are. Maybe something that was saved for a rainy day, something that didn't even make the main pack of the sheet, something kept in his back pocket. A risk could be taken. For Vitality, if anything, just more of the same. A calm and collected attack side is what we've seen from them. Reacting to the pressures of their opponent. And as said, they've begun to really weather that storm, getting better and better as this game goes on. With the pause now over. Definitely doesn't seem like the gentlemates are feeling the pressure just yet. Oh, this is a squad that's no stranger to pressure, like we said. Lower bracket runs, losses to teams, rematches in high stakes environments, single elim environments. They win them. Time and time again, we've seen it. That one's for Lothar's watch party. Vision Strikers. There we go. That one too. Does a little bingo. 13 to 12. And one chance here for Vitality to close it out. You go back to another overtime. It's anyone's game. The attacking side, early presence on B. Some control taken, but wrapping. And it looks like the challenge will eventually come towards Natank. Now, he's heard that flash pop. He knows there's going to be players around here. And there's a stun set up. Paranoia to come through. Perhaps even a flash from Natank as well. This could be a deadly crunch from the side of Gentlemates. One that Vitality are not prepared for. There it is, but Runner was ahead of it. Whalers caught by the Paranoia too. He can't quite make it out. He's stuck in the corner. Luckily, Shrouded Step will get him to safety. Yeah. Thought a bullet was going to follow, but we'll reset to a 4v4. A trade of the duelists. The tank and runner fall. 45 seconds left. It's going to make this entry into the site a little bit more difficult. And two players sat waiting. Maybe even an aftershock to hold them back a little bit more. The utility being expended. Bayaz waiting. The cross is hell and the spray down is magnificent. It leaves safe. 25 seconds and he can get nothing. The IGL leads by example. And we'll go another. OT, OT. Our second one to play with here for Vitality. Back to the defensive side. And gentlemates, another chance. Some more hope for this squad that they don't have to take it all the way to Sunset. It's worth mentioning that when they did play last time, Sunset looked better for gentlemates than this map. They, right? still, they did still lose. They did lose, <laughs> but it looked better, Tom. <laughs> sure. And that's the, sure, like, that's I the guess keynote. I <laughs> Couple more rounds. Yeah, we've got to see if we even get there first. I'm still, I'm not done with Lotus. I'll be honest it's with you. Not, it ain't, it ain't over till it's over. Not with a squad like Gentlemates. Oh, Vitality have taken a leaf. They've gone. You know what? You can push. So can we. Logan, he's under serious pressure. He's being pushed from B as well. But it does leave an opening on the other side of the map. That's a good start. Getting rid of this man has been the bane of Gentlemates' life on this attack side. He's normally such side. a reliance in post plants and. Uh, holding those rotations now as well for Vitality, they realize, okay, we've isolated this man. We've taken him down. The rest of them are being funneled in towards this A site. Vitality, if anything, have them right where they want them. It certainly seems that way for Gentlemates. They might have some aggressive utility to fight back through, but the Tiger spotted Natanka close. That's a hard smoke to flash around. 
Instead, he's just holding the angle for now while the rest of the squad blitzes back through. They've seen the Tonk dropping down. It's not enough to see him. Dealing with him, something else. Trade from Bayaz. Numbers quite even for now, but with the time running down, Vitality need to step into the angles. Held by Gentlemates. Traded out along the way. Step down, drop down, herd. Kicks and sender, though. They combine to close out this round. Put another map point on the board for Vitality. 14 to 13. And back to their attack. Yeah, I, I really like the adaptation. It's it's a bold call to make to just look to pressure that one man. But that has been the way the gentlemen's have been playing this attack, leaving him behind to just hold on to a lot of map control. So they almost use their own strat against them. The three push C, two push B, nice. and take that man out of the round. It is it has its risks about it with how good he's been in positions where he shouldn't really get much at all. And then the retake, well. Business as usual for Vitality now. It's going to be that defensive side for Gentlemates once again. The operator in for Takas, and guess what? They're going aggressive once more. Destrian's the one under pressure. He has been spotted, maybe not realizing it. And this time, the tank will take the opener for his squad. Another opener under his belt on Lotus. Certainly a different face from what we saw last time around. Shadows. 13 on the board for Gentlemates. Another OT. Spike play. That's what their vision is. They're close to it. The Vitality won three by rounds in a row on this attack side. A one-man disadvantage? Well, how much of a disadvantage is it? Runner still with utility. Sender, double snake bites to work with. Time. Let's see if it's on their side. That flash has bought them a little bit more. Molly in play. The nade oh, now so to delay them even further. The clock just keeps on running down. The sands of time slow for nobody. As the shots land, it's gentlemates that seem to be coming out on top. But a defuse is still needed. And everyone that steps near that spike falls seconds later. Another nade online. And that sent Logan running. The time now too far gone. And it's kicks to close out the map. Vitality have bought themselves back into this series. Sunset is where we'll end it. One of these French teams, tournament life ends here. What a way. It, it deserved a third map. Vitality's fight back has been sublime. The upgrades that Gentlemates have made clearly showing. But the fact is the resilience of Vitality has been enough this time. We'll be back after the break to close this series. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Yeah, 
I feel like a champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. They told me I wouldn't be nothing. Came on down second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the boo, but keep it a beam. You know what it is, you know what I mean. Shit. All I do is win, win, win, win. <laughs> Haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. <laughs> Double, triple team, what they need to defend. <laughs> I do left and I'm gone with the win. I'm gone with yeah, it. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition yeah, of divine. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah. Feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win been guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. If you gon' speak about it, then be about it. If you don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on what? Yeah, I got a game on lock. I feel like a champion. Ch ch ch ch a champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. Put it all on the line, definition yeah, of divine. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a champion. Ch ch ch ch ch a champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah. This first series is tied one to one, and I am joined by a very special guest right next to me. I have no other than Beya's mom, and Yaman will help us with some translations here. You have supported your son through his journey, through his career, making it through tier two into the big leagues. You must be so proud. I've watched you in the stands, beaming with pride. What's that journey been like for you as his mom, though? Oğlunuzu en başından beri destekliyorsunuz. İkinci seviyeden ilk seviye yani en yüksek lige gelene kadar hep destekleniniz. Şu anda onu bunu görmek nasıl hissettiriyor size? Öncelikle e, burada bulunan bütün insanlara e, iyi akşamlar dileklerimi diletiyorum. Burada bulunmaktan çok mutluyum. E, Beyazıt'ın annesi olarak oğlumun her zaman arkasında oldum. E, gentlemate... E, takımının bir üyesi olmasından hep beraber bu üyenin bir bu ailenin bir üyesi olmasından çok mutluluk duyuyoruz. Ee, Beyazıt'ın bütün tercihlerine e, küçüklüğünden itibaren ailesi olarak her zaman saygı duyduk. Onun aldığı bütün kararları hep destekledik. Okay. Evet her zaman destekledik. Ee, her zaman oğlumuzun arkasındayız ve başarılı olacağına inanıyoruz. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> She started as a firstly, I would like to say hi to everyone who is watching and who's here. And then she said, I always all, I supported Beyaz from the beginning. And him as being as a gentle mate part, I'm super proud to be uh, supporting him in the gentle mates. And also I love, I want to thank you to gentle mate fans that supporting my son all the time. I'm really br proud with my son Beyazit since the beginning. And I'm so happy as a parent that watching him from here. Right on. Well, we have all the right reasons. It's such a tight series. We hear so much support from those stands. Let's hear it again for the gentlemen. Oh, 
Oh, thank you very much, Zoe. And thank you to uh, Mama Beyaz. Send you chocks, everyone. We love uh, Beyaz, Mama Beyaz. But going into this third map, uh, Lothar, it is a rematch of a map we've seen already. So what are you expecting from this? Oh, I'm expecting a lot of changes, the way that both of those teams have played previously. I actually love those rematches when it's the same map because we see how teams are adapting. From Gentlemates, I would like to see that their defense to be a little bit more cautious because they are losing more on defense than on attack on every single map. That's something that Mitch uh, and Tom actually uh, explained a lot. And I feel like that for Sunset is spe specifically important because it's such a defense-based map. You mentioned when, uh, when we were off camera that Logan had died three times on defense on the Cypher as a first. And that is a big problem. When the Sentinel dies first on defense, it just shuts down everything that you have prepared when it comes to lane control. Remember, this map also has the market with the doors, which is a pivotal point for both attack and defense because it allows either over rotations from the defenders or or it allows the map control to actually go towards the attackers. Well, you want it changes. Uh, it doesn't seem like we're going to get agent changes, but we will see that Yoro back again. Yeah, and for gentlemen, it's Yoro on attack. I hope they're going to take the path that we have seen on Breeze. On Breeze, they were very confident in taking the space with the Yoro. We don't have the Phoenix, though, on attack here. That's the race. But the last time we've seen them play Sunset, it was actually pretty passive with taking mid control with the Yoro instead of being like the aggressor that we have seen on Breeze. That's something that I would like to see being changed and adapt the way that they had been presenting their place out on Breeze Lane. So Vitality, you think they take it again this time round? I feel like they're slightly being rejuvenated, but the previous map, if it's a distinction of how we're going into this map, it's going to be chaos all <laughs> over the place. I don't want to see those rounds. Hey, Timmy the Tara being MVP, I am definitely OK with that every day of the week. But this is it. It could be anybody's game, but elimination is ultimately on the line. Mitch and Tom, I cannot wait to see which team comes out on top. From the player break, back to the player break for one of these teams. Time to watch another event from home. It's not nice. It's not nice, Tom, but they'll be in the crowd for the play-ins. We don't know which one, though. Gentlemates and Vitality. One hell of a series so far. I said earlier on, we thought it would go the distance, but we weren't sure anymore. After 13 to 4, starting it out for Gentlemates, but they stumbled on the last map. It went to overtime. An improvement, but not enough. Now, well, we yeah. go back to Sunset. We've seen this before. It's time to see it again. Gentlemates on the defense, but you couldn't really tell by how they're playing no. it. Right away, some aggression out of this squad. Full contest for B-Main. Full fight going down, and the stun is great. Why is the knife out? Takas still alive. Hello! No one's checking him. Somehow he gets away with it for so long. And runners left with 20 HP. Good night and sweet dream. Oh! He's done it! A sliver of health, but enough for a Red Bull clutch. Welcome back, that's, ladies and that, gentlemen. That's the second time that's happened. Think about it. I was, I was literally just about to say that Kicks, when he got three kills, was on 22 HP. Runner's done it with one HP one less. He, he literally just killed everyone at the end. That should have been a pistol round for Gentlemates. That should have been the start to this map that they were looking for, but the Red Bull clutch from Runner. The heroes on Vitality rising to the occasion. And well, what a start to this second map. But I, I heard Luther say something like he doesn't want to see those plays. Well, um, <laughs> shut up, Luther. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> He's coming off, I can tell. <laughs> oh, wow. An incredible start for Vitality. Again, in these rounds, defensive side, you take those aggressive stances. Sometimes that happens. It doesn't work out. But they, everything went right to start it off. The numbers go their way. The HP goes their way. And a couple well-placed bullets is all it takes. At the end of the day, it is a shooter game. They didn't shoot back. Vitality, one round up, facing off against Classics. Three Sheriffs in play. The Tunk, Logan, and Takas. The three most terrifying players on the server to have Sheriffs. Luckily, they're on the wrong side of the map. As we can see, A has been fully scouted and cleared. It's only really going to be Destrian who's in the danger zone. Yeah, I think that's a good chance. I think they did something similar. Uh, last time out as well, and uh, for the most part, they just went back to the spawn and died to the spike. Like, that was the, the goal. Plays. Make sure you don't give too much over in terms of orbs. And they do have a fair few sheriffs, so maybe there's an opportunity to try and do a little bit of extra damage. The utility not really purchased on the majority of players. A little bit onto Bayaz, of course. That Breach wants to have his belt online, but realistically, I don't see anything coming of this. 
so many players, so much util to just hold them back. And of course, on the other side of things, just wanting to try and make sure they don't take too much damage. They are somewhat locked into this site, though. They've got to be careful. That was a hit. 100% accuracy so far for Takas, even through the smoke. Bay has picked up one. Damage is most certainly being done to this attacking side, despite the spike ultimately exploding. Yeah, you can tap it all you want. But as you said, Tom, avoiding giving away orbs with their death, farming up some with their kills, causing a decent amount of economical damage as well. That's a pretty successful second round, all things considered. Yeah, it's not bad. They, they might have hoped to do a little bit more, but can't really complain too much about that one. Now, yeah, some th one of the real problems that they had with this map in general was their defensive side. And that is, of course, where Gentlemates have kicked off this time around. Their attack, they managed to streak a few rounds together at the latter stages and really showed that they definitely have a lot of cool ideas alongside this Breach and the Yoru. That's sort of my favorite combination we had from Gentlemates. Defensively, though, it didn't go great. And a lot of that was Vitality being able to control the pace. Slow and steady, which Destrian is about to realize. Sometimes you don't have the choice of that. Counter Flash, just to get him out of there. And actually, Safe has managed to win that opening battle versus Bayers. A bit of a problem early doors. I mean, good that you've got Sender as a backup smoker when Safe's going out like that. Just walked up on A, drops the wall, takes a kill, and now they're primed to take control after. Whaler's just cleared it. He thinks it's wide open, and he's starting to fall back, confirming that they can stack towards the B site. In fact, we just saw the TP come into play, because guess who's not on the site anymore? It's, of course, Takas. He's over on the other side of the map, now chilling on B. And after gate crashing B, Vitality, full crash A plant the spike, and again, we'll be in this retake position. The problem being that there's just so much control in the hands of those attackers. General mates will have to be worried about flankers. And they, they're not moving when the spike is Yeah, I, I'm, I wouldn't even be surprised ball. if they just, yeah, they just gamble and save, because at this point, it's like you're going to try and go back in. In terms of weaponry, it is a 4v4, and obviously Destrian then just has himself a pistol. The thing is, this is going to be such a massive boost in economy to Vitality. They're going to get to walk away with pretty much every single one of their players alive. If they can find any extra weaponry, which they have, they're going to actually come out with more rifles than they began with by a couple, and they, they just get all of the extra bonus credits along the way. Like, this is as good a start as Vitality could ever wish for. And the gentle mates, well, wrong place, wrong time. And that early kill on Tobias, he, he's someone that, especially if we're going to go for a retake, he can't be missing. Not too easy to take the weapons out of their hands, evidently. Move in after Sender and runner fall, but that's the win. point being that Gentlemates get to carry the rifles. Three to zero for Vitality. And Gentlemates certainly need that little boost of energy to get back into things. Look at the though with the weapon safe. They're able to buy up. They're in a decent position. Again, light shields across the board for their squad. I think they've got more problems than that brewing under the surface. Nice little parkour at the end. Well, they're literally the highlights with three kills. Yeah, <laughs> so, wasn't a lot. There's not really anything you can show in the replay. They did the best that they could. Early cages now being placed down to try and stop this aggression, but there ain't nothing. Push. Stopping the side of Natank and Tank has this mid. Push is perfect. They're waiting within it. The flash, a little bit delayed. Kicks does at least manage to get a response. Destrian under pressure here has support of that youngster once again, Kicks has really been bright throughout this series, and he's landing the shots again, the trade backs, immediate, the aggression, maybe over-aggression of Gentlemates has now been punished. Yeah, I mean, I, again, they'd already pushed through B-Main though, right? Like, this squad was exactly where Kicks is now, when they realize, oh no, they're coming back, they're not playing mid, we're not behind them, this is their new front, and it's too late to make any decision other than fighting. Those duels don't go their way. A rare occurrence for the side of Gentlemates. But a slow re-clear of this map has given Gentlemates an idea. They've seen nobody around middle, no presence to the door. And so A is having a little bit of extra reinforcement to it. In the end, they're guessing. And that guess will change. 30 seconds Slightly left. lighter play, going back to B, clearing it out, checking middle but it's Vitality. The same clear, we've seen them do this now. Uh, almost all of the rounds move through this side of the map, come around the elbow into A, and get a nice safe plant. It's virtually undeniable Spike for planted. the side of Gentlemates. And you probably want Whalers to be waiting here. Takas, not far behind, take this fight together. It's a 2v3. There could be some 2vx angles they could isolate. As we can see, 
pedestrian is alone. Double push into spawn. Okay, okay. nice three. shot. Now it should be done. Whalers, one hell of a clutch in front of him. He's even thinking about leaving. Yeah, it's looking like another save call, and Kicks has just been a menace. I, I think he really has shown the, the value of him coming in. Obviously, in the past, we saw him play on an awful lot of different mixed teams. It's not quite like some of the players that have been picked out of the tier two. He was someone that I assume has been watched for quite a while. But if you've seen him even in the, the days of like Bonk and different teams, he is someone that can definitely cause issues. Four and zero for Vitality. A response from Gentlemates yet to be had. And that's the thing, they had opportunities in this round. A 4v3 scenario quickly turned against them. With just this man mainly doing the work alongside a little bit of help from Destrian. One enemy remaining. And while financially there's still going to be a purchase, but again we're seeing the same problems for the side of Gentlemates. Their defensive side revolves around aggression and Vitality are very happy to sit, wait and react. Yeah, they've been punishing it every time. Even when I think that B main aggression might be something that catches you off guard, having fought mid, having lost players, they're still able to turn, turn heel, take that duel and end up closing out the round. Four so far, a convincing lead for this squad. And just circling back to what you were saying about kicks, I went back and looked and, you know, okay, Taka started Breeze. It, 26 kills on both maps for Takas, right? He's pretty good. Now, it's a little different doing it on a 13 to 4 than a 15 13 overtime game, double OT, right? But he's still 26 kills on both maps. And obviously, he's got a lot of praise. We've been looking at him a lot. Well, Kix had the exact same amount of kills on the previous map, uh, 26 tying up with him on Lotus. The, the difference being that he actually was a little bit more, he participated in four opening duels versus three for Takas. Yeah, how many assists he have as He's well? He's very aggressive. Very, yeah, well, that's, that's the name of the game. You wanna know how many Takas had first? You can you read that? Is that too far away? I'm scrolling to four. Yeah, four. <laughs> four in a raise, four in a raise, right? And the guy was killing everyone. He wasn't leaving it for his teammates. Mm. Yeah, Kicks had 19. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> Which is what kind of a lot. like? I reckon it was off his the chart. Cast. If it it's was, not 100, then I'm disappointed. It's 82%, actually. Ah, pathetic. Best on the server. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need this tracker score. If Four to zero. At first, you don't succeed. Try, try again. Yes. I've gone pushing up towards. But the thing is, this time it was mostly just bait. It means they get the orb for free. Not a bad idea. And then they have a stack up on the other side of the map. They're hoping they can pull a rotation from Vitality early in the round. But actually. Vitality aren't falling for him. They've gone running straight through. Already waiting for safe. They'll catch him off. But in the meantime, they're going to go pushing in towards this site. The cross being held, but they're not going to be able to deny that space from Vitality. Now, short of those random spams, and in fact, it ends up backfiring. Even with a silencer, it's just a predictable angle to be spraying from. And the tank is down to 49 HP. But Vitality have lost their Viper. Post plant could be huge, double snake fights. And of course, that poison orb on site make one hell of a difference. For now, they're going to have to wait back in main and hope that Sender can find value, but they have shut the door in his face quite literally, and then he's caught by a trap. So now they know exactly where he is. One man lighter means only three towards main. So they're going to go quickly to start tapping that diffuse. Sender's caught one, though. Now there's a problem. I don't think they fully knew where he was. It looked like he got a second. Oh, it's not even half, is it? No, fully reset. They've got to get on that spike very soon. And just running down the clock is Kicks catching another. They weren't sure if he'd still be around that angle, and he most certainly was. Vitality, five rounds on the board, another Red Bull clutch, and well held. I'm surprised that Sender was able to catch them by surprise that much, even after being seen by the trap. Yeah, and, and the thing is, the way this round started, it's it not a bad idea. Like, they take that B main control, fake things out towards Vitality, but Vitality, this time, they opt to pressure. And when they find nobody there, it's again another after plant. And that's, well, you can see four spike explosions so far in this game. Vitality have not been struggling the second they get into the post plant. Adaptations were made, expectations by gentlemates. But the fact is, with no changes to the comp, thus far they've been running into the same problems they have been before. And this round at least, the only man with a gun that isn't a pistol is Takas. Takas has been seen, <laughs> he's been blinded, and he's happy he put that gate crash down. The worst is when you forget. When you tap that E to get out, and you just pull out a piece of utility. Luckily, he has made it reset and cost a lot of time. And this is the same setup from Vitality. Four players main with one. Safe has literally stood in the exact 
same spot. The difference is Sanders coming back, but he's unaware that they've already pushed up so close on mid. A ton of space gained, and Nate through. I think they won the gun. They, they, they can't possibly, on the side of Vitality, continue to aggress around this angle. Sure. Oh, timing. Saves lurkers. What? Oh! what does? A ridiculous reaction shot onto the tank. Now the rest of the defense segmented. Logan is the one that's going to be under pressure, but now they know exactly where he is. The patience of Vitality plays true again. Now his shots need to be all the more impressive being spammed through the boxes. Vitality look to close. Stun is there. Showstopper used on the attack side, but being delayed enough. Not quite finding that kill, and they have found Bears instead. They know that Logan has to be here somewhere, and safe is ever patient. Leaving just Takas remaining, and safe connects another for his fourth. 6-0 and for Vitality. I wonder if the mates have run out of steam. This defensive side definitely isn't what you wanted to see from this squad. But it's early days still. They could warm back up into it. We could still see some of that sunset that we got last time around, and I just pulled it up to have a look and I mean last time around wasn't the easiest for that gentle made squad four rounds on the defense so it's still possible to do better and they only finished 13 to 10 but they need I, to wake up yeah now I appreciate the optimism but right now it's not looking great good stun through but it's caught nobody they're just sitting back that's the thing that's all vitality have to do every single round the defensive side is coming to them. And the fact is, in this round, they even have a Rolling Thunder, and they had a Showstopper for a retake. They could have played retake this round, but they want to continuously aggress. And it means that Vitality, they aren't having to adapt. They're just having to wait. They won many rounds in the previous map doing the same, but here, that defensive aggression, I can almost applaud Gentlemates for saying, you know, we have plenty of different ideas for how to go for this aggression. We're going to try them all. But so far, there's just no success to be found. And for Vitality, late in the round, advantage to play with. Gentlemates at least have a retake setup, especially with a rolling thunder, and players late to the party on A. Same exact play from Vitality. They just, they've met zero resistance when they come this way. No challenges, so why not? Well, with runner down, things might get a little bit easier. Logan. He was seeing through the smoke by the looks of it. Paranoia, it's gone too high. He was poked up by the Rolling Thunder. They know where Sender is. Still, he's good for one. one and damage remain. done, safe on the trade. It leaves it to Logan. He's already done so much. Some more kills through the smoke would definitely help out. He might have an idea that Destrian's repositioning, oh, he's but he's gone he's back gone. to his teammate. He's made it out, a slippery snake in the grass. And now he's found the rest of his horde. Safe, oh. even as a Viper's Pit, but it's not going to be used. <laughs> not here. Logan's chasing his shadow. Like, he, he literally Where'd has no idea. Where's the has gone? He's just going to have to leave. It, it, it's just all gone wrong. Gentlemates again. They had a moment, a chance for a second, but Safe has been unstoppable in this map. Turning the tide once again. Vitality 7-0 and zero up on this attacking side. And we've spoken about, well, the gentle mentality. It must be crushed at this stage. They are getting blitzed. We already had a pause out of this squad. If I'm not mistaken, we didn't have two on this map, so they still have time to reset on this half. Seven rounds on the board, though. They need to be looking for four or five in a row. They need that streak. They need to fight their way back in, show us they've got the potential. And you can see nothing but smiles. Nothing but smiles on the other side. Vitality, sky high on morale. And to nobody's real surprise, you don't know. It's going to be a pause as gentlemates look to discuss. Uh, well, look, they've got plenty to discuss. Yeah, no, not the, a lot of time to put it in action. having a drink. He's having a water break. Out. <laughs> <laughs> not really much more that you could do at this stage. And this, this is sort of the heartbreak. We looked at that diffuse in that last oh, map. stop. Point zero zero whatever. There wasn't even a line to be seen for yeah. gentlemates. The difference between them taking that second map over the line and ending up here, ending up in overtime and Vitality showing that resilience, showing that tenure of some of the players like Safe, but also some of the players new on the block like Kicks, really having those high level performances. Now on that third map, the map that was played last time out, the map we looked at to see if Gentlemates had adaptations, they've had ideas, that's for sure, but they have had no response for Vitality's dominance, seven and zero.
Well, you said that last time they got four. Well, they've only got five attempts, so they need 80% of the rounds in this half left just to match their last time performance, which, by the way, they still lost. Yeah. Maybe their attack side will be a whole lot better. They won six out of seven of the first attack rounds last time and then bombed out to close. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's very scary. It's not a little scary. It's very scary. Now, I like the stun setup here. It's a good setup from Gentlemates. Instead of going aggressive, stun being held by Bayaz. The second Logan gets contact. Stun comes out. Swing comes through. Where He's already got the kill, though. He's too quick. Yeah. This time, Safe is shut down. He is punished. And Safe's been a huge player yeah. in the last couple rounds for Vitality. He's now 8 and 3. He was 8 and 2. So he's, he's been filthy. Space being taken, kicks does well. It's a bait with the sound to give that extra kill. The trade back into a 3v3. Tak has caught in no man's land. They are playing with their opponents, using sound cues to their advantage. Bayaz desperately looking for a way back in. Logan has found that trade. Puts them in one of the better scenarios we've seen so far. And Bayaz is going to try and force him into the open. He does, but they peek together. The teamwork and synergy from Vitality has been the better thus far. And now they sit post plant once again. Well, they judged a showstopper already. One hell of a counter, leaving Vitality 7-0 to zero in the lead, knocking on the door of an eighth round. And Gentlemates, they need camera something huge. They've even been spotted by the camera. That player is not diffusing. They won't be dragged into an angle. That flash didn't work. Certainly not right. It's given Logan a chance! And one that he will cash in every single time! One round for Gentlemates. Finally back on the board, and the defensive setup has worked. That might be the last bit of defensive aggression we see from this squad for a while. Yeah, Logan kicking it off on the other side of the map. He now joins safe at the top of the board. It, it shows he's still been fragging. He's still been putting up numbers, and some crispy, clean shots will finally get them their first round on the board. The fact is, though, Vitality are definitely not shaken. It will yet to stir the ship as Takas is going to invest into that operator. A different look to what has been definitely not a stagnant defense, but one with issues to pace straight through from Runner. That's again Bayas down. He's been such a critical part in a lot of their executions and the spam. Damage. Still, though, the tank will even things up, but the HP definitely isn't level. Yeah, nobody to heal you up like we saw previously. Viper's Pit used on mid? Safe? Are you okay? This is an insanely aggressive one. When he hasn't got past the trap, it doesn't give full control because they can still bypass. This is a terrible Viper's Pit. I mean, I was delaying saying it, but I hate this. Here. Let's see if he can make it work. It's safe, so I, I suspect he will. Got his own safe place to play with. I'm just counting the seconds to the peak. Eventually he goes through, doesn't see them. He's running down time. He's being a problem for this squad. Problem they finally dealt with, but, but look yeah. how long it's taken. And runners using the chaos to get a nice position. One that won't matter because gentlemen have called a save, but if they were still going for it, I think he would immediately shut that round down. Yeah, it's, it's got to be one of the most com confusing Vipers Pits his opponent's ever seen as well. Just yeah. sat there going like, what's, what's, the idea? Yeah. what's the idea? But they had to try and get rid of him because otherwise you have a known luck. <laughs> like, you're like, well, I know where he is, but I don't want to leave him there because then he is going to kill us from behind. It's like but if you were in that position and you, you popped like a, a KO knife, someone pops a KO knife on you, they know you're there. You're like, oh, damn. Oh, no, but somehow for Vitality, they've got safe there. There was another round where Sender hit the trap, still snuck behind them. He, he channeled his inner Logan. I feel like that mid-control's uh, it, It's a head-scratcher, the way the, round, the rounds have been going. Eight and one. The best possible opportunity now would be that 8-4 that happened last time around. We've mentioned it before with this comp. It definitely thrives more on the attack, but if you don't win any defensive rounds... It really doesn't matter anymore. Of course, with the save, there's still a purchase, but saves are only going to get you so far. It gets you buys, but it doesn't get you rounds. And that's what gentlemates are desperately looking for at this stage. And Vitality, well, you'd look at the fragging and Here. that's the thing. You kind of think that this game was a lot closer than it was. They still haven't destroyed that camera. Is it still there? I think it's still in, it's still in B main, at least on the map. Finally, it's gone. That flash stays inside of B main. That's cleared the. Oh, oh shit. For them. Oh, how has he won that? Again, that mid control. I've it's been a problem trail. for the side of Gentlemates and with safe now. 
Very much causing issues. Oh, he's been spotted. They just saw him. The run through from center, though. Not expected. A second player caught him off guard. Whalers keeps control for a few seconds before Runner runs it down. Takas caught by a trap miles away. And despite what the hood might be telling you, there are only two players. There you go. Only two players alive for Gentlemates. So it's going to take a while for this one to close out because they're not running it down. They're not coming in. Eight's all they get. No, they're giving them nine. Understandable. But uh, another devastating blow to the Gentlemates side. As we said, last time that they played this, it was four rounds found in that first half on their defense as well. And now three is the most. And with well, how yeah. things are going, it's not the likelihood either. No, it, it, this is looking like one of the most anticlimactic finishes to a series ever. After what was an absolute tooth and nail battle in map number two, split seconds away from Gentlemates sending Vitality packing. Now they are being bullied. And you have to bear in mind, as a third map, they had opportunities to take this elsewhere. They, they could have sent it for Christmas, guys. to another, to another early. map. They could have gone towards something like Ascent if they truly wanted to. And that would have been the third map in the last series. So something clearly they're willing to play, but they wanted to go here. They wanted to try and fight versus Vitality on a map they'd already been defeated on. And while Vitality are only getting further and further ahead. As said, a spot in the planes is waiting for the team that wins this matchup. A spot on a plane home is what meets the other. Finally, Bayers has had a little bit of luck, and you know what? Logan has two. The trade from Kicks, though, immediate. This is definitely one of the more aggressive rounds we've seen out of Vitality with that TP and the spawn being insane, but mainly with safe falling early. You now lose that Viper wall to there. clearly walk out onto A without worrying yeah. about these angles. And that's been a large factor of why there. Vitality have been able to take this control so consistently. And we can see there's no one holding it, right? There's nothing stopping them from going out, but they're not going to just dry peek it. Instead, they're worried. What angles do they need to clear? Flash on site cleared that out at least, but they're still worried about the spawn. So when Nade goes down, it's very Fight wise for planted. Gentlemates to stay back. A good chance that Vitality Fire got aggressive ball. or get aggressive, and that's exactly what's happening. And with no Blast Pack to play with, Runner can't really close that space the way he'd like. He might get a chance. The rocket actually lands, and it's Tack as to fall. Destrian might lose his life eventually, but look at the position of Kicks. Stun is fantastic, but they don't know about Kicks! Sitting in the corner. Dealing all the damage, another triple for this young man. 10 rounds on the board for Vitality. You might think after such a close map too, there's a zero missing beside Gentlemate's scoreline. Fix the hood. No, we've only had 11 rounds played and we barely had one for this side. Yeah, this has been a speed run. And every time somebody off. needs to step up, they've been there. A perfect bait set up for kicks and it, he has not missed. When they've put him in a position to thrive, that's exactly what they get. Was that breach just close enough that the stun didn't catch kicks? Because yeah, when we swapped so. to his POV, I thought he would be stunned, but maybe the angle of surprise, but he wasn't. So that breach, one step backwards, and it's it's over. It's theirs. Two rounds at least on the board. But instead, a disaster. Well, Tom, he brought it again. We've got a tech pause coming through. And to be honest, a good time for gentlemates to have a tech pause. Uh, Three. Uh, Three. Maybe like five minutes ago. I don't, the thing is, you <laughs> say that, but it's like now they have to stew in the fact that they're 10 1 down. Like it's not, it's, it's not a nice place to be because even if just calming yourself, you basically have to realize that you lose the pistol and this game is over. And think about the last couple of pistols we've had. We had one where they were in, what, a 3v1 scenario and Runner wins it. One, where they're in a 3v1 scenario and Kicks wins it. Yeah. So it's not like, they they have good pistol runs, they have good strats, but they've thrown a few of them away. They've ultimately cost them big. And now, well, you can see on the other side of things, all smiles, the pressure off for the side of Vitality. They've had the existence curse come up against them of him coming back a second time around on the same maps. They managed to weather the storm on the last one and win it for a second time. And now they are utterly dominating when they come back to Sunset. Well, just to let you guys know about the tech issues, it's some comms issues being tracked down in the background. Hopefully be ironed out soon. They usually don't take too long. And I think for gentlemen, it's one of the key points to point out for y'all at home 
technical pauses, those mics are cut off. There's no more talking. There's no discussing what you're going to do. There is just sitting and stewing, thinking. Now, look, you give existence time to think. That's great. But they don't have another pause to use on the side of Gentlemate. So you can't go, hey, boss, you <laughs> you thought of anything in the last couple minutes? No, there's uh, there's no chance for that. They used up both in the half. Right now, it's hard to That's what you need to train. I mean, if you can manage that, yeah. I wonder what a team would look like at the top level where their coach could IGL. That'd be crazy. Never seen it before either. <clears throat> Anyways. As long as it's not you, I think they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that team would look like, and it ain't pretty. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. Logan loved playing against teams like that, didn't he? There was no need for that. <laughs> there was no need for that. Bring back up the past and for Gentlemates. This one is definitely evoking memories of a previous map, but, uh, well, they're fonder memories, at least. We said they played on Lotus before, and it was close. It was even closer here. They got 10 rounds, and now they haven't made it off the starting mark. I don't know how this one's going to end, Tom, but I'll tell you what. I, I don't feel like this last map has been a fair representation of the series, but then again, considering how Breeze kicked off, yeah, you know, I was I was anticipating close match all the way. Double digits Basically, for both teams. it's been a best of one. Yep. On Lotus. surrounded by <laughs> whoever won that map. Yeah. That was that was the majority of the game. I think we're gonna have a, a longer map too than maybe the other two maps combined, excluding technical pause. But it it, it does just show like I I think the firstly gentlemates holding onto their roster. It, it you see the synergy, you see the ideas, you see the passion Definitely. behind them and their fans. And on the other side of things, Vitality for a while have been crafting this roster. They've still got Destrian in there who has been putting in a shift, but the fact is we know that there's tracks to come. But it does look like those pieces are starting to fit together. And then the only thing that can really stop them now is you, you think about the likes of what happened at Convergence, where they, they let things slip with the lead they had versus Foot. I think it was something like 10-0. So if anything, Gentlemates are one round better than that. But I will say that the likelihood of that happening seems slim to none. Because I've just seen nothing so far in this half that I'm like, okay, there's an opportunity. Unless Logan just goes and kills everyone every round. Because that's what they have. The one round they have is him pushing aggressively, getting a kill, swapping to the other side of the map, retaking, and getting three more. That's the only round that is on the board just for do that. right now. But just do that. Just do that. Just Logan go kill. All right. Solid strat. That's what I like to see. He needs to join the X Men. Well, Tom, I sort of, I sort of threw us under the bus. I said these normally don't take too long, but Liar. you can never be too careful, especially not with elimination on the line. The admins are going to keep working on this tech pause. For now, it's time to toss it over to our analyst desk. We're on standby. Take it away, Sue. Mitch and uh, Lying, name a more iconic duo, am I right? But uh, we are experiencing some tech issues on stage. Uh, it's a comm issue, so we should, it should be worked out in no time. For now, I've got Kakuka and Lothar are back with me. Uh, not really the start I expected. Uh, Lothar, what about you? Well, we have speak we have been talking about like the, the, the, the uh, not enough efficiency in the defense side, and it's mm -hmm. something that is haunting again, um, uh, gentlemates. And I feel like there's a lot of gaps in the map pool, uh, uh, sorry, not the map pool, but in the map, map control pool. that they have. We have seen Safe abuse completely that top mid and that Viper pit that <laughs> yeah, the Viper <laughs> Mitch was going just mad about. It was weird, but it bought time. So you can talk about like a, a lot about uh, creativity from Viper side as well and on the other side we see gentlemen that are not only like running out of ideas but also like caught up in the moment in so many instances and we see them at, at the end of so many rounds just saving just thinking about the next one which is by the way you know something uh, good to keep in mind because if you look at the score uh, and you look at the kills and the assists and everything it, it looks like it's going to be evened out but uh, in reality just because of those protocols they decide to save and Tom was saying something very important as well the only round that they managed to get was um, uh, who was it? it was Logan, that right? Was Logan. Having a, a 4K. That Logan 4K actually started with the tra trap play on the, in the, in front of A when they had like a stun set up with a tra with a trap from the cipher, which baited safe into peeking. Yeah. That was a 50-50 that Logan wins. It's a 50-50, so it's not like a certain thing that he, he gets because the contact was before the stun went out. And then he just rotates and gets three kills. Like, you just, can't really rely on that. Just Logan, just Logan things, though, right? He's done that before. Uh, but let's uh, take a look at the pistol round uh, once more. That feels like a while ago, but it was the fi first pistol. And again, like I said, I, I didn't really...
really expect the start to be like this and for it to snowball out of control. And I definitely, at one point, Lothar thought maybe Gentlemates were going to win this pistol. Yeah, there's like a huge advantage being done by mates here. And they take the space really well. And you can see how they set up a trap play with different crossfires. And the stun then just completely obliterates the opposing team. But it all comes down to just runner getting multiple kills and it's absolutely insane that he's able to win a 2v1 with 21 hp just look at the spacing between the players that is a big problem when it comes to fundamentals when it comes to the team like just playing well together if that would be a proper trade those players would have been closer to, to together so it would be very hard for runner to actually hit both of them well the issue is having sorted out now let's jump back into game and let's see uh tom, mitch and tom if gentlemates can get back into this well, there's certainly still a chance, but hope is fading. Bit yeah. by bit, second by second, round by round. And I think even that replay we saw of the pistol, the 21 HP, you can see there were so many chances for gentlemates to be in a better position than this, to have the foundations at least semi laid. Instead, there we go again. They're not in a good position, and they have to fight their way back out of pedestrian. Keeps them well and truly where they belong for now. 11 HP. That guy uses the ult. Okay, good info. And he's got a fallback. But look where his gate crash is. It's, it's actually way up in the spawn. They're, he's playing this aggressive because of the rolling thunder that Bayas is able to follow up on. But, but Takas has gone down. The numbers, despite a, a very nice play and an ult dump, the numbers end up even. Yeah, they're going to realize that safe is on the other side of the map. Like, he again was just causing havoc, trying to lurk back in behind. He's going to be faced by both players. He isolates one, and it's going to be the trade immediately from Sender. Perfect timing, good cause, and vitality with one of the most dominant halves we've seen thus far in the VCT EMEA. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And it's as well, not just the way that the scoreline sits, it's how they've made it here. Like we said, there were a couple rounds that definitely gave a chance for gentlemates to build up somewhat of a scoreline. And yet those were shut down and the rest have been completely decimated, snubbed out before they could really gain any flair with 11 to one at the half time. Well, I think even the French desk is going to find it hard to drum up support for gentlemates. The crowd isn't giving up yet, though. There's still life in them. Let's see if gentlemates attack side can turn it all around. I think it's fair to say, Tom, this pistol kind of valuable. Yeah, this, not losing a 3v1 would be ideal. <laughs> Here we go, though. This is where we have higher expectations for this composition. But at the same time, it is all in. Loss can't be had. And after a bit of early information not being found outside that A site, the majority of Vitality were rotating back. A stun being potentially set up in support, but they're actually just going to walk there. this one. Because of that, there you go. Cinder, it's actually a perfect use of the paranoia. He's going to get one and be able to fade away. And now calls for the rotation of his team. Yeah, the timing on that, it couldn't have been better. The placement couldn't have been better. I thought Natonk was a little too far forward, but the adjustment was made. Big brain by Sander, damage done. Whalers on 14, they still have smokes to play with at least, but they've lost Takas. Not only a great individual for this squad, 26 kills on both of the previous maps, one of which was a 13-4, but also the ability to break through some of these left. choke points and create some space. They've got to do that on foot. They've got to do it themselves. It ain't easy, and it's not even possible by the looks of it. Safe, easily dealing with that market push, leaving Logan alone. One versus five, and even if he was behind them, I don't think that was going his way. Not just a pistol round win, but an Andalusia flawless to back them up. Vitality need one of the next 11 rounds to send gentlemates packing. What a display from this younger French squad. But now sitting on the attack, it might just be over. They might not even have an attack. They're gonna have to risk it for a biscuit. It's not even really a risk at this point. It's everything on the line. A couple of stingers alongside sheriffs. It's not pretty. And of course, on the other side, a full investment in. Pressure gonna be put on to safe. You said he's in their heads. Well, let's see if the bullets will match. See now, waits for this push to come through. 
has taken space. Safe goes down. A couple of kills coming up for the duelist. A good start to this round and a rifle found. Yes, very nicely handled. I like the push in from Tack, as we said. That's what they were kind of missing in that last round. Popping the decoy right after the door, but they don't fall for it. The Tiger catching him, and Whaler's being flashed, but it doesn't matter. A huge reset on the Stinger that gets him both kills and leaves Sander with nothing. This is Gentlemates showing back up, finding a round at long last. Long path ahead of them, not just to make it to Here. Madrid, but to make it out of this series alive. For Sander, looks like he's going to try to do a little bit more damage. <laughs> it actually looks like he was going to try a ninja, but uh, they have not. If, if he closes by ninjing, I actually think we should unplug his PC. Like, you should not <laughs> allow him to do that. It's too disrespectful. Well, I'll be honest, if, if it was by ninjing, he would be going anyway. So you can unplug his PC yeah, like true. he doesn't care. He's gone. He's out of here. I mean, before you see that get yeah, halfway. Like, Hi, I'm <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, next round. Just exists as walks out. He has like a proper <laughs> entrance and everything. Unplugs and walks away. We call that doing a Tobin. One shut down a whole LAN quarterfinal just by kicking out a cable. Good man. Was it was it in Ireland? It was in Ireland. So it was yes. only like two PCs anyway. All right. Okay. <laughs> he unplugged the bicycle that was being used to power them. <laughs> he accidentally moved the hamster that was running on a wheel. <laughs> everything just went down. Well, two rounds for gentle mates. A third being sought for, and Vitality are pretty much giving it up. Right? They're playing with pistols. Runners left on just a sheriff. I think of what do I do? You won't get that reference, but someone will. Someone Portal will. closed. Packers has managed to get quite far, but it does seem like Kix is very well aware that he could have pushed all the way through in this direction. There are three players waiting around this corner. Flash. Well, two of them are blind. It'll be a trade out, but it's only a spectre. Not really too much of an issue for the side of Gentle Mates to plant. Yet to really get into position. Still just trying to hold on to some of the angles. Runner with a nade as well. They might just opt to try and push through this. Now, they have managed to destroy the trip, which would have been a bit of a danger, but they don't quite connect the shots. It will be a relatively clean round for Gentle Mates. The mountain, the first steps have been made on it. They have got a very long way to hit the peak. Limited supplies to get there as well. But it's on its way. Takas is starting to warm up on that Yoru. He's involved in the last two rounds. Some good TP plays, some good flashes. The wind conditions are gradually being ticked. But as we said, Vitality didn't have a lot to work with. They played with pistols. They played with a lot of weaknesses. And now they come into this round. The side of Vitality, the defense, full rifles. No ultimates really online for either squad. Bar Whalers, Tom, yes. He's got the From the Shadows. It could be useful on the attack to reposition. The Gentlemates can't afford to put a step wrong. What a play. The stun, the flash, and the peak by Runner. An opening duel. Many more to come. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. That stun was literally just coming out from the other side. So it was just the flash. Force them back into it. Yeah, it was, it was just, no, I mean, flash. it was just the flash because yeah. obviously the breach is on the attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it, was, it wasn't needed as much of a play. It was actually the stun yeah, went through and he goes, all right, I'll react. Pop the flash. And they you. get the kill immediately, ruining what was an initial setup. Getting rid of Takas as well, as I said, in the last round, his disruption and this angle is just filthy. Ooh. He gets a second for free. Didn't even mean to, I don't think. Two players now stand between Vitality and a spot in the play-in. The they have spike. fought tooth and nail on the last map. Is there space over on A? Because that's the only place he can really be thinking of TPing to, but there's 30 seconds left. The tank trying to make space, trying to sell a bit of a fake, but no, they're actually going to try and play this one together. But waiting at the squad of Vitality. The tank, he's not going to get that second. Is left all onto Whalers. No time, no health. He is stuck in a corner, trying to fight versus the might of Vitality. He'll at least be able to find one, but so much more to find. Vitality after a close affair, a grind back on map number two. They will send Gentlemates packing and head their way into the play-in. Vitality started this series out losing 13 to four. We said they had to get better. They had to show us a stronger face than that. They closed it out 13 to three. One-upping their Definitely. opponents, taking the dub. The high fives all around. This one, there's not much to write home about. 
there's everything to write home about. For Vitality, everyone stepped up. No, no massive hero. Safe had some good rounds. Runner was in with some incredibly aggressive opening duels. Some good space taking. Don't know how Sander managed that flank still after being revealed by the trap, but he's an enigma. Too quick. And Kicks had some big clutches, big round closers. Nestor just did his job, you know? Well, I, I, think, I think the thing as well, you have to look at this squad and say, like, realistically, with a couple of new, younger players, getting boom like that in the, in the first map, having your opponents playing these crazy comps and running at you, and then being able to still deliver. To turn the tide, they needed three rounds in a row. They managed to do that to get to overtime. They fought tooth and nail on that map, and then they come into Sunset, a map they've already played, and they body their opponents, not even remotely close, forced to save more rounds than they actually had victories. Vitality just were utterly dominant. And now going up against any team going into that play-in, you're going to be fearful because you already know what they can do. Yeah. It certainly looks like they're in a pretty safe spot in most people's minds. Wouldn't want to be one predicting against them here today. I'll tell you that, oh, Tom, you know. because it, they, were, they were faking us out. <laughs> Map two, I thought it was done. But in the end, Vitality have what it takes. They show us that they're a top-level team. And now, we get, we've get we got to see from them. Let's hear from them. We've got an interview with Zoe down on the stage. Thank you so much, Salah and Destrian joining me. First of all, congratulations to Team Vitality winning out once again against the Gentle Maids. Now, looking back at map number one and two, we did see something exciting coming out of the Maids uh, with that Phoenix being implemented there into uh, their agent selection. Did that throw you off a little bit? Did you have to adjust your game plan coming into this, Destrian? I don't think it... I can answer this. I mean... I would say it didn't interrupt us. We're just like very sloppy. They played really well, but yeah, I think we just didn't play like we usually play. Uh, it's an interesting comp, like it has some intricacies, but eh. What did What were your thoughts on that Phoenix in there? I mean, I think we expected them to play the kind of comps they, they play, and we expected them to be really anti strat heavy. They have like a really good coach and a really good IGL, so we know they're going to do these kinds of things. I think it necessarily didn't throw us off. I think. Because of this change in sleep schedule, we decided we we're going to wake up on uh, second map, <laughs> second half. So, uh, well, yeah. glad you did. That was That's definitely right. needed. What a comeback that was. Now, speaking generally about your roster, uh, Destrian, how far in advance did you know that you will be playing over tricks, uh, tracks in the kickoff tournament? <laughs> it's like, what can I say? Is that is that the look at them? I, I can answer this. You can answer it. Go uh, for it. I mean, we always kind of had the plan that we would play with Destrian here because of the Trex's uh, situation, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we knew coming in that with Destrian, we still have massive aspirations. He's still a fucking insane player, of course. <laughs> but yeah, like it wasn't a surprise, basically. I think we knew. We were very happy about it. We were pretty much the luckiest team in the league, right? Who else gets to have such a fucking sick player as a, a stand-in? So. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't look like he doesn't belong at all. You guys have been playing phenomenally. Uh, how will Trex fit into that roster once he's joining? We're going to have to see, but now it's this year's time. So uh, we'll see. When it, when it happens, we'll see. But now I think... Uh, Good focus on him. <laughs> all, all I will say, the average height of the team will go down drastically, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's actually why. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, with you, we're on the ceiling, so, you know, it can only go down from there. Both of you, once again, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining me, and we will be back with more elimination matches right after this. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Dolor Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this.
Red Bull gives you wings. Let's go. I got big dreams, I'ma do big things Hey, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean I don't move slow, I move fast right past Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad I'd be grateful for everything that I have You only got this life, you don't get it back Make the most of it, become the best that I can Everybody look at me, I got a plan You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start Cause how you do anything is everything you start Stay consistent and do it every day Don't let fatigue get in your way Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it so I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm making my own luck Adrenaline, my drug I'm sick of feeling stuck I got this, I got this Will not quit to the top, I promise Cause I've had I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels And money and budgets, it's funny I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak I like to build things Empires out of buildings I want to leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things Of motivating and killing Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing I work through the pain, I like seeing gains I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained A true man pushes through, you don't hear complaints No, I don't want to stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight again Vitality, they live to see another day, but unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Gentlemates. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back here once again with Kakuka and Lotha. Lotha, I feel like it's too soon. I love this Gentlemates team. I wish we had seen more out of them. Yeah, I definitely agree because we only have seen them play one team. They only played against Vitality twice, and that's about what it. When you think about it, every other team played two teams, two different teams. So we have seen many different faces of them. Here, we have seen Gentlemates only play in one direction with a counter play coming into the second match. So I cannot wait to actually watch them play in the regular season in April because I'm, I still have high hopes for this team. Yeah, and I feel like their group was quite hard, right? They had a Vitality and Fnatic as well, but they will be back, like Lothar said. So don't worry, Gen. Gentlemates fans will see them again. But let's take a look at Group A because we have another elimination match coming up. And this group, again, uh, especially Casey uh, versus Foot coming into this, Kakuka. One yeah. is coming in after a really grueling long win and another is coming in off of the back of a bit of a, bit of a brutal loss as well. Yeah, exactly. But they both share a common enemy and his team Heretics, right? Just making it straight onto the playoffs. And as you're saying, where you're seeing a Foot that probably is testing out some uh, different stuff, but definitely bringing some hope to the... Uh, uh, region. 
Yeah, I, I, in general, I would say that uh, Team Heretics is also performing really well. So to see this bracket go this way, it, it doesn't make much sense when you just look at the bracket. But when you watch the matches, Team Heretics is actually performing insanely well. Yeah, and the expectations are interesting because if I saw this match last year, I would have been like, oh, Foot mm -hmm. should be fine. They, they're, they're not going to lose to KC. Uh, yeah. But I feel like that's completely gone out the window. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, though, Kakuka. Yes. Does Foot have a buff today given the chamber patch is now live. Yeah, exactly. Some people might have missed it, but we are actually playing on patch 0. Uh, sorry, uh, 8.03. So that means the chamber has suffered a small change. Uh, first of all, the bullets for the headhunter are going to be cheaper from 150 to 100, which also means that uh, during the pistol round, you can go back, because many people used to uh, buy the ghost or something else because four bullets were not enough. But now you should be able to buy six and a trademark, which is yeah. a very, very good kit for a first round. And also the Tour de Force is going to be a uh, shooting slightly but definitely noticeably faster from 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 if I'm not that mistaken. That is that is correct. All of those changes are being now in the game and I chose few clips of actually Chamber, uh, sorry, of Cena playing Chamber in the previous matches and I would like to show you how those pad changes could have affected him in the previous match. So this clip on Icebox, you can you can pay attention to the fact what something that Kakuka mentioned, he has only four bullets in the pistol round and a trademark. But when he's taking the gunfight, pay attention to how he's taking the gunfight. He's gonna be very, very cautious about shooting the bullets because as a, again, he only has four. He can have a two body shot uh, kill if someone doesn't have armor, but that's not gonna work on Sovas, right? So when he's taking that gunfight, it's very reserved. Now think about it this way. If he had six bullets, he would have been spamming those bullets. He had a potential to get more kills. Now the second clip is right here on split, where he's taking a gunfight. Um, oh, maybe I need to load it. One second. We're gonna go like this. Here we go. So he's gonna have three bullets left on the pistol round. Again, he had a four bullets uh, pistol round by, and he's gonna shoot them right here from heaven, jump down, and take a gunfight against an omen with only a classic. Again, think about how different could that yep. run be if he had two bullets two more. Bullets. It changes a lot. But there's also another implication. So because of this change affects early game plan so much in the pistol round and in the follow-up you can have more bullets for the second round if you lose the pistol round um, you will have more cash for the round three as well in this particular game between foot and giant we had um, we had seen it by in round two after losing the pistol uh, pistol round five bullets now he only has one left in the round three but pay attention how much he buys he buys for 3.9k which is the vandal and the shield. big shield but he doesn't buy the trap at all and that is a big problem because he was spending also much more cash for the bullets in the previous round he doesn't buy and prioritize the trap over the shield which is another problem that's i think something we have to talk about foot because the efficiency in buys is not the best by them but this but can the have economy an should be better <laughs> yeah. in in general i would say that the patch could affect uh, cnet's chamber a lot it's, it, the, it's the small changes, right? Like yeah. the, the not spending the 50, uh, having more bullets, or also in the future just having a bit extra to buy a full util. So they were ahead of it. You feel like maybe they kind of got uh, seen it used to the chamber once again, but to kind of uh, anticipate this change happening. Well, I would say that if a team doesn't use the chamber before the buff, before the buff, then there's no point in using chamber after the buff because you need to have a f reason to play him before. The buff is not big enough to like say, oh, now we're gonna play him, you know? But I also would have to say that CNET's chamber leaves a lot to be desired. We have seen v a lot of inefficiencies. Yeah. He had been not using his ultimate and was buying an operator on the same round. That's legit. He had an ult and bought an operator instead, instead of using it. And he also had uh, a round when he had an ultimate and didn't use it, picked up a gun and didn't drop it to someone else. Hey, a buff is a buff. A buff is a buff, I feel like. Uh, I, I, I'm optimistic about this. Actually, we grilled uh, CNET and Mr. Farlin a little bit about their comm changes, and this is what they had to say during our last post block. I'm just going to say it because I think this is what everyone wanted to hear from you guys. Um, what is going on with the comps? <laughs> what is going on with Thank the God agents? The what is going on with everything? Uh, wait, well, I guess we'll start with you, CNET. Okay, so I think there's an obvious Per, uh, agent that's missing. I'm not sure if you remember Jet, you know, the one that dashes. Uh, Have you ever played no, I didn't Smoke, see knives. her in my mind. Yeah, so <laughs> why? Do what? you miss her? You don't like Jet anymore? What's up? Uh, if, uh, okay, how can I explain this? Like, in the 
what how we play actually uh, i want to be supportive for my team you know so like for example in lotus maybe we tried jet but it wasn't that how we expected uh, like and i said like we can maybe maybe play euro because it's like i think it's not op i would say but it it's, came from you the idea Yes. Uh, yes. Ah, <laughs> nah, he's, he's comfortable with Jet. He's the best character in Jet. But uh, we just don't want to carry one guy to us to the Madrid or the, to the Champions. You know, we just want to play as a team, like last year. Uh, there was no one carried us for last year, and we just happened to uh, do it in the, this year too. If we give him Jet, we know he's gonna shoot everyone. We know he's gonna play good on Jet. But if we want to him adapt to the team right now, like communication, like how. We, uh, Adapting our game style for us, uh, that's why this comp is uh, feeling a little bit different from the last year. I mean, judging by that, Kukuka, with the new chamber changes, we're never going to see CNET on jet again, right? I would be sad. I would be very sad, and I think I wouldn't be the last one. But if we also think about their opponents, K-Corp, we're talking also about a team that has Eng as a coach. We talked about it so much. But we need to think about what was happening on the server and how things can be countered once you have the tape on how they want to do things. For example, I think Split is a great example because of the Euro. Now, I'm, I grabbed a couple of rounds to, so, to show the same idea behind uh, uh, K-Corp's minds, but then two different outcomes depending on when and who they're playing. So first one is going to be against Giants. I want you to take um, a, a look at what's going to happen on A, right? I'm going to play it. Very slowly, you're going to see that Martin is going to use his ultimate. He's just going to, to be onto side and to just create all that pressure and clear out all that space so his team could actually get onto side and plant the spike. He's going to also be putting this pressure onto screens. He's going to spot not one, but two. And as you're seeing also, Shin is going to be staying in the back. Now, uh, as we fast forward just a little bit, we see that while the plant is going down, all of Giants is just waiting behind screens, behind that, that smoke, uh, and there's a lot of utility that Giants could have used, but just because they don't do it and they it, it actually takes them a longer time, they cannot prevent, not even with Cloud's ultimate, uh, the plant going down. Now, when they want to spiral onto the site, all the utility from K-Corp is still able to be used, because even though Cloud has already uh, ulted, the paranoia, everything, you don't need to be completely stable uh, to use. And as we're going to see, it's a mess just because of how much K-Corp is able to save before the round start, uh, uh, starts just by using the Euros ultimate. Okay, this is a round that they're going to win. Now, let's see what Heretics did under the same circumstances. Well, mostly the same, because if you take a look, K-Corp is going to have four ultimates, but not a lot of money. This is a round that they need to win. And the plan is going to be to swamp A side. So they decide, again, your ultimate to clear A. We see that Heretics was not born yesterday and decide to clear the site completely because they know what they did against Giants. And they also use the Nightfall just in case Martin wants to get out of his ultimate. He will have uh, the team deafened just to have the impact that he wants. But Heretics not only is giving them all the space, there's also two very important things. One, they have a Viper with that wall that will help them. And take a look at what's happening here. Miniboo has pushed just because of that micro at the beginning. And he is already considering going from behind and taking that 1v1 uh, against the potential Lurk, right? So as we stay, you see that Miniboo is going to get the kill here and everybody's going to be ready. Remember what was happening on Elbow? A lot of things, uh, Giants not being able to go across the Astro Smoke. Well, this is why it's important to have a very good Cypher. And just because of the pressure that he's putting, uh, Casey feels like they also need to use another ultimate. The, the round is getting out of their hands. And because of this cage, they are able to safely go into a, a elbow and actually get these kills, putting more pressure even with the utility. And of course, Rain's beautiful performance. So as we're seeing, a little bit of tape gives a lot of information when your agents are this special. Let's see what they have for today. Yeah, okay, cool. They definitely have uh, some tendencies. And I feel like on the other side, as we walk back uh, and find Lotha once again, who I'm sure would love to talk about this Yoru. Uh, but we have one uh, team which I feel like has blown all of their tendencies out of the water. And another team that are kind of uh, leaning more more into those tendencies. So Lothar, you feel like we're gonna get a bit of a playstyle mismatch at least today? Um, I don't think so. I'm actually very happy to see that a lot of teams are adapting the Euro as it broke it down perfectly. Like there's also a lot of min-max oh still God, he possible. Just said perfectly to my uh, but 
the teams are playing inefficiently still. There's a lot of room to grow, and both teams are learning from uh, foot. We have seen uh, the Euro on CNET, on Lotus, probably gonna get a repetition today if we get the, the same map, right? But at the same time, we don't see a lot of, let's say, of those set plays being done or are not flexible enough. The run that we broke down right here, the Euro ult coming on the A side, and then the Nightfall on top of it, that was a waste because yes. the Yoru can discover everything, exactly, right? Exactly, right. But it is a waste, but you also need to think that they really, really needed that round, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, the economy was um, out of the question. If they if they lost that one, that was probably a 7-1. Like, there's there's a lot of things, and, you know, it's better to combo it, even if it's just by that small yeah, chance. Yeah, but think, they could have saved I it. Know. They, I know. For yes, the possible perfect right? Valorant is boring, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, perfect Valorant is perfect the worst Valorant. Valorant. Say it. I need to hear it from you. Perfect Valorant is boring. I always prefer when teams are inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> I just know how much it pains you having to say that. And speaking of pain, I got, I hate to do this. I, I'm very, very, very, very, very, very sorry uh, for doing this, but we got to talk a little bit about Magnum. I feel like oh. not his best game. Um, uh, okay, we're not going to talk about Magnum just yet. We're going to talk about N real quick because uh, a, N, uh, as you guys know, uh, a coach, of course, for this team. And I will say Magnum a the crazy... Bullet. Crazy, oh. crazy, crazy hopium, copium. If you guys are Keiko fans, I'm going to sell it to you straight. N has never missed the playoffs in EMEA. When it was back in CIS, Gambit won first strike, won the first Masters. Then he came over to EMEA, uh, didn't win the first one, but was at least in the semifinals. Yeah. And then he was in another grand final. Then he qualified for Berlin, won that. Uh, then went to champions, came second on that one. Then when he mm -hmm. came back into EMEA, when it was qualifications all over again, he got into another playoffs. <laughs> it was another semifinal. What I'm trying to say is there is hope because uh, N will refuse to not be in a playoffs. That's all I'm going to say. That's good. You know, it, it actually, uh, it hurt me a bit when I saw Aang tweeting the other day. We saw it briefly that every de he said every defeat is on me. And I feel like because of the expectations that we have for him and for what he's able to do, I think that he's the one to take it harsher because he's always, I think he's a perfectionist. I think that he proves this every time that we see uh, his reactions or, or his team. And I really feel like this could not only give them hope, but actually the kind of push that they need. I'll be honest, I'm a fan of N when it comes to his coaching methods and Gambit to till day to to to, the, to this day for me is the most disciplined team that we had in the past. Although the attack side was hurting because of that, because they were too passive at some point. But I love the discipline, love the fundamentals that they had there, and that's something that is missing in a lot of teams nowadays. Yeah, it's going to be a big task though, because we are in the elimination territory. We've had to say goodbye to one team already, and it's time to see who's going to survive another day in Group A. Here's Carmichael and Foot taking the stage. How many duelists does it take to win championships? Well, according to newly acquired and highly anticipated coach Eng, three is the answers and they're taking to the stage alongside the rest of this revamped Carmen Corp roster. And their opponents, the most promising team that Turkey has to offer. The expectations are high for this very squad. With two exciting additions to the roster heading into the 2024 season, how far can they take it? Let's hear it. Make some noise for Foot Esports. And with their kickoff lives on the line, both teams have to give it their all. Let's hear it one more time for both teams, as only one will be moving on. Oh, we have two big hitters on stage today. Foot, they went to every international tournament uh, last year. They brought CNED in to give him a boost. And of course, the other side, we have N with his rookies. And Magnum, too, who has also been in plenty of international tournaments of his own. But the question is, who is going to survive this elimination? We've seen uh, just how important Kukuka, that stamina yeah. and mental strength can play in these yeah. situations. Exactly. In the last match, we were seeing a vitality that was taken over gentlemates because playing the long game is something that people with experience is very, very good at. But if we know the Eng method, we know that that also consists of very, very long days. Freeze and Ascents are out of the question. And Lothar, we're going to get Lotus. Okay. Okay. So most likely some of your reaction on Lotus, but also yeah. food. Remember, food 
is incredibly inefficient on defense on this map. Only 33% win rate on defense. Last time they played Lotus. But then we go to they, Bind. They take away their chamber stuff. The, the maps that they were playing chamber on. I was actually on. excited for the yeah. Icebox. So we're not going to see Ice while they play the chamber on. That no mm. split either. So how but do we feel about this? there's a chance for Sunset. Yeah, but how, how do we feel about this, given that the patch just came in? Well, that's. Uh, I, I guess they reviewed the tape and said, well, uh, seeing that that chamber wasn't the best, so we're taking off. You know? Is that a good idea, you think? I, I think so, because it really required a lot of work. Yeah, and definitely uh, also thinking about Lotus, that first map, thinking about Cena going back on that Euro. We were seeing this the other day. It fell flat by the, let's say, mid to half of the attack, like at the beginning. Very good set rounds. Uh, maybe a little bit of layering that was not uh, perfection by the end, but definitely it felt like they run out of steam very, very quickly on the side of foot. Mm -hmm. And I'm still thinking, like, second was bind, right? Second yeah. map? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm worried there. We have seen, uh, seen it on Neon That's on that map. That's like play against Heretics. Uh, I don't well, know. Well, as you guys can see from Agent oh. Salehek over wait, wait, wait. here, some uh, the here. Yoru stuff is gone. They're not leaning back into that. That's, that is really surprising. Oh, so so oh, wait, this, this is the other way around. Carmine Corp is on the side of, of foot and, and vice versa. What? Why? The names, at least. Is this... Oh, yeah, oh right. my that god, my, oh, I, I, I, my brain is not braining. Dude, sorry. I, I thought my brain I thought is also uh, no longer braining. But hey, we, we can put our three brains together and work this so out. So Foot should be the one with Gecko. That's, so right. on the left side, it should be exactly. Foot because of that. So mm -hmm. Cynad is on Raze, which also makes sense because he played Raze in the past. But for me, showcasing that right. you have a change so deep into the tournament with so many months of off time and practice and you just swap your main reason to play that composition like to play y Yoru it's it's incredibly disheartening yeah. to see and let's not forget CNET is the person that made that decision so I yep. wonder if this his if this is his doing as well but it's time to get into the map and throw this over to your cast let's give a warm welcome to Pablos and Ash Thank you very much, Yinzu. And yes, it's the last chance for both of these teams to make it to the playing stage. Carmen Corp and Foot stand in each other's way for this series. Many, it's for many, it's very highly anticipated. It looks to be a very closely contested matchup. It really does, and it's interesting. The desk touched on it. These changes coming in on the side of Foot, but I'm looking forward to seeing how this pistol does end up panning out here. Foot looking for that early rebel control, and K Carmen Corp ready to contest. 100% foot on attack, Carmen Court on defense as we enter this A site crunch. It does seem that foot will be highly contested in this one as Casey slowly but surely move in their direction. But foot not budging, holding that cross line. It might be Casey's inevitable denies, demise unless Cena is able to do anything with that raise on that close proximity. Martin so quick to it. Tamazi as well. Foot are instantly two players ahead. Perfect timing with that wall going up as well. It just denies the coordination on the side of Foot there when they were looking to get those trades down and so much patience coming out from Karma and Core, right? But in the corner here, Mr. Fallen being pushed off that angle, now having to regroup with the team, having to work with the shorty into the retake. Yep. That's tough looks. Indeed, and they're pushing into this A site, one defending it. It's out of captain alone. The stun is good, but avoided, subsided, and it does buy time for his teammates to arrive. Maybe the crossfire to be contested. That's where Yedishay comes into play. Out of captain has a short life in that endeavor, and it's Mr. Fallen, the captain of foot, to fend off four players alone. Won't be able to do so. It's one round in the board, straight out of the bat for foot. Who comfortable here for foot. And when we're looking at the way that... Oh, wait. No, no, no. It's a round in for Karma and Core. We wait. got the titles oh, mixed no. up at the top here. But I got trolled. Regardless, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. At least we can regroup in that kind of sense. We, reminder to everyone who is watching that it is going to be Karma and Core on the attack and foot on defense right now. But talking about these changes here for the side of foot the fact that they just yes. touched on the fact that you have three changes in the agent pool here on the side of foot makes me wonder a bit like maybe the cypher change there for yet J is looking towards trying to deny martin some of those deeper executions those blast packs towards site and try and get him caught in those those trap wires in that kind of sense or cover a bit more ground to allow these rotations in as mm -hmm. we see again foot they are looking for this rebel control, but completely other side of the map here for Carmine Core. 100%. And with Carmine Core leading the charge here in terms of rounds, we'll just play it slow and steady. Of course, you can see Foot aggressing here on this A site. Not doing a thing, it's going to be a whole switch and exchange of a map. There. 
And uh, as Casey swiftly move into the C site, no problem whatsoever. But you know, it's these second rounds that often can make a difference. I've seen, I've seen, we've seen multiple of these second rounds. You know, fall in, just fall in straight. You know, not going to the team that they're supposed to go in. So right now for Casey, it's the perfect case scenario. Just hold back five players versus five players, and you've got superior guns. Yeah, looking towards the way the foot might want to end up handling this. I mean, you do have quite a bit of utility to work with at the very least. There's still a Dizzy available, the Wingman there for Cracks as well. Then you've also got the Nade and Boombot of still up here for Cena. So a lot of potential here into the retake round, but then it also depends on how do Foot want to handle this. Time has ticked so far, they had to make a very long rotation from A-Rubble. They did indeed. It's put so much time for KC, making it all that simpler. Martin was the only person with a ghost with a pistol, so it doesn't really matter that he ends up dropping and losing that weapon. No time to defuse. Uh, yeah, there's no time to defuse, right? Yeah, no. None, which means that KC gets a second round. No kills collected, so no orbs gathered, but it's still two rounds for Carmen Cool. Hey, just looking to deny as much as possible that they can over towards the side of Carmen Core, right? But now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. You have two of those outlaws on the side of Carmen Core. Starting on the on the attacking side means that they'll probably look for some of those slower moves up towards those executions, playing a little bit more of that kind of default control. But the way that they're postured right now, they do still seem to favor that kind of death ball approach into the bonus with the 4-1 split. The very, very deep KJ turret there on the side of Magnum on top of that. And look at the camera. It's not going to be popped right now on the side of Foot 4 Yetajay, but it's really, really good for those retakes. But Carmen Cop are very loud about this. So for, even though they don't use the cam, they're very well knowledgeable of this push. Yeah. Maybe in the post plant that camera could be really important. But for now, Carmen Cop take full access to this over the site, spike to the back of it. A little bit of an off angle here. Of course, you're going to have to have a lot of sea long control for that post plant to work out in your favor. And they'll probably want some picks early on, but it's foot with first blood. And there might be one person in trouble here, Shin, hiding up on an upper angle. But so far, with Narate able to bring it back to even standing, it's a really fickle affair. Mr. Fallen, really important kill as Martin tried to close up the gap. And now the rest of his team can start moving in. Narate, back of sight. He's got a brother in arm that is yet to be brought into the fray. Shin with a double. Repositions Mr. Fallen, though, has gotten all of the rest of the kills. Triple for the captain. And that's Foot getting themselves their first round of this map. A very clean flood onto site there from Foot. Not even needing to reveal that retake camera over towards Rubble either. So we're already seeing glimpses of the ideas that Foot have with the adjustments that they've made to their team composition. But all in all, still not a bad bonus either on the side of Carmine Core taking out three of the weapons here on the side of Foot. Looking over towards how we're cycling up to these ultimates right now, mainly looking at Yedijay to be only one away from that Neural Theft. Not the strongest ultimate in the yeah. game, to be quite fair. But regardless, I think for Carmine Core, a player that I've got to have my eyes on here is Martin. In his last matches, he didn't have the greatest time, and he was one of the star rookies that we were looking for. Yeah, he needs to shine, right? So many rookies coming into this VCT EMEA, you've got to, you know, match them in that performance if you want to stand out, if you want to make sure that, you know, you've replaced some strong names out there, you're going to make sure you've uh, got the guns to back it up. But now, Carmen Core. Onto this right-hand side, seems that it's Baron. Foot have left it open, happy for the retake, but it's going to be a feisty one with five players on each side looking to fight it off. I mean, free safe for the taking, right? Foot, they're very good with their retake protocols. Look how close Magnum is to this fight here. Aftershock will be doing some damage off of this fight, but Mr. Fallen's been able to escape here. And the fact that Magnum was in the middle of this fight is able to do so much damage. Two kills to the man. And now there's two left for Foot. They're trailing behind and they need to pick and they need it fast. But Magnum is being sneaky oh. time and time again. Call this man a rat. Call him what you want. But it's Carmen Cup with the dub. I mean, the IGL has to step up in this situation. Last time. I hate to point it out, but that own 15 on Lotus, he needs to take a stand early on in this match. And that's the kind of momentum that you want to see coming out from the captain. And those, it, not even just Magnum, but sure, he's able to grab the kills, but the crossfire set up there into the post plant, indestructible. I mean, this is a redemption story from Magnum, right? Not only from his previous map, but the fact his re-entry into VCT. 
he's uh, been missing that redemption, yeah. and I think getting himself started on the right foot straight out of the bat is the best way to go about it here for Maddo. A lot of weight on your shoulders in that kind of situation. But early look over towards Rubble, dress, trying to fake some of that conditioning that had been done previously on the side of Carmine Core with that seed presence. But look at the rotation. It already pulls away from foot. Four players leaning over towards that site. It's cracks alone here on A. It is indeed. Different approach to previously where, you know, you'd have players closer to that B anchor. But um, of course, cracks will drop, will drop back from it as it's all cleared out by Paranoias. And again, we're looking after time and time again, Foot happy to go for these retakes. They did make it work when they had weapons. Ouch. But with Sheriffs, it's a different idea. Spike planted. I mean, it's just about doing as much damage as possible, right? The for economy sure. situation on Carmine Core, not that comfortable yet. Such a good paranoia. And it's just going to stop them all in their tracks. They might be moving in one by one. But oh. now it's going by it! Oh, one check player after the other is in the highlight reels. An ace there for Nere, Carmine Core stepping up here, four to one, and cycling up to these ultimates quite nicely. You do have that showstopper available. Great combination potential there with the nightfall on any sort of execution, or even into a post plant to try and delay that retake that foot so tend to favor. I do wonder if four foot, the adjustment ends up being to fight a little bit more forward. They have been playing very strict retake protocols thus far. Happy to give up that C site in particular. And they were previously burned on that push over towards Rubble. Not going to be the case this time around. Ooh, early paranoia coming out from Mr. Yeah, Ford. Too. It's way too yes. early. And it's going to be costly. No, maybe I miss, uh, saw it for Shins, perhaps. But still, oh. KC take over the site. Showstopper not finding a kill. But they do clear it out. Spike. There's still that camera, though, that Carmine Core do not know about yet. Which is the interesting part. Thrasher going in for a journey. They know where Shin is, so he's got to hide. Aftershock denying him sight control. Martin is there to help! Why the hell not? And Foot call it off, vacate it. No way you go in for a 3v5, especially when they know exactly where everyone's coming from. That was the post plan I was talking about. The Nightfall just doing so well to completely stall that retake. So looks like they're going in for another crunch, and it might be working for them. But Rolling it looks thunder. like they might only be going for the kills. Not much more than no. that, as Carmine Core. Oh, it got dicey by the end of it, but they still calm and collected, cl close it all out in their favor. This is mounting up to quite a sizable lead already in this first half of Lotus. You've got to start feeling comfortable now if you're a Foot fan. Because you're looking at that money situation. Sure, two hero rifles to work with. You've got the Rolling Thunder to try and shift the upcoming situation into round number seven. But Carmine Core, again, they've just conditioned that pressure over towards C. They've run one of the fakes now on one of the Ecos on the side of Foot. Then they're happy to pivot back over towards that C site. I mean, Foot have been giving it up for free, right? So why not continue to push that issue? Foot have yet to find an answer on that type of control, but I think they've also been willing to give up a little bit too much map control, leaving a lot to be desired and a lot of that information that they'd be looking for. And this is quite hurting for Foot, you know, having to get pull your uh, foot off the gas time and time again. But this time, I think it's actually sort of working for them. Three players to the defense is not too bad, but Sino caught out into the open will only be met with a lead to the chest. Yatage onto the side. The prodigy of the team won't be able to live enough to take anyone down with them. But there's still cracks here with a Vandal. And so does Mr. Fallen. Oh. And Crax is throwing crack things and now the captain joining in. They've turned the whole tide of this round in their favor. Opportunity though, from the shadows available here for Shin, he could just take the ultimate over towards that A site, but also misses out on the information. Would rather play with what he has now. It's a 1v2 for Shin to do by himself. Two different angles from the foot players. And the stun not quite finding him. Paranoia evades oh, as misses. well, but he does whip the shots! Mr. Fallen doesn't miss, and for that reason, Foot win the eco. A momentous play necessary for Foot to find themselves back into this first half. With the defuse down here for Foot, they're slowly coming up to this opportunity to try and equalize, stalling out on that momentum that KC has been building for themselves, and now, Curious look oh, over how, come yeah, on. no, that was insane. Like the, the replay, 
the energy, that's what you want to see here for foot. That excitement there on the stage to bring themselves back into it mentally. For sure. I mean, they've set the bar so high up for this team, not only for this team, but for the Turkish scene as a whole, that they've got so many expectations built up for them to be able to perform. This is such an important match. Foot don't want to be eliminated straight for, straight out of the bat. They want to make it into play and stealing. So they've got to show it by bringing us a comeback here. Casey here, though, heading to this right-hand side, and it might not be the best idea given that there's so much presence from the defenders. First time that we've seen this aggressive look over towards the A site in quite a while as well. The only other time was, again, with that initial 4-1 split. You have the, the push from mid, And there might be a crucial one. Timing. Just waiting out. It's a timing game, isn't it? Oh, it's he avoids the bullets of Yenage and backs out of it. So he thinks another way Whoa. of it. As Martin pushes as well from a different angle. I mean, you found C, Ned. The trade was there. And KC are in the opponent's spawn. And Kata Captain is on the flank of the flank. And it's incredible. Bringing foot right back on top of the Dono Shin here. And he's turned it all around back in the Carmen Corp's favor. Yenage thinking otherwise of it. And KC definitely need to put the spike on this B site. I mean, there's 40 seconds left to play with here. Plenty of time for KC. They reveal further positioning by breaking that trip. Foot, they all stick together as three. They can't afford to get angsty here, but we'll reveal at 30 least some seconds presence left. here. Nary slow. And little do they know, it's three players strong, 25 seconds, reconsidering the plant dizzy over the top. And it's full wraparound. Oh dear, coming Dangerous. back to the A site. Because that broken door is still available. A link here for the pivot for foot. They could quickly be on the heels of this A plant. Magnum is left behind. He's going to have to do heroics Spike here. Planted. Maybe wait for them to push onto site and have a flank in the making. But this is a difficult angle. You're exposing yourself to stairs. And you've got to check out whether Crax is being pushed in that position. He's got nowhere to go. He's stuck in place, and he's got to do the magic from this position only. No, they don't Nare. know. Insane. So Magnum can only focus now towards theirs, unless Nare spots players from sight. They have no idea. The spike is implanted in the best position for Carmen Court right now, which alludes Just to the idea that they're hiding out when Pit. They interrupt the plot, but it's the Fuse halfway. Magnum with Wobba missed the falling no. off. Coots and Personal delivers the Crypto Gras. That's going to be the kill. That's going to be the clutch. The defuse on top and Foot on the board. So close there for Carbine Core, but what a way to turn that around. Difficulty, you saw both shorties being pulled out by the attackers on the side of Carbine Core too. Just the confidence to be able to push into that smoke, expecting that maybe it was being stuck the full duration. And but now, this is a, a lead that Carbine Core had initially surmounted four to one and foot regrouping themselves off the back of that thrifty round to just bring themselves back in. The energy that you're seeing here on stage is contagious. It's all adding up here. And, uh, you know, it's not like Carmen Call are without pressure at all. And it looks like the big pressure point is the C site. Fault line as well. Shasta for being enabled here from Marty. That's aggressive. Found himself into a corner. Barely avoids the aftershock. How has nobody died through that ex exchange? I mean, things about Dice, there's a lot of utility being used there, right? But now it's a full run away back over towards this A side. But Carmen Core, they were sticking together as five in this round. So lacking that information here over towards Rubble, they will have to take a little bit more time to be diligent about the clear. You see the Prowler going out to guarantee that space is safe. I mean, Mr. Fallen, to he's going to stay in tree. And because he stays in tree, he's got also teammates on an upper angle to deliver the fire on the cross. But no, you should run. Look at this push. Locked down, and they might even want to take more space than just the A site. Two players might be locked in place, though. Oh, this is really tough here for Adder Captain. He might be able to get out, and Mr. Fallen has got from the shadows to find himself in a flanking angle. CNED finds one through the smoke. And that puts him in charge. So Nare, eager to get his team back into equilibrium, unable to do so. It's still 3v4, Carmen Court. All they have to do is hold the spike card. But I... look at Magnum, he's so troubled. He hears Mr. Falling behind him, so he opens up some cover for himself. He's but just that opens time. as well for, to move into the site, no longer covering it. He needs reinforcements. He's struggling to cover the back line and for overwhelm the site, overwhelm the flanks, and again, close up the gap up against Carmen Court. And all of the success for Foot is coming off the back of them, shifting the way that they're approaching the defensive side. They're playing very passive, again, for those retake protocols. We are seeing that still now in these rounds, but the difference is in the early round, they are going for some of that earlier information. Instead of having letting Carmine Core 
take all the space that they want. Because when they were initially letting them do that, KC were able to clear through spots on the map without nearly as much utility. And now they're being forced to use that a little bit more proactively every round. Yeah, 100%. And something I think a lot of people are looking towards Carmen is for them not to drop the ball, right? Even if you gain a lead, you can't let it go. And for Carmen so far, they've lost quite a few rounds in a row here. They've had a sizable lead that's just been quashed. Only one round of difference and now head towards the C site. The Mosh Pit is going to delay, but not going to stop Marty anytime soon. Nightfall dropping does reveal a couple of players' positions, but there's way more than just two players Thrash. hiding out. Thrasher interrupting Marty on the crunch. Cena throws himself as showstopper towards his opponents, and that just allows for it to exacerbate their lead. They are five versus three, and Casey in trouble. The death ball isn't working anymore here for Karma and Court. They oh. need information elsewhere on the map to help with any pivots necessary. Foot feels so comfortable to stack each site to make quick rotations because of it. And they still continuously, no matter what, will have Mr. Fallen anchoring on the other side of the map. Already seeing how valuable Raze is against Karma and Corp's play. And this B site take seems to be imminent. Just waiting for the spike to make its way here. Oh, Magnum, he made noise. Oh, yeah. I mean... Yeah, Atacap hears yeah, that, uh, you right know, there. At least that he's on the corner, but he's moving up now. At a captain, who wins this fight? 30 seconds Slightly left. Slightly elevated, then he would have flying right. drops back. <laughs> okay, Carmen Court need a pick. It's absolutely crucial, absolutely vital. Oh. And without it, the chances just get minimized oh, to Margie. Nice Wait a minute, but fully blind, not much can be done unless you can clutch this all by yourself. Two kills in the bag, three more for the ace and the clutch, but they overwhelm the front, and that's Foot again on the mark, equalizing the scoreline. The comeback is back. Diligent, now five to five here, and I know we didn't see as crazy of reactions on the replay on the cameras right now, but Earlier on in this matchup, we even saw CNED yelling with his teammates. And that's a look from him that we haven't really seen. He's usually a lot more cool, calm, collected, very chill kind of player. So now I guess, now that he's home, back on a Turkish team, might be feeling those vibes just a little bit more. For sure, he hasn't been on a Turkish team for a while, so definitely might feel a bit at home. After all, allowed to do his thing. And so far looking great on that race. Timeout for Carmen, I think quite necessary. Try and get those pieces together. Eng has put a lot of his responsibility over this roster. He wants to match the glory he's had once, in, once upon a time, right? He's been a champion. And the reason I say once upon a time, it's because it feels so long ago. Whether Carmen Court can be that roster for him is another question, but at least he can. Has, he, he wants to take him to interplayance. And he definitely feels a lot of responsibility for it as well. I think that's difficult. I mean, a mad respect to feel all of that responsibility, but at the same time, it is also up to these players, these three duelist players, the, where two of them are being slotted into different roles, to actually enact that as well. It's not... It, you only have so much control of what's going on in the server in that kind of sense. You can see them chatting over this timeout, but I think regardless, Narrate in specific, I know I talk about him all the time. Yep. I'm from NA, I can't stop raving about it. him. But he has been probably the most consistent player on the team, even when they were losing to Team Heretics. Vice Caster. Hey. Confirmed. Was here. Yes. I might be an NA <laughs> trader, but. <laughs> your heart is where your heart is. It is. And Carmen Court moved towards this B site. This time, only one defending it, but plenty of utility that will figure out all of these positions quite quickly, Martin. Ooh, double boss pack, and he's right into Yenajay's face, oh. but Yenajay isn't losing that. He's the protege, if you will. Rolling Thunder straight out of the bat. That's aggressive, and <laughs> don't want to let them get any sight control. No spike part for them. My God. And straight after the timeout foot, look to collapse on Carmen Core. Magnum flashed, can cast, nothing he can do. Find a ding, but not with a stinger. Won't do the job for guarantee. They'll at least be at equal grounds by the end of this half. I mean, realistically, you couldn't ask for a better counter to the Viper's Pit and then just not giving yeah. them the opportunity to even set up. And that's off of Casey trying to change the pacing, the tempo in that last round compared to the slower starts that they've had into their full-on executions. But now I do wonder, into this last round, now that we have guns back in the hands of Carmine Core, do they actually slow things down? Do they spread out a little bit more? We are seeing a 1-3 split now. Yeah. So a different look. Previously, at most, it was 4-1, usually leaning the majority over towards that C site. Sure. But they have to add a little bit more pressure now because Foot, I think, 
not having that threat are, are so often able to just keep so much of their utility into those retakes too. 100%. Uh, foot definitely adjusting to how Carmen will like to play death ball approach being what's well, been giving them success really why they've already got a win in the bag and why they were able to compete against heretics so closely well well yeah closely 413 never mind not so closely but why they won against shy text maybe bring them down all around i mean foot more than happy to always leave this seaside open magnus and sought out here but it's gonna be maybe a pivot with B site all taken, no. It's all a rouge, isn't it? They just want to push even further into the spawn and try to grab any of these picks, and okay. they are capable of doing so. Two already down, and that's the advantage Carmen need to keep it going. Martin going all the way around, though, and he's being caught by out of captain. Scratch that. He himself is the one left. getting the pick. Spot and he's gone even further around into the A site. He's, uh, he's gone for a journey, and for uh, scratching the heads, where on earth did he go? Well, I mean, he's just buying all the time, right? It's the last round of the half foot. They have to be focused on trying to get that defuse, but Martin's just a constant threat. And with them having their minds of someone behind them, Shin just shoots them in front of him and cracks. All oh, that remains, final player. We'll get one for his troubles. Might not, might make it highlight real before this round is over. I won't get the defuse though. Dizzy, oh, he might, unless he gets a shot against <laughs> Nare here, but no. That's not the case. Six to six. It couldn't be closer as we close off Switching this half size. time. We knew this match would be close, right? We knew how closely tied these two teams would be given how they've performed so far. And in this match, in Lotus, it looks to be so. Oh, absolutely. I know we can't see the timeline right now, but that was five out of the six round wins yeah. there for but were those retakes. Again, the comfort and just being able to hold on to so much of their kit going into these rounds. But they also had a rough start, the ability to come back into that. Casey, stop the bleeding for now. But the momentum, I think, still lies on foot. It definitely does lie on foot, right? I, I feel like with that one round, you can't feel comfortable to have grabbed the momentum. At least you slightly stopped it. You slightly avoided it. But entering another half year, this is where we'll be able to see a fight. Uh, you know, it's a different idea because Carmen on the defense, on retakes, which is basically the name of the game for Lotus, will have to play their A game to continue in winning ways. But for now, on this pistol, very slow. Very familiar to this approach here from foot. Mm -hmm. As they kind of wait to see what Carmen Crew does, one Carmen Crew does. I mean, Carmen Crew, they also do have that tendency when a little bit starved for that information, they'll start throwing out some of, maybe narrates a utility out from that fade. But again, continuing to kind of cycle these smokes over there. towards the A-site. Little do they know, though, is the Killjoy is actually fully set up for A with Magnum playing over towards top window on B, just being in the same uh, vicinity yeah. to be able to keep that up. But they're just trying to draw some of that attention towards this B-site right now. Four players on KC, all from this breach utility, from that nade that went down. So keeping... KC locked and loaded onto that B site is for to aggress into C, fully space garnered. And now, what they do with it is the other question. 30 seconds left. How far do they go? Five Cracks commanded. has found himself a really good pick. I wonder why Nari decided to peek that alone. Was he peeking or was it through the smoke just being sprayed uh, down? I, I missed it. But still, Magnum, good shot. In and out of the fight though, Foot try to defend this over from Mount. It's the best angle the spike could be planted in for this position, but they don't really have vision for it. It's touched once. They are going to start spamming. Shin loses his life. Oh. And Foot, a line up their shots against all opposing players. And that's Foot finding the lead on the second half. Just no opportunity to even try and contest that rubble control. KC, for the most part, all stuck into that, that dark orb and not even be able to get out of the smoke. Now for foot, I mean, anti-eco abound, but again, I think this is where we're seeing that adjustment for foot. KC, they probably did a little bit of their homework, tried to look to see how they could maybe counter the previous composition. Now foot, they bring in a new look to a very quick tournament where you're not necessarily anticipating that kind of depth in an agent pool and no. agent composition for these maps at this point. And I, I'm really liking how Foot look on it because you do have a lot more opportunity to try and set up CNED on that raise with the changes in kits that you have here 100%. in Cracks and in 
uh, Mr. Fallen I as well. I wonder if we'll be seeing Cena on a jet later on this series. I think that's something a lot of people are looking for as well, right? Put him into more comfort angle. I don't know. Yeah, I think Lauren's going to be more much. disappointed, yeah. yeah. Maybe. She's probably watching at home recently. She's like, Cena, no. Nah, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do it, but uh, I don't know. Been letting, it, been letting Lauren down as of late. But I mean, he's been looking well, good. I mean, good. that time with yeah. Angel's paying yeah. off. It didn't pay off on Navi, but it's paying off on foot. It is. It is. And that's going to allow them quickly to get onto eight. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion to be had here with IGL versus IGL Magnum. This is his first project, right? But for Mr. Fallen, this is the best and strongest team, on paper at least, that he's ever had in his mm. command. I mean, the upgrades have been nice. I think Yetajay was a star player. Yes, big time. <laughs> Yeah, like a very insane look coming out of a rookie for this you. first time on the big left. stage. They're run okay, 30 uh, seconds it's left. It's 25 seconds, guys. Um, they can make it onto C on time, sure. I mean, it's knives uh, out the whole way there. Close. Like, imagine if they pushed through B here. Yes, okay, they yeah. can to figure it out, but no. They will get on site on time, but they are keeping it very, very close. 10 seconds left. Love running the risk. Love running the gamble. I mean, either way, you would expect, okay, even if there is an anchor on the side yeah. of Carmine Core towards C, they don't have the weapons to really contest it. Hey, don't count out all five more. pistols, you know? There might not be power in weaponry, but there's power in friendship. They're, They're just avoiding fights. Oh. <laughs> they just don't want to give these orbs away. I mean, no, you have cracks, like, cycling up to that thrash very quickly here, just trying to deny as much as possible. Had a captain is going in for the crunch. He's the only player front foot without a weapon to lose. And it's Martin to collect one for himself. And I'm sure Foot aren't willing to take the risk yet. Why lose weapons where they can have a really strong bonus with all rifles? No, it's not worth it for them in, in any sort of sense. It was really just Ada who is looking for maybe the potential of getting a pick. And then no matter what, you're cycling at minimum one of those orbs into the Rolling Thunder. But eight to six now, Foot off the back of the momentum again. Don't forget, this was a 4-1 start for Carmine Core Foot. They've just been rolling with it thus far, looking very comfortable. And to be fair, though, that was just the first two rounds of the second yeah. half. Like, it was the pistol round, it was the anti-eco round, there for a foot. This is where things are really on the shoulders of Carmine Core to make this a clean one. There's a fear at the back of my mind. Casey loses and Foot just carry on winning this entire attack because they love momentum, right? Mm -hmm. They love being able to control the pace of this game. They're Turkish. And exactly for that reason, KC might be a little bit more nervous now on their buy round, knowing how much they cannot afford to lose this. But this isn't a low buy for Foot. It's a bonus, but they've got so many rifles. It's a risky position here for Tomazi as well. Magnum with the first pickup on at a captain is really nice. Mm. Try and shift that at the very least. First good step for sure. And it seems that the KC players on that B site lining up to go in for a bit of a side push. Well, do we see a pivot here now towards B? But there's a crossfire being held with the new 50-50. And Yepache could collapse on this B site simultaneously with the others. But Mar <laughs> and Martin deliver page. everything they had to to stop this push from happening. And Kami Court look to clean up. Look to have all five players alive by the end of it. As Yedege is the only player standing. Wait a moment. I mean, he's chilling. Yeah, 40 seconds on the clock. Sure, he might be able to try and find one. But otherwise... <sighs> but the other thing is, is, surely you do try and maybe go for some sort of engagement. Yeah. You don't want to carry Nothing that to lose as much as the previous no. one, right? You definitely want to do some damage with this Bulldog, but they also know exactly where he is. They know where the spike is, and they know what they could possibly... What you know, is left for Yenna J to do. And they also know how good he is, so they might not give him the opportunity. <laughs> Fair enough. Not wanting to lose any of these vandals. 14 seconds on the clock. Yenna J is going to go for the chase. Unable to get a kill. That's Carmen Court on the board with an Andalucía flawless. Okay, very nice. That's exactly what you need here for Carmen Core again, to save that bleeding. But now it's about stringing the rounds together. They got one in the midst of foot finding that momentum. Here's another but you've got to start chaining them to be able to really find the... Okay, you can see, and, and is a little... Yeah. Things are serious right now. Things are serious right now. Things are getting real, big time. I mean, this is another reason why Carmen, why French fans in the arena today can be happy, right? They had the French Derby earlier, Gentleman's Vitality, and now they want to see Carmen Core take, uh, take success here. But for now, for have taken a quick A-site attack, and 
it's being greeted by a lot of defenders in this proximity. I mean, the util that could be done to just stall out. I'm looking towards that paranoia here for Shin. If Foot look to commit, not going to be the case. Instead, they can sense how much is being invested here. Carmine Core chucking a piece of util from nearly every single player to push that rubble control away from Foot that now pivot over to pivot over to C. Well, uh, a lot of damage taken up by Yellow I do believe, from those nanos. But still, Sight taken over. This is the retake we've been waiting for. Ooh, spike in the middle of the open. That's not exactly what they would have liked, especially when that captain drops. Suddenly, Kami Court are in charge in the lead, and Shin's got all uh, got it all covered. Mr. Fallen trying to go for the flank gets red. Yeah. And Foot in a big trouble. 30 seconds, and they've got so much to do. Yenajay looking to do some heroics here, but Kami Court grouped up together as one single force take this round in their way and find themselves on equal grounds with their opponents. Man, poor Wingman. I think, man. what was it, like the other day, Yetta J made a tweet and he was like, just leave the little guy alone. Yeah. And he was sent in on a little solo mission there to plant that spike. But that's also the risky bit. <laughs> Zaisha's just like, okay, that was clean, guys. Like, let's keep this going. But the energy you want to see, foot now, put onto an eco round, shares across the board. I genuinely can't take them out of the equation just yet, all things considered. I think yeah. Yeti J, especially in their matchup against Giant X, I believe it was, he's been just so good on those flanks, just being able to find those picks and break up the team on the defense. Yeah, it's, it's the name of the game for the Lotus, really, trying to catch everyone off guard, but there's so much utility right on the back lines. It's a, it's a difficult one. But Yeti J does get a pick with a Sheriff, which doesn't come you know, too often in these situations, giving you numbers advantage. Yadoje is good, but of course, getting the opener pick on attack is exactly what they want. Maybe an opportunity to find their way in. The thing is, that rifle is way out of reach, and Shin holding this angle on Tamaji, finding a pick towards the other side, it does put Kamen Core back in the driver's seat. How many are here? Shin knows that it's more than one at the very least. The paranoia to delay by a bit of time for this rotation. Stop them in their tracks, but they are going to move in right after that. Cnet has already crossed oh. the back of the side, but Yelijay is quick with it right now. He falls warm and definitely wants to be the wonder kid I on the server. Exactly where you are. Now, well, beautiful neural theft as well, knowing where all the players are coming from. And for all of a sudden, have a big chance in this, collecting one of the rifles, and it's an adequate hand. Cnet's going to try and do it all by himself here on this one, as Yedishay is on low health, maybe to try and trade his life early. Prowler searching for all these players. They know Mr. Fallen knows on site, or maybe what? they don't! Not checked, Miss comms, and Foot bring out the thrifty round to upset Carmen calls by. Everyone on foot so low on that thrifty round as well. That is not what you want to be seeing, especially after that hunt had gone out. It tagged, I think, two to three players maybe on the side of foot into the post plant. So the information was there. Might have been a bit of a mis-expectation coming out from the snake bite on Thomasy, just expecting the snake bite to have actually denied that corner there into the post plant, but it was just shy. Regardless, yeah. <laughs> but they, they're just looking so clean. I feel like their synergy has just been everything lately. Yeah. We're definitely seeing an antithesis in emotions here from Zaysh. One round, he's over the moon. <laughs> the other, he's punching his hands. And uh, yeah, I can't blame him. It's a roller coaster. like Army Cop taking them through the emotions. And uh, in the meantime, you can see some very far placement here from Marty. I like this though. Carmine Core haven't really gone for this style of aggression before. Stun does reach him. Dizzy, not quite sure if it does, but I mean, it does. It does. So they'll pre fire it. Martin still oh. alive, but not for long. Oh, wait oh. a minute! There was a world that he could have gotten some kills there, but no. Instead, it is going to be equilibrium as a fight still ensues. Shin is in the middle of it, and he's a master of this fight. The Thrusher will stop Shin from moving. So it is an easy pick for Cracks, but he's got a lot more to do in this one versus two. Thomasy's positioning right now, though, oh, knows that in? Foot are not going for that rotation. Magnum just has to live. Cracks. That's a spike, wings. Helps out. I throw in the wingman in, but Magnum's got that corner covered and is not allowing Cracks to move back. That's Carmen Court right back in the fight. Don't leave him hanging. He was going <laughs> for a props, guys. Come on. But man. 
Good read there from Karma and Core Thomas Eve being able to call that that rotation over towards A wasn't going to be happening. Look at this, man. That, that was all Shin that round, yeah. especially after Martin gets caught out. The utility dumped on him to guarantee that pick, but then you just Shin, use Mount. You Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> There's a reason why Shin is the only retained player from last year in Karmic Core. He is insane. Like, when Chaos is used, he's a master of it. Doesn't care. No, I, and that's the thing, is the way that Carmine Core were even handling the roster changes when N came in, it was everyone had to retrial. So Shin did, wasn't just retained because of his yeah. contract or anything like that. He retrialed, he made the cut again. Same thing with Saish, their assistant coach, in that kind of regard. So it speaks a lot as to how much they believe in Shin as a player. 100% foot going into thinking mode for another time. A lot to be said. Of course, it's a back and forth, right? And a lot of these situations come onto microplays, on sites, whether you're not clearing angles uh, one way or another. It's, it's a very close affair and just the smallest of mistake can influence the outcome of a round. Ooh, okay. Things getting tense. I mean, what? This is the third time that they've tied up so far. It's just yeah. map one. Just map one. You and I have two best of threes to go today. All on top of that. Like, it's going to be a long one, I think, here for Foot versus Karma and Core. And the decider of draw. Group A. Again. Nightfall available here for Narrate. It's big for that retake. But going to be that solo anchor over towards B. A bit more information that was being sought. Karma and Core trying to jiggle. The one way over towards C side. A left open until Magnum has just rotated over, but again, they've been very comfortable with that since Magnum has just kind of been playing over towards stairs, playing over towards top B, just to ensure that that Killjoy utility is up and ready. But more than happy to play more of that retake towards that A site. There are a lot more avenues to actually try and find that space on as a defender. Yeah, on the defending side right now, it's information right now trying to be gathered. Uh, you can see a double swing here onto C long, but otherwise, Foot have got their eyesight onto B, smoking one of these entries, snake bite into the great delay crunch, and it will stop them in their tracks. We'll make them rethink. 44 seconds on the clock. There are a couple of rifles that can do a lot of damage. As a matter of fact, play, they, placing them at the right point at the right time. Two lurks, one in B, one in C, and it's Mr. Fallen that might come in contact first. Or even could be Elige. Maybe for a counting on that, as there's a lot of utility on that killjoy over to this A site. The smoke soaring into B. Prowler on towards Zena's position, but it doesn't read anybody, so the call is clear here for KC. Just hold back, wait, because they've gotten the pick. And for on 14 seconds to spare, now only finally take the call to push B. Left. I mean, great patient calling coming out from Magnum, right? The, you're looking towards that C side, no one moved. Nightfall actually expended here in this 5v4. Yeah, that's the chase after Mr. Fallen here right now. They know exactly where he is, but Crax is trying to save his teammate's life into the stun. That's not what he would like, but he's still, he's got time to replenish himself, recover. Oh, oh, Carmen Core, you need to move in quickly and you're running out of that's utility up. to try and deal with this blast pack to allow Martin to find an outer angle. Mr. Fallen with a share of can be so dangerous oh. that he has the upper angle. That is insane, but shot up, it is going to be used in time. And that means that Carmen Core come out on top. Number superiority does take the cake in the end and they do retain the lead. Took two ultimates there from Carmine Core. And don't forget, Foot only had two rifles that they were working with into that round. So it did get expensive. You can... I think that gives you a bit of an idea to Carmen Court. They felt the need to actually use those ultimates to see if they could close it out, find that double digits early on. Oh, it's a little man. Bit, yeah, that's... It, it barely looked like he was able to use that showstopper to yeah. begin with. It was on the money there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was on the money like that shot. One ping, it. two ping of difference. Ooh. I mean, they're all on that. It doesn't make a difference. But, you know, <laughs> if you were elsewhere, it could have. Too uh, close for comfort, though. I, like, either way, no matter how you cut it. Okay, again, early rubble control. Must wait a moment. Or not rubble, mound control here on the side of Karma and Core. Finding, showing that very early presence here on the defense. In the meantime though, foot take onto the right hand side and they've actually pushed up quite far forward. Yeah, a different look. And this time you actually don't have Magnum's utility there to stall. Instead, you're gonna be relying on Tomasy for it. Tree control in the hands of foot here too. It's full retake. But we're also looking towards that lockdown. That's why we're seeing that A site empty. A lot of noise 
on this A site, and Tamaji can hear it all. All he has to do is wait for his team to come in. Nice angle here from Cracks to try and fend off some of these off angles. Lockdown for Magnum. That's going to allow everybody to vacate this side. But I have a feeling, I have an inkling foot are going to try and fight for this. And Carmen Court are ready for it. Showstopper in for it. Doesn't close down the lockdown in time. It does actually, and he gets a pick before he drops. Cracks tries to deal with Martin as he crosses forwards, but it's all too much. Rolling Thunder and doesn't hit a single player. Yenerjay makes his ground noise known, but it's not mattering at all. 2v2 on the spike already. Aftershock going to delay it. Every single player of Carmen Court is low. Flash is perfect. No one can Last see a thing, but Magnum is good for it. Yenerje doesn't need to do a thing. All he has to do is delay, and Magnum knows that even though he gets the kill, he has to run, has to save the gun, and the round goes to foot to keep these teams on equal ground yet again. The confidence that you have to have if you're seeing it to go for that showstopper. It was a risky one coming out. I was surprised at where Magnum elected to throw that down. I guess they felt comfortable with the stairs control, but it's so open to get that line of sight to destroy it. And even though it was a trade of an ultimate, for an ultimate here, you can see <laughs> on stage, uh, on the end there, you see one of the players, his sleeves are rolled up right now. But it's so getting it's hot in here. It's getting hot. It's getting <laughs> serious. You, you don't want any of that limitation to your mobility with your with your mouse arm when you're going for those big swings. And it all matters. At the end, right? It all makes a difference. Got to be aerodynamic. I mean, it is a game of inches, right? You got to be able to perform at your best. And if it, if the sleeve is bothering your mouse movement, move it up. Different look though this time from foot. Again, that early rubble control, the early pressure. This time, Magnum shifted back over towards A because he doesn't have that lockdown to play with. Cena is just looking to pressure some of the utility, try and force it out early. Yeah, he hasn't been able to do so thus far, but Yedeje moving they forwards. He's missed him crossing to the walls the right, which could be its demise, and exactly that's what's happened. And that's uh, Carmen Corp in the lead. They've got the numbers. It's a matter of how what they do with it now. Man, Shin was just the bait, and... You had Martin holding the line. Dizzy up over towards this A site, drawn quite the rotation, but B is free now. Mr. Fallen's walked all the way in. Which gives a call to the rest of the team to move in in that direction as well. With 40 seconds to spare, Foot will get the plant down. And with a pick, they're right back in the same position as their opponents, and that's exactly what happened. Cena gets one. He does get traded, though. Crucially enough, keeping calm in court on the steering wheel for now. Shin so forward. Does have a paranoia to work with here, though, into the retake. Just not sure if uh, we're going to look for one of the lanes to try and deny that retake. Satchel out. It's going to be hotly contested, though. Kami Court moving in all directions, checking the back of the site. No one is there. They've got to clear out cracks, though. Stun in this direction. On the spike, diffusing, and players being human shields right now. As they do get sprayed upon, they do end up dropping one by one. And so will Martin by the end. Magnum again running out of time, being the right final player alive for Carmen Court time and time again. But it's foot this time to gain the lead. Mr. Falling can hardly believe he won that. I mean, I think Carmen Court just taking a little bit too long on those retakes, very hesitant. You had Shin playing so far back over towards Waterfall, concerned that foot had pushed the issue over towards that C link. No presence there, of course, but just really not having the opportunity to find that space. And that's also part of the importance of keeping that A-link control there on the side of, but you just need to deny some of these areas over towards the defenders. <laughs> the energy here for, for the excitement after that round as Carbine Core, they find themselves on a bit of an awkward buy here. Semi-eco with a couple stingers forced in alongside a hero rifle in the hands of Magnum. Eyes here on Martine with that showstopper. No one will be found on site as it does go all the way around. Only one crossing so far from for Carmen Court. This is a difficult one for them. Magnum is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting with that Vandal, but it's close proximity fight, so Stingers can also pack quite a punch. But talk of Magnum, he drops. He's the first one to do so as well. The smoke does deteriorate, and Martin gets a pick. Shows oh! up a throne, but it's not necessary. Jeez, Martin dude. drops, but it's still Carmen Court with a lot of players on this B site, and that's exactly where Foot are heading towards right now. The pivot back away. I mean, they drew some attention. Shin and Tomasi there. But Thomas is now alone over towards the seaside. I know exactly. He can hear Yedoji doing so much noise. And with your theft, spotting out all of these players, it's going to alarm the bells afoot to move towards this A site. It's a really good call for them. Really great timing. They've upgraded their weapons as well. 30 seconds left. 
Ooh, Stun trying to take the fight once again, but Neri gets away. Yeah, the wingman is doing all the spike planting. The rest of them can focus on the fights. They might just push back straight in towards B and over towards stairs as you have tree control here from Yetajay. Shen not with the best up weapon in this position. The smoke off to limit the far angles. On the spike already. This is going to be a spray game here for Foot. They don't need to see their opponents. They're going to try and spray towards them, but I think the spike is just a little bit too Sticking far. It. Oh, Nare just a little bit too far away from all the bullets thrown in his direction. Garmin Court might get the kills, but the defuse is successful. And for that, it's equilibrium for yet another time. They needed that, that shift in energy onto the side of Carmen Court. Again, neck and neck, what? Fourth time now, fifth time now. I'm losing track yeah, we, of how cool. many times these matter. two have just traded rounds back and forth. Now, it's foot. The difficult spot that they're in here, as far as that economy goes, a lot had been expended in the last couple of rounds, but Carmine Core are doing so well, that paranoia, so much value into that. It's like these two teams have thrown lassos at each other and just tugging. <laughs> time and time again. The back and forth. It, it really is. Everyone's got a leash on each other. And again, for, they put a lot of effort early on to this round. Deal with that utility in the A site. Time and time again, we see the same and same thing. Oh. But this time it's Tamaji on the defense of the A site. He's got a snake bite to delay it even further. He uses a Viper's Pit. Doesn't want to take any chances, no risks. No. The thing is, with that pit, you also lose all on that information over towards Tree. They try to add a little bit of pressure by opening that door on the side of Foot, but they're also walked in towards B here. And Kami caught well aware they've given the space over. His which head. Means they're going to fight right after it. Mr. Fallen somehow still alive. Stun clearing out a lot of space. Look at Fallen Fallen. Mr. Fallen is pushed. But it doesn't matter because the shorty will do it. Uh, see that? Shows the fun. Will we find anyone? Yes, he will! And the captain helps! and somehow there might be a chance in this one because Alex Cena has found himself a rifle. Will it be enough though as he's low in health? Yes, it is for now. Spray down another captain again with the classic doing so much damage. It's the pistols for foot and it's a thrifty that get them on map points. Free gun, by the way. Look at Ada captain. He's just giggling right now. He got three picks with that classic. I don't, I don't think KC come back from that one. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm a Carmine Core fan. How do they get away with this? Every single time they've got lesser weapons, Carmine Core just drop players from out of Captain's pistols, where it's Yenajay's pistols, CNA's utility. I don't think I've ever seen Cena get out of his chair before. Oh yeah, oh, we've seen him before, but it's been a while. It's Well, yes, that's what I mean. It's been a hot minute yeah. since, since we've you've seen been that in the NBA, That hasn't happened. Okay, well, that hasn't been that long, so no, I feel like that doesn't mean anything enough, whatsoever. <laughs> but still, Magnum only pick. Are we going to see a topsy-turvy of topsy-turvies? Like, is this an upside-down day? Our pistol was going to be taking it. Obviously, it's only Magnum with a pistol. The rest of them got some shape or form of a bigger weapon. Casey finding themselves at least an advantage with Mr. Fallen being taken down. So no smokes available here for foot. You're really only going to look towards some of the cages from Yetajay, but they've already been utilized. Martin on rat duty. And boy, oh boy, is he good at this job. And uh, it's a turnaround yet another time. Cena and the captain trying to do it all by himself. Rolling Thunder thrown in their direction. They're concussed, they're stunned, but also at the same time, they are blind. Shin comes in, double kill for him. And that's overtime on our first map of this series. We're lined up for a banger here. I mean, what a way also for Carmine Court to just completely shift going into that potential last round of map number one. The fact that they're going off of getting thrifted with a three piece from a classic and still able to carry this energy forward, not letting it get to them. And it's a decently young team as well. Yeah. Again, the rookies coming in here on the side of Carmine Core to still play in a manner of level headedness and Okay, got some nice art there for the, yeah. from the foot fans. Gotta appreciate the art, gotta appreciate the art, of course. We've got a lot of foot fans in, in the stadium as uh, we've, uh, you know, it, it's been a long already moment, a long map for these two teams. They try to rediscuss before they enter this overtime back and forth. And I, honestly, the stability, we're not seeing it from any of these teams. They're not really finding what 100% works for them because they've tried things multiple times. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's a matter of milli, uh, millimeters. And, uh, you know, milliseconds, that can make the difference at the end of the day. So it's whoever hits the shots, really. 
That's what we're looking at on this one. I mean, what I like about the fact that Carmine Core are taking the timeout right now is they started losing out on the attacking side into the second portion of that first half, where Foot were playing a little bit more forward, a little bit more for that information. Carmine Core were starved for some of that map space and also just overwhelmed in a lot of those retakes as well, forcing a lot more of that utility out early here on the attacking side. But again, that was when they were playing those five-person rushes, those 4-1 splits. And I'm looking forward to seeing them, again, slowing things down, looking at a more default approach. But this 4-1 split is looking a little too reminiscent. Yeah, but oh, it's all too real. It's all coming back right now as Carmen Court find themselves on the attack foot on defense. And it's two rounds consecutive necessary to put a team in the lead here, get map number one under wraps. Left-hand side presence for both teams, but one definitely favored in numbers. There. I mean, the plan might just be to try and cycle Martin up into that showstopper for the explosive entry. But again, that camera over towards Mount, not revealed early on this time, so. He's used that cam so many times. I know, I'm But when has it actually haven't... helped? <laughs> I don't know. There's been a couple times where yeah. it's gotten that information. Mm -hmm. I think they're just looking for it, right? No, okay, they're not even going to shoot it out. It just made the sound, okay. Yeah. That's all four, though. <laughs> yeah, they spotted out everyone, which allows Foot to start rotating over. They'll be here in time, or at least they'll try to be. The spike hasn't gone down quite yet, and Foot already taking a lot of space here. Don't want to give the site for free. Want to fight this before the spike goes down. Get a with first blood. And maybe now they'll respect right them and take the numbers fight after the spike is planted. Very nice way to pull back. You also have the full kit of cracks here into the retake. Yeah, Kami Corp not happy with it yet. They want more picks here. Uncomfortable. And they do pick up Yetage. Spike. Seconds left. Not quite gone down because of the sprays. They're scared. They're fearing this position. I mean, you have so much to work with, right? But not much time on the clock. Kami Corp need to put that spike down and they need to put it down now for Start to spray in that direction. Stun to the back of the site, trying to pick up Tamaji. Unable to do so, it's Martin out into the open. Collected, picked up, Magnum. Oh, he's closed up the gap, Magnum! What a sneaky bugger! But Anna Captain taking him down in time. It draws it back to a two versus two with Kami Kup on top. And Tamaji is leading the charge on the seaside. Surely taking out as he drops down the Viper's Pit. Anna Captain, all to himself, might have turned it all back around. Replenishing himself as the Viper's Pit is dropped. And it's Shin against Anna Captain. The time is running, and Shin's bullet finds out of Captain's eyes. That's going to be Carmen Corp on the lead in the first round of OT. Oh, you saw just like the sign of perfection coming out from Martin when he was talking with the team and whatnot. Of course, it was down to the wire, so not too much excitement seen from the teams there on stage. But regardless, that was... That's a dicey head to head because oh, yeah. I think between Ada Captain and Shin, it's a toss up on who wins that 50 50. Big time, right? Who wins it in this situation? And again, down to the wire. <laughs> and Zaysh, the passion in it is all, is all that is required, really. It's all, it's all a passion project at the end of the day, right? It's all vibes. It's all vibes. And Kami Court are full of it, but can they maintain it? Foot really good at interrupting Keeps those good. vibes and putting them into the thinking corner. But for now, no one's on one foot. It's uh, running for foot into this A side, but they've left Tamaji live. And over to Tree, they might be in trouble, leaving Tamaji in one place. He's low, 90 points of health, but it's had a captain shorty to do it. No way, three versus five as foot. I've got the advantage, seen it. Bottom corner, and Martin needs to check it. Prowler does check that position. They know exactly where he is. Oh, Shin had to win on. that fight. He had to win it, no worries. No, 2v5, not much you can do. Absolutely not. Cena needs to come off huge. Well, no, Martin and Nara need to come off huge. Paranoia Player towards Martin, Cena first shot. Well, it looks like it's all crumbling under pressure here and the overtime streak will continue. And Andalufia flawless at that as well, not dropping a single player here for foot. I think difficult. We've seen Tamazi, I think, playing that tree positioning 
pretty frequently here on the defense. And I think Foot have done very well to protocol that position, ensuring that they're constantly crunching, pressuring Tree as the other players flood over towards A short. So if we do end up seeing another defense side on the side of Carmine Core, I would love to see that adjustment to not leave Tamazi yeah. on an island there where he's not really able, he can delay for so long with those snake bites once he runs out. Not much he can do if he's unable to even get those picks and getting you tilt dump, but now, Foot back on the defense and Carmine Core on the attack. It's always this extremity control we keep yes. on seeing. That fight Bring them down. of these angles, of the space of these orbs. Foot more than happy to take the other side of the Just map. So rubble down. control deeper than what we've seen them risk previously. And allowing an extra player, Cena, to move in to this left-hand side. And Crax is also joining in on that, which vacates the B site, and Kami Corp would be happy to take it off their hands. Yeah, the two over towards A, the ones with the kit to delay there as well, just to buy that time for the rotations from the cavalry. But Carmine Corps haven't committed to anything quite yet. And the thing is, sure, you have that lurk wall from Thomas Z on the side of Carmine Corps, but We're with Foot's positioning, ball. it's all for naught. And at the 40. Five second mark. The push is still to take place. Oh, there's two players on site here, and it's going to be a direct contention. Oh, this is messy. Who comes out on top on this one, especially when you're peeking out of smokes? Try! Carmen Core, thinking you miss it. Casey, you're dead. 30 seconds left. I mean, utility dump there. They didn't use nearly as much to try and clear over towards Spike Mount. Planted. Not running into the players of foot, and now the Viper's Pit. Back on site here. Yeah, they're not taking any risk. Obviously, yeah, it's an overtime. You're going to lose a Viper's Pit early on, so you don't take any chances. Drop it in. The op best opportunity you get. Oh, but I'm going to oh. miss. Is miss the fall in. But are they all holding now. their shorties? They are all holding their oh, shorties out. That is out. so sneaky. Or toxic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're in a Viper's Pit. Of course it's toxic. And now, right, that's a triple for his name, Carmen Court. They've got another chance to close out map number one. Cheeky plays to keep it fun and light, even though the tension is there on the stage. 14 to 13. One round here for Carmine Core on foot map pick to take the first one. But again, the back and forth has been absolutely maddening to watch. Oh, it has been. And, and no doubt Foot take a time out here. The thing yeah. is that both teams get to teach with their, <laughs> speak with their coaches. I, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, but yeah, this this is Valorant, everybody, and it's uh, it's a close one for this. Carmen Court, this is not the first time they've gotten themselves in the situation where they can close it out for in trouble. They don't want to let Lotus go, right? This is their map pick. And moving into bind, they would wish they'd have the map advantage, right, in this, th in this series. It's an elimination game. If you're only just joining us, they are one game away, one match away from entering the play-in stage to maintain their position here in kickoff and one match away also from being eliminated. Yeah, and it's a long time for whoever gets eliminated until the next time we'll see them, right? And of course, even after play-ins, only one player makes it out of there and into the actual playoffs of kick-in. One so, player? Only one player? One team. Uh, one team, one yeah. team, okay. okay. You knew, you, you were picking a, up that, what I was putting down. Different, that'd be a different tournament. Yeah, 1v1 Valorant. No thanks. No thanks. Yeah, no. this is better. It's way more entertaining. <laughs> uh, but now, looking at this defense side of Carmine Core, we're seeing a bit of an adjustment. Neri pulling out the Odin for the first time. He didn't really get the chance to on the second half because the economy was just not there for it with how many rounds were being traded back and forth. But to pull that out, I'm curious, you're going to see him actually over in that tree position instead. So the adjustment was made. Tamazi will not be in that tree spot. And Nero, with that fade utility, take full advantage of the wall pangs if you want. <laughs> Debatably, on defense, these are the two best uh, agents to have. <laughs> a killjoy, a viper. Can't be comfortable for foot. Poison cloud enabled as soon as they hear an inkling of a step. Uh, this is looking to be an explosive one, and that snake bite will look to delay them. Paint shoal and stun to the back of the site. Yeah, CNED's all split up from the team now, too. It's a matter of being able to keep the rest of the team back and allow Kami Corp to come in on time. Tamaji, do you fight this Magnum They're as well? They're committing. Yeah, okay. the commitment from Foot, but Casey drop back. This is a five versus five retake, and we can know, we definitely know how 50-50 these can be. The thing is, they don't know that the Odin is up foot. They maintain sight here into the post plant instead of falling, ba falling back. A lot of damage. Uncomfortable. 
Paranoia from Shin, it's still available. Mr. Falling can't say the same for himself. And a captain close and personal. Ooh, oh, Marty whoa. just jumps above everybody and gets one, but still has to drop. And Yenishay is commanding the back of this site, which puts Kami Kobat at a disadvantage. Odin, rat -a -tat -tat, it goes, but is it enough? It's up against three, but he might just do it! Yenishay on an upper angle, keeps for alive, and is back to another round of overtime. Rookie versus rookie, and Yenishay playing so well right now on the side of foot, the rising star here within the Turkish scene. I, that, I, I, I need a breath actually after that round. Yeah, like yeah. I need a second to digest that as we see this replay because it got scrappy, it got chaotic. Yeah, on the one hand, you got someone cosplaying a, an aeroplane. On the other, you've got someone cosplaying Rambo. What is that, Nari? That is incredible. Guess three out of nowhere. We thought it was over. It was a 1v4. Made us crap our pants for a sec, but still, it's uh, it's anyone's game. With two rounds consecutive, still required by any of them to close out map number one. Different look. Again, I say different look, but also not really at the same time. But again, that rubble control, just denying the value that comes out from that Viper wall over towards that A side. This time though, Playing a bit more for deep information on the side of uh, Yedijay. Previously, we had seen that tripwire over towards be a little bit deeper to try and contest the deep push that you would see with the dive coming in from Martin. But now, yeah. Rubble being threatened here. Yeah, and Mr. Fallen is very deep. They know he's in that proximity. And the stun from out of Captain could be gorgeous. Paranoia net putting Mr. Fallen out of position, but he throws one back, which means he's caught a lot of time. 45 seconds and foot repositioned backwards. And that's what I talked about before, about choosing Mr. Fallen out of Captain to be the ones to play disruption over towards Rubble, the time that they can buy for the rotation. Mr. Fallen playing with a lot of health right now. He's still sticking around. Yeah, that's a lot of health. You can say that. 27? 27? 27. It's so low. But still, look how far they're going to be pushing through. Narrate, Dry Peak doesn't care. Magnum as well. One after the other. Carmen Corp finding supremacy on the attack. They seem to be loving these. But Foot, on the other hand, can't be too happy about this. Yenage scratching his head, guys. Where are we going to retake this together? No, every single one of them has died already. And Kami Corp for yet another time, Ash. It looks like they'll be the ones on the hot seat to close this all out. Yeah, nothing yet AJ can do in this situation. Talk to the screen up, you have to push past it. Everyone's just going to be staring you down. Be a wonder site. child, be a veteran. A 1v4 in this situation is impossible. Just don't dive this shorty. You might find one consolidation kill by the end of it, but it's 15, 14, Carmen Court have another chance to close it all out in their favor. You can see Ma Magnum is spitting bars right now in the IGL. Yeah. See, he's prepping for the next round already. He's like, okay. we won every single attack, guys. Don't do that same mistake we did the previous yeah. one. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I can't read li lips, but I'm guessing that's what he's saying still. It's 15-14, and uh, this is a prize for you, everybody. There is... Placing swamp oh. Grenade. oh, okay, not that. This. There's an Odin. Oh, no, right. Again. They're not coming back for it, though. Hey, <laughs> you had one last time. He didn't clutch it last time. Hmm. Got a lot of value out of those picks, but uh, actual value as far as the rounds went left a bit to be desired. Yeah, it's a matter of how they're going to be getting the site for free again. Tamaj is going to love a peek, but it might be a little bit too out of position. Magnum can't help out. Oh, he's a little bit too far deep here. Tamaj gets one. He might pull it up as well. He gets out with a peek. That's exactly what Kami Court needed. Find the advantage, fall back, and play with the team now. Cavalry is running over from that A site. And Wingman finding that plan. Mr. Fallen is on a flank here, but He's he back. is falling back, regrouping with the team. It looks like there. every single one of them, as soon as a presence comes in from Casey, going to vacate and play for Mound. He did enough pressure at least, yeah. though. You can see they're still concerned about that push through ceiling. They definitely are. And here's Casey putting all their forces together, all chips in one basket, all moving from the same direction. And again, Martin aggressing. First Shut shot, up. bullets to the face of Yenage. Stand up, doesn't oh. care. In the fight, foot turning it all back around in their favor. And the captain coming alive to Martin. Don't want to turn it all back around. Rolling Thunder's already available. And Anna Captain takes them 15 to 15. This game does not want to end, and I'm loving it. 
a 4K there for Ada Captain with the triple double as that breach player. Heading into the next round, I mean, I feel almost so repetitive in a sense now, just yeah. with how many overtimes we've been hitting. This is round 31, a normal game of Valorant, 24 rounds. Yeah, out of Captain, he's been absolutely incredible on these post plants, right? On these, you know, defending that spike to explode eventually. He's been absolutely massive. And that's exactly what Foot needs time and time again. They can rely on him. Magnum's got a Odin of his own, and uh, uh, what is going on? Losing two players from each side. Carmen Cool going to move into the A side now. Bring them down. I mean, looking for information, looking to pressure a little bit further. See, it hadn't really worked out for them too well. And those post plants finding a bit more of that success towards A. Both prowlers used up. But tree space not actually taken. Adequate rotations pulled from foot with the comfort of Yetta J's trips over towards that B side at the very least. So no threat there. Door yet to be broken as well on that pivot. And they're just playing the, playing the patience game. I'll find you. Oh, Haunts finds out that someone is at the back of the site, but there's still two more nearby. 45 seconds, Dizzy, stopping Narrate from pushing any time soon. Um, there's also Yedige entertaining the idea of a crunch, and Shin isn't looking right now. Well, now he is, but Yedige is quicker to the trigger, and Carmen Core are on the back foot for the first time on this attacking side. But this left. is their chance to do it. Four versus three. They need to push one of these lanes here on the side of KC. They can't fully give up this site, especially when they're down on numbers on B. Horn. Really important ultimate Mark to figure one. out how many players were in that direction, but only one spotted out of the two. So how much attention do you turn in that direction? Flanking the making for Magnum. Needs this pick on CNED. Needs to go in quick though. Nare holding it. Cena to win it off instead, so it's Magnum to do the heavy lifting as all by himself, and he's up against three. They know exactly where he is, but thankfully for him, two of them alone! Nano Swarm's doing so much damage, but Flash is going to interrupt him for now. On the spike, defusing, and a captain. He's been great on these clutches. Can he do it for another time? Magnum speaks, and Magnum wins! Carmen Corp, the attack was and always will be theirs. A Red Bull clutch coming in here for Magnum, 19 and 17. They're even cycling up into that lockdown at the end of that round. Didn't need it though, knowing that it might just give the time for Ada Captain to push in towards him. That got dicey again. Talked about having to find the, the, one of those lanes. It didn't work out in that sense, but the wrap back around towards that A link was perfect in that timing. We find match point once again here for Carmine Core. For foot. Wait, Shin is just up. Yeah, he's going very aggressive on this one. It's a complete change of pace. Carmine Core don't want to let it go to a post plant. They want to take the fight right in their face. But for now, not quite sure if that was worth it, because that was exactly a trade of jet of jets? Razors. Very least. Same thing, right? Very least with CNED <laughs> being taken out, they don't have quite that same ability to dive in towards these sites. It slows things down a little bit. Still. Paranoia re-smoking that position. And I'm just wondering here, Foot, they'll be in a world of hurt if they start pushing through stairs. And Merc Magnum is just waiting on the other end. No more smokes to cover that angle. Magnum's going to cover oh, the position. It's a clear. lazy pick here from Mr. Fallen, which will be his demise. A site to be taken over. Out of captain might be in trouble. Cracks try to help out, but at least you can count on Little Bro to get the spike down. But look at this wrap, the timing. The turret not spotting him anymore. And he's going to continue giving foot on the front foot here. Kami Court need to do heavy lifting here. If they want to close it all out, Samaji and Narate against the three of foot. Spike touched. Attempting to be defused. Trying to get stuck with. Narate with one aftershock to deny. It's a spray, but still, no one will prevail. It's foot with 16 rounds in the board, equalizing yet another time. And uh, a Kami Corp's aggressive maneuvers at the start of this round again didn't fall in their favor. I like the idea of trying to change that pace on the defense. We really haven't seen that look coming out from Carmine Corp, but the timing from Yetta J on that flank over towards B, waiting for Magnum to fall before the push on in was sublime. Just being able to fully catch off Shin on that rotation. But now do we see that aggressive look towards this Everyone's side? Everyone's just winning their attacks, man. 
It's just a chessboard on the kill feed, on the round feed. But for now, it's again an early trade. Like we saw last time, we saw this push. And this uh, Carmen Court side are going to be aggressing with Cracks to the back of the site alone. He's waiting for reinforcements, and now the captain close by. Cracks win the fight? That's incredible. And that puts Foot right back on top. Magnum and Nari trying to turn it all around, but it's chaos on site, and Yedeje is here to clean up the pieces, trying to be the janitor in this situation. But can he sweep them off their feet? The bot dealt with. Magnum's got an Odin, so he can even spam across this wall. I think J realizes how difficult this situation is. Only good for one by the end of it as Magnum secures the deal. Very clean swing coming out there from Karma and Core, guaranteeing that trade. But always right down to the wire on every single one of these rounds. Swapping sides here once. Again, Carmine Core, how do they switch up their defense this time around? Like you said, it's been the attacking side for both of these teams that have looked so damn good. Now, Carmine Core, wow. they're the ones to look and try and go for that early rubble control. Four people stacked over here towards that A side. Okay, how does Carmine Core change it this time around? You can see Martin very far forward on this left hand side. It has to be checked. He's always this behind is a, a box. standard position at this point. Uh -huh. Tina eyeing it for now, but Martin is able to clear it first. And if he gets an opportunity to vacate the area, Kami Court working off an advantage. Yeah, he's getting the hell out of there. So five to four, and Foot have to have got catch up to make. Great reposition, and then it also forces Foot to use so much more utility just to clear out that left side box where Martin isn't even there anymore. Holding the new angle, tucked in. Can't see the barrel of his gun. Magnum there is available as well. Dizzy does contact. a lot. Magnum deals with oh. it. Martin dies and foot right back in the fight. Magnum gets one and he's holding it so far. The smoke doing wonders towards B main. Foot not finding the comfort to push. Right. And Kami Corp yeah, might, this okay. might be it. This might be it indeed. Two players left. It's Yedeje and Ada Captain. Wonder Kid and someone to rely on. And it's had a captain that goes in for the first swing. It's 24 points of health, and he has to drop back 33 seconds, and the spike needs to get planted. And as soon as it does, you know there's only one player holding on to their rifle. Little by little, Kami Corp show their presence, teasing that they're going to push. But Yenage doubles up, and they come in as well. And it's all equilibrium. Scratch that. Shin is alone for Kami Corp. Oh, okay, the captain's been left behind. He's been able to close down the rotations. No wake foot turning around again. It's another comeback, another victory, and oh, another God. round of overtime. And all smiles there on stage from Ada Captain. You're looking over at this foot squad. If you're in a 2v4 situation, Yenache and Ada Captain are the two players that you want alive there. But curious, I mean, we don't obviously have the insight of what was happening in those comms right there, but expecting a bit more coordination on those swings, maybe a bit too much confidence and expecting that that round was just in pocket on the side of Carmine Core, but they've got they've got to be hitting themselves for this but they can't let it get to them it's the closest it's been to be able to close out this well, first 100%, match it was a two versus four and they'll be hitting themselves if they don't close it out eventually but so far so forth it's about who wins on defense Just trying to get that pesky camera that's been such a pain there that Yeti J has been throwing around. He's just fumbling with this his headset bitch. right now. He's like, yeah, I'm Chill. chilling. We know the fight is going to be in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> Valid. Trip broken, though, over towards the B side. I feel like that's the first time that we've seen that actually broken yeah. in the first 30 seconds of the match. So a little bit more pressure on foot in that regard, but you still do have Mr. Fallen watching the angle. Foot have the impression that it's bound to be a C yeah, hit, but instead it is going to be a B execute. And Mr. Fallen smoked off, won't be able to see it from all being taken over. Regardless, Ada Captain has a great line to stall over towards B main if necessary with that fault line. And with that, they bait Foot into thinking that again it might be a secret given the presence shown in B earlier and the door opened there after. It's a different trip though this time here towards C main. But it's a double back on the decision because a spike heading towards C, even though there's a B execute happening in the making, so Foot are going to be rotating that direction. But now only realize there's two fronts being taken over here from the attacking side. Oh. Nairate with first blood, but Cenet able to trade it right back after Cenet trying to control the site, but it's out of captain that finds the pick instead. Ten three versus left. three, and on the 10 second mark, the spike will be going down up close and personal. 
Arsenal, six seconds. Spike needs to go down, and Martin's holding down the mark, and that's Crux on the case in a 1v2, as he's already taken down one. Shin Tamaji up against him. Can Crux do the magic for yet another time? Can he get the defense win for foot? Little bro taking off the left flank as he covers the right. Info given with that shot. Little by little, he eases forwards up on the ledge and foot. Finally win the defense round. Sleeves rolled up and round closed out. Ada is having the time of his life right now on stage, but 18 to 17 foot. Finally finding themselves on that match point. I feel like very consistently it's been foot matching up into overtime since Carmine Core took them here. And Carmine Core haven't been able to win a single defense round in how many? In 10 rounds? In 11 rounds? Wow. Um, this is going to be a hard one and I can very <laughs> easily see them get in their heads on the, the other side for they look on cloud nine right now. No, I think that was the first time we saw guys smiling on camera there, actually, on the <laughs> coach cam. To be fair, I feel like Foot have been pretty cheerful the entire day so far. He's been kind of stressed, though, in no, the coach yeah, room course. a little bit. It's a, it's a different matter whether he's showing it or not. But regardless, big of you to point out, it's been difficult for either of these teams to find that round on defense. A big question of, will it, the first one to find it, which was Foot, will they be the ones to close out the match? Tamaji. First spotted. CNED drops in like he does every single time to lead the charge. Yet a spray is successful and Tamaji is put to bed. Magnum, 99 to CNED, and it's all a trade game thus far. Four versus four. Carmen Court, they've been struggling on these retakes. They really have. Spike planted. Who can you count on? To bring it all back together for them. Narrate has a full kit and you've got a paranoia to work with here for Shin. Is it going to be enough? Paranoia are waiting on it. And that's exactly when they'll move in. Everyone is blinded, really, and Kami Court take full advantage. One smoked off, but Cracks on the fight. He's waiting for the cross from Shin, but the push comes on to side from the Prowler. Must have fallen, hasn't shown himself. Cracks and Yerujay dies, and that's all Kami Court need. For a win defense, Kami Court say, we can do the same. 18 to 18. Okay, out of stress now. He was like, like that was oh, surely moment, guys. we got the defense round, right? Like, oh we're, it's done and God. dusted here. Again, Lotus foots map pick here for game number one in the second match of today. The decider here within Group A. But to take a beat and take a look at this replay, I mean, the flood back onto site was clinical coming out from Carmine Core. That sees finding two for Narrate. It, it, the value out of that and isolating these players was impeccable. Really is. Uh, I think it's safe to say here that Cena hasn't been having the best of games. 18 to 30 is a score right now in KD. Uh, and it's looking a little bit rough on that end, right? So maybe there were moments he was smiling, but that smile is no longer in his face. To be fair though, he has been good at still making the space for the team. It's just, I think, going a little bit too far hey, in some of those plant situations, getting caught out a bit early on or even just getting first blooded, but usually a trade for a trade at the very least. But it's definitely not 2022 20, Cena, the player that even though he takes space, he takes a couple of players down with him. Maybe he needs Jet for that, who knows. But for now, Carmen Court move on to that, it moves on to that A site. Foot, happy to hand it over for now. And Odin onto Magnum, and goodness me, this could be chaotic again. It's gonna be a 5v5 retake potentially for yet another time. And all dangling in the balance. Nari, come on, there's no way you're pushing through. You actually are pushing against the smoke together with Martin. It's Nari to win one kill, but Foot turning it right back around. Two kills in their way. And Tamaji holds the line with 10 points of health to spare. And they've just quashed the push, right? Wave number two incoming. And it's got Yerujay's name ridden all over it as he gets himself onto the flank. So low on the side of KC. Shin hiding out. Cracks low, smoke deteriorates, but he's so quick to the trigger. Coming caught back in winning raise on this attack. Not much health remaining on the last remaining players, but they get the job done. Heroics coming out from Tomasi as well to even equalize in that fight for that A Heaven control. Just the pressure. Sure, Shin took a lot of damage for it. You didn't expect it though if you're on the side of foot for someone else to have come back up towards A Heaven. It delayed that retake for so long, buying that time for the rest of the team to find the reposition. The hype there within the coach room once again. 
Hey, I mean, guys looked pretty confident that they were closing out the game, and now they got to deal with that. These two teams really want Lotus here, knowing that a 2-0 is very big, is a very big possibility, and how momentum can swing in their favor. Because imagine losing this, right? Imagine having to deal with the emotions of having to do it all over again and back to square one. Mr. Fallen is able to escape with his life. Six points of health, no problem. Still able to shoot his gun, right? Still, the meat and potatoes of this fight is this ace site. And that's foot traversed towards it. Kami Corp looked to challenge from stairs, potentially. Seen it looking in this direction. Magnum needs to be careful not to be caught off. Flashback getting out of position. Spray on the far distance. And it's Nare and Martin to do a hell of a lot of damage. Kami Corp, they've got the lead now. They just need to stick the landing. Mr. Fallen so low, six health to his name. Five versus three, can't be all comfortable for foot. Mr. Falling, as you mentioned, it is low, but it's Yenage on the hot seat, all moving in together. It's a death ball coming again for KC, and they eventually are able to close it all out. It was a long game, it was a stressful one, and they just hold the defuse to guarantee the win. Carmen Court come out on top with a 20 to 18 score. 38 rounds of Valorant played here for the first map of deciding group stage matchup here for group A in the hands of Carmine Core. It was a foot map pick at that. And what's curious and I think scary here for, is that we're heading to bind, which could be an ace in the hole. Yeah, you said it. Bind up next. Don't go any, anywhere, folks. The action has only just started. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm going to walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Friday night putting them plays in, but it feel like a special occasion. So let's go out, go blazing, hit the dance floor, let go frustrations. I might have a hidden agenda, but my intention's pure. I'll give you all that I got, and I hope that you don't need more. It's okay, just take my hand now. Damn yeah, me and sweat in your hair out. You got me creasing my sneakers. That's usually something I care about. Couldn't see the path, but it's clear now. You was in my dreams, but you here now. And I just want a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. With your hands in the air where I can see. Did you hear what? I called the ride cause I'm going up And there's something mixy going in my cup Don't say much cause they know what's up huh. You know it get cold on the late night We getting all close like it's day night You looking so fly, you can take flight Now I got this feeling that I can't fight Your courage got my urges flaring You got me by the collar and I'm not caring You see how the people can't stop staring I'm trying to make you mine and I'm not sharing Okay, let's bring it back a bit She said you could have whatever if you ask for it well, I just want to have a little dance and a reason to change my plan. All I want is for you to dance with me with your hands in the air where I can see. I don't know if we'll get another chance you see. So I hope that you'll just come dance with me. Yeah. 
What a crazy start to this elimination match, but it's KC that get themselves on the board. I'm joined once again by Kakuka. Uh, do you reckon they got enough bananas there? Uh, I mean, spares? it's been a 90 minute match. I think that we're going to give them five minutes to, you know, get some air and definitely get some extra energy. You know, don't forget to eat your bananas. Yeah, and also I want to cast your mind back uh, when we're here. Kiko on that stage set a record mm -hmm. uh, here on LAN, on VCTA and EMEA, but narrate thought, nah, that record is mine, and he went and broke it uh, on this map. What do you think about his performance? Yeah, exactly. 40 kills, and we also have to think that the record that Kiko broke was also in an OT that was exactly like this was uh, like this one, oh, in Lotus at 22-18. An extremely long entire match, but as you're mentioning, narrate an incredible performance. I think that uh, not only uh, because of the numbers, but because of how well he was synergizing with the rest of the team. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Magnum as well. As the IG probably the biggest task he's ever had to face uh, so far in his IGLing career to be able to call that many attack sides over yeah. and over and over but also Kakuka yeah. saving Casey as well in that yeah. one round where he uh, basically uh, dragged them over the line yeah exactly and playing the Odin I think that the head-to-head -head, uh, especially with Mr. Fallen was also beautiful to watch in, in actually in, as a summer we've had uh, a very interesting uh, map for sure also mentioning Mr. Fallen going back in the omen definitely he was feeling way more comfortable and yet to yet i feel like he was you know outshined by the rest of his teammates but on this one on cypher i think especially on the defense he was doing a beautiful job yeah any of them i felt like could have closed it out we had so many crazy uh clutches but also uh, for magnum the last time we saw him not the greatest performance yes. here on stage so the fact that he was able to frag and call and stay yes. positive and keep his team uh in this i'm really really really impressed by yeah him. exactly and after what was it yeah i remember that by Round six, we were on a five to one. Casey was winning and we were seeing these reactions from Magnum. Maybe time to fall off the chair is something that uh, we're doing in EMEA EA these days. But definitely, not only that, also when things are getting tough and the other team is having the performance that, that Foot was having going back into the match, getting, I think, five rounds in a row. And the way that they were doing it, uh, sometimes with the retake, sometimes uh, uh, forbidding them to get onto site. I think that going back to that is what is making Magnum grow. And also not thinking and not be, uh, you know, not paying a high toll for the match that he had previously. Yeah, definitely. I feel like he's definitely uh, grown already in the last two times we definitely have. Definitely on that team. <laughs> yeah, well, we have seen, of course, on, on this lineup. <laughs> <laughs> on this lineup, oh, this this was the last time we saw him. Okay, okay, I'm oh, sorry. No. I'm so sorry, madam, to do no. uh, to do this to you. Uh, yeah, it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna see a better stats on, on the next graphic. Uh, but this is the thing. On this team with this many these many young players, he's the veteran. He is yes. the one that has to actually uh, stay positive and make sure they do not lose in OTs like that. And we were talking about how the experience is in Spanish. We say experience is a degree, is something that you have to master yourself in, and obviously only time gives you that. And now he has to uh, also help the rest of his teammates. We were talking about how important it is in these long matches to have that experience and, and that uh, uh, kind of someone that leads you on. Yeah, and let's take a look at the Aim Lab warm up uh, right now with Atta Captain as I uh, bring Lothar into this conversation because Atta Captain had some great uh, clutches here as well. But what do we do on the next one, Lothar? Because they can't just rely on those uh, clutches for Foot to be able to take this. Well, the next one is going to be Bind, and that's going to be a very big question mark because we have seen a change in the lineup when it comes to the starting agents. 
on Lotus. So now I'm fully expecting to have a change on Bind as well. We have seen Cnet on Neon, but there's also role changes between the players. Cracks is going back to KO, at least the last time they played. We know him for that agent. He is known to be the most cracked as well uh. at this agent. But then Mr. Fallen goes to the Gecko. And I'm, we, you guys spoke about the fact that he was very comfortable on the Omen. So for me, that's a big question mark. Will those performances will be matched if they will keep those swaps here? But again, if they don't play with the Neon and they will go back to Raze, which is like the safe spot, which is something maybe Sinet will try to do. But again, his performance on this on this Raze on Lotus was, let's just say, well, yeah, well, the there's best. the answer for you. He yeah. is going to go to uh, that race. But everything else you've also mentioned, uh, they've managed to stick with. But what do you make of this on the side of Keiko as well? So this is the exact same composition that KC played last time against Heretics in a show match. I was not certain if this is going to be picked, but it seems like they're sticking to the guns. And also remember, they, the last time they played it, it was without the nerf on the sky. So there has to be a consideration of changing the game plan. So, But the, the, the upside is they have four flashes, one blind, and that Omen and Yoru combo is incredibly efficient. In my book, that's the most important piece of the puzzle to make this work. The combination of Yoru going into lamps with the um, paranoia, building up that pressure, going into uh, showers early to con get control of the orbs, all of that is possible with this composition. And I would love to see a different initiator to pair this up, uh, up but I think it's still a very efficient composition. And the only thing scarier than the raid dropping 40 on Fade is the fact that he gets to play a duelist on this map, and I can't wait to see what he does there and send this back to your casters. Uh, Pavlos and Nash, I hope you're ready for potentially another long one. Oh, it could be a long one indeed. And that's exactly what we're looking for with here, right? I mean, look, the Death broke it down. Magnum definitely redeemed himself this previous map. And it's and I think there's maybe some more redeeming to do. This was just one series, right? A strong performance. But I think I think he looks back at his Fnatic days, right? Being able to take the international stage. He's got to lead this roster now to success. And he's only got to do it by winning another map here. And it could be buying their own map pick. Hey, and Bind was, I was questioning if it was the ace in the sleeve of Carbine Core. We haven't seen them on this map quite yet. And again, fighting forward here for a short. Yep, very much uh, a strong fight here from Carbine Core, placing quite a lot of players there. But still, it's uh, subsided. Right Cena here. dead, Martin low. And Carmen Court look to defend quite an onslaught onto this A site for aggressing little by little. But the poison cloud is enough to keep them at bay for now. It's enough. I mean, they don't have much more information across the map here on the side of foot, just maintaining the short control. But lack of presence from Carmine Court, they're reading into this hit back towards this A side. Ooh. <laughs> Martin is low and he's close to this. And it's going to be a double-sided approach from Showers as well. As sure, it's still Nare. No, well, Martin in the most difficult of positions. As Wingman heads towards the site to put that spike down, Martin finds a nice shot onto Mr. Fall and makes himself useful before he drops. Three versus four, foot on the back seat. Kami Corp, they're taking on some momentum from the previous round, but can they secure this? There are a lot of players that are low. Could be simple pickings without the need of headshots. And it's Lamps that Carmen Court will be pushing together. Three, one coming out from heaven, and it's Nare that does it all by himself. He doesn't need friends. He can do it by himself. No worries at all, out of captain. He saved the, the game for, for a couple of times a previous map, but for now it's Carmen Corp with round number one going their way as they did the map before. Great read from Carmine Core into the pistol round foot. I think they did make a little bit of noise back still towards that A short, but to pull those rotations so early from that B side after none of them were able to find any of that information, taking a peek over towards this replay. I'm excited to see what Carmine Core nice. do here with the double duelist. I think looking towards Martin on that Yoru, Nere on the raise as well as we head into a little technical pause. But it's going to be fun things. I mean, the fact that you see a lot of synergy, I think, coming yeah. out from them when they are playing that double duelist, they're ensuring that the double dive pays off very well. And Martin, we've seen his Yoru. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good.
I mean, I think this is a contrast to what we saw from the end of the previous map, right? Because prior, you know, everything got too intense, everything got too difficult. Everyone was forced to play Valorant from mm -hmm. the get-go, right? Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what your setups are. It's It all gets a little bit too intense in those moments. But now, they've taken a few minutes to rest, right? They've taken this, themselves some time after the map win from Calming Core. They've been able to look back, talk with them a little bit more intensely. The same could be said for Foot here. It's, uh, it's been a rough road for Foot, on the other hand, because they are having to overcome a loss that they really strongly fought for. And a loss that I don't know if they could afford to lose. We're talking about Lotus, their own map pick, where they tend to found success, right? Foot is the team that, you know, makes Lotus their home, not Ascent. And that's what differs them from other Turkish teams. So uh, for them to lose it straight out of the bat, I think, is quite mentally draining. It's good to see that Ada Captain has got some sort of uh, joy in him, or at least the shark is giving it to him. Uh, but I don't know <laughs> if I would call what we no. just saw on camera. It's joy. like comfort, if you will. No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, everyone loves everyone their little loves their plushies. plushies. Absolutely. Uh, bring a little bit of home with you up onto yeah. the stage, right? But I think what's interesting too is looking at the fact that we haven't seen Carmi Core on Bind. It hasn't been a map that they've been banning out. It's just one that their opponents have typically been banning. We haven't had the opportunity to really see them on this. And talking about the fact that it was that kind of surprise factor, what kind of composition were we going to see coming out from them? I think the, the double duelist or like, typically I think it's been more of the double initiator and double controller compositions that we've seen coming out from most teams on Bind. But that surprise factor here for Carmine Core. Meanwhile, Foot. We've seen them on yep. Bind before. That was that 10-13 loss mm -hmm. up against Team Heretics. And even though it was close, it was a sloppy game, if right? we're going to be quite honest. Yeah, and that's what I'm afraid of here. Hey, Sharky, nice. You took him away from out of captain, though. That's not fair. Give it back. Give it back. <laughs> hey, now he's happy. Look, as long as he's got Sharky with him, no worries at all. But we have received word. The reason of this uh, tech timeout is there's some audio issues that are being looked into now, and I'm actually glad it's audio issues because anything else could have taken longer. But these are the kinds of things that can be fixed up fairly quickly, and we're hoping to jump into it um, fairly soon. But you're right. Uh, it, it's one of the situations where you need to redeem yourself not only uh, in you know remaining in this tournament, but from your mm -hmm. previous performances. You've set the bar high. You know you can compete at an international level. Now, Foot need to do the same here. At least get close to it because they set the bar so high. Yeah. It's uh, it's down to them to make sure they can meet those expectation expectations. Especially with Yadda Jay and CNED being brought yes. in again, previous world class champion in CNED, and then the star rookie of Yadda Jay. I don't think that they've. They haven't let us down, though. No. It's, it, it's like putting an electric engine into an AT's muscle car, right? It's like you've definitely put two strong aspects from two different eras, uh, but it's time it's to see to if you jump. can actually put them to test, put them to work. And it's a difficult task to do. Absolutely is. But as we head oh. again into this, Narrate's going to find that first blood. Looks like Foot Art going to continue to try and pressure over towards Short, close the gap there, and find that Lamp's Scout control destroyed. thanks to that toxic screen. Regardless, again, the players I think that we're really looking towards here on the side of foot to make those differences are going to be at a captain, are going to be yet a J yeah. these situations. I mean, everyone's looking at a captain, especially after the previous game. Mm -hmm. set, <laughs> set the expectations so high of what to expect from him. But it's, we want to see more from Cena as well. I think that's the big highlight of this one as they look to push past Lux with a flash of their teammate. They aggress forwards, but they only are able to find one. Nare looking to go right after him. Paint shots can do a lot of damage here, but they all manage to run away in time. The snake bite will deter any further movement in their direction. It's still four versus four. And the back foot of finding damage with pistols is so scary. Cracks with a double. They might get themselves a second round out here, Martin upgrades. Vandal now in his hands, but Cracks is destroying them. One by one, they drop like flies in the sky. And Shin alone, all of the players alone. Uh, there is a world where he can spray upon them, but he has not, he doesn't have that info maybe. No, especially losing on that back sight control to have Ada pick up the Vandal as well. Done and dusted here, the anti-eco of Carmine Core, but Crazy. already liking what we're seeing. Of course, it was a hero play coming out from Crack, splitting heads there with the sheriff and laying down the law. However, we're also seeing, again, a slight change in the composition of Foot. Not as drastic on Lotus, where they swapped out three of those agents, but only the duelist there for CNED going to be back on this raise pick, where previously he was playing the Neon on Lotus. He had previously played that Yoru. And while he did perform, mm -hmm. I found that there were 
issues with a lot of that spacing, with the team trying to catch up to them, and just those hero isolated plays. So they recognize there's something that can be optimized here, mm -hmm. right? But why haven't they put them on a jet? I mean, that's a question I'm throwing out there. I want to see Turkish Jet because that's where Turkish Jet got it, then got its name from. CNED was the was the first person to put that out there. However, Jet since CNED was that Jet player in yeah. the server has changed so much Indeed. within her kits in that kind of regard where you can't be as unpunished as he was used to uh, in holding a lot of those angles and diving in in those situations, having to have a bit more finesse. Yeah, finesse in a sense, or just intent behind a lot of that utility usage. You need to be clear with it, and CNED dropping to other agents for now. We'll have to make do, but for, now, but for this particular round, Foot have got superior firepower. And for now, it's equally trading out for them. Outlaw and Mr. Fallen, knowing there's not much armor on the others, is a one shot. Not too bad, not too shabby. Bit of a stack here. Two different elevations, but the disease spots them both. They're in trouble. If they try and close up the gap with the classics, Martin Sheriff does find a head, but that's a one for three uh, in the player's remaining score. And first look to close things out without issues. Now, Magnum, look, the IGL. Couldn't Won't live friends, long huh? enough to say anything else. That's two for foot, one for Carmen Court. And it's the best start foot could have hoped for after they lost the pistol. I mean, losing out the pistol to just be able to take it straight away into that anti-eco of Carmen Court and flipping the script of what you would expect in these first three rounds of the map. Now, Carmen Court, at the very least, they're cycling into these weapons here. So you're looking also eyes towards Nere, a player that honestly we cannot say enough about yeah. hailing all the way from North America, being that regional transfer here within EMEA. He's one away from that showstopper into this round. Regional pride getting to you, I think, Ash, but look at Carmen Cole destroying foot. And um, yeah, that aggression, aggression off of, sh uh, off of uh, showers was the best thing they could have done because they've instantly found themselves in a big lead, five versus three. But Foot don't want to ease the pressure just yet. Might want to take advantage of the two players isolated here on this A site. But Tamaji might have got their number. Drops back as he does re retrieve a bullet to his elbow. And for th with that, that's enough of that fight. So Foot. Given some space for the A side. Not looking to get flooded into lamps. No. A play that we've seen from Foot before, playing the numbers advantage, oh recharging that health here to play numbers into the post plant. And yet a Jace gets getting the spike down now. And a couple doubles up though, and this could allow Foot to find a way back two. in as it's a two versus three. All they need to do is find another pick before they drop, but Nare is so good for it. The spike is heading towards the B side. He was hoping that he could go on the plant, but because there is no plant, no one is taking the TP. Sneaky Edge, yeah, but uh, yeah, you've given them time to rotate, so I don't think you're getting a plant either, which puts Carmen Court in pole position this left. round. We might get the plant, but won't yeah. have much time afterwards. He's trying to see if he can isolate anyone, but Carmen Court are too clever than that. They're known for their stacks, and they'll continue to do so, especially when they've got the numbers advantage. Spike planted. Discipline necessary here, and forget it, Jake. Points oh, get a oh, The one decade it strikes again. Three in the board for Foot. That's an incredible clutch. A Red Bull clutch coming out here for Foot. Yetajay just lining them up one by one. They were going for the triple swing as well, but the off angle king. I need a second to take that in. Let's look at that. He's playing aim maps, dude. This is absolutely incredible. And he's taking it in. He's enjoying it. He's got to at this point. <laughs> and yes, that has put Zation Aang to silence. Stoic faces. Those things there. tend to do that. You are 1v3. You were never meant to win that. But Yerije shows that he's not normally. Check his check in PC. Man. Tense up there for KC now. Anti-Eco destroyed, and now back onto this pistol by Shure, a marshal for narrate, but Shot my wingman. Right there. not much you can do other than hope to try and clean up alongside those shares, or vice versa. Slower plays here from Foot, knowing I got the spike. that Carmine Core on these double duelist compositions do have that tendency to be a bit more aggressive, especially into the Eco rounds. 
playing fully together here on the side of foot, not looking to let any of these weapons go away for free. You know the last time we saw an eco, a thrifty, being one out from one team, Spike the planted. other one came back to win it <laughs> again, so it was a topsy-turvy. Uh, now, I don't think Army Corps are in the same position to do so because they definitely need a pick, and the fact that Anna Captain shoots so quickly and uh, doesn't give a chance to Magnum to even react, they won't be given such a benefit. Narrate Telegraft. And it's a game of whack-a-mole for the side of foot. They do not drop a play. It's an Andalucía flawless, giving them a quite an exacerbated lead. Three rounds of difference now for the Turkish side. 4-1. Weapons back into the hands of Carmine Core this time around. You do have that dimensional drift available. We've seen Martin use it for that scouting for the remainder of the team. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't necessarily just follow up straight up with that dimensional drift, where you see maybe some teams just looking for an exact set play based on that information. But instead, they'll tend to use it to see, okay, how many players are actually here and make the decision on, okay, do we take that rotation to the other sites, or is it worth fighting forward on? Well, Thrash is going to go right after Martin, but he's able to put it to its grave before it has a chance to concuss him up. But still, does throw his clone in and wants to go for another bite. He doesn't use his dimensional drift straight away, instead thinks better of it. His foot has completely flooded this area, but now have started to spread out across the map. You can slowly see Seenid moving towards this B close. site, trying to figure out what the setup looks like there for KC. I mean, stall potential here in the hands of Tomasi, playing towards back site here. Talks the screen to cover both Huka and towards Garden. The snake fight poised and ready oh for the hop God. up and Anna takes his head off. But Anna Captain is absolutely insane oh. with the rifle. And he's just put foot just in pole down. position for yet another time. One stuck in TP. Magnum is questioning his decision here. Yaruche, he's bullying them. He's a newcomer and he gets to do that. Now that's a statement piece. Five to one foot, lost their own map pick, but they're here to show Carmen Cot who's boss. So much comfort, clinical coming out from foot right now. Carmine Core, we saw, we've seen ideas coming out from them. Come they're on. trying to fight a little bit more forward, but, and deny that space, but, you know, but they're not afraid to make that rotation off. They're not gonna push the issue. And a timeout now to be called by, by Karma and Core just to talk about, okay, what's going wrong here Oh, you've on the got to take a timeout here. You really do. Like, how can you lose all these rounds one by one? Uh, the stern talking to are required, and I'm sure Magnum is hearing it all right now, but it's all rolling in his head. He's trying to process it, but it, he needs to keep that head clear to be, be able to lead this team to another MAC victory. The job isn't done. Yes, they've won an insane map number one on Lotus, 20 to 18. It went so far. In that, in that particular map, but this is Bind, their own map pick. There's a reason behind their, their pick here, and they can't afford to lose rounds that were meant to be theirs. Absolutely not. Saving Grace, though, Mr. Fallen did end up using that thrash into the last round just to find as much information as they need. That's why the rotation came in there for foot to try and collapse over towards Tomasi. And then Ada Captain just hits an insane shot yeah. as he's just like hopping up, just trying to jiggle peek that, that check over towards Ada Captain things. He's been on the ball today. Oh, he has. Every day, in he fact. He owns the ball. He is the ball. I don't, don't know what that means. I don't know what that <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll away from that one. But now eco round coming in here for Karma and Core. Of course, the timeout's not meant to be for this round. They're gonna be looking towards the next buy that they have coming up. But right now, foot. They're comfortable in knowing that if things go as according to plan right now, they should comfortably sit six to one in theory, knowing that they're guaranteed at least an even half. And every round from then is just bonus. For sure. For Carmen Core, though, they need something momentous to come back into this. It's a step-by-step -step game, isn't it? And I don't think this is the round for it. Although we've seen Foot pull these off, Carmen Core not quite in the same headspace. But they made the right call here. Look at the stack on this A site. And that's exactly where Foot are setting up to push. Fair enough. Two flashes still in the hands of Cracks for this entry towards site. One way, keeping them at bay for now, but the flash through it is going to allow the push to come forward. The jump and hop from Cena to the back line is good, but you need to be careful. It's just a dangerous Cena behind you. 
and that uh, puts Magnum, who's on an island elsewhere on the map, to do it all himself. But it's just the Sheriff, it's just an eco. His team got deleted in a fraction of a moment. And even if the flash is thrown, I don't know exactly where he is. Wingman helps out, says hello, gives a hug. Not exactly the hug really need, the Magnum really needs right now. He's baiting us. <laughs> He's trying to get a kill, find a different angle to at least, you know, get an advantage on one of these positions. But he's gone all the way around. It might be out of captain. The only one that hasn't gone for the chase might be the one to get the kill. No, he runs back. Never mind. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. He's playing with us. <laughs> I mean, it's no one gets knows. the kill. All right, no one gets the kill. But it is a foot round, and it just increases that lead even more. It's just a game of cat and mouse. There, Magnum trying to deny any alt orbs over towards the side of Foot, who, I mean, sure, he could have technically trying to gone for some picks there, but it really wouldn't have made a difference with the economy that Foot have amassed yeah. for themselves. Like, they are looking healthy down in that savings bank, especially with five rounds left into the half can probably very comfortably buy did up we, into most. Did until... you just watch a replay of someone buying a gun? I mean, uh, was there something highlighted there? Never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> For a second, I thought there was some sort of a meaning behind it I didn't quite grasp. But still, operator for Martin. Not able to TP out, though. So committed to this angle here towards showers. No one's going to take a peek on the side of foot. Very passive play just to see if Harma and Kor elect to push for a bit more space. You can see Martin yeah. is creeping up. And Martin collects it. And for the first time in a while, Carmen okay. Corp have got first blood. He waited for the timing too, for that zero Shadow point to just end up running out Don't so he could way. actually get that teleport down. And now it's Mozzi to use the Viper's Pit here. Deny the drop in that push over from Garden. Forcing Foot to fall back over towards that A site. Again, funneling them towards that operator in the hands of Martin. Mm -hmm. But the stampede from Foot so far has been good. Double blast pack still available for Cena. Now the captain has found himself on enemy lines. They know. They do know, but it's bought another, enough time, right? Carmen Court forced to vacate the area. Now the captain just drops back into sight. He's done his job. Dimensional drift coming out from Martin, though. He's pinging out where the opponent positioning is. Oh, he sees all four. He does, but how does his team use it? No one's near by. Only one now coming in from short. They're going to sandwich. trying to save up with them. And here comes the clone as well to push. Showstopper enabled. It's seen it this time around. As Samaji looks to drop back, he can't be comfortable pushing that one. And there's Jin able to avoid it. Here. Do they have time to move in? Snake bite to their feet. Karmicorp need to push through, but this lamp control is all too much. Marty finds a shot, cracks in the madness. Not able to deliver. Up close and personal, it seems Carmen Court are superior, and with two players alive, Carmen Court will look to the defuse, already defuse halfway. It's all it's need required to be done, and finally, they end the streak that Foot collected. Great retake protocol coming out from Carmine Core off the back of the dimensional drift, especially with that teleport, te teleport over coming out from Magnum to it's guarantee. A hard word to say. The sandwich retake. Okay, thank yes, you. I, I've had a few word rumbles. But rumbles. Yeah, see? You're there not you you're go. not meant to expose yeah. us on, yeah. on the stream. Yeah. Yes, I don't know. Okay. We've already exposed us really by doing it, it sure. in the first place. Yeah. But, but one thing, though, we got to get a shorty counter on here for Marcy. Oh, yes, we definitely should. We've had so many of these shorty moments, and I think it's because of all the chaos going on. It's in these close proximities it, within smokes and stuff. Uh, a lot of shorties. And, yeah, <laughs> they have been pay playing the difference, but for the past two rounds, Martin is doing a lot with the Operator. I mean, cutting off these angles, being dynamic in his positioning, swapping from A towards B, upper angle this time. And yeah. he smoke fades, he doesn't realize what's oh. to the left. Mr. Falling does get one before he drops. And Martin repositions yet another time, he's in the right moment to do it, but no, instead, with the... A fragment to his feet, and Yerujay's bullets going in his direction. He's back to square one oh. to Margie. That was crucial, because there's no more Vipers pit here for Yerujay. Foot on the back seat. At a captain, he's done it before, and he'll try and do it again. Spike in hand, but it's dropped to the floor. Grax is insane. A one-on-one -on -one that he will win. Perseverance for Grax, and seven on the board for Foot. A tough round there to swallow for Carmine Core. Cracks doing it all for foot, maintaining that momentum. KC yet to string any rounds together. These two rounds piece by piece. The pistol and that last retake that we had just seen. 
yet to find themselves in a comfortable position, constantly back and forth between these saves and these buys. No room to work with. I know during the offseason, Foot got a massive upgrade package in the likes of Yerge and Sinan, but it's the two retained, the three retained players that are topping the charts here for Foot in this game. Absolutely crazy stuff brought out by them. And now the captain gets first blood, but he's quickly traded, and the fact that Kami Court is with Sheriff, not the best situation. Paranoia, good for the captain, so he keeps himself alive, but he's with low health, so he thinks better of it. Oh, great paranoia to push Zenet off the angle. It actually forces out a captain to actually commit to that teleport that he was initially trying to fake. And this spike all the way towards the safe site. Tomazi alone towards heaven again. It is the go around here for Carmine Core. So expectation for Foot to make this claim. Yeah, Zenet showing his ground, getting one onto Martin Shin. He's thinking a second time before he goes and challenges that corner. And a live Zenet is a dangerous Zenet. You have to avoid, and that just keeps Foot in the lead. Now, the previous, the first half we saw in Lotus, it was a 6-6. Mm -hmm. six six. A completely different story than what we're seeing right now. It that, went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That was also with Carmine and Kors starting off hot off the gate. Yep. They were 4-1 to, to start on Lotus as well. But coming back with a vengeance with how close that overtime was, they're driven to take this map to take it to a third. Of course, I know early days to be talking about that, but it is seven to two, to be fair, and Carmine Core still yet to find that opening here on defense. Of course, at least you can say they did take the opportunity to deny any op any chance of cracks cycling into the null command off the end of that round. But do they fight forward for these orbs? Do they decide to look for the extremities here on the defense to try and deny that KO's ultimate? And it's got to be said, Foot are playing off of no information here. Carmen Court haven't played Bind so far, mm -hmm. right? And it's the opposite for Carmen Court. They could definitely look into Foot. Yes, they've been changes, visibly, and adaptations it, it, because they are playing against Carmen Court. Uh, but um, it seems that Carmen Court can't take it to their advantage coming in without anything to show for it earlier on. I mean, Foot are so good with their early presence that they show to just force so much early utility out of the side of Carmine Core. Not the chance to delay nearly as much. Even starving them of information, forcing oh, yeah. some of that in utility coming out from Magnum. Well, off the Thrasher, they're going to be start putting Sheen forwards onto this B site. And you can see how Kami Court are scared of this. Looking to go for a retake very similar to what we saw on Lotus. Maybe that's what works out for them. They do have that dimensional drift and the showstopper to work with here for the duelist. So they're focusing on those Five ultimates planted. to make the difference for Kami Court here. Foot maybe flashed up. Dimensional Drift used, and so is the Showstopper. So far, so good for Carmen Core, but the rest of the players have dispersed, move into Elbow. Martin doesn't care to use a flash as he exits the Dimensional Drift, gets one before he drops, but he's done what it was necessary, finds the information. energy has got an upper angle, and he's so darn dangerous, but it's not dangerous enough. Two ultimates, really important, and they put Carmen Court right back into winning ways. They needed this too, especially to win with at least some numbers left here on the side of Carmen Core. The fact that they have the three Rifles to carry into the last round of this half. Going to be likely a light shield buy coming out from the remaining players of the team. Just an error rate. Going to be missing out on that a little bit. And with the last few rounds, both sides have used their ultimates. We're not really going to see any opportunity to cycle any of these up into this round. Uh, if anything, maybe that Viper's pick coming out from Tamazi, but the way things have been swinging, I found I feel like he has been caught, being caught out the most on an island. Look how aggressive they're actually going. This is Nari guessing, pushing forwards. It does pay for it for his life, but how much information do you really gain off of it? I think it's more about the space that Casey have gathered, but it's really a push into the TP, which I believe was heard. The aggressive look. He pushes. But back, but again, they're gonna go and re-clear this space. Narrate's still so close. Close. Playing this off angle. Martin cutting through. Oh, oh they he may have revealed himself, and that's gonna be his demise. Magnum tries to trade it back, but it's foot that find the advantage, the upper hand, and this A site take. Then you've only got the controllers left here for the retake on the side of Karma and Core Sure. Snake fights to try and divvy up foot. What can you do really though? Samaji looks to lead the charge. They're actually thinking about it. I no mean, it's the last round. Of the course, house. it is the last round. You're right. At a captain. Back of lamps. 
Yedeje on another end. It's so One difficult to cover remaining. all these corners. It's Yedeje to come out on top when Shin tries to go for something aggressive with his TP. Oh, the mosh pit is going to make it absolutely impossible here from Tamaji. Oh, and he definitely can't cover up against them all. It's smoked off. All he can do is hope that he won't get shot down as the smoke deteriorates. That's nine to three for foot. A really good start comparing it to the previous map. The best start I believe they could hope for. Not even comparing it to the previous map, but to the previous time that they played Bind yeah. up against, I believe that was Giant X. So looking towards the difference here for Foot, they look much more comfortable, a lot cleaner. The spacing has been better here. I think the adjustments with, honestly, even just putting CNET onto that raise has looked really good. Sure, he's not putting out the numbers right now, but he is able to find that space and the trades coming in are what's important on the foot side. And now Carmen Core on the attack. It's uh, it's hard to say how this one is going to go for them. I think that it's just the old story to be repeated. The pistol, the best way for them to start this retake. If they lose it, I fear that we are going to a third map, or at least Carmen Core can fear that as foot uh, will be happy with the opportunity that would be given for them to potentially win off this series. But the push does come through. It's heard, it's seen, or at least from behind the flashes. Nara 8 and Mr. Fallen trade back, and with Mr. Fallen blind as a bat, he'll be dropping like one as well. And Kami Court, full access to the site. Yadajay, he's sneaky from behind, and he's able to find one. They know exactly where he is, so he's buying a lot of space for his team to start moving in from. And a captain shows his presence. It's a balance of information that needs to be given. And CNED can push through elbow. That's exactly where Kami Court are looking. Two versus three. Foot needs to start finding kills. Both of two players are low, and one was taken down. They're split up. Tamaji behind the smoke. And he's so close to out of captain, he can smell him, but only now can see him. And it's out of captain to come out on top. Magnum is low. All he has to do is stop this plant, this defuse from happening. But Yelje aggressing into his face in an aggressive manner. It's going to have to be the defuse and foot win the second pistol of the series. Carmine Cord needed this pistol round. Double digits here, four foot. Makes it that much harder for Carmine Cord to find themselves back into map two. And not even just as far as what the scoreline is needing it, needing a clean pistol to mentally make the comeback into this game when Foot have been looking so good. Oh, look at that energy. Yeah. It's contagious there for the team. Oh, meanwhile, Martin's being left hanging by Magnum on the side. Oh, no. Come on. Fist there we go. Fist bump. Successful. Careful. Check mark. Still need the vibes. Yeah, you gotta have the vibes, especially when you're so far behind. It's the only thing you can have it in your favor. Start throwing things back at them. Stinger Force. It is indeed. Desperate measures. I mean, you have to when you're 10-3. Flash coming through. TP as well from Martin. Oh, it's a, onto the site. Cracks with the first shot. The spike will be successful, but there's so much thrown at them. Shin. Won't live for long, but dismantling them one by one, overwhelming them with everything they had. And with Carmen Court forcing that, they've got nothing for the next either. That's just about match foot running a clinic here with an Endoluthia flawless on the side of the Turkish squad. This is terrifying because oh, yeah. Carmen Court, it's the right call. You have to force in that situation when you're, that's the closest that you're going to be as far as equalizing in those weapons, trying to give a great fight and be able to contest head to head. But you also have to win those because now, sure, forced into another force. But and this then... time, the buy looks similar on both sides, <laughs> we have to be fair, but there's pressure on Carmen Court, or a lot of it. We're talking about I can't do the maths. Eight rounds in a row. The difference is, too, if Foot lose this, they still have money to buy. They do, indeed. That is a big caveat. So not only do Carnicorn need to win this, they need to win it cleanly. And not only they need to win this round, they need to win seven rounds after that to find Here. 11 rounds and match the score Foot. Cool. One way that we saw being thrown there in towards showers, though, to give Martin that space to find the orb for the dimensional drift. But team still running that default, lacking. Walking over towards that B side right now. Starved of information, Foot opt to send out Wingman to do a little bit of scouting, but a nice tuck from Martin dodges it. Yeah, it's a spread out approach here from Carmen Court. <laughs> Hoping that Foot misstep. The Foot are doing none of that. I mean, that's the other thing, just trying to draw out this utility from Foot, right? An absolute must 
because they've been able to just throw all of these flashes into those retakes. Now, from the dagger, I believe they only spotted out Samaji. So I don't think they'll expect three players pushing past, but the fact that Nare has aggressed onto the site, now the alarm bells will sign. Thrasher being enabled, but it's Martin's first shot to come off forward. So Carmen Court playing off of an advantage, playing into lamps as well with a player as a caveat into, into showers. Smoked off though, he'll have to come in later into this round, awaiting for the team to collapse upon them first. Into the smoke, and it's Martin to win it. Crucial kill on the spike though. They're already diffused halfway, interrupted as utility is thrown their way. Two versus four, foot. Not impossible giving players a load, but they've got to find them quick as time is ticking. One Out of captain remaining. with the first one. Shin stopping Sine's life. And it does have to be defused. Nare will not let that happen. Two players, four for KC, but they get the win nonetheless. An absolute need here for Karma and Core. Three Bulldogs to carry over into the next round. And the rest of the team able to force up comfortably with some of those light shields. But looking into the replay, Martin finding so much value here with those two picks. Opening up the round and making that retake that much more uncomfortable for Foot at the very least. A little bit of anger there. Not too happy on the Foot side with those player cams coming through in the coach cam. But I need a drop. Casey right. needed that. Time to jump. They did. <laughs> for sure. But as you said, Foot fully capable of putting arms in their hands. And again, a slow approach from KC to try and repeat what they did the previous round. They've got the dimensional drift up against the Thrasher of Mr. Fallen. Got the TP out now. The pressure put over towards Showers again with that one way for the orb farming here from the, on the side of KC. Three stack from foot. Typical defaults on the defense here on the foot side. This poison orb though, buys a lot of respect. Still gonna look to walk through it here. Time to clear it out. Mosh Pit denying any of the other entries. So no one can follow up on this information. Crucially enough, well played by Foot. But can they deal with Martin finding himself into elbow? They'll be able to stop any of the other rotations by sending his decoy to the back end of it. Still, four versus four as Cenid gets traded out and the rest of KC have garnered all the space they would have hoped for. Sound baiting in that kind of sense. Martin back in. Oh, he really is, but the flash doesn't pop in time before the smoke does deteriorate, which leaves KC at a disadvantage unless Shin gets the pick here. No, but that's Rash. It found him. Oh, oh, they let Narek to die. And now they're playing off of this advantage. They Shit. need this pick on Mr. Oh Fallen. Oh my god! He wasn't him, out in the cover, which means that Mr. Fallen Ten was able to pick left. him up. And now to 1v2. Safe plant, at the very least. But you have the whole kit here of cracks to work with. Magnum has got skill, but it's the first time he's jumped into the IGL seat this season. And with the... With the Seekers, he's going to have to figure out how they both are going to be playing this. They know he's in lamps, and they'll go right after him. Pull it between the eyes, and that's Foot finding themselves on map points and putting them one away from Sunset. I don't know what Karma and Core were doing there on that B site, going a bit too aggressive towards CT spawn. A hero play. I get it. At the same time, though, you had numbers. You were equal four to four. You find yourselves in a disadvantage then nice. when the match is so close. The frustration. Yeah, it's, it's a big difference between the reactions from these players. Yeah. The juxtaposition and the attitude, the, the feelings that we're seeing on stage here from both teams. <laughs> Foot, on the other hand, must be really happy about this. Only one away, and I think KC have been struggling all this time, unable to find a thing. Now moving into the uh, hookah area. They will find it open, but in the meantime, Foot trade some space themselves. Yeah, they're fully walked out there towards B Long, finding that fountain control. They hear this as well, since Mr. Fallen has stayed over towards Garden. They've got to be curious where the players have gone, because never has this B site been completely open. Guiding Light spotting them out in Long, though. Right now, they only know that it's Mr. Fallen over towards B Long. Doesn't know about the other three player, two players. Look at Shindo, very far forward, but it's Magnum to get picked off early. Foot are playing things from the front, but can they continue? You. Three players grouping up now towards CT, and it'll be a three versus two as soon as the smoke subsides. As soon as it does, it's Foot that comes out on top. KC can't do a thing. Disabled, stuck in place. 
And that's 13 to 4. The score is for closeout map number two. We're going to Sunset, baby. What a juxtaposition between a 20 and 18 overtime on map one on Lotus. Now, a break here available though. Carmine Core, they need to regroup, reset mentally heading into our deciding map. Well, people, nobody would have expected this to be the outcome after what a, a tremendous play it was from Carmine Core, but it is Foot getting the second map, and we'll see who will be able to close it all out just in a bit. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Dolor de Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Let's do something crazy. Get a bit wild today. Cause we don't do this every day and we deserve it. Life is so amazing.
a response that was from Foot, and I guess it's time to go bananas in the <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in the uh, room after that win. I mean, it might be a debuff because we just showed uh, Casey eating those bananas, and they lost. I got Kakuka and Lothar with me once again on the desk. A quick one. I feel like after that OT, we, we finally got a quick map. What did you think? Well, yeah. it was actually only 40 minutes long when the previous one was 90 minutes. So that's that's a bit of a difference, I would oh, say. Yeah. Probably they were still uh, digesting those uh, bananas, but especially that first half was so one-sided uh, for the side of, of foot. The little to no clutches that we had went their way, especially with crazy plays like this one from Yerye. Loving that he's feeling like this. I, I feel like they just got suffocated. You know, yeah. when yes. something like this happens, you win the pistol round, but then you lose the follow-up, and then you lose clutches like this. We had Prax and Yetuye with both of those clutches just happening. I feel like that the opposing team just gets crushed mentally and they cannot get up, and that's it. You set the tone, I feel like, yep. when uh, so many things go wrong so early. But let's talk about the next one, because I feel like uh, GG go next, you know? We, it doesn't matter what happened uh, on the first one. It. Yeah, it doesn't report matter what happened on the second and one. Uh, it, it's this yeah. one that actually counts, because whoever yeah. wins this one uh, will live to see another day. Uh, Kukuga, we've seen yeah. both of them play Sunset yes. already. Uh, what, is your, what is your takeaway coming into this one? So here's the thing. We know that the differences in compositions would only go from the Fade to the Gecko, of course, once offers you a little bit more of explosiveness. And I think that both teams interpret the map a, diff a bit differently, but we also need to think about that they were playing against the Sage, you know, that gives you a little bit more leverage and you can play a little bit more free, uh, knowing that those Cypher trips are not going to be there. Uh, on this one especially, I was counting in my head that this could be a 2-0, very surprised by the performance from Foot, but I think in this one they might have the upper hand because of the game that they play of like having a lot of lurks and, and taking a lot of care of mid and, and just playing the long game in this. Scenario. Just wanted to add for the viewers that didn't see the previous sunset of the, both of those teams. This time, Gecko will actually be on the other side. We have seen so far Foot play with the Gecko, but this time is also going to be the fade on Foot's side. I, at least they changed something, right? And then uh, we're going to see Magnum on the Gecko. That's something that we didn't see uh, a lot in, in general. But I feel like the major problem that we have to think about when coming to Sunset is thinking about the fact that KC actually lost to Giants on this map and they didn't look strong at all. So this is not a something um, this is something to keep in mind. I feel like this is their weakest map for now from what, what they had shown and Foot might take full advantage of that with a more explosive lineup. So is Giants the benchmark? Because they both played against I mean, Giants. It's, it's one the, of them won, one of them lost. It's the only one that we have so far, right? Yeah. Yeah. Looking into this year and, and both showing of the teams in this map. My eyes also go to the duelist. I want to see what I, I guess we want to see a scene that is more comfortable. We were talking about small changes, maybe him going back on the race. We need to see, you know, an upper in, in performance from him. It's surprising because from from one side, we're very happy to see players like Cracks having the performance that they're having because we know what they're capable of. From, from the other side, we want to see the scene that is just a highlight reel. I feel like I'm a little bit harsh towards Cena today, but I have to say it like this the facts are there. Like on both maps on Rays, he was dealing really minimal damage. On Bind, he had been dealing 100 damage per round when they are winning, right? So that's, although sometimes you can make an argument that the other people are doing their job, so you can't really get a lot of frags, but it was a lot of clutches I have seen so far. So it was the foot players picking up uh, the slack of the other ones uh, in, in the lineup. And I feel like CNED has to, as you said, comfort is something that he needs to find. The confidence, he needs to be um, again, more aggressive. <laughs> I, I, I, need, I cannot, I I cannot say my yeah, being, it's like I need CB I to focus. stop cursing teens. We know the banana curse. He's given it to Magnum now, but as you guys can see in chat, I feel like France versus Turkey, they're in full swing of who they're voting. It's going to take this one. But of course, yeah. I mean, the, the blue war, they are they are very, very, very, very strong. I think this is biased because the Turkish um, viewers are on the Turkish broadcast and not on this one. You know, someone send a message. Yeah, <laughs> in chat. We need, we need Assemble the. Your yeah, we need the CNED fans uh, back in this. But I, I like the points that you're making about CNED because yep. we heard before when we spoke to him and Mr. Farlin, he wanted to bring in the Yori. It was mm. kind of his idea, and I could only assume it was his idea to go back to the Rays. So I, I wonder if he's going to stick with that for Sunset. I mean, we also have to wonder if, if it was actually his idea, or maybe it was like a more a group decision, or maybe somebody asked him, "Is this something that you want to keep doing? Do you want to uh, change?" things a little bit up, but we'll see. Well, let's have a look at the agent select uh, here. You guys spoke a little bit about it already. Uh, what do you make of this? 
Well, so narrator's on that gecko. I think I misspoke earlier because I said yeah. Magnum, but I meant narrate. It's there. Um, Magnum is going to be, of course, on the cipher guarding that B side, and that's something that um, Foot actually likes to exploit. The B side is most of them uh, plant points, actually, instead mm -hmm. of the A, which is something that is very important to note. But other than that, no surprises here. But that's the thing. They were playing against uh, a sage, not a cipher. We know mm -hmm. that that trip is very like tricky to get uh, across and something that teams can exploit. That's why my eyes are both a Magnum and a JTJ, especially because we're seeing the shots of JTJ on stage and he's living with every round that he gets. Also remember that those teams only have the raise essentially to deal with the traps, right? If mm -hmm. you're gonna chuck it a pain shells on B, you're, you're not gonna have it for the backside. You're not gonna have it for market. That's something that most other teams are dealing with different kind of utility from different agents. Um, I'm, I would love to see a uh, KO from Cracks here on this map, to be honest. <laughs> but just, yeah, it is what it is. Just full stop, right? Because it's, it, we are coming into this uh, season with a patch, Sky not being as good as she used to be. We have a player in our league that's played KO <laughs> for years, yeah. loves KO, yeah. playing KO when nobody else is playing KO, and all of a sudden, he doesn't play KO. Yeah, it's very surprising. I mean, he did play it on Bind. You, you get a bit, yeah. and, I think, and he did great. Like, mm. one of the reasons why Martin that's was not fine. as successful, <laughs> and that was not as successful it's as It's almost like, like he knows tough. how to play KO. Yeah, really. it's yeah. almost like he has the most experience on that agent, and maybe other people in foot should also follow that thought process maybe seen it going back to chat. But, but if they could prove that they can, you know, make everything work, you will even have them in higher esteem. And uh, uh, I, I really like the fade here because if we think about, uh, you know, the double controller coming from both sides, the vision that fades gives you, especially when you add on the cipher to all of that, I think it's great. I mean, fade has some you. sick lineups. Yeah, There's a lineup exactly. on the eye on the mid of the map where it like lands on uh, on some wires, electrical mm -hmm. wires. It's super high up, very hard, uh, very hard to destroy. It, it literally uh, covers everything in mid, but there's also a sick one that lands on A side. When you're doing an execute, it lands on top of, like, behind Jenny, and it's incredibly hard to destroy it when you're standing on A side and you're fully also spotted uh, while doing that execute. So it is very powerful. My only worry is that. Um, uh, for on side of Kaman Cop, they don't really have the same kind of initiation that Foot has. Right? I mean, you have the Gecko, right? It's different. But how do you? So you, you can you can pair up some of the blinds together, yes. but not as many like utility combos there. Well, we're gonna find out if they can do that, and this, of course, is the elimination match. The winner will survive and progress to the play-ins, and it's time to jump into sunset with your casters, Pavlos and Ash. It's time to rock and roll for the third map of this series. So far, both of them being ma uh, bangers, but now heading into the third one, there are different expectations set, right? For other team leading in momentum, and it's time for Casey to stop them in their tracks, or Foot continue to dismantle them and take them back home. Starting off on the right foot here, but the comfort of that momentum, the 13 to 4, and scary that we're going to Lotus as well. I mean, to Sunset as well. Carmen Core, they look good up against Giant Tex. But Foot looked clinical in that matchup. Yeah. A star studded lineup there for Foot, especially starting out on this attacking side. We saw this same set play with this push up towards top mid. So a lot of expectations set up on this one, but this push in mid is very deep. But it's anticipated here from KC Red, and that's allowed them to get picks straight out of the bat. They've been missing a good start, and this is what they need perhaps to get things rolling in their favor. Mr. Fallen, though, isn't going away without the fight. And Cedar adding into the mix is making things even more complicated. But with that, Foot rotate towards this A site, and it's open for the taking, so at least they've got a chance. Open for the taking, but on the side of Carmine Core, you can see the conga line in towards spawn. Everybody's going to be playing together, playing that numbers advantage here into the 2v3. The plant safe on the side Quite of planted. foot, so nothing too open. A camera to work with, though, but shot out right off the gate. Nothing is safe when Yetage is alive on a clutch. And we've seen that from the previous map, and this time he's got the assistance of one of the greats, one of the goats. And Cena is able to hit it right from the top. Pinchot's really strong in that direction. He lines it up, and Yedajay, all he has to do is buy time. 60 points of health, and Martin wins it this time around. Not allowing them to pull off the miracle. Allows Casey to get first blood. 3k there for Martin to start, and the pistol in pocket for Carmine Core important after that 4 to 13 loss over on. Bind. Yeah. Whoa, okay, I thought back to it's been so long. Lotus felt like genuinely two maps oh, because yeah. if we're looking at entire series, let's be fair. Honestly, completely valid there, but the buy up now coming in here for Carmine Core. Again, the desk was talking a little bit about the difference in the initiators here. 
but the side on foot that I actually have my eyes on is going to be, especially once those guns come out, Yedeje and Attica 10. In that matchup against Giant X, on the attack, they found so much value in their lurks, cutting off every yeah. single rotation. Absolute disruption there, and making sure. it so difficult to even have those numbers for retakes. But Carmine Court, they so far seem to look like they've done their homework. And what we saw from the player cams, they seem to be very excited, a completely different face to what we saw towards the end of the last map. Rejuvenated, revitalized, and I can only imagine that's off of a pep talk from Zaysh. He's been so good with those, and we've seen it last year in the previous roster, but now it looks like to do it again in the, as in, in the assistant coach slot. Foot aggressive was this B site. It's open, Carmen Court handed over, but they are the ones with the most weapons to play with. And, um, you know, when they've got things to play with, they Fight will be planted. able to do more damage, potentially. Unless Foot bring up another thrifty upset, that would be nuts. Playing numbers here. Or first look towards Amy. Mr. Fallen gets the first shot, so it begs the question, can they put this across the finishing line? There's even a flank in the making. Look at Yetajay on the map. Oh. He's going all the way around to Margie, though. Finally opens things up for KC as they try to move on a little bit further forward. Mr. Fallen, he's so low, but he does so much. He buys so much time, so Cena now is the only one left in the garage. He's got himself a teammate as well, but it's Magnum cl to clean them all up as Yetajay goes all the way around, but he cannot interrupt the deep view. So KC gather the second round, but let's be fair here. Three players that players lost for this French Orc. It's got to be menacing. No, Foot made that one expensive. At the very least, it is a Vandal and a Bulldog to carry over into the buy coming out from Foot Esports. Okay, Carmine Core, again, I, I like the idea. They were looking to play the numbers advantage. They fell off completely towards that B site, but it, too much value was honestly found out of Mr. Fallen there. I mean, it's crazy, right? I know, like just the classic. How did he live that long? I have no idea. I mean, on buying, to be fair, he had five first bloods and CNED had zero, mm. but that was also the tradeability. True. Very true. Still, we'll always be looking at those stats. Paranoia, really strong, but CNED's got it all covered. You think you can push out into the open without covering top mid? Think again. Punished foot to take control, but Magnum wants to turn it all back around. Leading from the front as he enables the neural theft to find out where the rest of them are. Rush towards this A site here, but there's a flank in the making. Look at Yerge, but they've just realized where he is. Yeah, I mean, the information garnered, right? Carmine Core again, they have those numbers. Oh, there's going to be crunch here. Oh, careful. Who's going to read that fight? And Magnum gets walked past without an issue. Three kills to the player's name. And Yerge is alone. Spike in no man's land. And Yedajay knows it. He's pulled off a 1v3 before, but this one looks a little bit different. No spike plant for him. And he's spotted. Yeah, having to take out the dart from that camera. And then you've got the tripwire for that spike as well. However, Carmine Core, the way they're playing this. They're respecting him, man. Not just, left. okay, hold on, respecting him? They're playing ones. They're right scared now. of him. Oh, they see him in, in their nightmares. And I don't blame them, to be fair. The, that, <laughs> yeah, uh, that bind map was, you know, their mental could definitely be yeah. disrupted from that 1v3. Hey, I mean, the thing is, though, I was a little bit worried. Left. Obviously, there was no time there for Yeta J to actually find that spike, get it planted, and then find all the remaining players of Carmine Core. But it, it did get a little... If he had gone for that, they were mm -hmm. playing those solo angles, not looking to play together there. But nonetheless, 3-0, and oh, a hot start here for Carmine Core. Exactly what you want to see after they're showing their on find. The fact that they come into this third map with those fresh faces that you had talked about there, Pablos, means everything. It does. Yeah, it really dude. does. One enemy remains. And KC look to move it all forwards in their favor. You know, it was a bonus round and it works out exactly like they did, like they wanted it to. And uh, it's, a, it's a good start to this map and it could, in big contrast to the previous one. And the Hero Rifle in the hands of Yedeje, again, the player that we're constantly having our eyes on for those backstab opportunities, for those lurks. But it's all about if the rest of Foot can live to make that happen. It's timing here. Oh, as a captain. He snuck past. He has indeed. And he might be the linchpin in this round, given that Martin is moving directly in his location. But Martin is quicker. And a captain not looking at the right spot will mean that KC has an opening here. And Foot are scared to push in because they haven't quite cleared the site completely just yet. And he now waltz, waltzing inwards. 
they can get the spike planted, there is at the very least a boon, the showstopper to work planted. with here for CNED. Smoke covering one of this size, but Yedajay has pushed past that. That Vandor has to be everything for foot, otherwise this round is probably be lost. Never mind, Showstopper will be used for CNED, and that will delay KC substantially. Look how much they're giving respect to this. They've dropped back completely, and CNED might be even able to get a kill off of it. Paranoia is strong though, and Nare is able to trade it all back up. Can they find Yedajay though? Can he save the day with the Vandals? They all walk past him. He's spraying upon them. Good for two. And it's Mr. Fallen with a Sheriff. You can't expect much from him, but he's concealed his position. And nobody knows where he is. Has he delayed it enough? I don't wow. think he has. And there's plenty of time to defuse it, but God, he made us scared in that moment. Hey, an expensive round nonetheless, Casey. Up for an O, but foot still make it competitive on an awkward buy situation. Again, there was only that one hero rifle in the hands of Yedijay. Timing so close there. Just like a second or two off from denying that halo, or waiting until that halo comes up to actually deny that defuse on through or having enough time here. But, but now, you can see the 4 1 split coming in, and Casey, they want to get aggressive in towards mid this round. Change the pace. They do indeed. <laughs> but look at Martin. Showstopper won't be finding its mark. But Foot has spread out a little bit and found a lot of space into B Garage. And they'll be moving in together at that. There's only one player defending it, but also a few nearby covering off market. Never be all too comfortable. Mr. Fallen, scouting duties, realize the high presence involved into this B side defense. And he thinks better of it, calls the attack off. I mean, it forces Foot also to use more utility to try and re-clear towards mid as well, not knowing if anyone overstayed their welcome, kept that map control, the threat enough to force it the haunt. Then you have to have that slow creep back up towards tiles to clear that mid control out as well. And now Here. with Foot leaning towards that A site, oh. sure, Mr. Fallen finds one over towards B, but you're also lying into the traps here on A. But it's keeping them busy. Not, ready yet. Not only that, he's forced Magnum on the rotate. And there's no one anymore carrying that A site. Mr. Fallen with a double. IGL lurk. 30 seconds left. Creating such a pain for KC. Finally gets shot down, but that's put so much time for the rest of the move team to move in. Yevashay dies in mid though. Wait. Back to three versus three. And with Shin covering that line Spike of fire, down, there's eight. nothing Foot can do. They need to get the spike planted, but it's in a safe position and not great for the post plant. Planted. Paranoia might be isolating CNED off into the corner here. And Casey moving as a unit will shut them all down. Crax receives a bullet through a box. And that's the end of the round. And Casey don't want to stop winning. Incredibly played by Shin there. The anchor soul to alone there on that A site. B, there are question marks, especially with the fact that Mr. Fallen somehow finds two, but nonetheless, the big risk Left. taken there by wow. Foot to go for an open plant when they really had no information yep. on A whatsoever. They had elbow control. That was literally it. Indeed, indeed. And I think for KC, this is massive, right? Everybody has been thinking, okay, you brought in some players that historically might have had some, uh, you know, throwing issues, <laughs> right? There have been moments where they haven't been able to close out a lot of maps in their past teams and their t in, in their past performances. Uh, and, you know, Magnum is one of those players that, you know, has in very recent history, we've seen that in the Apex final against uh, Gentle Mates in Ascension. So now him being in the lead of this team, it calls a lot for them to be able to, to be resilient enough to come back at the final moments in a game. And this is the game we actually want to see that happen. This is the moment where Magnum and the rest of KC can redeem themselves. And so far in a 5-0 lead, they put foot in the hot seat. They absolutely do. And we are seeing a bit of that glimmer of hope coming in. Not even just a bit, I mean, 5-0, oh, that's more than a bit of a glimmer of hope. But the fact that they're able to so easily pivot mentally from second map of this series into this third one looking comfortable brighter faces there in that kind of regard and even i feel like we did hear about it a little bit on one of those post player segments on day one of kickoff when we got to talk to narrate and tamazi sometimes the comms get a little bit complicated oh, yeah. and i think we can see when that frustration starts to come through when the communication becomes very muddled too many people talking over each other but it seems like they fully reset here into sunset yeah for, for sure kc looked like a completely different team everything has been coordinated everything has been thought out 
and no risks Keep. necessary. Maybe a few pushes in mid, which have let them to win a bonus. But aside from that, it's looking solid. We also aren't seeing the same wall going out there from foot. I feel like beforehand in their matchup against Giant Dex, you constantly saw the conditioning that they were looking for over towards that A site. But it hasn't really been a look. Instead, throwing the one over towards B main, pressuring that cross. Uh-oh. You don't really want to be walking into this position. Especially with two elevations covered. The Prowler has figured them out on the swings as well. Have helped out in that endeavor. Paranoia. Nara is able to sub-step uh, sub it. But still able to find one before he drops. That's a Viper's pick covering that direction. Exactly where Tamaji can use to hide Shin. Use it from the Shandos to find himself in that position as well. And I think they do know of it. The audio cue has been given. KC might be in trouble unless Shin is able to get them out of it. One trade commences. And it's still 2v3 with KC having a mountain to climb in this one. It's really nice. Oh, not quite a one way. No, not Raise quite the one way, but it forces Magnum into a wide swing and it's missed the fall in to close up the distance. Martin alone, and he's running out of time. He can feel it, he can sense it, but he's going for the chase. They've got money for days. Change the spare. And yes, he might be on the spike, but it's Crux with a quadra to finally put foot on the board. Okay, Foot, they found themselves around finally after a chain of five there for Karma and Core. However, each round was decently close. Like, Karma and Core, it's not like they're in any crazy comfortable position as far as that money situation goes. And then you've also got this op cycling up here for Martine as well. The operator looking to peek past in towards B main, but this conditioned wall here from foot from out of Captain, really nice to just deny the angle, even more so with that cyber cage. Of course, Martine sticks around. There was a pick in mid and threw a smoke as well. That's exactly what foot needs to carry on a streak of rounds. Slowing things down now. Cycling that smoke back over towards top mid. Just looking to try and shoot out the trip wire. It does work out. So pressure made there towards that side. But Martin is still holding this angle, and crucially enough, he picks up Yerijo. That is immense. Back to square one. Toxins going up. And a rotation here from foot trying to recalibrate. Yeah. Group into mid. Where do we go, though? There's still a trip wire. Difficult one to break there towards market. Plus, you've got the retake camera here for the B site. That's why you see Magnum falling off completely. Well, they've broken the trip and they started to cross. Foot have definitely figured out where they want to go to. And KC now have a choice to see how they are going to react. Waiting for the Thrasher. It's going to be a big piece of utility for this retake. Retake cam also taken away, but Martin has Boba. 30 has the cross, left. the TP. Two players looking to bounce onto market. Martin from a different angle as well. Out of captain in danger of being isolated here. The Thrasher being used, and it's in a position where it can be recollected. How is that a captain still alive? That poison cloud literally saved him, and now he can get out of there. That's incredible. That and it's still four versus though. four. And that's Martin trying to find his team back in as Foot trying yeah. to close the gap up against them. He doesn't let that happen. Are we going to see a double blast pack shorty push? You know it's Martin. It's got to happen. And seen it on the other hand, will look to cover with a vandal to the back end. He's able to shut down Martin, but Martin keeps on giving. And seen it on the clutch against the three, not quick enough for the first. Mosh pit at his feet, and it will be his demise. KC, yes, they do lose one round, but they bounce right back up. That's also the satchel in there from Martin. It wasn't even into the shorty pick. I think it was just a quick scope into the operator. Still finds one in that situation, but so much confidence here. The retakes King on the side of Karma and Korra, more than happy to give that space up and then just flood right back on towards site. Four foot. I just want to highlight something for a second. Mr. Fallen One has been getting a few first picks, a few good lurks, and he's the leader of this guy, mm -hmm. right? He's the guy that people, that Foot brought in last year to lead a Turkish team, well, not last year, the year before, to kind of bring a Foot, a, a Turkish team, um, into the high, into the limelight, right? Somewhere where they could compete into, into an international stage. Have an IGL that can compete at that level. And he's definitely showing up, not only on the brain side of things, but on the server as well with kills. Definitely is, but Shadows all for naught when you're not able to chain these rounds together again. 
Magnum's been so good at switching up his Cypher setups. Just yeah. once they're broken oh. and conditioned, he changes that location. To be fair, <laughs> for, to take this base used a lot of utility. Now, there are a couple of snake bites to delay Welcome a push, but the Viper's Pit will be everything that they will put their hopes into and hide within to try and stop it all from unfolding in Casey's favor. Martin tries to find a shot. It was a bit of a gamble. I think he just guessed where someone could have hided within. But Magnum is approached. Neural theft enabled. They know where everybody's hiding. Dizzy into the Viper's Pit. Magnum shoots upon them. It's perfect from KC. And as Yetage, the only one to remain. The Wonder Child on the clutch with two against them and a Sheriff, a dream that has to be crushed into pieces. KC, keep on winning. The momentum here on the side of Casey, you can see, but the frustration starting to mount here. And the thing is, again, a lot of that success that they found in their matchup against Giant X for the Lurk plays, we haven't seen the same kind of value coming out from it. Yes, Mr. Fallen has had some of those opportunities, but those weren't the players that we were expecting to be watching. We were looking towards Yetaj, looking towards Adekaptan to find that kind of value in their positioning as the Cypher, as the Viper. But the difference is, that is key to point out, I think Giant X were running Nukie on right. that Sage. So they didn't have that flank watch potential, and that changes everything for the way that they were looking to play, the success that they found there too. It really does. It kind of changes the scope of things here and to why Foot has been successful on this map before. But Casey has got it all covered. One for review was all that they needed, at least on the defense to have a solid start. Now, there are some pieces of utility here for Foot, and they have got some weapons. Yelaj has nestled himself into this B site, and no one knows of it. <laughs> well, Magnum's got it covered, though, so scratch that. I mean, he, he still keeps trying to find those timings, right? But Casey, they play so far back, and then yeah. got all their bases covered. They do indeed, and you can see Tomaja respecting this movement here, and <laughs> he still picks up the kill. They're looking warm, they're looking heated up. But they've had a really strong streak of rounds on Bind, but it seems they're unable to find a footing at all on Sunset. Seen it finds one before he drops, but Cracks, he needs to do Crack things. And now is not the moment he can do so. Defuse underway, and a potential eighth round to be put into the pocket of Carmen Corp. Carmen Core are just a step ahead of foot every single time at this point. The reads have been really strong, the way they're looking to position themselves to d allow, sure, foot to make take that space. That false sense of security that Yetage has pushing into these sites for free. But Carmen Core, they're aware of it. They're expecting it. It's done with purpose. And even with I know it's not thrown out this time around, but previously Magnum was throwing out the very deep trip over towards top mid on that left side. And then that gives just so much information as far as the deep, deep lurks yeah. that you tend to see, but trying to move towards. 100%, but this is going to be a fast-paced round here. Seen it with the showstopper. It's an exchange oh. of it! Oh, they're trying to fight within the air, but Martin is able to avoid everything, but Cena gets barraged by fire, a power of lead. Martin was even tagged by the cam there. And the push com continues yeah. from foot though. They're not wanting to stop at all. Out of captain pushing by, but it's cracks to find the first shot. Nare trying to hold back the cavalry. Oh, and he's okay. got Martin Last there to help standing. out, but it's not for long as KC find themselves and a big disadvantage. Tomazio to himself. A 1v3. He has spike though. Foot, all they needed was to aggress, was to go fast, to go dirty. And Tomazio to do it alone. They know exactly where it is and the Haunts will reveal him as well. Everybody peeks out simultaneously and Foot get a second round on the board after what has been an eternity. I love that adaptation. The default plays weren't working for them. They weren't finding the value from those flanks as Carmine Core, the difference being they didn't really over rotate. They're always constantly anchoring every option. And even if they're not present there, they'll have deep trips to try and counter it as well. So just Going for a higher octane play is definitely the move, but do you repeat that? That is the question. It does look that foot are looking for something similar towards this B site, but this time going for a contact approach. They do have the nightfall to work with. However, trip switched up this time. Default setup here on the Cypher for Magnum. And KC have got three on the defense. Nightfall potential. From the shadows with the spike as well, interrupted. 
but in they push, and there's one ways that can stop them. You don't want to push this setup, and Shin doubles up. Mr. Falling gets a pick, though. Where did that come from? Behind the smoke, perhaps? Bikes Still four versus something. three, and KC have got the advantage. I, they do, but KC, they did read into it. They set up purposefully, expecting that. Still fast place play. Now the thrash to come through. It is interrupted. How much information does it get? Mr. Fallen playing it up close and personal, and Cena spotted now in main. Goes aggressive even further. Gets one pick, and potential for the second. Only one stands. And it's out of captain. And he's got a snake by lineup to try and stop it all from happening. Poison Cloud as well, not allowing anyone to touch the spike. They've got to get the pick here, so Marzi knows of it. Trying to find an angle and trying to see how much damage he can expense to lose. Maybe to get the defuse at half time. He's so low, and Ana Captain knows it. His spray comes across, but it's stuck with. It's maintained. Carmen Corp. They get the defuse. They get the win and get themselves an even bigger lead. What a way to stick that first Carmine Core. Perfectly played the read there into the defensive hold, expecting, again, the fast high gear play coming out from foot off the back of the Nightfall. They adjust Magnum Cypher setup to counter it. The crossfire that is being held there on site as well. And then to top it all off, Narrate found so much space in B-Main. All he had to do, his entire job, was just delaying Ada Captain from pushing back in. And he did it perfectly. Ada Captain had no bullets left, had to switch to the classic at the final moment. And it's all collapsing for Fur. It's these close moments, it's these close rounds that hurt you mentally. You've got to, just, you've got to snap out of it. You've got to think next round. And there's only one round left in the half. And KC have thrown everything they've got in it, and so have Fur. But somehow, Foot's buy looks a little bit better. Nightfall towards this B site. There's two ways that Foot are looking to enter, and KC are respecting it. I mean, they dodge the trips for now. Magnum not able to capitalize off of that one. Maintaining this market control here for Foot will be out of hand once again. How do they play this out, though? How many players are going to stick up close and personal? Yeah. Because if they drop back, they kind of have to deal with the tripwire once again. Luck in the making. Dizzy over the top, and aggression off the back of it, but it's foot to come out on top, and it's a four versus three. Seen it in the fight, but drops like a fly. And now, how did foot deal with this? They've got two players, two different angles, and KC are trying to gather, cover it all. Spray onto the spike. Mr. Fallen is showing his ground, and so is Yedige. And they might be saving the day, unless Magnum can say anything about it. Yedige will fall to the ground. A dug, a dug grave beneath him. And KC end off the half with such a superb lead. Double digits already. It was a great idea. I mean, at a captain, he maintains that market control, knows, okay, I'm just here to buy time realistically into this post plan. If everything goes awry, you've got Yedige trying to wrap back around super late and unexpected there. But KC, despite losing initially on those numbers, on those initial engagements on Torrid's site. When it gets scrappy, they truly do shine. Flooding straight on in double digits. 10 to half. How do Foot get back in this? Protocols are in line. It's all feeling good for the KC side and Foot fall into a defense where they have to chain it all together themselves. They got close, they got, got a second map and it went their way and things started to fall in Foot's favor, but KC have slapped them right back up, woken them up. But they've awoken to something they wouldn't like to be in. 10 to two. KC looking to seize control over this B site. Demand it actually, they took, take a lot of damage, but no one has dropped so far. Little buddy getting the, the spike planted there as well. Nice little trip on the spike, but this fight towards market. And there's only one player defending it from KC. And he does get a trade. It's exactly what they need, Martin. This is a sneaky angle, but I believe there are utility available to keep him in the corner. Paranoia in his direction. It's going to be checked the snake bite as well. He's a dead man walking. Yeah, the shake. Wolf sees the charge of this attack onto the spike already. Oh, no. It, are they going to stick it? They're not able to find the shots within it. Oh, this could be troubling. Finally, a bullet finds the back of the head of the energy, but it's already diffused halfway, and it's a two versus two. Toxic screen not being able to see who is diffusing, and it's stuck with, which allows Foot to win another pistol and the Red Bull Clutch. A much-needed pistol round here, Foot into a clutch. Now it's the time for them to be able to buy up into the anti-eco. Adjustments were made here, but again, pistol round. 
it's a little bit in the air. We'll have to see yeah. what ends up happening <laughs> when those full weapons come out here for both sides. Clutch. But a very nice start into the second half. Clutch. You know, some people do say that 10 2 is the new 9 3. You said it, not me. We got overtime. I know who to blame. <laughs> We already had to deal with the hey, 2018 mind. today, Pavlos. We have another best of three to cast after this. Uh, I don't mind at all, as long as it's great Valorant. And so far, we're treated to quite the series. Yereje will be the defender of the site, but it's cracks to find first shot. Now, KC need to untangle themselves with the situation, and it's Martin that takes charge of that approach. Explosive. Is it enough space to get the spike down? That Painter is definitely trying to buy it. Cracks reads Martin's reposition. And foot. Remain alive with three to close out that round. Nicely done there on the side of foot. I think something that we also have to talk about heading into the third round of the second half is when you're looking at these two rosters, these two teams, even just the names themselves, Carmine Core, they're turning a new leaf, right? 2023, oh, yeah. rough year for them. The season did not look good, right? They had a full refresh into this roster and they look brand spanking new. And it, this is also a, a roster that we're gonna look to develop later into the year. Meanwhile, Foot, they've retained a very solid core and added two great players on top of that. Expectations much higher on their end. 100%. It's a completely different story from last year. And KC so far being able to shut them down so soon in kickoff, not me what many would have expected. I think many people had Foot in the top three, top four of this league. So not being able to make it out of groups and kick off isn't exactly what people had in mind for this team. Instead, it's a new roster that seems to take charge, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. There's six rounds of difference between the two, and KC have got an attack, which is heavily inhabited by a ton of defenders and a lot of utility to keep them at bay. Thrasher covering the back of the site. Do they know that Yereje is here? I don't think they do. No. And there's also cracks on the sideline that can start spraying as soon as the spike goes down. Tamaji, though, picks off Yereje. Crucially enough, vacating the B site. KC clear it out themselves. Maintaining this back site control here is so important for KC. How do you deal this from now? On the back foot, foot are tasked with the retake. Well, already a prowl expended, and Magnum so close to the action, they know he's here though. TP on the other side, it's a good obfuscation of movement, but somehow foot have brought things within equilibrium. And Marlene has to deal with it by himself. That's two kills. Martin dead, and see it here to clutch it. He's low, paint shells towards Shin. Touches a spike, so Shin under pressure, but Cena doesn't feel it at all. Standing ovation for CNED as he puts foot right back on board. 4K here for CNED, the duelist that we're looking to light up within this Red Bull clutch. The man of the hour, the one that we've been looking towards for some sort of star-studded performance, this previous champion all the way back from 2021. So much weight on his shoulders, the excitement to come out of a play like that. And that starts to beg the question in the minds of the KC players. Yes, it's 10 to 5, right? There's still a long way to go. But that's when the questions begin to arise. That's when you start to think, can they do the combat? Are we throwing? Is this Lotus all over again? Is, are we destined for overtime? They start to get worried. They start to get anxious. They can't let that get to them. And KC working off with a very limited weaponry here, going very aggressively into mid. Cracks with the first blood, though. We'll make sure that they're playing things off from pole, Yereje. We'll also assist in that attempt. And Cena doing Cena things, clearing up whoever they, he sees. And Magnum won't live at all. It's a flawless, and Andalusia flawless at that. That puts KC even closer, well, foot even closer to KC score. Four rounds. Four rounds in a row. Starting off with the pistol after we swap sides here for foot. Terrifying to look at CNED with that showstopper in hand as well. I feel like after that play two rounds ago, that's when you start to see him really heating up into a match, really starting to grind the gears of the enemy team. Right there. Martin, though, one away from the showstopper, so could equalize in ultimates in that kind of regard at the very least into this round. Look at this stack. Foot full four, basically leaning over towards this B site. Great read from them. 
As KCR leaning in this direction, still looking to pressure towards mid at the very least. Break that door open. Yeah, you've got to break out various variations here for KC. You've got to figure out where the weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. And then also just put that pressure so Foot can't focus all of that energy towards that main choke. And this time we're seeing a pivot towards this A site. Finally seeing some pressure in this direction. But there's only one player hiding out, it's Yedeje. And so far he's been on retake, Judy. They are happy to play that retake. They have that show for showstopper to work with again, but it is going to be a question of, okay, Martin saving hopefully his showstopper into the post plant to try and delay that time that Foot would be looking to buy. First up available for Martin as well, which is a scary prospect to look against. And it might be aggressing off of the back of it, but it's seen it the first one to use it. Oh no, it's Martin actually. He has to back out as he is clouded off. And the showstopper is no longer there for them, so Sinead wants to use it right back at them. That's Cracks with the first shot. Damaji over-aggresses and eats it oh. in the face. Martin is absolutely insane! And KC look to seize control right back up. At the back of the smoke, Neural Theft doing its job. He's just sticking it at a on top. And the defuse is no longer happening at a captain is one HP though. He needs to find two clean kills and it's so difficult to find them with so many angles being taken up by the KC players. Back on winning ways, stopping the streak of the streak of foot. And this is turning out to be quite the final game of this series. What a hold, what a crossfire into that post plant. The pick that Martin gets off of CNET, everything there. Just denying any value coming out from that show star, but any space that they would have normally been able to find as far as players backing off but sticking to his guns. A timeout now to be called by Carmine Core. This is not surprising to me. Sure, they cut the momentum on the side of foot. It does give an opportunity to foot to also have a conversation too. But for KC, it's all about talking about how do we close this out in the next two rounds. Yeah, props to the scouting of Carmine Core. Finding out Martin, quite the pickup, right? Never really made it to Ascension, but was closely contesting with Desire in GMT over the Italian Challenger League. And uh, it was topping the charts apparently there. And now here on the VCT EMA stage on the big one, definitely causing a lot of trouble for Foot. And this uh, timeout only just solidifies that they need to keep things going in the right direction. What do we have to work with here? I mean, taking a look just over on the side of Foot, there is that Nightfall here for Cracks. And then you got Neural Theft for Magnum. So likely another retake protocol situation, most likely. Might even see Foot try to use it proactively, be a bit more aggressive, just to full stop any push that KC do look for. Because I do wonder, do KC take this opportunity to shift the tempo into this next round after a timeout? That's exactly what we'll be looking at for now. Early garage approach. Start cover in mid, alluding to the idea that they are pushing up in that direction. Orb collected, Thrasher now in charge for Nare. Uh, for Nare. It's been really important on the side of Carmen Core to cycle that ultimate up. Kate. Not Magnum, just poking and prodding over towards this B site, seeing what information he can find, if he can oh, yeah. manage some Lost sort of timing. And it's a Thrasher control. to be used to clear out a lot of this market control. Early. Off of the back, back of a horde to be thrown in the direction of B. Nightfall, actually. Magnum is in trouble. He's the only player here, but he's not being closed up against. Instead, it's KC to regress, and Yedeje out into the open to be punished. KC instantly are uh, with a two player advantage, and Magnum uh, keeps on giving. Mr. Fallen and Cena have so much to do here. They've gotten some information, but honestly, with the Viper's Pit, there's nothing they can do. And they themselves have been Here's telegraphed, more. and there's not many chances that they will get Thrasher heading for them, searching for them. Cena avoids it. But what KC do is it hold back there. for now, play the numbers game, hand in hand on this one. But this yeah. is where Mr. Fallen can come out on top. Magnum not covering this corner anymore. It could be deadly. Two kills for Mr. Fallen, but he drops, and so does Cena. So KC get themselves on map and series points. Such a great look coming out from KC. Foot, they had the idea. You have that Nightfall coming through, just trying to buy time for the rotation from the rest of the team. Expecting, I think, a bit more presence, not just Magnum alone towards B main. Little did they know it was four players coming in from market with a full flood unaffected by that fade ultimate. 
You can see KC are so hyped. They know how close they are to making it to play in. You can tell Zaysh is happy, um, but he's not as happy as we've seen him. He's like, there's a bit of concern in that, right? He knows that it's foot they're playing up against, even though they've got quite the lead. Mm -hmm. Maintain your composure for now. You're not in play-ins yet. Yep. There. You got Yeti J on a share. <laughs> You've got Yeti J on a share. I feel like that's more share. dangerous sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it can be, can't it? Snake bite to their feet though. Martin aggresses forward. He doesn't care. Yeah. Dizzy thrown out. Vacating foot. Actually sticking a, sticking by. They want to fight this, but it might be to their own demise. Yeti J, he Fight snicked play. past them. Can he do much here? And a captain finding one, dropping back. But it's Yeti J. That fights two with the yeah. Sheriff. That's incredible. Foresight. Martin. On the case, yes, they've got the spike down, so the pressure's on foot to push, but Nare cannot do it off the back of Yetajay's supremacy. Foot stay in contention. Hey, I called it out. What can you say? You cannot deny just the individual talent coming out from Yetajay. Close to even getting a third there on Martin at that, whittling in down to 22 health. Still, match point for Carmine Court, but they have had the momentum though into this second half, five rounds for them. And with how close these rounds have been, how tough this side of the map has been for Carmine oh Core, their money situation looking dire, and they immediately use yeah. now their second time out. Yeah, last time out expended here from Carmine Core. It's thinking time, it's uh, Ang and Zaysh time. I mean, you don't want it any closer. Like, I no. respect them using the timeout here, yeah, to be sure. honest. You want to get that done. You don't want to wait until footer, like, 10-12 no. and then use it at that point. Try to get ahead of it. It's laying out the game plan and sub plans if things don't work out. I don't know, maybe. But for now, it's catch up. For now, they need to figure this all out. And at the same time, though, having being your timeout doesn't stop the other team from Pete speaking with their coach. And that's exactly what Foot is doing. It's not impossible, right? We've seen a shriek of rounds before. Casey, all they need to do is to grab one more. One more foot in that moment would be out of kickoff. And Carmen Corp with another chance to redeem themselves from the previous year and make sure that the blue jerseys can shine in VCT EMEA. I mean, it's getting tense, it's getting tough. You do have a hero rifle coming in here for Martin. Eyes on him to try and make a difference into this round. One away from the showstopper makes sense to throw that over to his side. The best chance to even find something into a half buy. Door broken early here for Karma and Core again, drawing some of that attention for foot over towards market. Continuously running this more retake style setup Boys here on that B side. Or A side, sorry. Little by little. They close out space. KC have used the buddy system over okay. and over again. It's been their bread and butter this tournament. And foot, they've got no one to defend this A site other than Yadage, their protege, if you will. Paranoia against Yadage. Snakebite as well. He's forced out. KC looking to move in, and they've been given the space. Not only that, but they've been given a kill. But with Yadage's response, he's got an upgrade. Planted. Okay, now into the post plant. What do you have to do here? Showstopper out. And that's exactly where Mr. Falling drops. So KC working upwards. Foot need to bring them back, but how can they? Magnum notified. Zenith closes up the gap and crushes them. Two kills to Zenith, and he's looking to close them all. It's Yerajay alone looking to deal with two of KC players. Spike at his hands, and all he's got to do is stick it. Diffuse halfway, but wants to take it all the way to Marty Peaks and KC seal the deal. A gruesome series, a long one, but they maintain their composure and end off this match to continue their run in kickoff. Our second team to find themselves within the play-in to compete for the final spot within the playoffs here of VCT EMEA, EMEA kickoff. 
and an insane run. Martin really showing up in this last match for First Bloods, the explosiveness that we've seen coming out from this player, and the way that this squad was able to just completely turn things around after Bind. Yeah, this definitely seems like a new era for Carmen Corp, and uh, what many would hope that is the Carmen Corp era. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a long journey to go. There's play-ins to cover, right? And after that, playoffs, even if they manage to get through. But it is a step in the right direction and uh, a direction where they weren't going in last year. So big changes made and I'm sure they must be very happy with the result. On the other side, Foot, they've had a lot of expectations on them, a lot of eyes on them. With all these changes, you, you've got to respect the effort, the grind, but KC have dealt with them. And Foot have got to redeem themselves later on in stage one, stage two, further along the line because their journey in kickoff is now put to a stop. Unfortunate to say goodbye to now the last Turkish team here within BCT, yeah. EMEA, BBL. We had to say bye to them earlier this week, but you cannot deny the effort that Foot no. put into this match either. Each player had their shining moment without <laughs> a doubt, and okay. That's that's a strong man right there, Magnum. Hey, Le Mur Bleu, they're here <laughs> yeah, to shine. He they're here to take their bow, and a big congratulations again over towards Carmine Core. Yeah, an insane performance for sure, one that they definitely deserve to pick up. Being able to come back in the first map, uh, on that intense overtime, 20 to 18 and score. The second map kind of went awry for took look to make that their own. And uh, but for now they'll have to be walking off the stage because that third and final map did go to the boys in blue. And uh, that is something that everyone has been looking at for this entire day. Who will be coming out on top? But it's these boys right here that have gathered the victory. There is an interview coming at Zoe with Magnum on the stage. Take it away. Thank you so much. Give it up once more, of course, for Magnum's team over here. Magnum, you guys clutched it out there in the end. Didn't look super rosy all through that series. What was the talk like during halfway around? What did you guys discuss? What was the game plan coming into the second half? So obviously we had a game plan for this game coming up, but um, for us it was just like focus on the preparation, which we did, which was like we were prepared for six maps. And uh, yeah, that's it. Like Lotus was really draining. We went into bind. Uh, I think we had uh, like a lot of advantages, but we just threw them. And I think uh, like one of their clutch, like 3v1 on B with Viper, like th it threw us off and gave them a lot of momentum. But we managed to bounce uh, back in the break uh, after Bind, and uh, we did our stuff on Sunset and it worked. I mean, speech, uh, speaking of bouncing back, uh, in your game against Heretics, that was a tough one for you personally. I think you went 0-15. In this one, sorry to bring it back about that, but in this one you went top fragger, right? How do you bounce back mentally from a previous game like that? Does that even stay in the back of your mind at all? Yeah, so a few words to say. Um, like obviously I try to not go Twitter, blah, blah, blah, but um, I read a lot of uh, positive feedbacks. So much love to like support even through me doing the worst match of my uh, career. But, so yeah, love to the fans, love to the support even through the rough times. Uh, haters are gonna hate, what can I say? But uh, I'm happy I managed to come back. Uh, I struggled with nerves uh, against uh, Amiel last match, and today I came like prepared, like mentally, and I didn't feel the pressure as much. Um, so yeah, I think that's the main reason why I played this. I mean, honestly, with your performance today, you shut those haters right up. That's right. Now, uh, one last uh, question here. You're having a completely revamped roster. You have a highly anticipated coach joining you as well. Has everyone settled into their new roles? Yeah, 100%. I, I think uh, we got settled like, quite fast. Uh, always like, as I said, I, I struggled with my nerves on the stage last uh, last match. And it's like new role, IGL. But I think uh, I just need to switch my mental bit. Like, don't focus on shooting as much, uh, even I, uh, I did good game. And just focus on the calling, which was my own focus today. And with that, like, came kills. So yeah. Uh, that's like the only main thing, and the yeah, others I think we settled quite well. As the IGL, how do you manage to rein in uh, the mentality of three duelists on the server? So, like, um, we just uh, give each other like uh, little responsibilities, uh, like what we should do, blah blah blah. And big help is uh, like everyone, but especially Marshall. I would say he's like uh, he's even more leader than me, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think he has like this voice, and I can see him being agile like in the uh, upcoming year. So I think it's like me and him uh, controlling, and off of time like it's Ank. 
Right on. Well, it worked out for you. I can't wait to see more from Carmine Corp. Thank you so much for joining me. Once more, congratulations to you and the entire squad. And we will be back with more action, more elimination matches on this stage in just a little bit. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Be the witness. At the time, turn a repeat to a 3P, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the franchise on me, you more like GD, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21st century, you all the way BC, yeah. Old boys been washed up, I'm not stuck in TT, hey. Came out the womb like this, get the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood and up in the few, my land in the tomb.
massive congratulations to Casey as they booked themselves a spot in the play-ins. But sadly, we've had to say goodbye to Food. But we get to say hello to this man here, Steel. Man Welcome steel. to the desk. I totally didn't steal that from you. Steal that oh, wow. from you. Thank you for inviting me to the desk or welcoming me. It feels so nice yeah. to be here. And you're still here. I am still here. <laughs> I am still here. Go on, Lothar. I, you might do it one more time. I don't think. I don't yeah. know if you understood. Steel. Ah, oh, because it's my <laughs> like, name yeah, and everything. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. But you're here. Uh, but yeah, we, we did have to say goodbye to Ferd. Um, I feel like at one point maybe they would edge our KC, but sadly that was not the case. Yeah, on the second map it was looking a little bit better, and then the third map was like, okay, you're out of steam, aren't you? Oh, oh, out, out of steel. steel. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> but um, I, I would say like this entire match was like a roller coaster of emotions. Like first map, I think it like, started actually pretty well from the ground up. Good fundamentals, good strategy, but then it all just go into chaos and it, it actually devolved into even more chaos in the third map. And for me, it was like a like an entertaining match, but not really a pretty one to look at. Yeah, I mean, they spoke about it themselves. They were experimenting. Maybe they'll stabilize a little bit more the next time we see him uh, in the regular split. But let's talk about the final elimination match we have for you guys today. Team Liquid versus Koi. They've played against each other already. And I remember, I think both of you were saying maybe there would have been a world where Koi won that uh, series 2-0 instead of Liquid. Yeah, in my eyes, actually, coming into this match, I actually look forward to Koi beating Liquid, at least in my eyes, because even though it was 2-0 for Liquid, I think that match was actually played in uh, on the fundamental level better by Koi. Yeah, I think Koi definitely had really good game plans, especially on their attack side. What we're really looking for to like from Liquid is just like, are you guys going to be able to do really good things at the same time together? Because we'll see flashes of brilliance from different players, but it's never at the same time. It's never really, a, uh, it's not at the same time in two different ways. One, like actually being in the same area at the same time, but it's like one person <laughs> will have a good round this round and then nobody else shows up and then the next round someone else shows up and it's just like one person at a time. Or those skills are not really impactful during a round because it's a round that's already lost. We have seen that time and time again. Yeah. Yeah, you're eco frags, King. That's what I always say. Pat, pat the stats, pat the stats. Uh, but speaking of stats, Kiko, I feel like rightfully had the stats, had the frags, uh, had, had the map winning. I feel like a win condition for them as well as you guys can see here. But is this what you were talking about? They rely too heavily on him. Yeah, I mean, for this Icebox game, obviously he had like 37 kills at the end of it. And some of those instances were him single-handedly winning the round and other instances were the round was already lost and he would pick up a few kills. So what we need to see is him being able to make the same impact in terms of space creation, both on defense at the start of the round, getting aggressive with the op, getting those deep lines, and on attack, just at least taking the crosshair away from the defenders so that his teammates can come in and do something. But we need to see everything fall into place. So if Yompi is going for a Lurk or Nats is going for a Lurk, then all of these timings need to make sense. It can't be that Yampi goes before uh, Kiko goes in on their attack side. And we saw that happening a few times. Yeah, we have also seen on Icebox, for example, um, maybe hopefully we're going to see it again in this rematch, but we have seen Kiko play, for example, a lot on defense on B, where the majority of attacks by Cole were going towards A. So he was playing a lot of retakes with an operator. And that's something that we probably should have seen reversed in this match. I will say that on the other side, if Kiko shows up like this again, uh, the Liquid, I feel like, still have a pretty good chance, right? They kind of won uh, off of the... I mean, uh, I feel like this is a little bit bullying for Barber, but this is a tweet that they uh, posted a little bit uh, earlier. This is the calmest I've ever seen Barber. The most chill I've ever, I, I've ever seen him. It's the act actual resident sleeper. It's the actual resident sleeper, yeah. You can make that a new emote here for the uh, the Valorant channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are such boomers. I love it. Um, but uh, remember, Naray actually broke Kiko's record. That happened uh, just a, a couple of hours. Let's just add yeah, on yeah. top of it. it <laughs> was, uh, Kiko's record is in regulation time. Yeah, but he was playing Fade. <laughs> So the fact that he got 40 on Fade, it doesn't I matter. Feel it was like, like 40 after like a 40 out. round it game. It cancels it out. But regardless, I do believe that Lothar <laughs> yeah. had some motivational words for Kiko going into this match. What did I say? Uh, this time I think Koi is taking it. Against Liquid? Yeah. Why? I think they're going to be able to learn from the previous match that we have seen. And I don't think Kiko is going to be able to, again, pop off with 37 kills on the icebox. I don't think that's repeatable. And uh, Prove so him far, wrong, Kiko, yeah? Prove yeah. him wrong. Well, if he gets 38, I'm going to shave my head. Oh, 
Oh, oh, okay. In okay. one map, just so we're clear. Everyone's, every, we have witnesses. We all know that this is going to happen. Oh, I kind of want it to happen. Oh, I hope it happens so badly. Did I add regulation no, time? No, you said, you said only one map. You didn't say regulation, yeah. I you said should one have, map. I should have added asterisk in regulation Too late time. For because that uh, Too late after for that today, it's like 40. Yeah, yeah oof, it yeah. might be actually happening. I hope I hope it does happen. I really do, because I've never seen you without hair, so it will be the first. I you have never seen myself <laughs> without hair, <laughs> you so. You can cosplay <laughs> Tombis, who knows? Uh, but I feel like uh, uh, what you were also alluding to, the fact that the rest of the team might not always be pulling their weight, it has, at times, uh, fallen on the shoulders of Mystic and Enzo. Of course, we were very excited to see them come back into VCT. They were the veterans. They were on Fnatic for a while. They went to lots of international tournaments. And Lothar, I'm still just kind of waiting for the moment for them to prove themselves, you know, to kind of show that they deserve to be here again. Look, for me, and I know this will sound a little bit harsh, but I don't see a lot of difference when they play in Liquid to when in comparative performance when they were playing in previous teams, or spe specifically in Fnatic. Like, there was still the same kind of mistakes being ha happening like a lot of dissonance when it comes to planning uh, we have seen mystic being on an island by the himself without support or then enzo being let's say less impactful in the fragging department but that's also, also like let's say understandable when he's leading the team right but there's still the same issues that we have seen in the previous team or that i've seen in the previous team um kind of being transferred into this newer one and again liquid is relying as you aptly noticed on the performances of two star players and in this case that's not even yampi that's kiko and nat so where does even yampi go into this conversation right yeah i don't i don't even know if it's like a, a transference of it going from like hey this is how they did it on Fnatic, and now they're bringing it here i feel like this is just how liquid's been I, I don't know if anything necessarily has changed it's it's we see way too much emphasis on the individuals and not enough emphasis on the, the the team cohesion the overall game plan the macro elements of it and not just on the attack side but also the the defense is really struggling with it the attack side's a little bit better but it's still everyone is kind of just not really gelled and i don't know if that's a an individual thing that they're bringing mm -hmm. or if it's just like it's a, an epidemic for the team. You need to be convinced, right? We want to see a liquid that is uh, team liquid, what we know and, and love. But moving on the other side for Koi, I think, again, you guys mentioned it already, the attack side, uh, defense, disparities. I feel like overall, Lothar in the league, as we take a look at this uh, leaderboard, everyone is kind of not the best on defense. So I wanted to give you a little bit of context because when I was preparing those stats, I summed up all the rounds from all the maps for all the teams and then divided, of course, the performance because typically we make those stats when it comes to win rate on attack and defense per map but this is like all combined so have that in mind because this is overall performance but you can see clearly that teams are struggling more on defense and i feel like there are a few symptoms uh, sorry this this is uh, uh, this is a result of the fact that our map pool is actually a little bit more balanced towards the attackers we have maps like icebox breeze we have lotus who are attacker based so right split a little bit towards the attackers bind is like a 50 50 and only two maps are defender based which is ascend and sunset in general but I also think, and I'm not sure if you still like, agree with me, but I feel like teams are actually way better at structuring their attack, uh, attack protocols than the defense protocols. Yeah, I think it is easier for them to structure the attack protocols because when you're on attack, all you really have to think about is like, hey, we're going to do this like end goal. And to reach this end goal, we have these steps that we're going to go along the mm -hmm. way. And you can call that from the start of the round. And unless something happens that disrupts your plan, you're usually going to be able to do it all together and reach that common goal. But when you're on defense, it's not the same cut and dry thing it's you have to be able to individually make decisions so you're tasked with some certain area on the map and this is your general job but when certain things start happening on the map you might have to change what you do so one round you might have to over rotate one round you might have to push one round you might have to you know do something else and try to hold and it's on the individuals to make the right decision over constantly throughout this tournament we've seen those defenders making just really bad poor decisions which cost the team and that's what we've seen through all the teams but especially liquid and koi overheating over peaking something that we see in general in kickoff in all regions by away uh, but what you mentioned is incredibly important because I feel like there's also more proactivity being um, made on the attacking side when the proactivity on the defense might actually be the mistake right so you have to really coordinate well and also understand what where is the map control that you can just sacrifice for the rotation to bolster defenses on the other side of the map and when you can't and that's where players like Nats 
are exposing those over rotations and are able to like completely um, dismantle teams on their defense. Well, it sounds like uh, all you need is to be able to pick to start on attack, right? Because there's only one spot left for play-ins and it all comes down to these two teams. It's a rematch between Team Liquid and Koi. The reigning EMEA champions fighting for survival in the kickoff tournament. After picking up the Apex core in their rebuild, they're still finding themselves in a new team identity. Let's see what they got in store for us today. Give it up for Team Liquid. And their opponents, well, they fell to Team Liquid in their opening match of the kickoff tournament. What adjustments have they made to come out on top this time around? Can Shadow get his revenge on former Apex teammates? Well, let's find out. Give it up for Movistar Koi. This is our last elimination match of the kickoff group stage, and it's about to go down. Let's hear it one last time for our two teams, Team Liquid and Movistar Koi. Well, I'm glad to see that Baba has woken up. It is a rematch once again between Team Liquid and Koi, but the circumstances are very, very different. This is for elimination for Koi. I feel like they've shown uh, as to why they assembled this roster. They could take on the big boys, but for Liquid, if they get eliminated here, they don't even go to play-ins. I think most people would see that as still as a bit of a disaster to the start of their season. Yeah, I mean, no team wants to actually start off in this type of fashion, but like one of the things that we're looking forward to with Koi is that looking at their previous match with Liquid like the, and e even the other match they had a really even kill distribution throughout all the players so it's not like any one player is doing super good and there's no one doing super poorly for them it's like a team contribution team effort to get to where they are yeah. and they only narrowly lost to Liquid the first time around like they 13, did 11, but 13, they 10. didn't play Sunset so this time around if they you look at the not. map uh, Paul we got Sunset Icebox and Split and it does look like the first two maps Koi will start on attack that's gonna be really beneficial for them their attack is looking way better and Liquid's defense, I mean, it's basically the same thing. Their attacks are 20% better. They get 20% more rounds on attack than they do on defense. And both also, teams. also remember now that uh, Team Liquid will have absolutely no tape on yep. Koi's attack, so they have no idea what are the tendencies, no idea what is the composition. They're going to have to do all on the fly. I would even assume that might be an early timeout because of that, so the coach can help and chime in with how to approach uh, the defense. But in general, uh, the only, only game that we've seen from Team Liquid on Sunset so far with this... Um, the lineup is against Sentinels, and that was with a very, let's say, standard Ray Cypher Breach the server, omen, though. but then a Sova, yeah. exactly, at the last spot. And I'm assuming in that spot in the meta game, that was a choice to be anti Cypher, essentially, right? Because that's what you typically need. But you also have Breach with Aftershock. Yeah, well, let's take a look at Agents Elect here and see what we're going to get. We're not going to get the Sova, it's and this looks like a fate. mirror matchup. It does look like a mirror matchup. Uh, I, I do like the breach as well. If we're going to see some explosive things here from both sides, uh, the defense obviously having to set up some more traps, but also getting some deep lines, up, maybe at A main, maybe at B main. And then, yeah, the attack from Koi is going to be just so explosive that it, it's going to be a just a huge just skirmish on sites. We're seeing full site execs into full like retakes on every sunset match we've seen so far. And we could expect the same thing here with the breach and play. I'm a big fan of this compo on those compositions because of the omen and breach combos. You're able to combine the stun and the paranoia together, controlling the market while attacking when you go for B main, but you help the race satchel through mid towards market where it's then the stun and the paranoia come in. That gives you so much control as well, but then you still push out out of the B main with a split. So there's a lot of potential executes possible in the early game as well, that on A side, the typical rank opener is the paranoia below the small windows, and that just goes towards the ramp um, on the A side, and that's so hard to stop as well. Yeah, and Shados has not played a lot of Cypher. He's got to go up against Nat, who is pretty much the king of Cypher on this map uh, as well. So I'm interested to see how that goes. And for Liquid, a lot of for picks. A lot of agents of these boys, they like to play, they've played a, a ton of as well in the past. And I know you said it's going to be more of an advantage for Koi to starting uh, to start on attack, but I like the fact that they're going with comfort picks. Yeah, it looks mean, nice. Comfort picks are definitely going to help, you know, get you over the finish line. I mean, it's not like they lost the last series. They won it. But like on this map specifically, Sunset, it's you can't really play in between. It has to be you're either in their faces on defense or you're playing for the full retake. You can't really just try to hold the sights. So right now we're going to see a, a liquid have to figure out 
what type of style are they going to do? Are they going to play back, wait to play off the trips and the, uh, the, the the cages and play for the retakes, or are they going to get a little bit in their face? We saw an ice box in the first matchup against these uh, with these guys is that Kiko was getting those deep lines as raised, and I expect to see Liquid doing that similar style here to not allow Koi to get their game plan off. That's what Koi needs. They need to be undisrupted on their game plan to be able to, you know, execute on the sites. And if they get disrupted at all by an opera taking a deep line, or they miss their timings and they've used the, their abilities, that's when they're just falling apart. Yeah, as you guys can see, Yumpy is experiencing some monitor issues right now on stage, but we're going to get that uh, fixed as soon as possible. But also to you, Lothar, I, I mentioned it briefly, Shados never really played Cypher, maybe the one time, and you have to do it here on Sunset and against Nat. So uh, what is his job, you think, uh, coming into this attack side? That, um, on the attack side, I think your job is actually pretty easy because typically you have uh, two uh, traps that are just set up by default on B on A, uh, even before the barrier drops, so you don't have to wait um, for that to happen. And then your job is to control mid if your teammates are working towards the extremities on the map. And with those compositions, that's actually typically what's going to happen because as Steel mentioned, this is going to be a little bit more explosive. At least that's the expectation, right? Because when we are mo watching matches where the team uh, has double controller set up, like an Omen and a Viper, that's typically a little bit being drawn out. Not in this game. This is going to be most likely an explosive opener to get map control. Well, the issues have been fixed, and it's time to jump into Sunset and pass this over to your casters once again. It's Pavlos and Ash. It is indeed, and it's time for our third series of the gay of the day. Team Liquid versus Koi, a rematch that really shook this uh, arena to pieces last time around, but it was Team Liquid to win it, and Koi has got an opportunity for vengeance. The crowd on the side of Team Liquid right now, but man, revenge is hopefully to be served if you're a Koi fan, because those were tight series. Sure, it was a 2-0 for Team Liquid, but Koi were on their heels the entire time. And heading into this pistol round, we know both these teams like that slower approach on the attack. Yeah, but it seems like Koi are going to switching up the pace just a little bit. That full line was perfect. And Kiko gets first blood of this map, as uh, it's uh, definitely destined to do so. Yampi doubles it up, and Kiko keeps on giving. They collapse upon Koi, and the first round goes to Team Lip. Very solid defense there, just not even allowing Koi to break through market, winning out on the, all of those fights now. Looking over towards what Team Liquid want to work with here. I think what is interesting is we are having like a true head-to-head -head in a mirror matchup, oh, yes. right? So you're looking towards the fact that this first map is really a determinant of which team is better. And this is a map that they haven't shown so far, both of these teams throughout this tournament. So it's completely off the marks. Both, both of these teams trying to play their game, trying to read the opposing team's game as well at that. On the go, it's Mystic again. Outlook, such an influential weapon. And it's influential on the bottom side as well. Kiko doubles up. So all three kills of this round have come from Outlaws. Picking the spike back up here, but yeah. What can not you do? much you're going to do, right? No. <laughs> not at all. No, I don't know. Team Liquid, look, they won the previous series in a very close fashion, right? It was a 2-0, but those maps were fairly close. We're talking about uh, some, you know, 13-7s. Uh, was it 13-7s? No. Uh, it was 13-10, 13-11. And uh, for that reason, you know, you've got to be a little bit more fearful of this one. Sunset being a new map they'll be playing in is uh, a way Koi can, you know, come uh, on top of this without the side of Team Liquid being able to prepare. While Koi, on the other hand, you know, they've been able to win and match themselves up against BBL. That was a little bit more comfortable for them, although, although many would have said very slow paced. But it's very much a battle of the bands, you know, a lot of former teammates in this, uh, in this one. There's definitely some feelings of rivalry, perhaps, or growing rivalry, but it's Nanda Lucia flawless. And not only was it a flawless in players alive, but not a single hint of damage was taken throughout that. No, so that means a very strong bonus round coming in here for Team Liquid. And look over towards the side of Koi. That's a three light shields that you're looking towards. And they've got two outlaws on the side of Team Liquid to hold down some of these choke I points. Nice, flawless. Nonetheless, well. man, I mean, Kiko already with the... <laughs> it's an Andalusia flawless, Emil. Come on. 
I don't think he got the <laughs> note. We're going to have to send him an email yeah. later. Yeah, we've got to send him an email. He's got to fix that up. Uh, but it's a strong buy round here from T. Ling. We're going to a bonus round, excuse me. Uh, a rifle, outlaws can do damage, but it's full shields for Koi. So it has to be a two shot. See what happens. Full mid control here for the Koi side. Ooh. Okay, that's one outlaw out. <laughs> it is indeed. And the stun onto Nats here could be quite influential. Nats hasn't shown his ground, but it's Shadow to pick it up. He's been so good throughout this tournament so far. And he's leading from the front as well. Shot calling on some occasions. And uh, Grabinho picking up another is setting up Koi for success as they've gotten themselves every single kill so far and full B-side control. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point there on the side of Koi. Sure, uh, late in the season last year, Starkso was the one filling the IGL Five shoes. Planted. And we did think that he was continuing on in that role heading yeah. in towards kickoff. But there was that silent switch with Shadow just uh -huh. changing his little bio it's there really on socials. About it, right? Yeah, but he's actually in that hot seat now. So we were talking about it in the green room. Three IGLs coming off of Apex. Right, Enzo maintaining that IGL position. Shadow as well calling for the team. and. And you look at uh, Magnum over in uh, Carmen Court, which we saw earlier get a win and continue to play. And it seems that Apex likes to produce a lot of <laughs> IGLs here. So the interesting yeah, is that Shadow is, is in the mind of Enzo here, right? He's played with these guys yeah. that know him uh, well and truly quite thoroughly at this point. I know it's a different roster, right? You've got the craziness of Nats. You're moving in with a different coach, Emil. Uh, there's definitely uh, some things to learn and some things adjusted and changed, uh, but it could be a useful tool to be calling against a team you know very, very well. I think that tells you a lot as to how many uh, strong voices there were within that Apex roster from last year down in the Valorant Challenger series. But now looking over towards, again, those mind games here, how well Shadow and Enzo know each other and going head to head for the second time over kickoff. And the same thing follows with the fact that he's been calling, but also producing kills. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Enzo and Mystic, some of the other players coming from Apex. A bit more quiet. A bit more quiet, haven't they? But for Koi now, moving into this mid side of the map, not really taking any extremity control, grouping their players together. But Team Liquid, not really going for information themselves either. No, but this mid control has been key here for Koi. They've opted for it quite often, but you've also got that operator, Kika, watching the angle over towards tiles. Oh. Gun here. That's a strong pick. Koi on top. So much mid control now denied here for the side of Team Liquid. And Team Liquid forced to polarize the defenses. Two on each side and mid cut in two. I mean, they have the deep Caution camera here. over towards B. I mean, they have those trips watching their backs as well. But it's the B split that Koi are inching towards. If Camo can produce some madness here, it would be optimal. Stunned there and waiting. Shadow thinks better of it, but it's a matter of timing. 40 seconds and Koi, they've been known to run the clock, clock dry, but this out. time they can't afford it to happen. There Ooh. is a trip by that Stark, so barely is able to avoid, but with the Prowler picking it through, he's able to subside it for now. It will be reproduced. I'm not quite sure if it did get shot down, but still, it's Shadow with the pick, and Koi with the opener will look to head towards this A side. I mean, that trip was taken out. That's enough pressure to put over towards B. Now the shift on over. And Mystic alone here, an island on A, playing in the smoke. No time, though. Yeah, Paranoia expended. 10, Ten seconds, seconds, they've got to move left. in. All, Koi ha all Team Liquid have to do is deny the spike part from taking place. Grabinho's position has been started. Paranoia in, and he's denied it! Down. Mystic has done it! All that was required, put it to the face, and Team Liquid win the round. Perfect timing there, coming out from Mystic. Three to one, sure, it wasn't stunning, but it was exactly what they needed. You don't need much more than that, right? Uh, no crazy plays necessary. It was the perfect mark there. And all that matters. At the end of the no, day. exactly. I mean, Mystic, he's just like looking to hit that shot. That's all that it came down to, especially when Boy are running down the clock so much. Barbara Camp. Barbara Camp is the best camp. Entertainment value. <laughs> Entertainment Stonks value are going the up. But for this one, he's not too happy, is he? No. And the team left it a little bit too long. And they had to pay for it. They still have money to invest in this, right? They've still been able to, to put, put their hands in their pockets and find some rifles. But it's heavily ex contended, this car, Jared. Two players early on for Team Liquid, but they vacated. And the Koi will have to do the same thing. A deep camera, though. So Koi do have quite a bit of information here towards B main at the very least. 
Down B, looking to play forward. But Shadow Dove is up out of nowhere? Excuse me? Kigo sought out towards Zaymane as well, making it a little bit more daunting for Koi to try and right clear there. back out into a lobby. He reclaims the space. Right there. Doesn't decide to fully fall off. Koi are looking to regroup before expending the util on the A site. And Kiko needs to find one here. Kiko also has a showstopper. Yeah. Kiko is definitely the person that has to do a lot. Stun coming through, but the showstopper coming in a little bit too late. But they jump above it! Camo is dead, but Kiko not being able to see a thing has to drop left. short after. Two versus four, though. Team Liquid. If Enzo is able to produce some madness, there's potential here, especially with a flank in the making from Mystic. But no, this has put Mystic into the clutch. He does TP across the tripwire, and it hasn't quite been heard, but they do know he's an omen, and the possibility of a TP still exists in their mind. I mean, with Starkso's position, they know. And they're looking in his direction. Mystic. Oh, potential for a second there. It got scary, but Koi have got it locked and covered. That's a second on the board for them. Okay, slowly racking these rounds up now. And the caveat is that Koi, they do do well in running down that clock, <laughs> finding those late openings into those site plants. But again, we saw where the risk is in that as well two rounds ago. Now they have to continue forward with some of this momentum. They force Team Liquid onto an eco round. Yeah, there's something to know on, on Shadow here. I, like, in this previous roster in Apex, he used to be sort of the jester, right? He used to be uh, the guy that would be a little bit cheeky, make some jokes, keep the atmosphere alive. But from what I'm seeing from him right now, Bring it's fully down. serious. It's fully leader mode. And I like that type of Shadow. Don't get me wrong. I like the funny business, but at the same time, I do enjoy him uh, on this leader position as well. I do see with the leader coming through, but I think that what you're talking about in that emotional lead, the ability to keep things light and fresh is something that we do constantly see from him as well. Sure, the yeah. player camps do show him a little bit serious, but most of the time he's got a little smirk on his face. You definitely got to see a variation of emotions. And it's Koi that move into the site, and that is the opening frag for them. Starks are looking to keep things clean. It's also the idea of Starks and, Shad and uh, Shados wanting to live their glory days again, and with Koi, they want to do the same. But for now, it's an equalization that they're looking for. Three to three. And, uh, yeah. Kiko, Enzo. Been teammates for a while. Can they do it? Can they do anything? Any damage? <laughs> but so far, every single time we see a situation like this, it's been a save. Don't give them orbs. Don't give them a thing. And this time, it's no different. Well, maybe it is, because Starks is going right after them. And he had a bullet with Kiko's name. And he's got a bullet with Enzo's name as well. Well, another Andalusia flawless coming in here for Koi this time around. Now we've got, okay, weapons are up for Team Liquid. Last round was then they were looking to save up a little bit more. Able to buy up in full, sacrificing for a couple of those light shields. Yeah. But uh, my eyes are on Koi here. You've got a Nightfall, you've got a Rolling Fender to work with. Like, they have been starting a little bit like, slower, the, yeah, but this yeah, is where yeah, they might I just pick it up. Can we have a compilation of Barber just uh, <laughs> on those uh, on that coaching cam? I think it's super, it'll be super entertaining to see what they've actually chat, what they chat about. Uh, but still, it's very aggressive here from Camo, and he comes out on top with a kill. Kiko is in one position, can't really get out, but he's got Yampi for reinforcement, so that will keep him alive for a little bit longer. Koi, press the brakes. Don't fully engage anymore. They've got the numbers. They've got to rethink this. Hey, initial fast look. It draws a lot of attention over now. Team Liquid fully rotated over towards Abel. Look at that spike. Oh, Camo! It grasses off the back of it again, but only damage to Yampi, not quite the finishing blow. And they drop back to save their lives as they look to pivot towards the speed side. But look how late it is now. Koi, they made so much attention drawn over towards A. Sure, the setup is still here on the side of Nats, but nobody's home. Off your feet! Yeah. No one is home. Rolling Thunder has to be used. They had no information who was at the back of the site. So it will be taken up. An important ultimate I'm sure they'd be they'd love to have on the post spot, but still, better safe than sorry. Spike planted. Multiple on the flank this time around. There's a tripwire there to cover the ground. And there's two players looking at them. And a shadow to take the fight! Spray down, double pick up. And Koi miles ahead in this round, so Team Liquid forced to back out. Got to save that operator into the next. A costly round there for Team Liquid as we equalize on the side of Koi and take it even further to find the lead once again. It will be 
all things assumed, and Andalusia flawless that will be coming in here, here for the side of Koi on top of that. Man, I feel like what I'm a little bit nervous about. Yes. Like the last time these two teams faced off, Pavlos. Uh -huh. Sure, it was close. And Map one on Icebox, though. Kiko had a life game. Oh, he did. And it's one of those criticizing. Uh, that's, that's what Lothar was criticizing on desk as well, right? And a lot, I think a lot of people uh, can criticize it as well. Is that, you know, reliable? Yeah. Is that something that can be replicated? And you, when you're on Team Liquid, a lot of these situations where they've come out on top, where they've won a lot of rounds, is due to individual success. Mm -hmm. And then you look at game two. Same situation, but it's Nats that time. Last yeah. time they went head to head, right? right? Nats right now, 0 4. Haven't seen the value out of that. I know that the calling here for the Team Liquid side hasn't really given Nats the opportunity to really shine either. He's been playing very passive, also getting caught out in some situations. A little bit difficult to consistently, I think, be playing that kind of retake game here for Team Liquid. And what I really like from them were the first couple of rounds that we saw on the pistol, on the anti-eco, playing yeah. a little bit more forward, going for those early engagements and taking the fight to them. And that's my, that might be what is being discussed right now. It could be. Team Liquid want to be changing their approach in this one because, let's be fair, the past two battle rounds that Koi have had have been working like a charm. It didn't seem like there were any cracks in the road for them. They've been able to play Team Liquid uh, by the book, be able to lure them in areas of the map and be able to manipulate them in a manner in which they could get these rounds. So heading into an eco round with a hero operator and a hero phantom, things are looking to get a bit dicey here. Okay. <laughs> How much hope are we putting on Kiko's hands right now? I mean, it's a, it's the a mid look once again here for Kiko, right? Every time he's had the op, it's been this aggressive angle. But no one's been in there to bail him out either. And there's two angles that you have to keep an eye on here. He has to back up. I like the more passive play. It's a matter of being able to trade it. It could have been a double, but he gets out with 30 points of health. Team Liquid might have a chance if they're able to replicate this once more. But again, it's Mandel's versus Sheriff, and Kiko doesn't miss. Back on the server again. And he's loving it. Although, look at this push from Grabinho. He's going all the way in while the Prowler keeps Kiko busy into market. Yampi aggressing with a short with the Sheriff, but it's Enzo to come up on top instead. So, Team Liquid, they're on the highway to victory. Unless Shados is doing anything about it, but he won't. He won't. And Starkso on the other end all by himself is wondering what happened to this round. Mystic has got his number as he found a 90 degree angle to take on. So Team Liquid keep the score close and in equilibrium. Great timeout to be called there from Team Liquid to find success right off the back of it. The value that we were looking for to come out from the operator finally arriving here for Kiko with that mid control, but now we've got to see him be a little bit more dynamic because Koi, they are going to focus on denying him that angle oh, yeah. towards market. They're not going to let him get away for it for free. So now we should see the shift over towards B, still playing forward in front of these trips and whatnot, but by a little bit more time, then you can move around the map even more oh, so. look. Cam was actually aggressive and far forwards into mid. Uh, and the lot is thrown at Natsia to try and get him out of this position, trying to break the utility. Well, the trip is still alive and in the meantime come on what's going on but get your rifle out mate that's his demise yampi will take full advantage of it and it's the b site that koi are going for still team liquid have vacated looking to retake it together might not even allow them to plant given that there's a roll the rolling thunder in yampi's hands i mean they're waiting they're biding their time just a bit more now just knowing that there's no opportunity to get that down safely wow. he's just got a sliver to work with and that's, that's all he that's needs insane uh, it's all down to Kiko and a gap through the smoke. That's a big misplay from Grabinho to smoke that off, leave that gap, and Kiko exploits it to perfection. And Andalusia Flawless coming in here for Team Liquid. We saw two back to back there for yeah. Koi. They're doing it right back to him. Your eyes on this youngster, man. Kiko shining time and time again. Look at that gap. There barely was a pixel visible for him and then the smoke clears. And it's re-smoked, and it's even a bigger gap. You all can't have those mistakes. I mean, all he knows all he knows is that he just has to hold that spike, right? Just deny that. No. Okay. TP to cross deeper in towards elbow here for Mystic. 
Come on, this is it. Fancy's a fight. Takes it head on and comes out on top. Why not? Shadow Don't stick around for too long, though. They've got two. Yeah, just want to hold hands in this situation. Want to do it all together. You want to see that Mystic is doing it by himself, but that leaves Enzo out to the open. Mystic wants to take vengeance, wants to take revenge. But it's still a three versus three. And can we have a decision to make? Do they go to the A site? No, they've got someone in the likes of Shados pushing B, putting pressure, but they've still got a minute to work with. So this round is malleable. All the defenders on Team Liquid so split up though. I like the fact that Yampi has so much information with the forward angle towards this A site. The spike still leaning there. And if he does get caught out, this cross is tricky. But he does have the fault line to work with. Could even roll yeah. in Thunder if necessary, if he gets swarmed to buy time for the rest of the team. Which is why I think Yampi is choosing to back off here. There's no right reason there. to take, you know, a risk given that he's got such a high flying ultimate. 30 seconds all the way left. across I the wrong side exactly of the map. Nats has got a lot of space, but he's got on the information as well that Team Liquid can hold off this A site. Now, having garage control is massive, but the Neural Theft has shown his position. He's going to have to close up the gap here up against his own cage. And he pushes that even further. A very aggressive play by Stark, so shuts down Kiko, and that uh, it doesn't allow Yampi to cross over. He has to go through mid. Yampi rolling thunder. Shados has to die here. Four seconds. Nats to interrupt it. It's again Team Liquid. Winning off the interruption of the spike plant. And Stark, so yes, you're alive for a little longer. The final man standing, but that means to naught if you're not able to get that spike down on time. Time seemingly being the worst enemy of Koi in these situations. Just not biting themselves enough to comfortably actually work towards the site a couple of rounds now. Team Liquid, they force a timeout out of Koi this time around. And they're looking over towards these cams. A little bit of that frustration. You can see it in the coach's booth. And I don't blame them for pulling a timeout again. Like, they had to draw this out for them because you can't have rounds like this where it's not the first time. It's the second time where they draw it way too late. Now, I did like the idea of Koi pushing through spawn there. Stark so interrupting Kiko. He forced Yampi to go through market as well. There's a lot in play there. They were smart to block off the interruptions, but that did come to effect when they didn't have enough players to take over the site. So having to split their forces there, too difficult for them. And now they need to find what their priorities are. What are their win conditions? Because let's be fair, 64 is not a bad score for them. They're not too far behind, but with how many rounds that they had going their way, how many rounds that they should be winning, it's them, it's Koi that actually should be on 64. It's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. I mean, it is. Again, especially with the fact that it is one of those rematch situations. When you're the losing team, you're expected the ones to be able to bounce back. But it's high fives, reset mindset. Let's see if Barbar's words are put into effect for Koi here as we enter round 11. And Team Liquid with control over this defense on Sunset. Just stop for available here for Kiko. And it's going to be you straight out of the bat. Hey, they're changing the pace up, you know, going for that faster hit. But no one is nearby. So he throws down a showstopper. It doesn't quite break a trip either. Nats finds a shot onto Shadow as he gets affected by a trip. So There's that caused troubles oh to Koi. How does he even push for forwards from this? One of the trips is broken. So Koi allowed onto site. Nats is thinking of it. And he's got Spike a reinforcement as well. Nightfall. It's really strong from Stark. So but he's paranoid, so he can't really take advantage of it. All they're doing is delaying right now. Koi don't have the numbers they need to pick from this. And I think Shados has, has got to be the player to interrupt this from happening. He could have leads the charge. Nats has to drop back. Koi buying so much time. So the top clock is working in favor of Koi, but the kills aren't. Shados now looking to stop it all from happening. Starkso in the smoke. Heroic work from him. But it's still an equilibrium. Two versus two. And Shados spraying Last towards the spike. Not on anymore, but they don't have the info. Mystic, supremacy, triple kill. Team Liquid look to grab a seventh round before the half ends. Miscommunication to go for such an aggressive swing after you see Starkso spot. No Nobody on that spike, no danger, not even halved in that regard. And with a tricky smoke like that, not even the ability to get those trades down. Team Liquid guaranteed a lead going into the second half. Now, whoa, look at, okay. I know we're seeing the hype replays right now, but I can all wait until the teams come back up on screen for you guys. <laughs> See what the weapon situation is here because 
Okay, no, never mind. Yeah, no, oh, they are okay. doing it. They double are running the double up. What? Look, we've seen Kiko on it. He's been insane. But Mystic's got to show us what he's got. But it's Nats that might be in contention first with a Phantom up close and personal, but it's Camo to win out the fight. Kiko close with it as well. Has to back out with the assistance of the Blast Pack. Fault line does barely avoid him. And he's able to save his life and fight for this retake. Okay, but retake with double off. Oh, Difficult looks here. That's massive. Kiko closing up the gap. He had the right idea, but the execution wasn't quite there. So we're still... At a standstill state with three versus three and Koi playing an aggressive placement onto this B site. Surely they just saved this though, no? No, they're not. Oh, oh wait, no, it's seven to it. five. And with the From the Shadows available, this is Mystic trying to find information to help his team to move in. He doesn't stick it because he has been shut down. Enzo finds the first pick, two more to go, and Team Liquid might be able to perform a retake here. Paranoia used, doesn't pick a single player. Starkso and Shados play this together. Two former world champions with two different teams who look to work together in tandem to make this all work from them. Mystic, though, is the all-well denier. He's got the defuse in, but I'm not quite sure if he's got the time. It's a close one, and it's Koi to come out on top. What a way to end that there, right down to the wire. And quick maths, I had I, had me lost in the sauce. I was just like, okay, they've got two operators. Didn't even realize it was the 12th round of the first half. And that's a risky gamble to buy two ops into that last round. When you know those retakes are what you've been mainly looking towards. And that was a point blank play with the operator. You can't do those that easy. No, it's insane. I mean, re that's so difficult. Look, like, the, the reactions here. from Koi here. Like, they thought the round was over for them, but they ended up winning it because uh, they fused didn't come underway. So there was a, a big wave of emotions back and forth yeah. on the coaching staff of Koi. And I assume for everybody watching as well, that could have gone anywhere <laughs> in any direction. But for Team Liquid now, as they move into the attack, Koi onto defense, it's a different situation where Team Liquid can control the pace of this game and Koi have to prevent it. Koi. They've been so good on pistol rounds as well. Exactly what they need to even the score early on. Team Liquid already flooded onto this B site. And that paranoia is actually strong. Enzo's killed off and no longer able to put that spike into the ground. And with the smoke deteriorating, that's when Shadows and Starks can start raining bullets upon them. It's clean! Not only is it clean, it is flawless. And Andalathia flawless to give themselves the first pistol of this half. And it's definitely the right direction for them. One round away from Team Liquid. What do you do on the side of Team Liquid at this point? I mean, neck and neck, looking towards sunset, this is the Koi pick. So to be able to try and equalize this early on, good looks into the second half. But overall, I mean, we are seeing a different version of both these teams, I yes, think. we are. Like, the pacing is very different. Yes. The tempo there, a big change from the original matchup that we saw between these two teams. 100%. Koi, a lot more snappy, a lot more fast pace, a lot proactively thinking, a lot more proactively thinking. I guess we saw that more on the attack than we are going to see it on defense, but it could be signs of them to follow. But still, this is Team Liquid taking some fights here. And Koi aren't going to shy away from them for a second. It's a camo highlight reel as he pads up his stats. And Yampi forced to drop back. Yampi, though. Immense and amount of pain. Camo, it's going to be a full on ace for the man as Koi find themselves at an equal state with Team Liquid. Gotta love the Eco Ace coming in here for Koi. Great for the momentum and great to cycle into that showstopper oh, yeah. too. Now just two away here for Camo and they have been playing for those extremities. So Team Liquid, if they don't look to contest this A orb, you could likely see Camo looking to abuse that. Try and cycle this ultimate up into the anti-eco round of Team Liquid. Yeah, Camo has been one of those players least talked about, I think. Uh, from everyone looking at Koi. He's definitely been a strong prospect. And uh, I mean, now, definitely able to show it. Obviously, that was against Pistols, but if he continues to find power like this against some of the biggest prodigies to have graced VCT MEA this year, like Kiko, it's um, quite, <laughs> quite the task. What do we got to work with here? We've got Nats on Garage. It's a dodgy position. It is. 
Back off at the very least. The camera? Still keeping elbow control here. You can really tell he's tempted to go for a peek there. Got the information with the Roomba at the very least. That boom bot coming through. That's true. So Shadow makes the call. Drop half, mate. Don't don't go too far forward. And they drop back even further into the site. That pencil is actually immaculate with the seas, oh. but it's not quite in their direction. They have plenty of room to spare. But Tark, Stark, so closing up the distance. He's got his thing, and that does well in close proximity, but at the same time, Team Liquid are moving away from it. I mean, that elbow play was just about buying control no, and time though. on Koi. Shadow now turns his attention towards it. It might left. be the right moment for them to swing, but Nat's now moving in the direction of the smoke as Team Liquid push onto the site. Paranoia stopping them from pushing. 20 seconds, and it's actually this time Team Liquid's turn to be in time travel, but Nat's on the lurk will be all too dangerous. Spike on site, and Shadow looks to stop them from getting in. Kiko and Enzo, as well as the rest of Team Liquid players, look to collect them one by one. And that was the Al Flawless once again, and it's Team Liquid with the lead. And Koi had such interesting positioning there. The clock ran down so, so, so low and lots of opportunity. It should have been tight, but the coordination to come out from Team Liquid winning out those gunfights changed everything. Now, looking into this next round here. Pavlos. Yes. Again, we've seen the change of pace. Yes, I feel we like have. we haven't seen that much mid focus here coming out okay. from Team Liquid in, in the beginning there. rounds, but now we're looking for a little bit more of that diligence to try and put that pressure down, see the yep. dark cover going out, and even just the presence of the haunt alone to try and find some of that space or put the, some of that pressure here on towards Koi. It definitely keeps on there. Yeah. The thing is, you have a cam watching through, so you have all the information you need as far as how they far, how wire. deep they've actually pushed past. Yeah, unless you smoke that, you can't really give the illusion to Koi that you have crossed. But they know it. Mm -hmm. Again, slow paced as ever. Spread out. And Cam was always consistently so far up towards a main, watching the long angle. Yeah. Uh, alongside the one way, of course, to assist with some of that delay, but it's a lot of information, a lot of early map control on the right side of the map here for Koi. Camo looks to back out of there. A lot of pressure put in his direction, but no reactions from Koi. They're actually sticking into place. 45 seconds in, this is where Kiko looks to push forwards. He has been able to sidestep Mystic there to introduce the some no. chaos into the mix. Grabinho not able to find a second kill, and Mystic is coming alive. He's been criticized. He's been scrutinized, but he's here to stay, and he's back on the server with a lot more kills. 2v4 situation here. And Shadow's looking to lead the charge into this one, and he's able to open it up, Yampi no more. And Shadow looks to find more, Nats. He's incredible on the Cypher, and even more so on the Guardian, with a flank in the making, with the likes of Mystic. This is making this all too difficult for Shados. And I didn't, don't want to be in his shoes at all. Nobody does. And with the dire economical state that Koi is in right now, he has to draw back, he has to save, maybe find a kill as consolidation, maybe not that even. It's Mystic with the final kill. And Team Liquid keep on winning on this attack. Not even a hero rifle to get carried over here for Koi. Team Liquid looking clinical, much cleaner than we had seen them before, I think. The last two matches, Team Liquid, they did have pop-off moments from individual players. Of course, we are still seeing those pop-off moments right now. 14 and 8 there for Mystic. You know, smiles on the side of Team Liquid, celebration and yeah. a little bit of stress there on, on the side of Koi, but... I'm not great at lip, lip reading, but that wasn't Sunshine Rabers out of the mouth of Baba. <laughs> Get him. But still, Team Liquid. Major time ahead, right? With this victory, Watch they just increase their lead even further. They're expected to. Yeah, I guarantee the double digits at the very least are on the side of Team Liquid, but growing that gap as far as the scoreboard goes. Boy, looking to play these numbers. The gamble stack over towards this A site, the crossfire as well, that trap play, but Team Liquid, they're not knocking on that door. And that smoke gives more room to Team Liquid than anybody else would have thought. You know, with that smoke, you kind of allude to the idea that they'll be playing in aggressively. So Stark, so he's going to have to hold it back in case he hears any commotion in this direction. Paranoia shot down instantly. So it's still an illusion as to far how far deep they are in mid. And instead, they take up a B space, in which they'll gladly take to themselves. Yeah, I mean, Shados was close enough. Close enough. Yeah. To get that read, got the call back over here. But Koi, they have to play together. They do have a showstopper in the hands of Camo. 
That smoke single-handedly makes Team Koi so, so scared of a mid-crunch. <laughs> Everybody's looking here. Well, three out of four. I mean, so consistently, it's there has been a late wrap. It is. And Mr. gets caught. Camo's got a show out. What are the chances here? One out of ten. I don't think they're going for it. You can tell from this call alone uh, that... Yeah, they're jumping back. They're just looking to isolate right now. Just keep Team Liquid stuck. Try to whittle just down some of that economy. Get those picks with the exit out towards B main. And with that, the spike explodes, and we're back in it. Yambi doesn't lose his life, so that's one rifle less on the side of Team Liquid, but no, no, really, uh, no more all points to go to the Blue Stallions. But this time around, we've got a buy round, and I think this is where things get a little bit dicey. Koi, they drop this, they'll be in trouble, in economical trouble, and they really cannot afford that to happen, otherwise Team Liquid might be closing out their own map pick a little bit too quickly. No, Grabinho also the one to be on this operator. I think the Omen operator is something that can definitely be creative. You can reposition there with the shrouded step, not nearly as quickly out. as a raise or a jet or a chamber. But then the other fear is, okay, yeah. you have to get those timings of cycling the smokes for your team as well, where you're then left unscoped. You can't keep watching that angle. Uh-huh. And Team Liquid, yet again, with this mid-control, keep coy, split to two sides. Slow looks, changing the pacing here. When Kiko is looking on a lurk, you can never be comfortable given that Nats could be on any given angle. I mean, sorry, Camo is on a lurk. You can never expect. Well, you can never deal or be comfortable to deal with Nats. Still, it is a right-hand side they're looking to go into, and there's a fault line there to help keeping Stark so in one area. Showstopper was enabled, but it's by Camo instead. A little bit over-aggressive, but it clears out Garage and uh, gives the call to his team to head to this A site quickly to defend because there's only 40 seconds remaining and Team Liquid might be in trouble if they're not quickly quick enough. I mean, going for this short push. But Koi put their forces together. They're putting themselves into all in one corner. Kiko is able to deal with one as he quickly finds himself on the side. But Koi Five is the team that wins most of these trades. But there's two players on the other side of the map and Shados has got to play the patience game. Split up now. Mystic just going to have to take that TP and get out. They don't what know is this? where that was. It's no. trying to keep the Koi players over to this big oh, side. But they might have made the wrong call because they're out into the open for Camo to collect. And Koi are finally back in contention. Not enough information for that, especially when you know that the cavalry should have arrived over towards A. Maybe assuming that Nats did enough to distract over towards B to keep some of those rotations from coming over. I think the cam there from uh, from Team Liquid was from from Team Liquid, yeah, was crucial over on that B site. Knowing that there's no one TP'd in that direction, they were comfortable to keep three players on that A site defense. No matter what, though, in those situations, you do decide to stick together as three when you have those numbers. But a good shout, regardless. Of protocoling this Prowler out. Start with information, though, with the tuck. That fault line is so scary time and time again, but it's Grabinho that ends up picking off Kiko as it's anticipated from the Koi side. I mean, hook, line, and sinker, right? I feel like something that Koi have done so well is kind of just bait oh, into some of that operator. Yampi's going on a rampage right now, yeah, and he might be able to keep it going. Shados puts him to the dirt, so enough bunny business from him as Team Liquid look to move into this B site. Yes, there's Shados nearby, but he's going to have to wait and fall back with his team because Grubinho is miles away. At the very least, that neural theft does give a little bit of that security, a bit of that information. Team Liquid are going to aggress even Spike further. Planted. They're in within the smoke, and Shados going to have to deal with this. He's expecting it, but Nats is quicker to the trigger. Starks are trying to find back the space. Shadow trying to spray into to that smoke, but no one from Koi is finding a pick. Saw but Grabinho is now on the fight, on the lurk. Operator's shot chimed, but it's Shadow with the pick. Starkso knows where Natsis gives the call, but it's Enzo there to assist. Oh, Starkso is there to help. Nats is low, but he's surrounded. The map comes in, so it closes in on him. And that's Koi on the defuse, right back into winning ways. Clean swings coming out from Koi to get the trades and find the retake here to take us one away from tying things up into this second half. Team Liquid, I mean, again, good looks. They've been good at finding the space on the attack, being able to secure that plant. So Koi's diligence has been 
really good as far as the coordination, the spacing there when they move in together. Yeah, and I think Koi have been really good at reading how uh, Liquid like to play it, what their early crunches are going to be. A lot of nice anticipated set plays that they had the perfect counters to, and this round was a perfect example, not allowing there. Kiko to move in, interrupting, finding early numbers. And again, if we're looking at an A-side push, a slightly different variation, a bit of a rouge, as the mid-push is what follows. I mean, right now, I think even Yampi just showing this presence over towards A, he's the one with the rolling thunder, right? Trying to... Oh, Mystic takes the fight against an op, and the omen diff shows up. Shadow able to barely get away, but he's being chased after. Team Liquid going directly to this A site. Enzo is alone. He needs to maintain his composure and group up with the team, because if he died there, it would have been terrible for them. Shade also wants to go for in the fight, but Mystic has got that angle covered. Picks up the op for himself and says, this bad toy is mine to use, and I'll use it as much as I want. Shadow says, yeah, enough of that. But still, it's Team Liquid that have guaranteed themselves at least an 11th round here as uh, off the back of Mystic's openings. In no money really to work with here on the side of Koi. I mean, they do have enough to buy into in the next round, but it will rely on Camo keeping the full shield, keeping this weapon into the next to be able to toss one of those guns over towards Shados. So an 11th round here for Team Liquid. And okay. I know you're looking at this team and we're like, okay, the spacing's good, the timing is good, the weapon now denied here in the hands of Camo, so no ability to buy into Shade Offs into the next round. But Mystic is having a game today. He definitely is. I think he's heard the criticizing of his performances so far, hearing that, okay, the only player off of the Apex core, off of the old Fnatic core as well, um, it, it, it's Kiko, right? Um. Well, not the old Fnatic core for Kiko, but Mystic himself and Enzo not quite able to find the same performances. And Mystic took that personally, and he's showing it in this performance so far. Timeout necessary. This next round lies on a knife's edge. Koi win it. They're able to close out the gap. Only one round difference. Koi lose it. Economical recession. Team Liquid on map and uh, on map point. On Koi's map pick, it's high focus time right now for this Koi side. I mean, if they lose this round, this map is done and dusted, yes. essentially. And you have to use what you have to work with. You're looking towards that nightfall. You're looking towards that rolling thunder in the hands of Starkso and Shadow. But then at the same time, Team Liquid, if they don't need the the showstopper, the rolling fender to find that execution. They save that into the post plan. It's a perfect counter to deny that flood back on towards site that Koi would be looking for. The hands warmed up and stretched. Minds cleared for what could be a very crucial round in this series. Operator on Yampi. Yes. No. I mean, we've seen it on Kiko, we've seen it on Mystic, and I think Yampi's turn now. Team Liquid enter this attack on a very split approach. Lurk in the making for Nats, but Team Liquid look to take up this B space. Not so patient. I was knowing that that Prowler's gonna come out. Defaulted there by Stark, so okay, here's where we kick it to high gear. And it's a matter of not using all the ultimates at the same time. They know the B site is open, Yampi not used, not needing to use a Rolling Thunder himself, but Nat's being called off. That was a big haymaker this round for Team Liquid that they won't have for later. We might see Mystic try to wrap back around towards mid, though, a little bit later into the post plant. McCoy, take a time to regroup, recalibrate. Nightfall drops, and Kiko's position notified. Camo, he's got himself a nice position and a potential good crunch, but Kiko is in oh. big trouble, and he'll get dismantled. Koi, they've got a lot of players now. They've got so much, but the Rolling Thunder will stand two players up, and because of the smoke, they won't feel too comfortable to push forwards. They're waiting for Mystic to come through, but Gravinho re reads it. Rolling Thunder. Wrap back for response. Yampi destroyed. Enzo remains, but not for long. Koi survived with all of their players and get the round, get the equalizer, and stay alive in this map. And Andalusia flawless on the side of Koi to take them to double digits. Absolutely what they needed with, again, that money situation. We needed to see them carry as much over into this round. And to top it all off, they get to recover that operator. Just the sweet cherry on top of the situation. You get the celebrations here, but you can also see 
I feel like out of all the coaching duos, that is like the most that like bro favorite. duo yeah, out I'm there awesome. too. We're biased casters now. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're sold on Koi. If all their coaching stuff, that is. But still, it's um Koi winning that round is exactly what they needed. We talked about the stakes of it. And now they're back in contention. This is still anyone's game. So the coin flip round goes to Koi and Team Liquid back into a difficult position. Difference too is Kiko used that showstopper last round and Cam was no cycled up to his. Starks are ready and waiting for this mid crunch. Doesn't quite have quick reinforcement. Shados would be the next player to contest. There. But he doesn't have much cover. Three smoked. Into the smoke oh. they go. Gets one before it drops, but that's a lot of information. Three players recovered but they do drop back just a little. Taking out Mystic is key here, though. The fact that they no longer have smokes to work with here on Team Liquid. How much of a difference will it truly make? I think it's a higher value trade. And Yampi doesn't have flashes anymore. So dry peaks, unsmoked peaks. They're gonna have to take this together. Coordinated. Shadow, he's got everything to his exposal apart from his rolling thunder. Seconds left. And there's a flank in the making of the likes of Yampi at that nobody currently is reading. Camo no more. Yampi on the fly. And there's nothing Koi could have done about it. Grabinho with the ghost in hand gets true out of nowhere. And Kiko left in the hot seat. Has to run away. They chase right after him. But Grabinho continues with the ghost. A 3K with the pistol here for Koi. That's dirty. It's absolutely insane, especially when you had the fact that Yampi was flanking around through mid, finds two, and the fact that you're just able to shift the round completely. <laughs> Can we see that again? Okay, yes, he had the help of Shados behind him, sure. All right, he wasn't playing that fight alone. But the fact that it's Grabinho to do it with a pistol is just disrespectful. Right after he throws the op out of his hand too. I don't know He's if like, you know that. He's like, I don't that. want this gun. I mean, he was trying to swap out to the rifle sure. to play a better 1v2, right? But they knew that timing was of essence there and waiting any second longer mm -hmm. would stop their chances of picking off Kiko. I like this timeout being called here from Team Liquid as well though. They want to stall some of the momentum that was just built. That The fact that you had a huge hero play coming out from Grabinho. One of the rookie players on the side of Koi that were looking to make waves here for this team as well. So it showed up big in that last round. And one of the highlight players that we've been looking throughout this entire tournament so far is Nats. And this time, not doing so bright. Currently on seven kills to 13. And this is a player that they've relied on. And something we've talked about in consideration, right? They need to have a couple of these players show up. And not only show up, but carry. Team Liquid haven't yeah. quite had that in the entirety of this map so far. Tough. Yeah. A lot of weight on the shoulders of Enzo as well. You know, his re-entry back into the VCT circuit. Right there. Indeed. Then he's also in that IGL yeah. slot this time around as well. But Stark, so it's living life right now. Team Liquid. Shadows. Mid-presence. Koi respect it, and it's back to a triple A, double B stack. Okay. Denying this one way. It's the same stun, but this time it misses. And crucially enough, that means that Kiko is able to find the pick. Camo looking to go right after him. And with the showstop, it picks up Nats as well. So topsy-turvy, it looked like Kiko had the opening for Team Liquid, but instead it's for Koi. But look at the flank. The Starks are going all the way around and nobody's looking in that direction. That's a spray down. It could have been a second kill, but it isn't as Gampi gets a pick on the other front. So Koi vacate. They know they've got the numbers. Now they've got to play the trading game. And look how much pressure Koi were able to make now on this duo here in Enzo and Mystic. Shifting back over towards this A site. Starks ran all the way back towards B just in case. There's Cameron Garage making sure that no one is pushed up to spawn or mid. Instead, Team Liquid look to push towards the A-Site. Shader spots one, I think, on the mini-map. Shadow is, all he has to do is wait and hide. He has to be cleared. And nobody's cleared him just... You heard a step? 30 seconds, Shadows peeks out. That's one pick. Looks to run away, but Mystic trades. 30 seconds, Mystic has got to do it alone. Vandal, upgraded. 25 seconds, Spike left behind. But there's also Stark, so in mid, he has to care for. He wants to wrap back around, but with 20 seconds on the clock, the spike down. Shadow, I don't think, has revealed himself already, but Mystic is looking in his direction. He doesn't have time for this. They've been teammates before, but he has to read his teammates' game plan. 
soon. And I don't think he has at all. Seven seconds to spare. Shadow just plays the patience game and all he needs to do now is swing and put Mystic to sleep. Map point for Koi on their own map pick. Sunset is one round away from being theirs. Team Liquid would have been making them work for it, though. The fact that this opener was everything in the hands of Camo, not only to equalize, to find the numbers advantage and stall out that fast start that Team Liquid were looking for on the execution. One more round. Still, if <laughs> we just heard, yeah. Emil, he's behind. <laughs> Emil is like, he's behind you, but they can't hear you, mate. I'm sorry. And that's not how you. it works. You need a timeout for that, and you can't time out charges. mid round. Team Liquid, yeah. take up mid space. We don't have to say how important this round is for them. And over time, perhaps, Koi looking for revenge in this series. As they did lose the first head to head. But Team Liquid have got so much more expectations on them. They're reigning EMEA champs. Mm -hmm. Losing this map will definitely put pressure on them. It's not the series yet, I know. We can't get ahead of ourselves. Face but it's your a fear. good start, a good step in the right direction. Nightfall towards that A site. How many defenders does it bait in that area? How much more are they looking to push? Prowler sent towards them. Shados. Wanting to take a fight here into market, but Mystic wins the fight. Yes, a couple of players of the Team Liquid side are low, but they've been able to keep their lives in, intact. Having to fall off now, but Camo cuts off the rotation. He's been huge this game. Shados, gatekeeper of this B site, and he's got the cam knowing that no one has pushed thus far. Paranoid doesn't even matter. Shados switched to the cam, knows that Yampi is aggressed forwards. He's got full information over him because he's got the cam looking at him. He's just PM at this point. He's big brother. And Yampi can't hide away in the smoke he goes left. in his attempt to conceal his position. And now he's got teammates to work with. Enzo cut, tries it, to confront, but he hasn't got anyone to help him. Miscommunication perhaps, but Gravino now is in the fight. And he's got the flank. Spike down onto the ground. Yampi can't do a thing as he's blinded. Koi, 13 to 11. Close out map number one. Sunset their map pick here for Koi. It was tight and Team Liquid looked Good, but the adjustments coming out for Koi looked absolutely incredible. Mystic had an insane game there, uh, trying to keep things alive there for the side of Team Liquid, but man, Koi looked good. They definitely have exceeded expectations, and let's see if they can continue to do so in map number two. We'll be back right after this to see if that's the case. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.
Kiss your body, baby. No, I cannot believe that you're still single, lady. Wishing I could retrieve. I want you here with me. Be my lover, be my, be my, be my, be my drover. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Uh, we still have some ways to go to close out the day, but for now, I'm sitting here in the Team Liquid corner, decked out with the most beautiful merch. Some of it you can't actually buy. I have Lucas and Chrissy uh, join me here for a quick chat. Chrissy, you made this. Yeah, I did it. it, it it's crocheted, is yeah, it? Yeah, it is crocheted. I did it all by myself in like 12 hours. It's... Wait, in 12 hours? <laughs> it took me 12 hours, like only the body took me already five or something. I'm as a crocheter myself, and I'm sure there's a lot of overlap in our audience, probably not. Uh, that is very impressive. Is there a pattern? Like, can people recreate Can you recreate it? No, definitely not. <laughs> I used like two pictures of those plushies to make it, and I will definitely not be able to recreate it, so no. Okay, it's a one of a kind, a one of a kind. Now, Lucas, we chatted uh, quickly before uh, this interview went live, and you told me that you guys actually met here at the VCT. Yeah, like last year. We really here like uh, last year at VCT uh, EMEA 2023. We uh, we're becoming friends. Like we were here every every game changing for Liquid, uh, the best team in the world. Am I right? <laughs> you got your answer there. Uh, <laughs> Like, we were always playing like at home together and we were so happy when finally announced the kicker was gonna start. We were all just waiting at home like, oh my God, when it's finally gonna start. And we we're so happy to be here. Well, and we are so happy to have you here. Thank you guys so much. Let's see what the teams have in store for us on this next map. And that's where we're headed right now. We will be indeed. Let's hope the Liquor Boys give their fans something to smile about because still, I think they should have closed that one out. 
They probably should have, but I mean, we saw just a similar fashion in the previous series that these guys went against each other. It was pretty much the same thing, just like come, came down to the slimmest of margins, really super tight, close game. And it was basically the, all the same talking points, right? Where it's not just Kiko up, it's just Team Liquid get up and then Koi walks into it on their attack. If something disrupts Koi early on in their attack phase, it's just like, what do we do? Um, just everyone from Liquid just peeking one at a time. It's like, what's actually going on? Can we see something a little bit better? Even even their lurk timings from Nats on Liquid. It's like his team yeah. goes into a site, it's free, and then he just starts his lurk. It's like, well, they're not in B. Where else are they going to be? They're going to be where you're lurking. Honestly, shout out to Alpha. Yeah, pretty sure he should be in scrims right now. So I guess uh, Fnatic very confident <laughs> uh, what they're going to do next. But let's talk about this Icebox because uh, that is exactly how Liquid won it, right? They just had Kiko uh, posted up with the AWP, getting record number of kills. Surely Koi have learned their lesson. Well, let's hope so, because they have the agents to be able to deal with the AWPer and to be able to deny the info and avoid that. Kiko, it's not like he was taking a, a passive deep line with the AWP and just getting the kill and like rotating around. He was like walking up, getting in their faces a little bit. But I mean, even just watching it on this last map here, we saw them, they had stuns, flashes, cages, prowlers, eyes, everything, and they just like walked around into the AWP. So if we want to see something better from these guys, it's not like they're running anything uh, super crazy I think it's the exact same yeah. the, the, as the last time. So yeah, what does Koi need to do? They need to leverage, you know, the harbor cascades a little bit. They need to use the flashes, the drones, find out where Kiko is and maybe just be like, you know what? If he has an op, we need to use our abilities. And I wouldn't even be uh, against just running Kiko down. Like you find out where he is and just dump everything on him because he's most likely going to be alone. And it, it's just like, but him as the only person. If they decide that they're going to be like, oh, Kiko's here, let's run the other way. They might actually, uh, it, it might not work on this specific map. Hey, I you guys used to do that. Find C Ned, run away, and then you win. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, current day C Ned, we wouldn't have to do that. But, <laughs> oh <my laughs> but God, I, I think on a, on a map like Icebox, I think it's fine to run them down mm -hmm. compared to a map like uh, just any other map. Um, so right now, that that that is Liquid's win condition on their defense. They get that off, they're winning. And if they don't have that off, they're just taking way too many individual duels so spread across the map that it's. It, they're bleeding out. They're not able to do any sort of team-based retake situation together. And that's what they need to go for. Very quickly, who you got on this one? Who you, who you were backing? I, I would say Koi. Like, I was saying it before the series, they're probably going to win. And then seeing after last map as well, they probably have like a little bit of momentum on their side too, just like being happy that they got to this point. Oh, well, it's a draw apparently. So well. um, <laughs> I guess, uh, what, what do we do now? Go to a fourth map? Well, no, <laughs> both of them out. <laughs> no, we can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, I assume they're just going to restart the lobby uh, in just a second. But let's talk about uh, Liquid's win condition because Mystic was doing bits. You spoke about maybe it's not just the Kiko, maybe it's just the op in general. So um, dead ass, five ops. Win condition, everybody ops. Let's not say five. Let's say let's say two. They were passing it around, right? So it wasn't mm -hmm. just Kika. Like we saw Mystic having it a couple of times. We saw Yampi having it on attack, even though he didn't get to shoot it once. But I, I think when you get those deep lines and Koi is doing this thing where they're just like they're kind of doing info denial stuff, but they're kind of going through the motions without actually thinking about the steps that they're doing. So they're not saying like, okay what can happen here oh this can happen so we have to do this it's more like okay let's run through set game plan one of do this harbor cascade and this thing to make them think that we could be here and then walk the other direction and they're not thinking about what kiko or others from liquid are doing so yeah what is it uh, get ops move the op around maybe even get two I, i'm not against it honestly but is there anything beyond that though because i feel like it's an expensive weapon you can't just willy-nilly be like yeah let's get two ops we're gonna win yeah surely they gotta have a better game plan so i think koi relies on their attack and liquid needs to understand this and they need to disrupt it so whether it's with an op whether it's shifting the op around or, or giving it to different players. Like, imagine they send a, uh, Koi sends a drone out and sees a jet on B. And then they're like, oh, the op's B. And then they decide to run back to A, but actually someone else has the op on A. Like, that could be a really good play from them. I don't know if we're going to see much different from the first series, though. I feel like they're going to do pretty much the same thing. But the, the problem is, Kiko had so many early kills on the first series, especially on the defense, that, like, if... If Liquid tries to play the same way, are they going to be able to repeat that? 
no, other people need to start getting online. And by online, I, I don't mean just like active in the round. They need to start doing things with their brains instead of trying to rely solely on their aim. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Because, you know, Twitch chat and all. Twitch chat and all. <laughs> so right now, what we're seeing is a lot of isolated duels from Liquid. So on their defense, we'll see one player fighting from boiler or inside kitchen or taking a, a, a deep fight at B. They're not really waiting to do any sort of team-based fight. So a team-based fight could be um, a bait setup. So you have one person hiding in a corner, another person will peek out, break a drone, dart, whatever, say like, hey, I'm over here, and then the, the other player in the corner is able to activate and get kills. Well, I do hope they have their brains on uh, for this because it is elimination once again on the line. Let's jump into Icebox with your casters, Pavlos and Ash. Now that first map went to Koi's way, and I think for many, surprise, it's a little bit more competitive than a lot of people would have expected. But now Icebox is the only map that was rematched prior to this series with these two teams. So we've already got some anticipation, some expectations, which Team Liquid were able to win 13 to 10. The question is, can they replicate it? I don't know, because Kiko had a life game on that map, right? He was 37 and 16, and you can't rely on the performance yeah. every single time. And given that it was so close and you don't have that high flying performance, it really could mean Koi has a real chance in this series. A 2-0 chat might have been on a little bit of uh, too much hopium, voting heavily in favor of Team Liquid, but it truly is anyone's game on this elimination matchup in kickoff as the push towards the B site has already taken place. Spike now only making its way towards that area, and Camo is very, very deep into this B site. I mean, we saw this before. Camo loves taking advantage of this space, especially with there only being one angle here towards mid to watch. Uh, Info has been spotted. Okay. But he also spotted out too. And Yampi's right above him. And TP out. Back to safety. It's all about biding that time, right? Because for Team Liquid, they don't know if anyone was pushed up nope. with Camo. Could have been anybody else as well in the cubby, but they've cleared it now, and now they can focus onto the site, take that walk and do a lot, and it's going to interrupt from anybody doing any damage to the person defusing. Mystic still on it, but nobody in yellow to stop him. He still stuck it, and that's going to be Kiko to hold down the line. All was required is to hold that stick on the deep dues, and that's the round for Team Liquid, with no one from the team still alive. I love the creativity with that wall from Mystic, the perfect angle to get that defuse down, and sure, there were gaps in it, but not big enough for Koi to even push back through either, really leaving them to funnel over towards yellow where the rest of Team Liquid had their eyes and weapons set and drawn in that area. You can see how nicely oh done that was. If, it, if he had a fraction of a second, Starkso or even, I don't know, anyone could have dealt with him there. I think it was Starkso and Shadow, both with the opportunity to do so. Just half a second, maybe less. Unfortunately, you can't turn back the clock. Nope. Just the fear of even trying to push up to through that angle too. Like they did manage to fit in at the end, but man, it's a, it's a narrow fight that you don't want to be taking as we head into the next round. You have camo on the outlaw is what it looks like here. Oh no, that's just yeah. a marshal. No, no, it is no, a outlaw. Okay, both, I see the yeah, double barrel the there. Kiko has one as well. They're chilling. My eyes are bad, man. That's all right. It's okay to be old. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, let's. Definitely let's not the oldest one I'm, on the I'm, broadcast. I, yeah, I'm definitely done. Never going to be casting with Ash again. But for now, Koi, they've settled into this A site push. Uh, Kiko holding Ooh. this line of fire will rip Gravino's face to pieces. Camo, that's so sneaky, and that's as low, and that could be a free upgrade. And he's trying to play the time! Oh, he's healed up, but barely Camo gets the kill in time. Team Liquid, though, are on left. top as they've gotten the rest of the kills on this A site. They push simultaneously. Shadow finds a pick onto Yampi, and there's not much left for Koi to do. No, look how far up Mystic is pushed. Especially given yes. that there's this flank in the making. And there you go, 2 0 for Team Liquid. Nice start there. Some good map control for Team Liquid to regroup and find there down into that 3v2. Now weapons out, and you can probably hear the crowd chanting in the back as well here for the Stallions. Lots of fans here within the Riot Games Arena down in Berlin, Germany. But we're still frosty in the server. We're still on Icebox. Oh, yes, that we are. Very frosty indeed. Team Liquid warm, though, on their hands as they found themselves two rounds. Koi, on the other hand, have to play catch-up, and this is a round to do it. 
might look to aggress early towards this A site. Fake TP, which does alert, uh, alert this, the uh, bells here for Team Liquid. One Enzo shot. dropping back from it. No, leaning over towards this A site here. Quiet creep up from three members of Koi. You've got a three stack on the side of Team Liquid as well. That mid control is entirely in the hands of Yandere. Oh, it's a dry peak and it's a slow one, which allows Yandere to get a double oh. kill. This is not what Koi wanted at all. And Team Liquid have dismantled this attack. Gravino has to play catch up here. The war just delaying them even further. Rotations could potentially come in, but there's one minute to spare, so you can't really afford to rotate over, given that Koi could also do the same. They also want to keep pushing towards A. They don't want to allow Team Liquid to pick up these guns. Crossover. So Mystic! Bad. Clean with it. And Trevino spotted, but not quite picked up. Enzo instead takes a chunk of health off of himself. And Koi double backing. This could potentially be a 3 and 0 star for left. Team Liquid. And every second ticking makes it more and more likely. I mean, Kiko just finds so much value with this angle down towards mid. Just cutting off the rotation in full Team Liquid. Know that Koi are stuck over towards A main at this point. And I wouldn't be surprised if Team Liquid went for the chase as well. You've got Yampi on a Sheriff, you've got Kiko on an Outlaw, left. Mystic and Nats both having uh, lesser than optimal weapons to carry over to the next round. Well, Mystic has found himself a Vandal for the upgrade, but the chase will come in and Koi will try and interrupted, but no, no one's gone in for the chase. Now they will, and Starkser will keep himself alive, and barely does so indeed. So rifles, a couple of them carried over for Koi. A couple of them carried over, but a lot left to be desired here. Because they're looking over towards the side of Koi as well. And in these kits, there's no opportunity within your duelist to get some sort of eco ultimate up no. to cycle in, which is, I think, the tough part here. A uh, big trade-off when you have like a, a raise or a jet on your side, like you do in Kiko on the side of Team Liquid. Right there. That TP this time was heard. This time not a fake. So, still Team Liquid wary of that position. As Koi looks to push through mid. Kitchen is covered. Koi a little bit more angsty with their movement right now. Of course, it's a bit of a push and pull. Try and draw Team Liquid out. They out kill your utility. Push in mid, Stark, so unsuccessful with a pick, so it has to drop back. I mean, with rifles available, you gotta see Starks and Grabinho find kills here, otherwise it's all done and lost. Oh. And that's exactly what happens. Starks will lose the gun, and that's even an upgrade for Yampi. He'll be happy to take that. Normally you want numbers with those hero rifles as well, so someone can at least pick it up when you do go down. All hope lies on Grabinho right now as he's close to this fight together with Camo. Takes a ton of health off from that shock dart. Shadow somehow survives. Takes a lot of damage for it. Yeah, this this round is pretty much done. And Escoy are able to find some sheriff kills, especially given that Yampi is on this back line and nobody's checking him. Spray onto the first. Shadow's got to turn around, but he won't be able to do so in time. Yampi wants more kills, wants better statistics at the end of this game. It's Enzo with a double to close it all off. No survivors for Koi as Team Liquid grab another round and a four-round lead. Hey, still was talking about the momentum that would have been on the side of Koi after yeah. that first map, and Team Liquid just shoving that right in their face. They've literally come off of that break with angry, you know, they're frustrated. How on earth could they let that map leave them? And this is Enzo putting a lot of uh, emphasis on the morale of this team. Definitely needed. There were a lot of shaking faces by the end of Sunset. So this is exactly the right attitude entering the second map. Aggressive looks that Steel was talking about as well for Team Liquid, not even allowing Koi to really get that hot start on their executions. And now Ending Kiko ahead. cycling up into that operator, watching the long angle this time around towards B. The team Koi leaning over towards this A site, so comfortable. You've got Nats in an incredible lurk position. And then the backup of that barrier behind him, they'll know if they, ro they ro rotate over. Well, this A-side push, Team Liquid are notified of it. Enzo does call the rest of the team over. And that's exactly what they will do. One left behind, Grabinho on the bottom side of the map, catches off Nat. Massive grab of the Lurk, and numbers advantage for Koi. Okay, but the lockdown's coming in now. And Yampi's able to find the first oh. pick, but the fact that Camo has enough of ground 
to his advantage, brings his team right back on top, but not for long. Hunter should be used. No one the spike, but he needs to find a tag. Le careful of the left hand side. He's brought out Kiko, able to readjust. Shadow shuts down his former teammate, and now there's two left. Quick on the trigger. Shados comes in as well. Koi get themselves on the board. Bait there for Shadow as well to throw out that Hunter's Fury. Sure, looking to maybe try and tag one, but the realistic part of that was to try and bait Team Liquid into pushing forward. And that's what you need. You need your leader lead from the front. You can see so much has been done to get them back in. And then from everything we've seen so far, Koi, all they need is an inch to find themselves a streak of rounds. Okay, Team Liquid still have the advantage though right now. What do we have to work with? Enzo's got the Odin on Placing swamp grenade. this time around. You still have an op in hand here for Kiko as well. Light shield alongside it. Soul holder of the A site. First time he's shifted over from mid and B. I mean, for Kiko, it's a waiting game. It's just a matter of time if someone comes to his proximity. And it looks like that might end up being the case. I mean, there's so much early map control here for Team Liquid, right? Again, early Sage Wall that goes out towards B main, uncontested. Then you've got Yampi, a full hold towards this mid side uh, with his utility there on the Killjoy, and Kiko just looking so deep over towards the belt. They're so aware, too, I trying to walk the close the angle. For sure. Hunter's Fury used that from Enzo. Eager to find I a pick, and he does. Shadow no more. Sova v Sova comes out on top for Team Liquid. Kiko has been blocked off and can't do a thing with the Operator. So Koi do get sight control. So still, it's Team Liquid under pressure, even though they've got the numbers. They're going to be pushing forwards. Grabinho in this cove, together with a spike plant. Nat is the one to get a pick, though. But Grabinho comes alive on top. Three to his name, but now he needs to get the spike down and Mystic is there to interrupt it all himself. Readjustment for Shados trades, and it's down to Kiko. The prodigy on the task again. Shados on the spike pump, but cuts it all off to cut Kiko's head. And Koi double it all up. It got scrappy, it got dirty there towards the A site, but Koi survived in that kind of environment. And Grabinho was the one to completely turn the fight around here for the team. But because of how close that was, again, tough buy here for both sides. Sure, everything in full for the most part. Sacrificing maybe a little bit. And that utility. energy from Koi is just yeah. contagious. Barbara, how many times are you going to fall off your seat, mate? Can we get a Barbara chair counter? <laughs> <laughs> we have to. Fake teleport. I'm going to keep track of how many times it happens over the season. But. Okay, Kiko's just walking straight up. He's by himself. He's like, okay. You know what? They haven't really contested mid that much. Uh, sure. He just close up the gap. He can find some damage with a right-click classic, but Camo not giving him an inch. Nope. Here. And Would have maybe perfect. expected him to maybe work towards an orb instead, but I mean, Koi tends to be more focused area. on the extremities anyways, so. And the best case scenario for Ko here is winning this round without using those ultimates. They know they're up against a weaker buy. But, you know, if it means that they guarantee a round, I do see them using them. I'll have to see what happens. Oh, Koki crumples. Yampi at the very least. Uh, on hand. Tricky position here for a Killjoy. Flashed out as well. Yeah. Uh, and discovered with that recon ping. But quite not actually going to go and press it. No. Got Shados lurking over towards this A site. The thing is, Team Liquid, Enzo, and Mystic have yet to move an inch. No, they haven't, and the Outlaw can do so much from this distance, and now all of a sudden, Team Liquid might be finding themselves a victory in this round that it just shouldn't be 25 seconds, but Mystic loses himself within the madness of the war, and Yampi's closed up the distance with the Outlaw. He's going to use it like a shotgun. Mate, we know it's double barrel, but it's not meant for this moment. He doesn't care, though. He gets out of the lockdown, Nats, together with Yampi, tasked with the 2v2 retake. Got a retake wall to work with here, too. Spike they know planted. one's on site, only just planting the spike, so they know Stark Zone is right beneath us, but he's able to reposition, and Shados is there to help out. Nat has only got a ghost, but it's all ghost work of su Supreme prior to this match, but it won't be coming in this particular round. Stark Zone, three kills to his name, comes alive and puts Koi on three rounds themselves. This post plant's looking so comfortable. 
chaining these rounds together here on the side of Koi. Don't Team Liquid started off 4-0. Koi won away from equalizing. The thing is, I don't think this round should have gotten so out of hand for Koi. This got way I'm too close for comfort. Oh, yeah. And, and you can see that the heart rate yes, is off the right. roof here <laughs> for the coaches of uh, Koi. <laughs> this can't be healthy. I don't know. It absolutely can be. But I mean, uh, all the players, I feel like, do rave about the outlaw and how strong it can be in the right scenarios. Kiko, this angle, tricky, but nobody home. Not so much information found at the very least. Sneaky, sneaky. That Who's bad. next? There's another guy that's going sneaky, sneaky. That's Camo. Oh, sure. Gives himself a way of backing, ba uh, backing off. Scoping out the lay of the land here over towards the B site. Nobody Back home. Back. A lot of information allows the team to just move in. Welcome to my Odin doing a lot, but there's also presence in mid that they need to look out for. Viper's pit, perfect for Koi, but they haven't quite gotten the spike down. And Team Liquid looking to contest. They're all nearby, apart from Kiko, and they're looking away from. But with an operator in a Viper's pit, definitely not the right weapon for it. Look Chips at Shadow. In the night. Oh my God, Shadow is being Enzo so sneaky down. right now. Is able to find one, but Enzo not able to find the reply just in time. Enzo's oh. the Viper's pit, but it's going to be traded all out. Three versus three. Team Liquid though one under pressure in time. Now so here to save the day. Down. The spike wasn't even planted, so it means it's all under control for Team Liquid unless Koi finds a miracle. Grabinho backs off. Tries to get the lay of the land. Left. Figure out where everybody's hiding out, but Kiko has got a waiting game. He's got the operator, and this long distance favors him. Gravinho needs magic, but he cannot find it. Instead, it's Nax to find himself on the board for three times this round. And Team Liquid back into winning ways. Okay, back in the driver's seat here for Team Liquid. Shutting down the momentum that Koi were looking to build. Man, this got so tricky. I mean, sure, the Viper's Pit goes down, but just not being able to secure the plant just due to the util dump alone on the side of Team Liquid. It was so rough. And so Team Liquid, Kill them. they were comfortable in all that moment. I, it felt like, at least, especially with Shadow on the flank and the Viper's Pit. I thought, I thought that was all over for Team Liquid, but Nats just did Nats things. He just popped off. <gasps> Look here for this round, though. We're all up. Just a 3 1 1 split. Got the lurk on the other side of the map here from Shados. Mystic's got an angle covered. He knows there's always a gap here he can work with, but. Yeah, he saw Stark's a crossover, too. He just looks to fully back up. Not looking to get Swarm, play the numbers to the advantage with that weaponry. And Kiko's just running over with the op. That's Toxic Screen just about to drop. This is not the best case scenario here for Koi. If they get the plant, at least they've got Starkso's ultimate together with the Shadows as well to try and rain them onto Team Liquid. Just waiting for that Toxic Screen to cycle back up here for Rubinho. And it'll definitely shut Kiko's sight line from this one. At least here. they've got Mystic nearby and he can do all the delaying possible 40 seconds and they need to move in quickly before this toxic screen wears off but they're looking to push even further. Kiko might be in trouble. Camo finding an outlaw short onto him, keeping the team alive in this round. It's still a four versus four. Mystic needs to back off. Weird angle on the wall, gets spotted and uh, forced to drop back himself. Still, Koi. They need to get the spike plant, but they're not going for the B site take. They're going all the way around to this A site, given that Shados has cleared out it out himself. Stex was still doing damage in mid, and there's also the lurk from Yampi trying to yeah, hold it all off, and he's successful in doing so. It's going to be a two versus three here. And secured here for Koi as well. Spike. Look at the timing right now. You've got Yampi wrapping back around. The two players on Koi towards A just have to live. And I don't think they would expect him to be here this quickly. Krabinho not looking in the right direction. He will now its peak. Just spotted him. 40 points of health remaining on him. Shados on the flank. One Missed it. Cannot remaining. pass even with a ghost on the defuse though. He's not faking it. You've got to peek it here, Krabinho. And that's exactly what he does. A thrifty round from Koi. Keeping Team Liquid at arm's reach. Great timing from Shados. And we saw this last time Team Liquid and Koi played up against each other. Starkso was the one on that harbor pick to run a lot of those fakes, be that distractor, especially when that reckoning was up and draw all the attention of Team Liquid over. Did he say he almost farted?
I feel like that's, that's what he said. But that's no, that's not the place for it right now. I feel I feel for bad for Barber if that would be the case. And there'd be quite a smelly situation. But the smelly situation on the server currently is for Team Liquid, right? They were meant to win the previous round. They were meant to build up the streak. But they didn't. I mean... It's a mental game, isn't it? It really is. I mean, it's tense, right? We're into the second map. It's the decider. The team that gets eliminated, they go home. They don't have an opportunity to play until after Masters Madrid. It's a couple months from now. Until yep. the next time we'd see them. Until stage one. But even the team that wins, they still have to go through that gauntlet of play-ins tomorrow. Not easy. Not an easy journey. Well, only one of the teams that we, we already saw two qualify into play-ins and only one of them will make it to playoffs. But the fact that they get the opportunity to play in these situations goes to show that they, you know, there's a way for them to back, bounce back in this format of kickoff, right? There's a way for you that you've got to, you've shown you've got potential. It's just learning from your mistakes in a quick time period, bouncing back from them and seeing if you can compete to uh, make your statement on an international level mm -hmm. for Masters Madrid. Tough opponents waiting on the other side as well with Team Vitality and Carmine Corp being the ones to qualify earlier today. Very true. Not an easy task. No one said it was. Now, but they got to focus here on this match first. Blades for Kiko. Walked all the way up, but look how patient Koi are. And realistically, it's the Blades or Yampi's Vandal that will do most of the damage for Team Liquid here. And it's basically what they rely on to not have just a thrifty loss. Kiko's position, they have no idea, and walked past him too. Oh, wait a minute. Does he double back? There's no way they check behind. Mystic gives the call that they've crossed over. He's going to go all the way around, and that's the first pick. That's a weapon to be collected in case he runs out of place. Another shot found, and Camo and Stoxo drop to the ground, and Kiko takes this round all to himself. Using the toxic screen to his own favor from the enemy side of Koi. What's another bite? Give him the full ace, because this guy deserves it. Five points of health, and he wants five kills, and he gets it! Kiko, a masterclass on the jet, makes his mark on VCT MEA. Icebox has been his playground. The young blood coming in here for Team Le Liquid. The entire reason they won on Icebox the first time around, and he's pulling out all the stops. And a timeout for a timeout. Koi to trade theirs in this time around. Ah, wondering where did it all go wrong? But the thing is, Koi, they were just outplayed, outpositioned there. They didn't necessarily do anything wrong other than not getting those trades in that one piece. Indeed, indeed. And it's again the the old tried story for Team Liquid, especially this story, this uh, tournament where they've relied on high flying performances and Kiko coming in again, getting more confidence with Blaze, with the operator now, you know, coming into play. There's a lot more for them, a lot more that can help them facilitate a map victory. But Koi like to keep things close. Like we said, they get an inch, they'll take it a mile. Mm -hmm. And that's what Team Liquid need to be careful of. You get, yes, you get a round win, but you can't let this get away from you. You definitely can't. I think what is interesting though, I guess knowing that Team Liquid, they've played against them before, but it did work. Last time they would continue to pressure just using Starkso's abilities on that harbor over towards that B site, kind of cycling the pressure up with those cascades, denying that information right off the gate, and, and pressuring the fact that maybe someone had lurked up. We haven't actually seen that same sort of conditioning coming out from the side of Koi. And sure, it could be the question of maybe they expect Team Liquid to have done their homework and maybe. for it not to be as ex oh. Kiko with the Operator. First blood, camo no more. That's, all, that's all she wrote, that's it. Kiko, um, I think he's got more things to write for this round, at least. Ah. Spotted, drop backed, updraft, also spotted. So Stark, so looking at this upper angle, who found his, who first though? That's the question. Killjoy's over towards mid though as well. Might face off soon. Waiting for a bit of that information. Again, cutting that noise here. You see, pulled back here, Nats over towards A. Could definitely be uh, Killjoy head to head, but with uh, Yampi dropping back to this A site, could have given Shados a clear way of infiltrating. 
passive plays. I mean, Enzo is just Join looking to play off of that Hunter's Fury based off the tap. Nowhere to run! Kiko having to balance multiple angles here. Hunter's Fury not quite finding anyone, but it's Gravinho instead to mark off Kiko. And he keeps on giving. And suddenly Team Liquid, after having an advantage, is back to falling ways. Nats tries to square things up, but Shadow's not going to let it happen. With 25 seconds to spare, Koi is on the site to plant. And with the Hunter's Fury enabled, they realize they've got a few more seconds to spare. No hurry here. Nats for the clutch. Spike planted. And with the playing against three players, of Koi is not going to be an easy one. Down to 70 points of health. He's got the Viper's Pit, but I don't think he's going to want to use it. This is a difficult one. Koi moving all of their players into one corner. Okay. Viper's Pit could make all the difference here because they're all just staring down that angle right now. But it's just simple. They'll just move in together. And that's not even capable of finding one out of the three. So Koi close up the gap even the further with one round to spare at this half. Great adjustment. Again, that utility usage coming out from the harbor, the cascade just allow you to scale up. And even if you don't opt to take those angles, take the positioning there, just denying that information over towards Team Liquid and just so much patience. Yeah, Enzo had even thrown you out. You see it coming. You see it coming. <laughs> Track them down. Oh, Barbara. All laughs, all giggles over there in the coach's booth. We love it. We absolutely love it. Team Liquid, though, on the other hand, after their own timeout, they didn't quite get their round win. That's what they were hoping for, and they didn't quite deliver. Kiko switches up his angle with the off crater. That's an interesting one. I mean, you can be quick to get out, and you have the ability to find those trades there. You can see the other two players watching towards Bell. Aldrin is going to figure out this position, though. So Kiko forced to back off, having to expend the dash away. But good clearance coming out from Koi to deny that map control, deny that space. But putting a little bit more of a threat over towards that A site. Now you see the swap being made here. Kiko leaning over towards B. As Kitchen watching over into two, maybe into the window as well. But Aldron doesn't see anything here. So a signal for Enzo to fall off. But this is, again, similar to what we saw on the B site. They wait out for that clear utility on the side of Team Liquid before moving back in. Yeah, but Koi, this is this could be perfect for them. Initiated. Because they fake towards the B site, is baiting Team Liquid to stick to that area, while and the A site is exactly where they're going. And left. it's always Stark, so every time. And it's worked. But the fact that Kiko gets a pick in mid will be able to stop Starkso from rotating over. Enzo still at the back of the fight. Is going to be a menace, but Shadows able to stop Mystic from helping. Is going to put Enzo in a 1v3 situation run. before his team arrives. So how patient can you play it? How are you going to decide what you do here? Do you interrupt the spike left. from being planted? This might be the call. So far, he's done so. But with the lockdown enabled, Koi spike can get planted. the spike down, no problem. And Yambi bought the fake over towards yeah. B. That lockdown for yeah. the defenders was used earlier. They don't have it as an entry back in. Dimensional Drift giving the call that Yampi is really close to this fight, so Shadow is able to re-swing it, but Yampi is quicker to the fight! Camo exiting the Dimensional Drift now, putting Kiko in this 1v2. Upper angle covered, but he's got too many positions to think of. He's got no idea where everybody's hiding. They could be far, they could be close, they could be wide, they could be low! And Koi square things up in the final moment of this half. 6-6, six to six. this game could go anywhere. Snowman's land out here. Every opportunity for both teams, and it all relies on the second pistol replays from this last round. And man, the, the distraction game, the big brain this and the calling coming up from Shadow Stark. So just being that instigator on B so yeah. constantly. Because when you do see that harbor, sure, you've got the toxic screen always coming down there from Grubinho over towards that B site, defaulting it. Typical, doing the conditioning, but it's when you see Starks' utility that you're like, okay, the rest of the team should be with him. That's where we'd be looking towards, because you normally would expect if it was a fake, Rubinho would be the one trying to pop his util. But entering the second half here, Team Liquid on attack, not quite able on the defense to pull off their game plan, but on attack, maybe they can be a bit more preemptive with it and force the pace out themselves. The thing is, Koi, they use Starkso's utility just so much more aggressively on that harbor. Fully walked out down mid now. Koi have such a read. 
There's only a bot watching this back line, so it will read it, but can you expect three players to be holding it out? One defending the site is Shados, but now he's got reinforcements and the lacks of Shadow. Wall coming through, but a Shadow to find a pick, so the plant won't come through straight away. Mystic getting on it, but three players on the flank are going to cause a world of trouble unless Nats interrupts them. That's the first, but he's got two more to deal with, and I don't think he knows. Mystic is turning behind to help. But it gives so much more space for Koi on site itself. Grubinho having to reposition. He's being nestled out of a stock, so use that time to move in himself. It's a balancing of positions that Koi want to crunch on them. They've been able to do so successfully though so far, but they're lacking in numbers here, Team Liquid. And Enzo's pick here was the, oh, the absolute oh, vitality. Still, it's Grubinho all to himself, and he's able to clean it up against his opposing Viper. All he has to do is defuse, and he's got ample time to do it. What a pinch coming in from Koi. Smiles on the camera here as well. Props to the entire team. And the pistol was so important when you're tied up to find that initial advantage. Oh, disgusting flick from Shadow. Yeah. That is unreal. Pretty quick player step. One so well wow. done. I mean, and then you also have, I love the fact that you're pushing out Towards mid short, it is a gamble to expect that A push out from Team Liquid. <laughs> we, got the, we got the close cam kissing uh, his, uh, <laughs> his teammates' hand. But but ultimately, it, the fact that there is also Shados just lying in wait with his KJ yeah. utility, just buying all that time now, heading into the next. Different look. For sure. Double stack up here to his left hand side for the attack. It's Stark so Might be facing it. He's got a sheriff. And it, no, he's got a judge. What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, they've got both angles covered, so that distance being closed means a lot. But this mid push from Team Liquid is what is going to take up Koi's time for a little bit. Starkso is even eager to go for a pick. Shader somehow lost a big chunk of his health. Okay, just a little bit more patience here, Starkso. He's itching. He really is. Oh, and it could be brilliant! Two Spike kills for nothing, down, and he gets away with it. Scott's free. I have the spike. Uh, that is crazy. Hey, I think it was a little combo with the uh, the shock dart that went out. Grabinho's going for a whole wrap around here, though, and I don't think they're waiting Timing. for it. No, they are, because who's wrapping around oh, who? The wall. Enzo's right behind him. Oh, he's got no idea, though. Oh, Bring out the knife, mate. I know you want to. Make sure he can get another kill out of it, but Spike ends up down, not doing B. so. He knows Nats is nearby, but he's just brought Team Liquid in some sort of contention. Oh, well, Koi, an even left. greater spot. They don't know where Yampi is right now. And that's Nats pulling the trigger so fast to turn around. Is this doable? 20 seconds, they might have sight control, but Shadow's nearby. Recon not there yet, but he's got a couple of shotguns that could deny the default spike planting positions. 12 seconds, close to Yampi's feet, and Shadows with the upper ground. Yampi with a double has put things all in contention. Five seconds, the spike can be interrupted as Camo is right behind. Koi continue with their streak. Team Liquid make it extremely expensive, though, here for Koi. And I just can't believe that recovery back towards B main as well. Difficult. Grabinho was left on an island. And just the fact that they had no idea where Yampi was just kept the rest of the team from going to help him out. And the big reason why Team Liquid were able to keep it close is because of Nats. It's like shots because of this. He turned 180 degrees and recovered in time. Yampi as well, double on the Sheriff. For the old players from Team Liquid doing a splendid job to keep them in contention, but not quite the round for them. But it does mean that Koi have a weak bonus round now. Nice wall to go and slow down this push. Five players here from Team Liquid present towards B main. He goes so close to the action here. <laughs> There's no stock, so it was right on the other side of the Toxic screen, but he does back here. off in time. And Koi back off completely. <laughs> it's like they want none of it. It's like they already know that this round is, is it. There's no pick to be had. There's a gamble, maybe, in case an A-site hit does come through, but they're just not willing to give away orbs to Team Liquid. No, not at this point. Just trying to play numbers. Starkso, back into the smoke now. He hears the orb tap. How much realistically can you do here? Maybe get one, maybe. but then you're done and dusted. I mean, what Grabinho did in, on the Ghost on the previous map was disgusting and hardly replicable. It's unlikely. He's just trying to live by that time right now. Yeah, just trying to live. Koi going for a massive flank, but it's read by Yampi. Oh, and shot down by Ghost himself. Starkso showing his presence by stabbing at the wall. 
Anyway. And the outlaw from Camo has done yeah. damage. Wait a minute, this might be doable for them, especially if they're closing in, but he hasn't been able to reload because he spent the time taking that flash out. But Koi, their rap is taking a long time through mid, and Team Liquid still Entered. should be able to close this out, given that they've got rifles galore. Shadow's got an upgrade. Did Grabina spotted here too? One snake bite down for the count. Shados was hoping they were playing out in Snowman, at least deep in that position where he could have gotten a kill, but unlucky with the timing. All three players back towards Snowman here, and a recon available for Enzo. Last player standing. And with Shados dropping, the only one with a gun, there's nothing you can do. Eager to pick it up here, Grabino will be greeted by Led to the heart. And Team Liquid get, get guns, and they get around. Good here. Again, the back and forth, right? You expect Team Liquid to win that one out now. 30 seconds left. Yeah. Seen the save coming in here. Koi, you got the fact that Operator now up for Camo. How aggressive does he get with it, though, right now? Set up. Okay, he's got one of those TPs to head all the way back over towards B if he needs to make a quick rotation. Going to go aggressive with this off. Very aggressive, actually. But that's not the position that's being covered from Team Liquid right now. Instead, it's the upper ground level and taking a few more seconds to push towards the left-hand side entry of A. But Camo by that time, he positions. Now, the operator has been integral for Team Liquid on defense. Koi, not so much. I get to see Camo holding that big gun. Fell back, though. Spotted out probably two, I think, would be the guess coming out from Shadow. Here. Just based on what was shot out Starting and... Through. What he was able to see. Plan B for Camo. Enabled. Grabinho still saying, nobody here, guys. Stick to your positions. The threat is imminent. Close to this action. All Team Liquid players grouped up together. It's going to be a five-man collapse, and Camo no time oh. to get out of it. Stark, so instead to find the trade onto Enzo, and he will be trying to close up the gap even more, and he's able to get them all! Triple kill for Stark, so Shadow enters the fight with an Odin. He's being incredible with it! Bullets all over the Team Liquid players, and the round goes to Koi. Stark shows utility, an unsung hero within this matchup as well. Those reckonings have been absolutely deadly for Team Liquid. And it would just buy so much time. A timeout to be called this time around. Both of these teams have been really good calling out these timeouts as soon as things get out of hand. As soon as they feel that things should be going their way and there's some sort of misinterpretation of the opposing play, they get on the case straight out of the bat. These coaches are on it. They can't afford a team to gain unnecessary leads, unnecessary streaks. And Koi right now is not, has been able to shut down Team Liquid's buy opportunity. Economical reset. And they cannot let them run too far away. You can't blame Emil bringing out this timeout. No. Looks like going to be a force here on side of Team Liquid from the buys that we can see on our screens. No, you guys don't get the chance to see that right now. But there is that Viper's Pit available here for Nat. So that opportunity to try and cut off likely A site if I mean, you could tro choose towards B main, but I think A is typically the more standard yeah. one if you're going to use that early Viper's Pit and run it with that Spectre in pocket. But again, it all depends on if Team Liquid are even able to find it that really site does. in the first place. It really does. Team Liquid scratching their heads here. Not too far away. Seven to nine, not difficult. But they're trailing behind not only in rounds, but in the map score as well. They're on the back foot. Koi win this map, it's game over. Out of kickoff. And what's big here is we saw that speed up in pacing coming up from Team Liquid in the last round. I want to see that again because they were able to punish Camo on the angle before he could TP out that time. They've got to replicate it. Well, forcing into this round. Only a couple of pistols for Team Liquid, but hoping they can secure it nevertheless. It's a, it's a gamble. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's a big gamble. If it doesn't work, they'll be in a world of hurt. They might be confident in this one. It's a game of chicken right now. It really is. Patience across the board. Awesome. This looks a lot more like the, you know, the coin team liquid that we saw before. Oh, big time. But this time Camo has got an operator and is looking at yeah. the right direction. Team liquid move in here. There's a big chance they'll be trading out kills in Corey's favor. I'll join finding out Grabinho, but doesn't give a chance for Camo's position to be telegraphed. Do they know he's kept onto yeah. the operator? They should. The walk up towards the left side though is huge. 
but Camo needs to figure out whether he switches his position or hopes that Grabinho can hold his ground. TP out, that allows Grabinho to delay the push with snake bites as he drops back and calls for reinforcements. Let's have our angle here for Kiko as well. We're not seeing the same explosive left. entries from him now on the attack. And we're talking about 30 seconds in the making, and Camo's already gotten a pick. That's really important. Enzo not able to put the Hunter's really good oh. use of the Stiller player in yellow. That's wrapping all the way around. Look at Grabinho. He hasn't been spotted. Mystic doubles up. But he's jumping on top of the box. That is immaculate. Bringing one to life, but they need to get the spike down. Two versus three is Mystic. His turn. The tide's completely in their favor. Right now, you've got a Cascade and Cove to work with. Right and Shadow might be able to find a gap across this smoke as soon as it falls. Shadow not able to treat it or trade it. Inwards, Mystic down in a 1v2. Oh, it's so tough. He's walled off as well. He's going to have to go all the way around from yellow, break the wall, and that's going to buy so much time from Team Liquid here. I'm just going to save the operator. He has to. Every that's round got to be so the close. round for Team Liquid. Getting themselves an extra one. Leashing up onto Koi, pulling in their direction, not letting them go. And again, changing that tempo, trying to catch out Camo on that. Sure, again, we haven't seen the same sort of explosivity that we saw from Kiko as we did the first time that Team Liquid and Koi faced off. But they didn't need it. Mystic going vertical there with the wall. The full battle stage left. situation to completely flip that when we saw Shadow get two with the Hunter's Fury. Mystic has popped off in so many occasions today, but this one takes the cake. Uses his own wall to find a couple of kills and jumping over yellow as well. Uh, it's been insane. Emil can be proud of that one and happy for the Mystic pickup. Old Fnatic boy back in the VCT where he should belong. And Team Liquid now off the back of the previous round success. They're actually playing a little bit more aggressive into mid. jampy has gone up quite far forward and he's being greeted by a couple of players of Koi as well. Shadow showing himself, but he's got the likes of Shados to assist him. That's as well in the proximity to help out Yampi. It's an off angle. I don't think they'll expect that. The Aldron might not even man. check it. I think it has. And Nats will be in trouble. Shados trades it out, but in the meantime, it buys time for Team Liquid to push across this A site. And Kiko's done so much. It's a two versus three favoring the Blue Stallions. And Grabinho and Camo trailing behind. I mean, that's exactly what Team Liquid wanted right now. Two taking the upper angle, but the big thing was just to gain that space here on A. Camo looking to find information for his team, but it does leave Grabinho oh. exposed to the elements. And then Mystic is a hell of an element. One versus three, and Camo, he hasn't found many clutches this tournament so far. Two flashes. Is it enough for him? No, it's not, because Mystic is lurking in the shadows, and he finds the opportune moment to peek. It's always above you. Nine to nine now as we tie things up here once again. Now, Koi on the back foot. Don't have the money to buy into this round. Meanwhile, for Team Liquid, starting cycle up into quite a few of these ultimates. Again, you still have Nats with that Viper's Pit. That was disgusting. It's insane what, what Kika was able to do on that A site. The distraction from mid, the push from A, all of it together just put so much pressure onto Koi. <laughs> Emil was just waiting. What's going to happen? Are they going to close it out? Two fists up, ready to fight. He doesn't want to be too early to the celebration. I respect that. Fair enough. Can't get too ahead of ourselves. It's time out to be called now here from the side of Koi. And where are things going wrong? Yeah, that's the big question here. Uh, it, fe it feels like Team Liquid have been overwhelming them left, right, and center. Koi, it's, it's been a few rounds. Even the round that they did want, it did come close. Uh, they need to find something their way, whether that is some sort of an aggression play. They just need to stop losing players early. I think that's the fact of the matter. But for now, it seems that's like going to be a difficult endeavor for them. A real difficult one, considering how far behind they are economically. It would be nice to see Koi playing a little bit more forward. I think Team Liquid have found the advantage as far as just, you know, Yampi and Nats being on those lurk positions, drawing yeah. so much of the attention of Koi away from those sites. And then that's the green light for the rest of Team Liquid of course, to move on in and then help with those crunches. Let's see if this timeout prompted a change of pace. Stark so close by with a judge. Aldro spotting him, but he oh. goes aggressive. Oh. Kiko's got it all locked and covered. Stark so not going to be finding any kills this one. Fake no TP Going out. Through. It's going to send that away now. 
but again, you've only got a sheriff in hand. So patient. Yeah. Clearing out every angle. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Camo doesn't have much to his exposal. Apart from his teammate Grabinho to the back, and he's only got a classic shot dart towards Camo's feet. And he could just back out. Although, what Koi do have going for them is a lot of player nearby. And Shadow's able to close up the gap with the Stingers, but not good enough. Team Liquid clean up the house. Andalucía flawless and double digits. Crowd chanting in the back here for Team Liquid as they find the momentum into the second half. Three rounds chained together here for the Stallions. And no need to use any of these ultimates quite yet either. Oh, now? yeah, they built up a lengthy oh, arsenal they got of all, ultimates. They got bank to <laughs> fall back on right now. And meanwhile, for Koi, you've only got the lockdown to try and contest. It feels like Team Liquid have got Koi red at this point. They, they expected someone to push through there. Kiko, there and waiting. Didn't hesitate a second to pull that trigger. Okay, Russian again, though. Ah, burning alive! I really like... I know that... Koi haven't been too aggressive for the orbs in particular, but you throw down that snake bite and it makes you just so vulnerable when you're trying to back off towards sight when you do play that aggressive angle. But this gamble stack here. It has to be a gamble stack. There is no other way. They need to win the fights in, in terms of gun trades. Because if they leave too many Team Liquid players alive, the post point will be nigh impossible with the ultimates they have available. Starting to fall off now, cycling these smokes back up. Knowing that there's a lockdown waiting on the other side. You should run. And Koi, with the placement that they have, the treatment is the same. They do drop back, but Shados has got a lockdown available of his own. Yeah, but look at this mid positioning. They're waiting for the pinch to come in. It's just a matter of timing, but the lockdown for now will keep them at bay. Yampi aggresses forwards, but they, so that means the mid push will come in a little bit quicker than they would have expected. Stark, so on the good shot here from Koi, but Kiko on the flank will not miss. Snake bites on the spike. No one can defuse. Grabinho bringing his team back, but is it enough? They need to find more, and within this Viper's pit, it is Mystic's domain. Oh, Camo and Grabinho have actually turned it all around, but Mystic has done so much for Team Liquid. All he has to do is do it again. One shot, not bound. It's Camo to find Mystic's head. And with plenty of time to defuse, Koi square things up for yet another time. They stop the bleeding. That play was so good coming out from Team Liquid, though. The two there, there towards mid, knowing that there was going to be another lockdown in response. And they weren't going to let Koi take that space. But Grubinho doing so much with that late rotation from the B side, being to ca able to catch out Enzo, just changes the game in there. Ken, now. <laughs> oh, dear. That snuck in. Uh, but still, it's uh, double digits across the board, and you can tell how enthusiastic Koi are with that one. They needed it. And we saw, we talked about how hard it was for them to win that round, given how many ultimates Team Liquid had. Facing Swarm Grenade. Absolutely. Two of them expended. And then he only needed the one lockdown here from Shade Osman. Into the next round, a face off here with the Operator. Stark's always nearby. It's his cheeky anger to hold. He hasn't been here on a buy. No, he hasn't. Is it checked? Enzo is not going to check it, is he? I mean, with an off Oh, here, he expect. is! Oh. And it's an upper angle, so Starkso wasn't ready for it. Camo has to draw back here, and so does Grabinho. He's in trouble, but doesn't vacate the area soon enough. Mystic, wonderful shot, and Camo sticks around. He's been slowed. They expect someone to be around. The Aldro not clearing it, only now making its way. I think now he's, they ping this position, but he doesn't have a TP to get out of there. It is set over towards orange, but you do see Team Liquid. They decide to back up anyways, Camo. It was yeah. important to keep that space. The rotation now being made. Seeing pings from the defenders as well, though. Knowing that there is danger over towards that A site. They could have walked through with the lack of utility there. Instead, you've just got the nano swarms to delay that plant, but not close enough. Koi aren't going to be able to hear that left. signal. I think the call has already been made here for Koi. I don't think they can afford to go for a fight here. Otherwise, they'll be really far behind. Mm -hmm. So they're going to drop back. They're going to allow the spike plant to take place, the round for Team Liquid, allow them, their opponents to gain the lead, and that's got to hurt in their heart and their gut, giving their opponents the lead after they themselves have just brought the equalizer. But they've it's got so to. testy when the money situation is just that rough to deal with knowing that you need everything to work in your favor, because even worse would be 
to lose all of those guns. Let 100%. Team Liquid head to 11, and then you're fighting out for match point without anything in your pocket. Cast those feelings aside, take an extra breath, use this time towards this end of the round to discuss what you can be doing the next one. For now, their task is to keep themselves alive. Team Liquid on the chase. Uh, it's not that they can afford to go after them too much. They've got another buy in them, yes, if they do lose a weapon, but it's still a long way to go. Team Liquid, the lead, and two rounds away from finding themselves into a third map. Resurrection here for Mystic available. Looking over on the side of Koi, again, there is going to be Viper's Pit here. So you see the judge coming in, now expecting that to come out early. You know what excites me the most here, Ash? The Kiko operator. On attack. Yeah, <laughs> it's scary. If you're Koi right now, you don't want to be faced up against it. No, he'll be so aggressive with it. But the, the Viper's Pit at the very least cuts off the angle right really now. Does. Rubinho has to dodge the Owl Drone, though. Good position. Op revealed over towards that B site as well. Look how quick the rotations are coming in. And you just have Yamp. He's just been sitting at mid this whole time here. He's been chilling. He knows that there's an alarm button nearby and it doesn't want to trigger it. He wants to make sure he's in the silent position as long as possible. At the same time, a lot of extremity control here for Koi because you also have Camel pushed up towards Nest on A. He's just sent out his TP as well. So it's gone out for the lurk. This is all Yampi. Yampi catching off Shados. His patience is rewarded. The Starks is also nearby. He himself is going to try and be an Ennis, but he's let them all cross forwards. The Aldro uh, the alarm bot won't be triggered as Shados has found his demise. And Team Liquid Hell. on the front foot as they enter this B site. Hunter's Fury from Shadow trying to deny any of these players. But this time he's unsuccessful in finding anyone. Finds some chip damage onto, Shadow, onto one of these players, but it's quickly replenished back into life. Kika holding off the mid play. And that's exactly where Koi want to play into. Oh. And he, that's exactly where Kiko falls. The timing there is blind. Oh, Grabinho, that is dirty. And on the three versus three, Koi might have a chance here. Shadow on the off angle. Enzo didn't expect that at all. And Koi, the two players, Shadow and Stark, so playing this one together. Nanoswarm can deny them for a little bit, but it's already diffuse halfway. They might be sticking up a Mystic from behind. They've got no idea. A Mystic saves the day yet again. The star player for Team Liquid today does it one more time. Nail in the coffin now hitting this match point here for Team Liquid looking to take us to the decider in this best of three in group A. Now looking over, or in group B, sorry, but now looking over towards Koi. It's a tough buy. You've got two Guardians alongside the Vandal, and then you've also yep. got the Bulldog. Yampy's, okay, whoa, <laughs> that energy. Love to hear it for Team Liquid. Oh, they've only got so one damn. round left. Him one. and Miniboo got to go on a screaming match. <laughs> <laughs> One round left, and it's potentially split. Two rounds for Koi, potentially overtime. The thing is, Koi, it, they struggle on the defense, right? This is their weak point. It's really the attack, and they didn't find the advantage that they were looking for in the first half. Yeah, they tend to find strength exactly where they can find the most pace, but Camo, that is beautiful. Oh. Finds himself back in on top, and the fact that Starkso gets one, albeit the resurrection, Koi has still got the numbers advantage. Oh. Heal coming up here as well, that recon already used. Still an owl drone to work with. Yampi on the luck though, this could be crucial. There's nothing to, uh, to alarm Koi here from this flank. No, nothing towards Boiler. It's only the alarm bot over underneath too, but he chooses. Tube itself instead. He hasn't positioned himself there before. So all Team Liquid are doing right now is trying to buy the time to wrap around here, let Yampi get into a great oh, position to change the tide of this round. Scouting good here for Camo at the very least. Camo's shown his ground. They know he's altered nearby, and Team Liquid look to run away from it. Oh my goodness, gripping you there and waiting, but it's got to get Camo to peek out from the shadows, get so many kills from it. And out of nowhere, Koi on 11. Such a read coming out from Koi, expecting now. Uh, oh, honestly, it took a little bit too long for comfort yep. for me. I think Yampi has gotten way too much value on his mid lurks, and Koi haven't really given that respect wow. and paying enough attention. But what shots it's to come out from Camo? The hype. <laughs> Barber is like, how? Yeah. How? Just simply how? Camo. 
rejuvenated. Back on the server, exactly where Koi wanted him to be. And the bright moment as well. One round between themselves and overtime. Now for Team Liquid, you could say the same thing. But with a map win, they'd love it. You'd be holding the off here too. Team Liquid buying into that one for the Sentinel. The attacking side again, this mid control here instead. Nats is the one on that kitchen lurk. It's Koi that's aggressing though. They're the ones taking the flank control over this B site. And I think Yampi could get caught off if he's not careful enough. Shados wins out his own trade as well. And Koi in a moment of milliseconds are the ones favored to win this round and take us to OT and Team Liquid. They're shaking where they stand, sweating all over. It's a three versus five for them to secure a map win. It's all up to Kiko here on site. Kiko's got the blades. Only just enabled the dash. Snake bite nearby, but avoided by Kiko. Wanting to go even further. He doesn't really have reinforcements. Mystics held back. <gasps> And Enzo going all the way around. Kiko no more. Koi might actually have done it. Mystic on top. Has to drop back. It's not all done until Koi are able to deliver this defuse. And Mystic is so good on these clutches so far. He's able to find one. Shaders drops it right back up in his favor. Enzo, it's a one on three. And they're sticking the defuse, stopping it. But no! It's Shaders that was on it. We're destined for overtime on map number two. What a cove. What a body block coming out here for Koi. 12 to 12. In the first overtime round, we're seeing a glass cannon operator in the hands of Kiko here as well as we swap sides with Team Liquid back on the defense and Koi on the attack. I... Oh my god, we almost went to a map three right there. I really like the fact that Koi are taking the supremacy on their on, on their own defense to take the oh, initiating fights remains. themselves, dictate how the round is played out. Don't allow Team Liquid to set up the way they would have liked themselves. Nice. I mean, nice. for Koi, they were giving too much respect on the defense initially. At the beginning of the second half, they weren't taking any of that control. It was a free playground for Yampi to roam around. What they have to do is replicate how much success they've had on the attack and use their learnings from the defense to get themselves two rounds in a row. The same could be said about Team Liquid. Two consecutive ones on each side of the field is what is needed to pick up a map win oh. here. He knows, but he's run out of a dash, so he can't play as aggressive anymore. No. Walking over now towards B. Opportunity to still stall with some of these snake bites here for Nats. Yeah, I think you can see how important it is for Team Liquid that Koi don't push too far forwards. Nano Swarm is very deep in, so yeah. Nats comfortable to hold back for now. Snake bite and Poison Cloud enabled. And that spray, Stark so down. Team Liquid. All they do now is rotate around. They know Koi is nearby and they get someone on the flank, perhaps. Ahead. But Koi are patient. And while they are patient, in the meantime, it's Team Liquid that get a pick after pick. Three players off in Snowman. If there's no smoke covering it, they're doomed. Portal closed. Camo's got to make the difference. Enzo is just left. off the screen. And Yampi finds himself the backstab, and that's all is needed. Team Liquid might actually be getting a very clean round here in overtime. Nats with another one, making it two for him this round. Grabinho is all that remains. Doubles up with 18 seconds. Surely not. And 30 points of health. This is looking nigh impossible. With a plant, he gets the pick. Ten seconds left. Will it be enough, though, as in chasing right after him, not allowing him to do it? He gets one kill, goes for another spike plant, but Kiko's right behind him with a shorty to the back. 13-12. Map point opportunity here for Team Liquid for a second time. Great stall, great delay coming out from Nats and just Stark so being mowed down there, breaking that cove right off the gate. No safe plant in sight. And that's also the trade-off. Sure, you get the cove here for within the harbor for Stark, so, and then for Mystic, you've got that sage wall if you want to opt for that B plant. Otherwise, too dangerous. <laughs> having fun. But um, otherwise, it's too dangerous to plant there over B. But the cove takes a lot less damage to break versus that wall. Yeah, importantly for Team Liquid, spirits are high. They're not the ones on the hot seat, it's Koi instead. I mean, look, both of them are under pressure. Let's not beat around the bush here. Koi aggressing, taking down the bot. Some information now denied from the attacking side. They also know that Koi have struggled here on defense, right? So feeling confident after win winning their defending round. Cascade deep in mid does put pressure on Team Liquid to look at it in case someone walks past it. But the push towards A means there's a pick per side. 
But then you've also got Delay here. Koi, with these mollies, are looking to just force Team Liquid to stay in towards Maze. Nats on lurk and control, while the rest of Team Liquid just traverse into A. Looks like Koi want to deal with Nats here, and they're wary of such presence. In the swing, Rubinho is actually so close to this. I don't think Nats can expect the barrel. it. And he goes, and it's stock, so that gets the pick instead. Spike planted now for Team Liquid, but they're at a numbers deficit. Kiko has to go for something early. He feels unneeded. He needs to go for a pick. Cloud burst to the left hand side as he aggresses forwards, finds some damage, dashes out. Enough of that fight. Still, it's Starkso on the other end that tries to find a shot, but does bait him. But it's Kika to come out on top. Mystic! The brilliance of this man to come alive with the best moments for Team Liquid. This round could be it, unless Grubinho can say otherwise. But there's three players spread apart. There's no way you can find them all at the same time. Kiko with the final blow. We're going to split. We're going to a third map because Team Liquid are not done with Koi yet. 14 to 12, the second overtime for us today, but what a way to close things out here. Kiko really coming alive in the second half of this matchup, but man, despite that, my eyes are on Yampi. His lurks found so much value. It's been brilliant to see Team Liquid come back, but they've got a chance to close out the series right after this. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Taking risks, yeah, I always go all in Swear to God that I'm deaf to the talking I can't hear it, see the finish line I know that I'm near it, yeah Cut the check and I'ma clear it Ain't nobody out here that I'm fearing Ay. Easy to see things all on the way up Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, Hey, you ain't realist like you got a few disguises. Walk in the room, I know I'ma be the flyest She like me, yeah, it's hard for her to hide it One-on-one, -on -one, ain't nobody like this 
got this far by doing me. I'm everything I knew I'd be. I don't care what we used to be, no, yeah. They try and get close to me. You can't get what you want from me. I got this vision you can't see, no. Easy to see things all on the way up. Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup. I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. So I spotted a wild alpha year here in the crowd, in the general vicinity of the Team Liquid fans. Can I now conclude that you are, in fact, a Liquid fan or are you just, you know, scouting the enemies? Um, I'm just fan of Liquid, I guess, because <laughs> they have two ex-teammates. All right. All right. So, so you are actually cheering for them? Yeah. I cheer for Enzo and Mystic. It's me and, and Yampi, sorry, my brother. <laughs> and. It's me and Liquid. All right, all right. So how do you see their chances in taking it home here? I think, uh, yeah, after the first map, uh, they prepared themselves in second map and third map will be good for them. All right, why is that? I don't know, it's a mental <laughs> it's game. It's just gonna be good, man, it's just gonna be good. All right, so if it's not Team Liquid though, do you have a favorite player? Like someone you're like Loki always cheering on and want to do good? Um, I will say Ness. Why? <laughs> because he's like really a good sentinel and if he stays top three sentinel, we'll put Ness. That's why I cheer for him. Right on. Now, I see you're hanging out here in the crowd and that's lovely. I love that for you. Does your coach know you're just bumming around here? Like, aren't you supposed to like practice or do something? That's what I say to the guy. <laughs> I don't want to do interview because of this. My coach doesn't know I'm here. Oh, ooh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, well, tough luck. Sorry, I outed you. Uh, but we're all happy to see him here, right? Yeah, Wild Alphier in the crowd. Thanks so much uh, Thank for taking too. the time, even though you absolutely did not want to. And we're now getting ready for map number three of our last elimination series. So let's make some noise once again for both of those teams as they're fighting for their lives. Thank you very much, Zoe and Alpha. I wonder where he puts himself in that top three. You know, if Nats is in the top three of Sentinels, is Alpha saying that he's number one? I think he's just being a little bit humble in that. So maybe not, with, not even top in three. I don't know. Hey, just make sure that nobody snitches. Yeah, nobody tell Elmer Party that Alpha is here uh, with us today. Uh, he seems to be hardcore cheering for Liquid and things are split. Uh, they could take that. What do you think, Lothar? Look, if you think you saw some crazy stuff happening on round on map one, map two, well then you have to be prepared for split because we are in for some insanity. We have seen previously split being played by Liquid. They also started on attack here and they play a composition with Viper, Omen and Cypher as a core of that composition which relies on denying vision in a lot of extremities on the map. We see a typical typical setup on B from the Viper, then the cages from on A by the Cypher, so they deny a lot of uh, potential default players on those sides, but then they do the execute, and that's where the insanity starts. We have seen so many TPs from the Omen into random spots on B main, double TPs into like extreme positions that were not paying off but still we're like able to convert the runs because it's liquid and as we have seen on on icebox they are able to go and just do some heroics we have seen mystic actually pop off on icebox and hopefully he's going to be able to do the same on split but bear in mind when they swap the sides to defense so far in kickoff 
Their performance is zero and eight. On split. On split. Zero Yikes. percent win uh, one rounds on defense. And that is in a composition with the Scythe, with the Viper, with the Omen, right? And then you still have two other agents, which, which I'm assuming are going to be Raze and Sky in this case, right? So you have so much util to stop potential pushes, so much util to get early info. Uh, but that was not utilized well. On the other hand, we're going to have Koi, who on split are playing... Uh, yeah, they don't run the Cypher. Exactly. They, they don't want it. That's that's what I wanted to say. This, this, this is the thing that they don't run. They have a big gap in the defense. And even with that, they still have a very positive win rate on the defense, 67%. But uh, I feel like what they are lacking, they need to... Uh, be understood by Liquid to expose that gap, right? So fighting for mid might be something very interesting here. Well, there are no changes, no surprises. I don't think they had enough time to make uh, major changes uh, coming into this uh, as well. But this is the first time Lothar Koi will not start on attack. Yeah, and this is with a Liquid. Actually, I think like that more crazy uh, side of Liquid here might give them the advantage, specifically also because of their past performance on the defense, which was not effective at all, right? So. And I, if I remember exactly, Josh made the same point, Liquid is a more efficient team on attack. So I think this is straight something up the alley right now when they're warmed up, they're coming off a win, and the players are a little bit feeling confident, right? We have seen Yampi being confident, we have seen Mystic being confident. I don't know about Kiko, he didn't, like, apart from that one ace, he didn't have many shining moments on the ice box. But we know he's capable of getting some crazy rounds in here. Yeah, of course. It is very, very late here at night. I wonder if they have enough stamina and mental fortitude to carry them through this because Pavlos and Ash, whoever loses this map, will be out. That is indeed very, very true. Who is able to take over this series is determined by this map right now. If one wins it, they move into play-ons. Play-ins. The one, the other loses it. Well, that's goodbye for them in kickoff. Team Liquid and Koi face up against each other on the final map of the day. It's split. Koi on defense. Team Liquid on attack. Starting things in for Koi. Attention towards mid here. We've seen a lot of like three piece walks down mid, I think, from defenders. No matter which team you're looking at, just looking for that early mid control. They don't commit to it instead. No team liquid, they just walk over towards that B site. You've got that wall that allows you that free back site push. And it's open. That B site is definitely open for them. And there's only one player looking in that direction, but because of the fast swing from Kiko, he's not going to be able to do a thing. Grabinho is going to have to look away and wait for reinforcements to arrive until anything else happens. So the spike plant is going to be clean for Team Liquid as it enters into this one, but they're not going to hold back at all. Koi wanting to move in. It's a paranoia in correspondence here from Koi, but it's still Nat Nats and Yampi to come out on top on these trades. Spike not yet planted, respecting Koi's attack. Ooh. And that's a good for reason as well, because Shadows and Camo have brought things right back into a fathomable collection. And Camo keeps on giving down, on the beat. top here. Paint shells, really well placed, forcing Mystic up close. And the spike in the middle of the site puts Koi to relax for a I second. Have the spike. I think it's a little bit awkward. It's uncomfortable now. And the regroup over here towards Ali. So much time has been expended. They can only left. imagine that there's a push coming in from behind. It's still a one-for-one one trade. And now remaining. a 1v1 for the first pistol round win. Kiko holding it back. Waiting for Shados to swing, but it's Shados to win it instead. A triple for the man and first blood for Koi. Pistol in pocket here for Koi, allotting that buy up now into round two. Split though. Anything can happen, I think, with these close quarters, depending on what moves these teams decide to take. But into the replay. Just a quick and dirty fight there towards site. See. Quite very much so preferring to play those retake situations. 100%. And I think Team Liquid starting the attack is actually pretty decent. Yes, they do lose that first round, but you know, given they've been unsuccessful on the, on the defense so far, it's Team Liquid that have got a chance, you know, get spread their wings early on this attack, try and find some extra damage here. Something they weren't quite able to do against Navi. So that also means that they have to find a very big lead here on this first For half. Sure. Ooh, yeah, that's going to help. 100%. Spectre picked up. And there might even be a chance of this one. Shadows closing up the gap into mid. Poison Cloud dropping. That will be surprising for him. So Starks is the one that is forced there. to get the trade. Koi trailing behind the numbers, but there. not for sure for, for, for a lot longer because Shadow is doing quite a lot of damage with the Bulldog in mid. 
Now, there is a lurking Yampi, and they know they vacated B for long, and Camo is looking in this direction, but at least it's been open for long enough for the spike to go down. And do you really expect Yampi to have this off position? Usually it's defenders in that angle, not attackers. Oh, the spike too. No one's gonna check it. Prowler. Oh, only now spotting out Yampi. So Koi have got the read, at least on one of these players. Nat's repositioning into the middle of the site, so at least that info isn't handed over. But Camo is there to lead the charge. Yampi on the cross, shut down where he stands. And Nat is trying to be sneaky as he could ever be. Oh my god, that's a double. And only one left. This could be really the impossible clutch for Nazi, and it'll be the perfect way for Team Liquid to find themselves on the board, but Camo is going to stick the defuse, but does get off it as soon as he spots out Nats. That's going to be the round win for Koi, an expensive one, but one that they get nevertheless. I mean, so costly there. Team Liquid finding so much value. Yampi with the first blood over towards B main as well, but you can't be surprised because back on Icebox, sure, Kiko, seven first bloods on the second map of the day here for Team Liquid. But Yampi matched him, seven of his own. Yeah. The lurk positioning was king there for the Viper player. And, well, the Viper slash pseudo Sentinel, because we do also see yeah. him on the other role as well. But Basically on that last Sentinel map. But map. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, yeah. exactly. Viper definitely Toxins not the main controller up. by any means. Well, now. The best of both worlds, right? That's why you see Viper so much. But for this one, Koi. Decent third round buy, I guess there's a rifle in there. Not much you would expect, Team Liquid. This is the time to find themselves on the board, as always, on this third round. Mid push coming in, but for Koi, I think this is a pretty decent approach. They've got a lot lying in wait. And two different places from which these defenders can pop in from. Off of the stun, it seems that Team Liquid are expecting it, anticipating it, getting a pick in the meantime. And the players that concuss, hold back. No reason to peak those moments. Just falling back, forces so much utility yeah. here. Out of both teams, there's a trade throughout mid. Now, take the space back here on the side of Team Liquid. Look at the hop, skip, and a jump here from Koi to regroup over towards B Heaven. But look at this down. rotation being called now. It's Where Rubinho alone. Hiding? However, information will be given about this anchor with that neural theft. It's the right decision to make. Enzo calls this out well. Onto this A site they go, and it's only one to defend it. It's Rubinho. This paranoia could be perfect, though. And might find himself an opportunity to get a kill, but oh. is caught out into the open. Guiding light in response was immaculate, and Team Liquid find themselves on site without an issue. With a spike going down, Koi have found themselves on rotation, but you need to be careful of Nats on the flank. Finding that position covered, uh, but Shados does have it covered. Does he have time to get the weapon? He does, but it's going to buy some time for Team Liquid to reposition, glooping up their players up into elbow. You can see Yampi is away from this fight, Where checking if there's any luck in the making out in A main. The stun comes through, and Mystic's angle is not checked out, which means That's Team Liquid can stay on top. Enzo, bullet to the head of Shadow, and I believe this has to be it. Shados, there's no way you have enough time to get three players and the defuse Yampi on the sidelines and Team Liquid on the board. Decent picks there on the side of Koi, at the very least, to take two of those weapons out of the hands of Team Liquid. But nonetheless, Team Liquid clean into the post plant. Again, this utility trade towards mid forces a lot of that re-clear util, that stall util out from the likes of Koi, but you also Okay, there we go. <laughs> Listen, That's you need your to IGL to hype you up. You're in the last map of the series. It's been a long day. It really has. Playing the last best of three of today, too. Of course, and it's exactly what you want to hear. W words of encouragement. Team Liquid looking to see if they can win this buy round. Now it's both teams on Phantoms and Vandals. And that's moving in. Dry Peak Galore. He does have help of Yampi, but this is sneaky. He does manage to find himself beneath the A Heaven area, while the rest of the team is eluding presence into mid. Oh, Trailblazer, I think 
just spotted Shados there. Shados is going to hold it down himself. Tries to open up on the zip line, but it's Kamo finding most of the damage. Hello. Koi's found themselves on top, but not for long as Nats is in the fight, but it's messy. This heaven control is heavily debated. And Koi are still ahead in numbers, and no one is allowed on this A or B site. Team Liquid have to regroup now. Yampi and Enzo to find themselves back in towards A Heaven. And now you've got Koi, Shadow, and Grabino rotated over towards the screens instead. They put the Lurk Wall back up over towards that B site. Team Liquid are definitely looking ahead. Inwards now. Left. And Koi respecting it. They know as soon as the spike goes down, they can play the numbers game. They both swing out simultaneously. You couldn't have coordinated better. It's a symphony at this point. And Enzo, the captain, left to do it alone a moment ago, was shouting out for his teammates that they are really freaking good. But for this one, Ten he's got to do it all left. by himself. Finds one, seven seconds, hasn't time to get the spike down, especially with Shadow spreading his bullets upon him. And Koi keep on the streak. They get themselves an even bigger lead. I mean, great reposition from Camo into Vents to even be able to help clean <laughs> up in that fight because Shadoff, sure, was sought out, but they only saw the one player. They felt comfortable. And now that's also the showstopper cycled into this next round here as well for the side of Koi. Team Liquid, again, this is the half where we want to see the hot start out from the Liquid squad. And with Camo having so many good performances here, he already has a showstopper available. I'm really happy to see him perform, especially lining up his performances from the previous map. Seeing him present on split as well is something a lot of people have been looking forward to. Close angle starts though. We saw it on Icebox, why oh. not see it on split? Oh right, yeah, okay. Closer quarters to work with too. History does tend to repeat itself though, but the judge is the perfect weapon here for Stark, so all he has to do is wait, and oh, he didn't get a double kill himself. The stun is good, and the spray from the judge is even better. Stark so putting them in the dirt, and they're looking to have a well clean round for themselves. Team Liquid not given a chance to react, to play this round for a single second. They're giving him the ace. They really want to give him the He's ace. He's running over right now, sprinting, knife out. He doesn't have much health on him, and especially you're passing the toxic screen here, but I think they just want to secure it, not give away any more weapons, not take any more chances. Yampi fighting damage, but it's only two kills. The round still goes to Koi, and they will be increasing that lead even further. Yampi getting two there, even though it's something that shouldn't have happened. Four to one, Team Liquid, they're back onto a buy now difference they didn't have the weapons to really contest and that's why you saw the comfort in stark so to just be able to sh chase them down there but these picks were massive because now you're cycling into that nightfall you've got a rolling thunder you've got a showstopper a perfect recipe for a retake here for koi or to even full stop end any sort of execution that team liquid look towards it's brilliant and team liquid on the other hand struggling a little bit themselves. They do have ultimates with their exposure, but it's Camo to use the showstopper straight out of the bat, trying to get all of these picks, but no. It's a trade of the omens, and that's aggressing. We'll end up losing his life, but he gets one for it. It does open time for Team Liquid to traverse towards his left-hand side, and they will be able to freely cross over unless Shadow is able to peek out in time. But there is a flank now in the making from the Shadows and expended from Grabinho, but it's a flank on a flank as Enzo is also in the chase. Viper's bit important for this hold for Team Liquid, and it might just be exactly what they need to hold it's it down. It's all timing. And Yampi's gonna wait here. Shados, little does he know he did so much damage to Yampi. He swings out himself and catches him by surprise. It's still a 3v2. Team Liquid might have turned this whole thing around, but Shadow says otherwise. The Viper's bit no more. They need to read that Kiko's close by to this area. Shadow's trying to be collected, but Kiko gets Grupinho instead. This guy is crazy. And Shadow left alone against two former teammates. Both of them have seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, but now he's got to do it all against them. Six wallets. Can he lead from the front? Two. And running out of bullets, he cannot do a thing. Team Liquid secure the round by adapting on the fly. And that's Team Liquid back in contention. Again, the timing, everything there as well. That Rolling Thunder also expended just for being main instead of being utilized on the Viper's Pit where that plant was secured by Team Liquid. It's trying so hard to guarantee that Grabinho would be able to find one, not knowing that Enzo was so far behind the play that he was ahead of it. Not that he was behind, but yeah, just the lurk, the timing there was perfect. Really was. 
Showstopper available here for Kiko off that last kill in the last round as well. Piper's pit out, denying mid in full, but Team Liquid stacks five towards the A site. Yeah, they're placing a lot of importance on that mid push. Because Team Liquid could crunch on multiple directions on both of these sites. And it definitely, definitely denies them from that, but Kiko now with a showstopper, wall aggress forwards. There's one on site that he has spotted, and Camo is deleted. is thinking of pushing out of the smoke here, but he needs friends. He's not going to cut it alone. Maybe he can. Ten points of health and he gets away. No freaking way he's allowed to do that. I mean, Shados needs to come now. Nats knows. That's a great read by Nats. I know exactly where you are. This neural theft is massive, though. It's going to read all of the positions of the Koi players, and there even is a push coming through from Nats to stop them from pushing even more. Surely it's just a save now when this 3v4. I don't think the Prowler spotted Nats at all. It's got to be a save from, from Koi. They've got no clue where Team Liquid are. They've got the numbers available to them. It's the retreat call to be made as they look to save these rifles. Grabinho wants to take one before he backs off. But that's Team Liquid keeping it a close score. Two ultimates used there for Team Liquid to secure this third round for themselves. And Nat's low still hunting ships in the night. Oh, no, they, they just walk past each other. each other. That's awkward. Nothing. Oh, he hears them. Yeah, that's it. That's the round. So that's the third round for Team Liquid. And this game is looking to be close. Now, we saw Sunset at 13 to 11. This Icebox, 14 to 12. What on earth is going to be the score on this one, given how toe-to-toe -to -toe these two teams are? I can't even imagine. But again, to temper expectations, Lothar talking about it on the desk, the fact that Team Liquid, once they swap sides, that's where we have to be really concerned. Yeah. And that's why we... This catch-up is good, but we need more than that from Team Liquid. We need them to find some sort of advantage here on the attack if history is to repeat itself. And so with the Seekers available here, and again, full stack over towards Zay, but look how aggressive Grabinho's positioned. You can definitely tell this is an elimination match, and especially with Grabinho hiding out in this angle. He's going to catch them all off guard. Not quite the second kill as Enzo is able to trade it back up. But is it good enough? Is it going to delay them enough? Because rotations from Koi have already come in. Yes, a little bit too far behind and an opening for Team Liquid to move in themselves onto this A site, but they don't know it yet. They're waiting yeah. for Nats to push through mid. There. I've got your trail. Looking for that time for the Seekers to come out as well to find that information. Nats on the flank. He's, he's famous for this. Searching for the Heaven player that the Seekers is chasing down. Which he knows he's now gotten some space to move into. The thing is, they don't have sight in that spike. Not down. Still lurking towards a main. Team Liquid, crucially enough, do group up with each other. And they, they know they've got pressure onto Heaven, and that's exactly what they're looking to push through. No, they know it's a hard sideline to cover from screens and isolating the player to elbow that much easier. Shadow doing some good work left. with the Sheriff, but how much more can you do? Koi, Starkso, the only play, player with a rifle. Spike plan. I mean, there is one to be collected for Shados, but is Team Liquid going to allow them to do that? There. Starkso does have his entire kit available here, including the Nightfall. 2v3 is doable. The last flash used up by Enzo here there. as well. I mean, there is money to buy up the next round. Cam spotting out at least one of these plays. Find you. But Five they strength. need to have cold. some super heroics here. But with the time running out, I can only imagine this is for them to deny the, the saves of the guns. Enzo spotted, looking to exit another way, not willing to take the chance of losing this weapon for the next one. And with the spike exploding here, we'll be seeing two teams on even sides of the scale. Shadows giving his life to the spike explosion, even footing on both sides and a reset for the, both of these teams. Uh, ability to equalize here for Team Liquid. Again, Nightfall still in pocket. The buy able to come up here for Koi as well. Oh, you're... Okay, we saw... We saw the op on Kiko on the attack. On Icebox, but now this time he's not playing the jet, he's playing the raise. Makes it a little bit more diff different because you don't have those cloud bursts to actually cover you up if you do need to reposition and rescope. Shadows traveling. A bit more dangerous. So slowing things down, not going to have that same kind of tempo, that pacing into any of these executions. But uh, not that Team Liquid have really hit the gas on that anyways. It's been measured here. 
on the attacking side from the Koi aggressing onto this right hand side though, and Yampi is there and waiting for it. It's a matter of who quick on the feet. I mean, there's a tripwire to Justin's signal over to Yampi as well. Hasn't quite been broken yet. They might try and find an angle before that, but Yampi's well enough in the know to not push past it. You can hear the footsteps of them dropping back, so maybe that's the call for Team Liquid to change plans as they push now towards events. Mystic is so sneaky in this. They're so aware. Shadow's just watching, ready. They know they've given the space away, which is why Shadow's looking in this direction. And the thing is, Stark, so with this forward positioning, again, he has that nightfall to work with. There is a push happening in the garage simultaneously, so who wins out on these fights will be super crucial. There's 40 seconds, so adaptation still in the, in the chances here for One, Team Liquid, two. as they can still move to this B site. It's only mid-control they've garnered, and they've lost everything they've gathered towards Vents. And there's one covering it. It's Camo. And if he peeks this, he can do a hell of a lot of damage. Nats now pushing through Garage, showing his presence so his rest of his team has got space to move into. Shados is in big trouble, and Kiko finds a pick onto Stark. So finally, Camo makes his presence known. Shados peeks out from the smoke, and it's so good from Koi. They've crept up by surprise, and Kiko. This is not the best oh. weapon have in this situation. You're dirty with that pick, but there's not much else you can do. Five to four, Koi with the lead. And you've got the operator now carried over for free here for Koi, an investment unnecessary. Now that they've been able to just pick up the weapon and toss it over to Stark. So this time around, God, I just can't. This replay coming in here. The smoke was everything for Shadoff. That's brilliant. And he had to be so patient to not pull the trigger, knowing that there's a push and, you know, bullets raining upon him from main. Paying dividends for sure. Oh, aggressive. Peak doesn't know that one has snuck on the other side yet. Yeah, he's crept past them. Toxin's green down. Holding the angle. Yeah, I'm here. No oh, way! Avoider, so he's going to go for the swing and he gets the pick! That's an upgraded weapon. Justin's it's huge. Up. It's an operator at that. So Yampi needs to take use of it. Needs to aggress even further. There's one peaking right now. It's Shados who is going to win that one on one. While well, there's a push by Grabinho, that Enzo is going to win out by the end of it. Yampi aggressing. He's done damage onto Shados, but not quite the kill. He would have loved to pick that up. Justin's screen down. And Yampi. The unsung hero often in these rounds. The fact that a lurker to rival Nats, and then you have two of them on your team in and of its own. Now the rotation to be called. Camo alone here on site has to find one. He definitely does. They're playing from behind here massively. So that's one pick. Make that two! The coordination from Team Liquid is rough there, so Camo is able to do everything. Pass back out, show stepper in. Camo, all is needed is this man. Camo does it all by himself, no matter how many players looking for the ace. Yampi stops it from happening. Well, there's 20 seconds and two players to deal with. It's not all over, not quite yet. He's put Team Liquid to bed, to quiet. And Yampi with 18 points of health has to read where both of these players are. And there's one circulating right around him. It's Shadow. That Yampi's able to read eight seconds. This is doable. Both Viper players are low. This might be a topsy-turvy on top of another one. And with a spike planted, Yampi can just back off. He doesn't know. He's not. 100% certain on Shados' positioning right now. Yampi's breathing fresh air right now, taking a breath. Shados has to regress forward, and Yampi gets the timing! A quadra kill on top of Camo's quadra! That keeps Team Liquid in play! A Red Bull clutch here for the side of Team Liquid. One-man armies on both sides trying to save the round for their team. But what a way to do it. He can't be the player you want in that situation. I can't believe that Cameron was allowed to do that in the, in, to begin with, right? But Yampi turning it all around himself, a lot of mistakes to draw out. You can definitely tell there's a lot of pressure around. And that <laughs> is a contrast of emotion, celebrating a tad too early there. Team Liquid timeout, calm this all down. It's all getting a little bit too hairy. Quite the juxtaposition in between those coach cams. You, you can see the difference between when Barbar Bar and Co were watching camo get that 4K, and then it's like, oh, man, guys. Oh, damn it. Come on. Whoops. Yep. How? You can't let that happen. You can't not let that happen. And the thing is, they thought they had a good flank. They thought Shadow was able to pick it out. But Nats' intuition is out of this world. Absolutely incredible. So everybody in their thinking chambers. 
Okay, equalize five to five. What do you do on the side of Koi? It's an eco round coming in for them. Got maybe a hero rifle to play with because Camo did manage to scoop up those extra credits with the 4K that we saw into the last round despite the loss. But otherwise, you're not working with much. So all eyes have to be on the duelist for Koi. Again, it's only two rounds here until we swap sides. Team Liquid. Uh, they cannot afford to lose this round. I mean, come on. They've had a couple of seconds to reset from the previous one, because let's be honest, that was chaotic. And in these chaotic moments, it's anyone's game. So calculated play required for Team Liquid to close this out their way. Two players stacked up on two different locations in mid for Koi. So it's four in total, while one left to defend this A site. There's not many weapons available for them. Camo's the only one who really could do a lot of damage, theoretically, with a Vandal. So Starkso here with just a mere pistol is only playing the delay game, and he's trapped in place. But look at Shadow, he's nearby and he's got his thing. And knowing that Mystic is nearby himself, could do a lot. Shorty in his face, but Camo trades it back out. Gets a second himself and Koi is in play right now. Viper spit towards screens, there. denying Shados to move in that direction. So Team Liquid could funnel themselves into that position. I mean, they only have planted. two avenues. Now it's going to be towards main, taking that ramps and then heaven itself. Boombot is still available to try and clear out into that Viper's pit. It's so tempting to start just raining bullets into this Viper's Pit, but at the same time, it reveals your position. You don't know where everybody is. Boombot available to them. One spotted, spray down in their direction. Snats not able to get the pick. Rubinho is instead the one to come out on top. Yampi not missing. It's Kiko all to himself. 30 points of health. It's so difficult. One gets to the Viper. They both have to go for the chase, but because it's a two versus one, the numbers will have it. It's Koi to be the first on six. The first to at least guarantee a draw at halftime, but I'm damn sure they'll want way more than that. Off the back of a thrifty, too. You saw the frustration after they lost that last round when yeah. they had the numbers advantage off of Yambi. This is what you want to see to bring the momentum back. Cameron was like, guys, I got a 4K the previous round. Do I really need to carry every single round here? 14 and 9 there for the duelist. Now awkward buy here for Team Liquid. You can see the celebration for Koi. They know that Team Liquid have this last round on the back foot. And for TL, again, going in, even if they end this half 6 to 6, they needed that advantage because they struggle on defense. They do indeed. Team Liquid, unless they've been able to fix all of their mistakes, I'm sure for them to float split, there must be good reason for it. Maybe they didn't think they'd be in this situation. Maybe they thought it would be a 2-0 already. But Koi have definitely not made it easy for them. Hell, oh, it's been hell. Mid presence from Team Liquid. Not quite aggressing that far. It's garage control that the Liquid will exert power on so far. And it's a showstopper straight out of the battle for Kiko to gain space for his team. He's only got a stinger if the showstopper journey doesn't work out. But Shadow is making sure that his teammate misses him. Camo on the other end. Blast pack to the side, but it's Koi that wins every single one of these fights apart from Camo's demise. And he recovered at the very least with the From the Shadows, but that leaves Mystic in a 1v5 for events control, but he is surrounded. Look about a mid. Look, Mystic, this has been the best series we've seen so far from him so far. But this is not the map we'll see him pop off, at least for now. And back to a point where these teams need to put their heads together. Think about what the approach is. The switch of half is about to come through. The switch of size, that is. Okay. Pistol rounds. This is a must need here for Team Liquid. They, yep. they have to find success on the pistol. Try and equalize early on in their matchup against Na'Vi. They ended the half 7-5 for themselves. Didn't see a single one on defense go their way. And Koi, this is a team that also strives on the attack too. Yeah, they've been best at the attack, right? There. So pair that up with Team Liquid's weakness on defense. And not split at least. Let's see if it's able to go full throttle for Koi. I'm sure they'll like that. They have the advantage, at least in rounds here. 
Team Liquid take full pressure over mid. No one is there, so Koi take full sight control without any trouble. Okay, the question going towards mid. Four people walking down towards sewers. But that also gets tricky with Yampi being the only one to retake here into heaven and <laughs> pinched in a crossfire at that. Oh, dirty shot by Grabinho, and that's first blood for Koi. Numbers advantage and having this heaven control is exactly what they want. The spike is planted for it. So all they have to do is play the trading game. All they have to do is wait it all out. Yes, you'll flash it. Yes, you'll delay it. But Team Liquid need a pick and they need it quick. Shadow. Up against it. He knows Kiko would push right past it, but it's Shadows with a pick eventually. It's Starkso that aggresses right after them, and it's Enzo all to himself. His teammates' bodies all before him. He has to trample over them. As Koi secure this round, find some damage, do what you can, but it's all over in this one. Koi increase their lead with this pistol win. It's eight to five for Koi. I. Oh my god, clinical post plant coming out from Koi after that round. Team Liquid, you saw the idea that they had there. They wanted to try and mow down on that flank that they was coming through. And you had so much stall shadow buying so much time from ramps. And just even seeing this into the replay as well, the fact that Koi are not afraid to push Whoa. forward. <laughs> Early celebrations from Barbar, yep. of course. The excitement, I feel like it's a roller coaster in that coach room at all times. It really is, but I think for the first time in this map, Koi actually feel that they've got a genuine advantage in, in uh, closing out this map as a whole, this series perhaps. I think Icebox was a bit of a different affair, a bit too topsy-turvy, a bit back and forth, but this is the real streak of rounds that Koi's creating. You also can't get too overconfident oh, though, yeah. just based off the stats that you're seeing. <sighs> Because changes can be made, adaptations are possible. If you give Team Liquid anything, they can make something out of it. Grabinho close to this trip, to the cage, rather. And he's got teammates as well. But Team Liquid both heading all the way around. They've only got pistols. And again, want to deny the orbs. Koi look to secure this here. There's no way the Team Liquid are going to go for the bounce on the fight. There's no. not much time remaining on it. They'll try maybe to deny any weapon, any rotation of it but at least they'll secure that there's no gun. Well, there's no orbs going their way. A dink, perhaps, and then perhaps a collapse oh, the to find some oh, yeah. rifles. And they've been able to do it. Camo not leaving anybody alive, but at the same time, Yampi dying to the spike leaves no survivors. Incredible blender, though, into CT spawn, going for those exit frags there on the side of Team Liquid, making a very, very weak bonus on the side of Koi. Half shields and stingers to come through to try and contest these rifles. To be fair, it is split. You have the opportunity yeah. to try and close those gaps, and we've seen what you can do, especially with playing the numbers game with these SMGs. But a great play to come in. That also, though, left Starks who just one away from the nightfall. I have a feeling Koi are cooking something up here onto this B site. They're looking to go in aggressively, but Mystic Smoke does show that he's aggressed even further. And that's a free rifle for yeah, this Koi it. side. Oh dear, and it's in the wrong hands, isn't it? You don't want Camo if you're Team Liquid to holding that big gun. Starkso gets the nightfall off the back of this plant. And with that, they might be able to hold off with post plant. This is a real situation that Team Liquid need to be handling. And off of the back of the knife, or paranoia thrown in, so no aggression is fought after. It's just a matter of buying time at this point. Team Liquid, they've got two positions they are working off of. They've got Heaven and they've got CT. And they're thinking of it, but it looks like they're backing away. No way they give it up so easily. They say it's a four versus five and just say, no, we're giving it to Koi. This allows Koi to have double the amount of rounds that Team Liquid have. And it's danger bells in everyone's head right now if you're Team Liquid and a fan of this team. And this is a terrifying prospect. I understand the decision making at the same time, though, for that call to come out from Enzo. Because they don't know what kind of crossfires are waiting for them on the other side, playing those close quarters. And they would rather risk take all of these weapons back into the next round, force Koi to stay on these stingers going into the next, instead of being able to collect more value. All players now in a state in which they can't get too excited, too overwhelmed with emotion. Have Team Liquid get knocked off in kickoff from groups, from Koi, 
What a world would this be? It's 10 to 5, can't get ahead of ourselves. Still superior weaponry for the Team Liquid side on this defense. But Koi have got themselves some extra upgrades and they're heading directly to this B site without thinking about it for a second. I mean, full site for the taking here for Koi. Team Liquid more than happy to play that retake. Try and deny this plan. Does do quite a bit of damage over towards Stark so for it. Camus find himself a corner he can work with. He's Five actually looking to aggress, but this Trailblazer is going to be an issue. Dark cover thrown out after him, and a Prowler as well to assist in the matter. The Paranoia is going to make it too difficult for Camus to re -aggressor. He's going to have to hold it out in the end. Team Liquid looking to move in. They know where Camus is, so it's the first isolated kill to go their way. Sprays in the smokes. Team Liquid can't hold back in this one. They need to go for the fight. Stark so looking to find damage for Koi, but nothing is being... Last collected from this attacking side. Grabinho smashed upon, and Team Liquid succeed with a flawless retake. In situations like these, it feels like Mystic is constantly that saving grace for the team. Just flying in with that judge to find three and then pick up a phantom of his own. An Andalusia flawless coming out here from Team Liquid. Might be just the momentum gain that they need. And it was a great call to save these rifles into this round yeah. as well. Made all the difference here for Team Liquid. 100%. Uh, it felt like those thingers didn't have it in them. But at, at the same time, you know, you can look on the other side and Koi are thinking, OK, it's OK to lose this round. We got rid of the stingers. We want to get rid of, them, rid of them anyway. So back of the rifles on both sides. Team Liquid giving themselves a little bit more hope here. Okay, now Team Liquid, what have you got in you? You gotta start chaining these rounds together on the defense. Aggressive look for information towards A. Three players walked all the way up. Shados just around the other corner. Oh dear me, I don't think Shados knows there's so, so many people or. here. You can go for the push and he gets caught off off guard. Team Liquid. Get themselves a the first pick, the advantage, they drop back. Look how deep of a trip Nats gets off of that as well. It is such an early signal of Koi rotate back towards A. Neural Theft as well gives them a clear picture of what this attack is looking like right now. Paranoia sent right in their direction. Kiko's Pencils are looking to do a world of enter. Whoa! Power on all your TP into your opponent's face. And that's one way to put Koi right back into the fight. But Team Liquid are having none of it. Everyone looking to defend this beast side with their lives. And four players survive as they look to close this gap even further. Starting to link these rounds together here on the side of Team Liquid. One away from that showstopper in the hands of Kiko as well. The operator to come out here on the defense. But this replay, again, I think that is something that we do have to point out. The difference in these compositions, you don't have a proper flank watch in that utility coming out from Koi. So even though Shados is playing so deep towards A main, he doesn't have a signal for anyone walking up towards him. Epiretta coming out from Kiko, and I can't wait to see what he's got to do with that. Oh my god, the timing swings out, gets the kill nevertheless. But he has to drop back and respect it. Camo might be in trouble. 10 points of help, but aggressors. Yep, he's quick enough to the trigger. Team Liquid. I think they put Koi in a really rough spot here. They've made them shake a few times, and it's being punished. It's the adaptation. And looking for some information. But Starks is alone with a spike right now. Yeah, he's in an island somewhere. And if he drops, that's the round for sure. Just live. He can hear Yampi. Oh, big pick coming out from Stark, so now backing off to regroup right with the team, but they're going into the traps of Nats. Just checking out if Garage is clear. Gives the all clear. I mean, gives a lot of information there, yeah. too. Oh, Koi walked up towards A, but again, Stark's so leaning towards that B site, and there's two players waiting. To be fair, Koi, one pick, and they've disbalanced this round completely. Especially if Starks has got this all covered, he's figured out two players are right after him. So what is the plan really here? Kiko on the back line, ready as ever. Starks, so needs a pick. 20 seconds, though. He doesn't have much time, and Shados is finding himself another angle. Enzo looking to hide, looking to run. Can't readjust in time, and we're back to square footing for both sides. Two versus two, and it's anyone's round for the taking. Kiko, though, throws down a showstopper. Will he be able to get a pick here, or is he going to wait for his team? I think he just stopped himself from getting overzealous here. And it's for good reason. Now grouped up with Nats, though. These are the two players from Team Liquid you want on the clutch. 
but it's also the two world champions on the other side. Oh, goodness me, this is pressuring. Nuts predict Shades on this position. And it's all down to Stark, so do you expect him as well to be behind the box? Does Nats go for another pre-fire? A spray? Starks all the way around, eight bullets. That's two bullets expended and a kill collected. Knowing where one is, but runs out of bullets. Nats put a bullet between the eyes of Starkso and Team Liquid keep closing up that gap. What a clutch to come out there from Nats. The operator brought back into the hands of Team Liquid as well. Now only two rounds dividing these two teams. Koi started off hot with three rounds in a row here on the attacking side, chaining five in total from the previous half as well. But Team Liquid now looking to bite back. A timeout now to be called from Koi. They've got to go back to the drawing board. I mean, this even though we're seeing coming. heroics, the, you know, the performance can't be the players can't be all too comfortable with it. You can see frustration kicking in. You can't let it get to you. And the mistakes on both sides, don't get me wrong. Both of these teams have got things to look back on. But it's so stressful. And in these final moments of a series, you've got to be the team that stays on top of your emotions. Yeah, Starso put everything into that round as well. But, but we have seen him. He's He has been one of the players to get very visibly frustrated there on stage. I know uh, a bit frustrated with himself, like thinking that he had that round in the bag yeah. and, and he nearly did. Heroic is to come out from the player. Yeah, I think it's, there's just been too many of these rounds, too many of these back and forths. Now credit to the players that can bring out miracle moments and uh, make it micro plays that gets a team ahead of another. But it looks like spirits are high. It's anyone's game, and Koi need to remind, that, remind themselves that they're still in the lead. Still capable, capable of a lot. But looking at the setup with weapons, Kiko on the operator, you've got to be scared of that. Nightfall is available here. Starkso so able to cycle that up with all the picks that he found last round. Yop, though, will be on the other side. No one on Koi to walk over towards it again. It will be not set up here towards A. Probably going to go for a fast crush here. It looks like that's the case. Avoiding the tripwire, but it's Enzo with a pick. That's exactly what they need. God, have a minute. They look to regress towards heaven, but that's not the case at all. They push into this A site and just get traded out. Team Liquid are comfortable on this defense. And Koya going in for round two. I mean, Nats trips did so much work there. Nats himself, and now Enzo to clean things up. A 3K coming out from Team Liquid. A bad swing to come out from the squad. Now one round to divide these teams. Yeah, the timing on that swing was perfect. Okay. Just the replay coming in, man. The fact that Nats just sticks around holding that elbow angle, yep. despite all of the utility that was used in an attempt to break out towards site. And another time out to be called here on the side of Koi. Four rounds in a row here for Team Liquid. And Barber has had enough. It doesn't look like it's a timeout. It must be a bit of a glitch on Government the graphical out. interface. But for now, Koi themselves look to go for another fight onto this A site. It's looking very familiar to the previous one, but this time no one is caught off by a trip or a cam either. Yampi try to aggress off of it. Nats going in for more. Paranoia is insane by Grabinho. Is he able to follow it up with a kill as well? It's a three versus three. And honestly, Nats needs to do it from this backside. Mystic closing in on them. They collapse on Koi. They dismantle Koi and they level the playing field. 10 to 10. The comeback has been made by Liquid. But Liquid still not getting overconfident. You see those player cans so serious here on stage. I cannot believe how tight that is. I remaining. like that Koi Spider opted to take that higher octane play over towards A. They haven't really full visited A before the last few rounds, only now understanding the way Nats is setting up, and now Nats switches that up a little bit. Uh, again, doesn't really expect Koi to press the issue back towards that A site once again. So we'll actually end up throwing there. the same trips as before. Keeping that camera in pocket, oh. though. And so does have the Seekers available here as well. And back to a default stance here Scout for Koi. Oh, it's, it's a bit of a crazy one. Five rounds in a row here for Team Liquid. This momentum, so scary for Koi. Dealing with this is the ultimate priority. Winning a round, breaking that tempo. Team Liquid are on a roll. But I mean, the way that Team Liquid just 
they initially had the standard trips coming out from NATS on that A site. Then they use Enzo's utility, that trailblazer, to push past, put a deeper trip, that safety to now stack towards B in mid. Seekers from that A site. It'll take a while until he's find anyone. It's going to be towards mid, giving a clear illustration of the placement of the, all these players. All broken. Dropping spike. And pivot towards that right hand side. They don't have much time. Koi might be having time trouble yet again. They can't let it happen. And there's two defenders. Enzo and Nat hiding out 20 seconds and they haven't even aggressed forwards. How are they going to do deal with this? The tripwire hasn't even been broken yet and we're at 15 seconds and Koi haven't found themselves on site. Enzo's there to interrupt them. All he has to do is kill the planter. Onto the side they go. Camo on the case to try and plant it. Seven seconds. Starkso back end granted. Mystic into his face but the spike has gone down into the ground. Enzo comfortable to hold it. Shados putting his team back on top. Koi somehow I've got the numbers and we're looking at a two versus three with a captain of team liquid looking to close up the ground shadow up close and personal make sure that enzo is no more and kiko i'm afraid might not be able to keep the streak going for team liquid he's only got an operator three players different angles definitely not the weapon for it the thing is koi's bank is running low he's trying to find at least another pick will he be able to find it koi Superb take, they needed this. They needed to interrupt this streak for a long time now. And one thing they don't allow Team Liquid to do is take the lead themselves. Stop the bleeding, going back to what works for Koi. They really do, again, again, high risk, high reward, but they do thrive in those last minute plant situations, those last minute late executions for the side of Koi now. We've got Rolling Thunder here for the side of Shadow, heading into the next round. But they've got to keep the momentum going. It's been on the side of Team Liquid for so long at this point. Also got a Viper's Pit to work here with here for Yampi. Catch them. No charges. Viper's Pit straight out of the bat, used in mid. Team Liquid. And is Team Liquid going to be able to close this out themselves? Or is Koi going to take charge? Cage triggered. My so far, destroyed. Koi grouping up to this left-hand side. They've left Shados here for the Lurk, and given that there's a Viper's Pit there, it'll be hard to take charge of it. But the tripwire broken. And Koi proceeds with the push, but there's a lot of defenders here for Team Liquid. There is an Omen, there's a Cypher, but the Rolling Thunder will try and take care of him. Kamo gets caught on it. That's not what he needed. He needed to aggress off the back of it, so it allows Team Liquid to rotate it by so much time. Look at Team Liquid. They're not going to let them plant. They're not going to let them gain side control, but Koi don't care. They want to take it themselves no Mystic's matter what. No one can tell them what to do. Mystic in the smoke has to do it all by himself. Really? By the time for Kiko. Moving in himself, Shorty in hand. Both of them find One Shorty kills, but made. Kiko find himself a phantom to turn it all around. Grubinho versus Kiko. It's a 1v1 play, but the From the Shadows left. takes him to this A site. An open plant opportunity to reposition Planted. with the Shrouded Step. The smoke in hand, too. He stays on site. Still a boom bot to work with here alongside the nade. The Sending it over towards Elbow. Grubinho has to tuck. It's definitely going to figure out where Grubinho is. No, it broke in time. So Kiko has no clue. He could be back of sight. He could be elbow. He could be main. I love this reposition. Planted wide open here. Rubinho. He doesn't have to peek this. But he will peek it. And he will get the kill instead. Koi. 12 to 10. One round away from continuing their dreams here in VCT EMEA kickoff. Match point here, series point on the side of Koi, but only two rounds necessary for Team Liquid to tie things back up. Take it over to that OT. Now, things are getting really, really tense here. Pavlos, I... Oh man, over the moon. I mean, stunningly excited, of course, but a timeout to be called here by Team Liquid as well. Trying again, it's your last chance to try and shift the approach towards this defensive side. It's definitely a hard one here, 12 to 10. 
Koi, I, the coaches as well, you could see it in the cams earlier on, they were like, compose yourself, this is not the end, this is not just where this closes out. We need one more round, they say. And Team Liquid trailing behind. Yes, they've gotten five rounds in a row, but can they get themselves back in those shrieking ways? Two rounds away, arms distance, not too far at all. But given that Koi is basically giving him a dilemma here, make a mistake and you're dead. You're done and out of kickoff. Out for a couple months. Just the fact that we won't see one of these teams and again until after Masters. Rarity they post up Kiko on this operator over towards mid to hold the long angle. Well, the flash is definitely going to deny Mystic's positioning into garage. Kiko spotted, but he's able to back out. That's your position. He's spending everything here. Operator revealed as well towards mid. Now timing good here for Koi to push in. You can tell there's a lot of pressure on this. They're trying to be as methodical as possible. Looking to regroup here, Team Liquid. With the reposition of Kiko over towards A, they feel comfortable again moving over towards B. Slowly moving in, but Team Liquid's got good placement here. They've got three defenders, and Yampi notifies the rest to take notice of this heaven push. Camo, very close to the fight. Mystic, not able to read it in time. Yampi trying to transfer his spray, but it's only good for one as he backs off. Is it good enough? That one-on-one. -on -one. Enzo, make sure he flashes his opponents. That spike down, so much information. The rotations are coming through, but Starkso gets another pick. Is this B-site where Koi can end it? They've got the numbers. But all they have to do left. is cross that finish line. Down to a 2v3. Kiko's still stuck on this operator. Starks has got a very sneaky angle off of heaven here. Kiko with the operator will never be able to spot him. Cam stopped. Broken. Switching to a rifle. Better for the situation. Two out dead. into the open and Koi take the numbers advantage. It's Nats. One versus three. All three swing simultaneously. Victory is sweet, but revenge is sweeter. And Koi keep their ambitions alive in kickoff in VCT EMEA. What a, f what a way to find revenge here for Movie star, star Koi. The fact that last time these two teams went head to head, it was earlier this week, that 2-0 for Team Liquid and Koi bring it right back towards them. Smiles, excitement, the whole squad the, celebrating there down into the coach room too. Yeah, Koi couldn't be happier, whether it's the players, whether it's the coach, whether it's the fans at home. This is an incredible moment for them, taking down Team Liquid, previously VCT EMEA champions. There was high expectations for them. A core of Apex that everybody thought would take everyone by storm, surprise everyone in EMEA, bring up upsets. A but team that everyone's been underestimating too here within Koi. The fact that, again, this roster came together so late and they're still putting up such an insane fight to be able to take down, again, like you mentioned, Team Liquid last year's playoff winners. But for this time, Team Liquid head home early. Can't be the best feeling. Feeling I'm sure a few of these players have had before. But Koi, oh, this has got to feel great. This has got to feel sweet. Now entering the grand stage, ready to take a bow. It's Koi, your victors of this final elimination match. What a performance. Hey, it's not over yet, though. They still have plans to worry about tomorrow. A long day filled with two best of threes oh, yeah. for each team as well. Because so far, it's just been one for each of these teams per day. So having that endurance going forward, but man, the gauntlet still awaits. It really does. It's a long road ahead of them and something that Koi will look to take on. It's a new challenge, but Team Liquid is the first challenge in the way. As always on the floor, uh, waiting for an interview with Shadow. Take it away and let us hear what you've got, Shadow. <laughs> Thank you so much, F. First things first, congratulations to you and the entire team. That was some sweaty Valorant we got to see on that stage. Yeah. Talk me through those final moments. What were the comms like? Uh, so thank you, first of all. Uh, and it was amazing feeling to like close this out. We already played them one, one time before. And uh, we should have closed them out, I feel like, already then. But uh, it feels amazing. 
I mean, not only did you get to play against former teammates, you're now also responsible for eliminating him yeah. out of the playoffs. Does that feel bittersweet for you? Mm. I mean, sweet. yeah, it sweet. feels amazing to win. Let's say it that way, yeah. Okay, so you're actually enjoying this. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah okay. a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> no, as you should, as you should. Now you're heading into a play-in scenario, looking at the other teams there. You are most likely going to be considered the big underdog. Does that take pressure off of your shoulders? Yeah, of course. It's good to be the underdog. It, we feel no pressure. We just uh, play our game. We try to improve every day. And we, uh, we simply are uh, improving every day, so it's good. Right on. Well, you deserved your spot in those play-ins. Thank you once again for joining me for the interview and congratulations yeah, thank to you, you so much. and the squad. And we are done here for today. It's been a long one, but man, was this exciting. And tomorrow we will be back with the play-ins. You don't want to miss it. However, if you're still lost for more Valorant, well, you're, you're in luck because VCT Americas are going on right now. So make sure to tune in and we will see you back here tomorrow. Friday night putting them plays in, but it feel like a special occasion. So let's go out, go blazing, hit the dance floor, let go frustrations. I might have a hidden agenda, but my intention's pure. I'll give you all that I got, and I hope that you don't need more. It's okay, just take my hand now. Damn me and sweat in your hair out. You got me creasing my sneakers. That's usually something I care about. Couldn't see the path, but it's clear now. You was in my dreams, but you here now. And I just want a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. With your hands in the air where I can see. I don't know if we'll get another chance you see. So I hope that you'll just come dance with me. We outside, did you hear what? I called the ride cause I'm going up. And there's something mixy going in my cup. Don't say much cause they know what's up. Huh. You know it get cold on a late night. We getting all close like it's day night. You looking so fly, you can take flight. Now I got this feeling that I can't fight. Your courage got my urges flaring. You got me by the collar and I'm not caring. You see how the people can't stop staring. I'm trying to make you mine and I'm not sharing. Okay, let's bring it back a bit. She said you could have whatever if you ask for it. Well, I just want to have a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. Put your hands in the air where I can see.